41 Pinches Section 1 Here my son the instruction of your father Rabbi Lazer deconstructs the title verse to teach us that people must follow the Torah that was given to them by God along with his rebukes and punishments when someone who has studied the Torah dies it precedes him and opens all the gates for him to the next world Rabbi Lazer says that God takes most joy in those who get up at night to study the Torah 1 and Hashem spoke to Moses saying Pinches the son of Elazer Bibid Bar 2510 Rabbi Lazer began here my son the instruction of your father and do not forsake the Torah of your mother Mishle 18 here my son the instruction of your father this refers to the Holy One blessed be he and do not forsake the Torah of your mother this refers to the congregation of Israel what is the instruction of your father instruction is the Torah which contains a number of rebukes and punishments as it is said my son do not despise the chastening of Hashem nor be weary of his correction Mishle 311 2 and since everyone who engages in Torah in this world is worthy that a number of gates a number of lights to the next world be opened for him therefore when he departs from this world the Torah precedes him going to all the gatekeepers proclaiming open the gates that the righteous nation may enter in Yeshua 262 prepare a seat for so and so the king's servant the Holy One blessed be he has no joy other than with one who engages in Torah how much more so with a man who rises up at night to engage in Torah for all the righteous in the garden of Eden are attentive to his voice and the Holy One blessed be he is amongst them as they put it you that dwell in the gardens the companions hearken for your voice cause me to hear it Sure Hashirim 813 section 2 the companions hearken for your voice Rabbi Shimon tells us that everyone who studies the Torah at night is strengthened by the Shechina and this is even more true of those who guard the covenant he says that Israel would have been destroyed had pinches not killed Kashbi and Zimri but his act appeased God's anger lastly we hear that if a person reincarnates a second time without improving his soul he has betrayed God's truth three Rabbi Shimon said this verse has in it the secret of wisdom you that dwell in the gardens refers to the congregation of Israel that is Malchut which is with Israel in exile and accompanies them in their troubles. The companions hearken for your voice refers to the camps of the higher heavenly angels, all of whom listen to your voice. The voice of your praises in exile cause me to hear it is as it is said. Let me see your countenance. Let me hear your voice. Sure, Hashirim 214. Let me hear your voice refers to the voice of those companions who engage in Torah. For I have no praise such as those who engage in Torah. For Rabbi Shimon said apparently at midnight as the day begins to dawn, all those who are privileged to engage in Torah come with the queen to welcome the king and they grow stronger and take possession of the Shechinah. Moreover, a thread of cheese that hangs over him as the sages have explained. Five come and see everyone who is privileged to be strengthened in the Shechinah gains protection for himself from those matters that are considered to be opposed to the Shechinah who is protected. Those who do not falsify by the sign of the holy covenant like mating with the daughter of a for an L and he who watches over himself as it were the assembly of Israel is linked to him in turn and protects him and greets him peacefully and this is even more so if he has been privileged to zealously take up the cause and guard the sign of the Holy Covenant 6 said Rabbi Shimon Israel at that time would have deserved to have been extirpated from the world had not Pinchas first done the deed of killing Zimri and Kashbi and thus the anger abetted this is what is said Pinchas the son of Elazar the son of Aaron the priest has turned my wrath away Bimidbar 2511 another explanation Pinchas the son of Elazar the son of Rabbi Shimon said the word son occurs twice to complete the act 7 said Rabbi Shimon when the soul of a person reincarnates meaning a second time around without gaining merits to be changed for the better it is as though he betrays the truth of the king and I apply to him the verse or has found that which was lost and have lied concerning it and have Sworn falsely, Vayikra 522, and have lied concerning it, meaning to the soul it would have been better for him had he not been created, for it would have been better had he not reincarnated into this world. Section 3 The complete righteous and the incomplete righteous. In this section, we learn that a completely righteous person is allowed to challenge an evil person, but an incompletely righteous person is not the latter, is defined as someone who did evil deeds himself in his first incarnation, but now in this incarnation has done only good deeds. These good deeds are required to repair his earlier bad deeds. Rabbi Shimon says that even one who is not destined for greatness can achieve it through dedication to the holy name, as did Pinches 8. We have learned a totally righteous person is not put off by an evil person and may challenge him, but one who is not totally righteous is held back and is forbidden to challenge an evil person. He asks who is totally. Righteous and who is incompletely righteous, and could it be that one who is not perfect in his deeds is nevertheless called righteous? That is, that you refer to him as an incomplete righteous for someone who is lacking in his deeds according to how they should be ought to be called bad. The answer to this, yes, it is known that a totally righteous person is one who has not undertaken upon himself to undergo crooked incarnations, that is, he is incarnated and within his own inheritance he constructs edifices, puts up walls, digs wells, and plants trees, that is to say, all the good deeds that he did pertain to him, for he has no need of correcting others. Not an incompletely righteous person, yes, one who constructs edifices on someone else's inheritance, that is to say, whose soul is on its second incarnation because he was wicked the first time, with the result that all his good deeds are needed to repair the soul from the first time that it came into the world, and so his edifices are. Built within someone else's inheritance, he digs wells within it and cultivates it, restores the foundation stones to the way they were and labors there, but does not know whether it will remain his for in terms of himself, that is according to his deeds in this incarnation, he is good and is a righteous person, but in terms of the legacy, that is in terms of his deeds on the first occasion that he came into the world, he is not so, that is to say, he has not yet remedied the effects of the sins. Committed the first time, ten he is likened to a person who constructs beautiful and attractive buildings, look at the foundation and observe it sunken and twisted in all directions, the building will not be perfect until he has demolished it and rebuilt it as it was, namely as it should be, thus in terms of the superstructure of the building that he constructed, everything was good and wonderful, but in terms of the edifice foundation, it is bad and twisted, and for this reason is not referred to. As a perfect deed and not considered a perfect building, and so it is with the incarnated soul. Although in terms of his deeds he is righteous, nevertheless, since he has not yet remedied the effects of the sins he committed the first time that he came into the world, he is called an incompletely righteous person because of it, and he is pushed aside by a wicked person. And on the scripture says, When the wicked devours the man that is more righteous than he, Chabakak 113 11, come and see one who is zealous for the holy name of the Holy One, blessed be he, even if he is not designated for greatness and is not worthy of it, he earns it and gains it. Pinches was not worthy of the priesthood at that time, but because he was zealous for the name of his master, he earned everything and rose to the highest position, and everything was put right within him, and he was privileged to serve in the supreme priesthood from then on. He was referred to as Pinches, the son of Eleazar, the son of Aaron. The priest with the word son occurring twice since he completed two stages that is he made good for himself and also for the souls of Nadab and Abihu which had incarnated into him for they are the sons of Aaron and it is therefore written the son of Elazar the son of Aaron and this was because he was zealous for the name of his master and put the wrong right for he corrected himself and also from the point of view of the souls of Nadab and Abihu that were incarnated in him. Section 4 Preserve my soul for I am pious Rabbi Shimon tells Rabbi Yehuda that preserve my soul means preserve the hay for the soul holds onto the hay if the soul is deserving when it leaves this world it is welcome to the next world but if it is not deserving the angels of destruction push it outside when David prayed for the preservation of his soul he called himself pious because he was receiving the flow of Shesedim and Rabbi Yitzhak says that Shesedim is bestowed by the righteous Yezid 12 Rabbi Yehuda began preserve my soul for I am pious Savior servant Tehillim 862 one has to look at the end of the verse and then at the whole verse at the end of the verse it says who trusts in you he asks should it not have said who trusts you he answers apparently David promised not to be asleep when midnight passed as it is written at midnight I will rise to give thanks to you Tehillim 11962 he should have said I rose but the meaning is I will rise and be bound to you forever 13 he asks preserve had Shamra my soul he should have used the form Shamra but we have learned that there is no letter in the Torah that does
Chasten, and this is the reason for preserve my soul, namely, do not abandon it to wander on the outside. 15 Rabbi Yitzhak said, Everyone who has a portion in this righteous, namely, who guards his covenant, inherits this land that is Malchut, as it is said, Your people also shall be all righteous, they shall inherit the land forever. Yeshayah 6021, and this righteous which is Yezid is called pious, since he bestows chastity at Isy David said, Since I am linked and holding on to that place. Unto the righteous, therefore, I am pious, and because of this, preserve my soul, that it be bound up with you. Section 5 Bahay added to the name of Joseph, and the yet to pinch his Rabbi Shia begins by saying that the angel taught Joseph the 70 languages that the Pharaoh knew, but also taught him the holy language that the Pharaoh did not. Rabbi Shimon says that even though Joseph pretended not to understand the language of Potiphar's wife, she eventually caught on to him and knew that he did understand, and the Holy Spirit, known as testimony, gave him a warning. It is this testimony that is the hay that was added to Joseph's name, and the yet that was added to the name of Pinch. 16 Rabbi Shia began this. He ordained in Joseph for testimony when he went out over the land of Egypt. I heard the language of him whom I had not known. Tenelim 816 We have learned that the angel taught Joseph 70 languages as were known by Pharaoh, but also in the holy. Tongue he was greater than Pharaoh, for Pharaoh did not know the holy tongue. This is meant by I heard the language of him whom I had not known, for he taught him languages that he had not known previously. But if this is so, what is testimony? And he answers, Come and see when Potiphar's wife took hold of him to seduce him. Joseph made himself as one who did not know her language, and so it was each day until the last moment as it is written, and she caught him by his garment. Bear she 3912. What is the meaning of she caught him until that time he had pretended that he did not know her language, but then she saw through him that he did know her language, meaning that he understood her intention. This is the meaning of she caught him that she caught the trickery in him. His garment had begun. Yes, another way of saying infidelity had begun and treachery, and the Holy Spirit that is Malchut cried out to him that they may keep you from the strange woman, from the alien woman who makes. Smoother words, Mishlei 75, he asks what is this trying to teach us here and answers this is teaching us that everyone who keeps himself from such a thing as Joseph did is bound up with the Shechina and holds onto this testimony which is Malchut and which is it this is the hay that was added to it as it is written as he ordained in Joseph for testimony also in our section Ayyad was added to the name of Pinches because he was zealous over the same matter the affair of Zimri for the Yud. Hints at Malchut section 6 keeper of the covenant Rabbi Yesa wonders why when the children of Israel were exiled to Babylon and what they were remembering Zion and not Jerusalem Rabbi Shimon's answer is that the whole purpose of the righteous Yesa is to bestow blessings and if the Shechina is in exile it has no one to bestow blessings upon and therefore the righteous has perished Rabbi Yesa says that whoever respects God is honored in his life and in his death as were Joseph and Pinchas from Rabbi Shimon we learn why Pinchas was granted the priesthood even though he had killed and all those who kill are normally barred from the priesthood. 17 Rabbi Yesa began by the rivers of Babylon there we sat down we also wept when we remembered Zion. Tehillim 1371 he asked should it not have said Jerusalem since it is written if I forget you Jerusalem let my right hand forget its cunning. Tehillim 1375 why then when we remember Zion and he answers it is like a man who had a precious and beautiful palace and robbers came and burned it down whose is the anguish if not that of the palace owner here also whose anguish is it that the Sheshanah is in exile if not that of the righteous namely Yezid and this fits in with what they taught as it is written the righteous perishes Yeshua 571 literally perished for the whole purpose of Yezid is to bestow but if the Sheshanah is in exile it has no one to bestow upon and therefore it is as if it does not exist. But had perished here also when we remembered Zion means when we remembered the anguish of Zion which is Yezid because of its lack of mating for the anguish is indeed as 18 Rabbi Yezid said whoever respects the name of his master in this matter and keeps the covenant is privileged to have his master respect him over all how do we know this because regarding Joseph it is written and he made him to ride in the second chariot which he had and made him ruler over all the land of Egypt. Bear 4143 furthermore when Israel crossed the sea Joseph's coffin entered the water first and the waters in front of it were unable to stay as they were therefore it is written the sea saw it and fled Tehillim 1143 what is the meaning of and fled the sea saw him about whom this is written and fled and went outside Bear 3912 19 come and see he was honored in his life and in his death why in his life because during that time he did not want to cleave to Potiphar's wife is it? Is written, but he refused and said to his master's wife, Bear she 398, as it is written, that he here can not to her to lie by her or to be with her. Bear she 3910, for this reason he was honored in this world, for it is written, and she caught him by his garment, and he fled and went outside, because of that he earned entry after his demise into the heavenly curtain that is in the temple of the Holy of Holies, and so it was befitting to him, resulting that he received his due in this world and in the other world. Twenty pinches was privileged in this world and in the next, and was enable to live and exist longer than all those who came out of Egypt. He also merited to serve as high priest, both he and all his sons after him. However, this is incorrect. There are those who say that he had earned the priesthood previously. If so, how should we understand the words? Because he was zealous for his Elohim, Bimid Bar 2513, whose meaning is that he earned the priesthood because of the seed and had not. Gained it previously 21 he responds come and see any priest who kills a person is considered forever unfit for the priesthood because he has marred his own status because priesthood is the status of Chesed and killing a person contradicts the since Pinchas had killed Zimri and Kajbi he was legally barred from remaining a priest but because he was zealous for the Holy One blessed be he had to reinstate him and also his seat after him for all time into the priesthood this is the meaning of the words because he was zealous for his Elohim Rabbi Yitzhak said come and see Pinchas is recorded above and below above means before he came into the world the reason his deeds were recorded below is that he was among those who came out of Egypt 22 Rabbi Lazar Rabbi Yossi and Rabbi Shia were walking in the wilderness Rabbi Yossi said this that is written concerning Pinchas behold I give him my covenant of peace Bimidbar 2512 refers to peace from the angel of death the angel who will never have control over him or have power to judge him if you were to suggest that he did not die you would be mistaken he did die but certainly not in the same way as others do and he lived longer than all the other members of his generation because he held onto that heavenly covenant and when he did leave this world he departed from his fellow mortals with a supreme longing and with wonderful devoutness section 7 the attire of that world rabbi laser deduces from some verses in Zechariah that it is a person's bad deeds that make a filthy garment for his spirit and that everyone will be joyful if they can don a more suitable garment in the next world next the rabbi sit in the shade of a rock while they pause from their travels and rabbi laser says shade is without doubt the joy of the soul 23 rabbi laser began and he showed me joshua the high priest standing before the angel of hashem Zechariah 31 come and see woe to those people who do not look out for their master's honor and do not pay attention to the fact that he daily issues a proclamation about them when a person observes the commandments of the Torah many defenders rise to recall his good points but if a person transgresses the commandments his deeds accuse him before the Holy One blessed be he we have been told that Joshua was a high priest and what is written about him and the adversary standing at his right hand to thwart him but if this is how it was for him then how much more so for those ordinary mortals who do not respect the honor of their master 24 look what is written now Joshua was clothed in filthy garments of it 3 this has been explained yet the filthy garments were surely the garments in which the spirit is attired in that world happy is the destiny of he whose garments are repaired and complete in that world we have already learned what raiment they clothe everyone with who they want to send to Gehenna what these raiments are that they dress him in and answers here it is written now Joshua was clothed in filthy garments and he stood before the angel which angel the angel appointed to be in charge of Gehenom and who is also appointed to be in charge of everyone who he sees in such clothes and a voice said take off the filthy garments from him and before 25 it follows from this that it is a person's bad deeds that make the filthy garments for him and he said to him behold I have caused your iniquity to pass from
Purification and fasting that the children of Israel do at this time. 27 Rabbi Shia said to Rabbi Lazar, I should like to discuss these days from Rosh Hashanah until the last day of Sukkot. Rabbi Lazar said, But we have already studied them and the companions have made their comments about them. Rabbi Shia said, Of course, but I heard something about them from the great and holy luminary Rabbi Shimon. He said to him, Tell us to which Rabbi Shia replied, Its comprehension has slipped my mind and is not as clear as it should be. Rabbi Lazar said, Although the companions have already discussed this matter and it is beautiful, the order of these days is the secret of wisdom amongst the reapers in the field, namely amongst those scholars who have already completed all the clarifications of Malchud, which is termed the field. 28 Come and see the order of unifying all into one. How does that go? We have learned he began. Hashem has made bare his holy arm. Yeshayah 5210. This is one arm which is. The left column on which are dependent salvation, vengeance, and redemption. But why did Hashem make bare this holy arm of his? It was to raise up the assembly of Israel, namely Malchut, from the dust and to welcome her with him so as to unite as one when that arm is raised up against her. There is much fear present in the world until he rests that arm under her head to unite with her as it is said. His left hand is under my head. Sure, Hashirim 26 and then judgment rests and he atones for sins. 29 later the right column comes to embrace her then rejoicing engulfs the world and all countenances shine. Subsequently she Malchut unites with the body, namely the central column, and then everything is called one without schism for the central column incorporates the right and the left. Then everything is perfection and everything is joy and the Zeir and, and Malchut certainly unite, which is not the case at other times. 30 the order of those days from Rosh Hashanah until the last day of. Sukkot is like this on Rosh Hashanah the left arm is awakened namely the left column of Zeir and to welcome the queen the whole world is then in fear of judgment and the whole world has to be in complete repentance before the holy one blessed be he later on the ninth of the month the queen comes and the palace retinue namely the children of Israel make merry and immerse themselves in the river to purify themselves so as to be worthy of the mating of the queen with Zeir and on the other day namely the tenth of the month Yom Kippur day of atonement for her mating is accomplished by Zeir and placing his left hand under her head in accordance with the text his left hand is under my head 31 then on the tenth day Israel fast for their sins and are forgiven for the heavenly I am a namely Bina looks kindly on Malchut in the mating for on Yom Kippur Malchut rises and coats Bina and makes atonement for all of the retinue of the temple namely Israel since the left of Zeir and Welcomes her on this day for the head of Malchut rests on the left 32 on the first day of Sukkot the right column of Zeir and begins to move towards Malchut to embrace her this is the hidden meaning of the verse and his right hand embraces me sure Hashirim 26 then everyone rejoices and all countenances shine there is joy in pouring pure water on the altar people should be happy by rejoicing in many different ways this is brought about by the right for wherever the right side namely Shasadim rests there has to be joy for everyone and this way she is happy to be entertained 33 later on the day of Shemini Atzer at the eighth day of assembly is in Chatura as then the mating of the body namely the central column called body is taking place this is the mating of all parts for it includes the mating of the left side of Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur as well as the mating of the right side of the holiday of Sukkot since the central column incorporates the right and it Left us all is one and this is the perfection of all and this day is definitely Israel's its portion belongs to them alone for no other people has a part in it that is to say it is not like the festival of Sukkot when seventy bulls are sacrificed for the seventy nations because the nations have no part in Shemini Atzeret happy are Israel in this world and in the world to come about them it is written because you are a holy people for Hashem your Elohim Devarim 142 section 9 the rainbow Rabbi Yehuda says the rainbow appears to remind people of God's promise never again to destroy the world and we also hear that the rainbow appears whenever there is no righteous person to protect the world when Rabbi Lazar talks about the green red and white colors in the rainbow that correspond to the three patriarchs Rabbi Abba disagrees with his assignment of each color he ends by talking about the letter Yud in Pinch's name and mentions that Nadab and Abba were reincarnated. In Pinches 34, Pinches the son of Eliezer, the son of Aaron, the priest has turned my wrath away from the children of Israel. The Midbar 2511, Rabbi Yehuda began, Recall now who that was innocent ever perished, or where were the upright cut off? Yo 47, we learned there that whoever sees the rainbow in all its colors has to say the blessing. Blessed is he who remembers the covenant, since this is the sign of a holy covenant that the Holy One blessed be he placed on earth that the waters of it. Flood will not cover it again. This is because when the numbers of wicked people increase in the world, the Holy One blessed be he wants to destroy them, but then he recalls for them that oath that he swore to the land, for it is twice written, Not I will not again curse, neither will I again smite anymore. Beersheet 821 and twice not constitutes an oath as it is said, as I have sworn that the waters of Noah should no more go over the earth. Yeshayah 549, 35, Rabbi Yossi said a rainbow comes. To protect the world it is like a queen wearing royal apparel who appears before the king every time he is about to hit his son because he has sinned against him the king sees her and his anger with his son leaves him and he rejoices with her as it is written and I will look upon it that I may remember the everlasting covenant Beersheet 916 and this is why a rainbow appears in the world only in the royal apparel of Malchut these garments of Malchut are white red and green and they suggest it. Three columns as will be explained when there is a righteous person in the world he upholds the covenant and thus protects the world but if there is no righteous person then there is a rainbow to indicate that the world is about to perish but survives because of it. 35 B Rabbi Lazar said this rainbow namely Malchut has never worn anything except the apparel of the patriarchs namely Chesed Bira and Tiferet of Zeir and namely green red and white the raiment of Abraham is green and it was so colored when Ishmael issued from him red is Isaac who acquired this color when he saw issued from him this red stretches down to the planet Mars, Mayadim from red, Hebedim which he saw is holding onto white is the fine garment of Jacob whose good countenance never changed for his bed was perfect and there was no blemish in him. 35 See Rabbi Abba said that is good but the holy luminary namely Rabbi Shimon said white is Abraham who was purified whitened in the white hot heat of it. Fire by Nimrod who cast him into you are fire of the Chaldees red is obviously Isaac and green is Jacob who is between the other two colors for green includes white and red which also represent the color of the sun and about Jacob it is written Jacob shall not now be ashamed neither shall his face now wax pale Yeshayah 2922 because the whole of the bed was perfect and the interpretation of this is Jacob shall not now be ashamed because he shall not be seen in red like Isaac who fathered Esau. Neither shall his face now grow pale. This means that he shall not be seen in white like Abraham who fathered Ishmael. Instead, he took the colors white and red and enveloped them to adorn himself in his ancestors. He incorporated within himself the two patriarchs Abraham and Isaac who are white and red. And this is why his color is green, which includes white and red. And the rainbow, namely Malchut, puts on these garments of white, red, and green when it appears before the king's Zeir and 35d. Come and see the secret of the holy covenant is the letter Yud that adorns itself with a supreme heavenly impression, namely the diadem of Yezid of Zeir and And this is recorded forever in the everlasting covenant. And because Pinches was zealous for the covenant, that letter Yud was inserted into the spelling of his name. The Yud in the spelling of Pinches is a small one, which is the secret of Malchut, the secret of diadem of Yezid. For Pinches here is spelled with Yud, which is definitely the Covenant which emanated from the upper holy yud because Malchut emanated from the Yud of the Yud Hey Bab Hey in the secret of the father establishing his daughter and this is why Pinchas has a perfect existence before the holy king and shall never perish from the world and because of this he was without guilt at peer for he never lost himself from the world's holiness or where were the upright cut off Eo 47 this refers to Nadab and Abihu who did not totally perish from the world because their souls incarnated in Pinchas who corrected them Moses tells the rabbis that Elijah is Pinchas so they must come up with some new interpretations Rabbi Yehuda's opinion is that the rainbow does not shine with its proper colors but the colors hint at the merits of the priests and love its and
Rainbow in shining colors must recite the blessing. Blessed be he who remembers the covenant in exile. The rainbow does not shine in its proper colors because in exile Malchut does not receive properly as fitting the unification of the three columns which are represented by the secret of the rainbow's three colors. Furthermore, sometimes it hardly shines and at other times it doesn't shine at all. The rainbow's colors hint at the merits of the priests love its and Yisrael when they are in there. Beauty since the rainbow is radiant in its three colors the secret of the three columns 38 rise up now rabbi you see of galilee and say for you said beautiful things in the previous discussion that the rainbow only comes to protect the world it is like the king who whenever his son sins and he sees the queen it takes away his anger with his son as it is written and i will look upon it that i may remember the everlasting covenant therefore the rainbow only appears in order to protect it world for it is part of the secret of Malchut, as explained above it appears only in precious royal apparel the secret of the three colors but when there is a righteous person in the world he is representing the upholding of the covenant this means he establishes the union between zeir and, and Malchut. therefore there is no need to arouse Malchut by the secret of the rainbow 39 he questions but how can the queen put on royal apparel the secret of the three columns in exile for in exile the Holy One blessed be he draws away from the queen the answer is no in exile she does not wear royal apparel but is dressed in gloomy darkness namely in blackness and says do not gaze upon me because I am black sure hashirim 16 on the contrary the rainbow that is viewed as appearing in the exile is none other than the angel Metatron who is called Shade and he is the eldest servant of Zeir and of his house that ruled over all that he had Beershi 242 while his sons namely those who attained Ruash from the aspect of Metatron are called the servants of the Holy One blessed be he the queen sons namely those who attained Nefesh from Malchut of Atzalut are called sons this is the reason why we pray whether as sons or as servants 40 when the temple was destroyed so we are told servants covered their heads in shame and men of action were diminished and we can this term men of action is definitely derived from the name of Malchut about whom it is said many Daughters have done valiantly but you have excelled them all. Mishlei 3129 that is excelled regarding action for Malchut is called action. However if there is a righteous person whose merits and actions are such as to enlighten Malchut and to strip the rhyme of blackness from her literally and not secretly and adorn her with the garments of the shining colors of secrets of the Torah what is written about him and I will look upon it that I may remember the everlasting covenant and I will look upon it. This refers to the shining secrets to the Torah for light is called a secret namely the numerical value of or and light is the same as that of Rez and secret thus light signifies all the mysteries of the Torah as it is said for the commandment is a lamp and the Torah is light. Mishlei 623 and by these mystical secrets it was and I will look upon it. 41 when he looks at the rainbow namely Malchut his anger at his son leaves him and the king's wrath was pacified Esther. 710 And the king says to her with the amid of prayer before him, What is your petition? And it shall be granted you. And what is your request? Esther 56 Then she asks for her redemption and that of her sons as it is said, Let my life be given me at my petition and my people at my request. Esther 73 But a rainbow that appears in the world at a time of exile is of a servant namely Metatron, that is to say, the light of the heavenly mating is clothed in Metatron, and he is bearer of the three colors of the rainbow, which are the three columns. And sometimes she comes out completely when her sons act correctly, while at other times she does not come out completely when her sons do not act correctly. 42 The beginning is missing, and those who make their acts agreeable to the king and are zealous for his name, sanctifying it in public as they sanctify it in heaven amongst the angels who are appointed over the other nations, each chieftain being known by the name of the nation Israel, however, is. Known above by the name Yadhevape, which is alive to all titles 43, and every name and appellation testifies about him about the Holy One. Blessed be he, the name El testifies that he can overcome every other El as it is said. But as for me, I would seek to El. Yo 58 El is the master of every El. Elohim testifies that he is the Elohim of the Elohim. Adon I testifies that he is the master Hebadon over masters, and so it is with each name, and each angel has a proper name, and each group of angels is known to be recognized by the name of its king Israel, however, is known to him by the Yadhevape 44. And the secret of the matter is that just as one man can have a number of horses, so it is that all of Israel are the sons of Adam. The secret of the numerical value of Yudhevape, fully spelled with Aleph, which amounts to the numerical value of Adam for the souls of Israel, are the progeny of Zeir and Ben and Malchut, and every son must be like a horse and beast of Burden for his father and be subject to him. The secret is expressed thus Hashem, you preserve man and beast. Tehillim 367 for the people of Israel are the children of Adam, which is why you behave of the numerical value of 45 and they make themselves as a beast under him. Section 10 Levi right marriage and reincarnation. We learn why Levi right marriage is permitted, even though it is normally forbidden for a man to marry his brother's wife. We are told that the flow of it letter Bob causes the letter yet to turn, and from here the explanation uses the concept of flow to show how the soul of man returns to God. If it returns in perfection, it runs back into the great sea, but if not, it reincarnates. And if a man has no children, his soul is not perfect. When a man has committed evil during three incarnations, he will not be given a fourth chance, but is sent to Gehenna for judgment. A parallel is drawn between the three colors of the rainbow, the three incarnations, and it. Three Sfirot associated with them someone who becomes righteous through the experience of many incarnations will not then come back to this world again for the soul of the man who died childless his widow becomes a home and his brother who fathers children by her becomes a redeemer we learn that Moses has reincarnated in a number of generations to save the souls of Israel and that God ascribed the merit of all these people to Moses Moses had been destined to receive the Torah in the generation of the flood but this did not happen due to the sins of the people Rabbi Shimon stands up and concludes the section by giving an example of a poor rabbi who is being punished now for his sins in an earlier incarnation 45 and for this reason it is a commandment of the Holy One blessed be he that a man should marry his deceased brother's widow to have a son for his brother that he be not lost to that world and this is like the secret of the mixed kinds in the fringes have for they have Said what I have forbidden to you in one place I have permitted in another I have forbidden mixed kinds in general but permitted mixed kinds in the fringes I have forbidden you to marry your brother's wife but have permitted Levi right marriage similarly one may graft apples or dates each on its own species but it is forbidden to graft one species onto another and on this it is said for man is a tree of the field Devarim 2019 for man is also forbidden to mate with one who is not of his species. Namely incest but for Levi right marriage one may mix two that do not go together so that the soul of the deceased shall not be lost that his name be not wiped out in Israel Devarim 256 46 and this is the secret of reincarnation the will does not move without the flow of water through the conduit to turn it so also the conduit is the secret of the letter Bob by which the will is turned and the secret of the matter is that just as the will will have no motion without the water conduit. So also the will which is the letter yet will have no motion without the water conduit which is the letter of the deceased brother's widow is hey and we thus have the letters of Bina ben lit the son of Yafar the son who is Zeir and issues from the union of Yudhi hey that are Chakma and Bina and hence he is implied in his mother's name Banya namely the letters of Bina with the letter yet that is Chakma he created the next world which is an extended world namely the letter of which is Zeir and 47 for this reason anyone who has no son which is corresponding to Zeir and which is the secret of Bob which is the next world will not be in the next world for the sea which is Bina the secret of the next world corresponds to it to the Bob for the Bob emerges from between the Yudhi hey where the Yudhi is the secret of Chakma and the hey of Bina which is called sea therefore the Bob is likewise called the next world like it and from the sea which is Bina a number of Rivers separate these being the Sfirot of the Bob which is Zeir and, and they circumscribe the world which is Malchut until they return to the sea which is Bina from which the rivers which are Zeir and issued. This is why scripture said all the rivers run into the sea at the sea is not full to the place where the rivers flow thither they return. Kahilat 17 that is to say until they return to it as they came out namely in the same condition as the rivers flow out of Bina so do they return. To Bina 48 so also
Return perfect as it was when it was given the verse says about it thither they return Kahilat 17 and to all the other souls which are like it namely not perfect in other words they return to this world in an incarnation and so also if he is incomplete in not having a son or if he has no daughter who is alluded to in this world being Malchud so that he can be perfected by her in this world Malchud which was created with hay as it is written these are the generations of the heaven and the earth when they were created had behaviram Ram Bereshit 114 meaning behavior he created them with hay so a man has to incarnate a second time because his soul is not perfect and to him is the verse applied thither they 50 yet hay of yud hay form the secret of chesed be retired this is the secret of the verse lo el does all these things twice or three times with a manio 3329 that is to say that the souls transmigrate in the secret of the letters yud hay and vav about which scripture says Loel does all these things regarding the wicked it is said and so I saw the wicked buried and come Kahilat 810 that is despite being transmigrated they remained wicked causing these heavily are your Elohim Yisrael Shema 324 they do harm to Elih namely the secret of the Yud Hayvav and about them it is said for three transgressions of Yisrael I will turn away his punishment but for the fourth I will not turn away his punishment Amos 26 this means that after they have corrupted themselves three times in their incarnations and they have not merited to be corrected by Yud Hayvav about which it is said in the place where the tree falls there have Yud Hayvav shall it like Kahilat 113 that is to say the repair of the tree which is man is affected by Yud Hayvav and but for the fourth I will not turn away his punishment Amos 26 this refers to the last hey the fourth letter of the Yud Hayvav hey and means he will not send a soul back. For a fourth reincarnation corresponding to the final letter, but it will be judged in Gehenom by destruction, anger, and wrath. 51 And the garments of these three letters, Yud Hayvav, are known from the rainbow, namely white, red, and green. A person in his first time of reincarnation is white, corresponding to the letter Yud of the Yud Hayvav, which is Jesus. In the second, he is red, corresponding to the Hay of the Yud Hayvav, which is Gvir. And in the third, he is green, corresponding to the Vav of the Yud Hayvav, which is Tiferet. Call Jacob the central column, incorporating the other two Jesus and Gvir. And since the letters Yud and Hay, which are Jesus and Gvir, are included in Jacob, and the tree takes root, grows, and gives good fruits, therefore it is said, Jacob shall not now be ashamed, neither shall his face now wax pale. Yeshayah 2922, so that his chariot should not journey with the evil inclination, which is the serpent, nor with any other type of evil beast. And for this reason it is written about him and he strove with an angel and prevailed Hashia 125 and because man is called a tree he is in a secret similar to a tree planted in a place where it does not bear fruit what can one do about it one removes it and replants it elsewhere this is why the scholars of the Mishnah taught that a man is not considered barren until he be replanted in the land of Israel and tries to make a woman conceive there 52 so also a righteous man who wanders from place to place from house to house is like a person who goes through many incarnations that is what is meant by but showing mercy to thousands of generations of those that love me Shema 206 until he achieves perfection in the world to come but a wicked person is not allowed more than three incarnations if he repents however his wandering is considered a reincarnation and he achieves the perfection of a righteous man for we have learned that exile atones for transgression this is why the sages of the Mishnah taught the righteous do not return to their dust, namely are not transmigrated. 53 But concerning the wicked scripture says, And he shall take other mortar and shall plaster the house. Vayikra 1442 Namely that he shall take another body coming from the dust in the reincarnation and amend his soul and man shall return to dust. Eo 3415 means that he will return in reincarnation and also the dust returns to the earth as it was. Kahila 127 intimates that he will return in a reincarnation. This is because the wicked person is afflicted and has but a bad woman. That is the evil inclination about which we have learned that a bad woman is like leprosy to her husband for she is the body of the wicked. What remedy does the wicked person have let him divorce her and be healed? That is he should get rid of his present body, transmigrate into another body and so be healed for she the wicked woman that is the body was the cause of so he drove out the man. Bear sheet 324 The man refers to the soul, the particle ET refers to the body which is the spouse of man who is the soul as it says as a bird who wanders from her nest so is man who wanders from his place. Mishlei 278 In other words because the man caused the bird which is the soul to wander from its nest for it was driven out from its heavenly place because of his sin so also does a man wander from his place in order that he should return in a reincarnation 54 and that is why. Even the sparrow has found a home. Tehillim 844 Meaning the deceased brother's wife this means that the sparrow the dead childless man's soul has found a home as it was incarnated in the body of the widow who became a home to it and the swallow a nest for herself refers to the redeemer who marries the deceased brother's widow and finds himself a nest in her where she may lay her young refers to a son and a daughter they beget happy is he who makes a nest that is who marries the widow of his. Childless deceased brother and shall redeem that which his brother sold. Vayikra 2525 for the widow of his deceased brother is considered as though sold to him for she is not his but his brother's and she is therefore called that which his brother sold. 55 and this was why Moses said and Hashem was angry had Vayitabra with me for your sakes. Devarim 326 and this is the secret of the conception Hebiver for Malchut conceived by the soul of Moses the faithful shepherd saved 60. Thousand souls in Israel a number of times for he transmigrated in a number of generations and saved them for this reason the Holy One blessed be he ascribed to Moses the merit of all of them and this is why the sages taught one woman in Egypt brought forth in one womb 600,000 at one birth this is Moses who was considered as equal to 600,000 souls of Israel and although the rabbis expounded this verse with regard to other matters there is no difficulty because there are 70 aspects to the Torah 56 this is the way in which the men of mysteries offer a pearl to their pupils and if the pupils do not understand the hint it is explained to them as a jest for example a man says that a single egg overthrew 60 villages because the egg was dropped by a bird in the air and struck onto the villages the jester said that this is not what he said but that a man wrote on a piece of paper 60 villages and the egg dropped by the bird erased it. Word 60 villages and heaven forbid that the sages of the Torah should say jocular and useless things of the Torah 57 but they taught the chicks are the students of the Mishnah the eggs are the Bible scholars that is to say the chicks are Zeir and Ben onto which these students of the Mishnah hold whereas the eggs are Malchut onto which the scripture scholars hold he fell headnifal from the same young bird headnifal Zeir and Ben is called fallen because the downfall occurs from him just as an egg drops from a bird for from him falls the egg which is like an itrog as it is the same size as an egg which is to say that both an egg and an itrog are Malchut that is why an itrog is egg size and it is said about it on that day I will raise up the tabernacle of David that is fallen Amos 911 for it has fallen into exile and has to be raised up again and with it into exile fell 60 queens Shirhasherim 68 Chesed Vira and Tiferet Net Sachot and Yezid each one of which Includes ten and they are called binding since they are bound to it. It has the same sense as in how are the portions of the SH tied together, namely joined together without interruption. And here also its meaning is that its six ends are tied together in IT and they correspond to the sixty tractates for the oral law, which is Malchut is divided into sixty tractates which correspond to the sixty queens referred to above and young women without number of it. These are the virgins her companions that follow her. Tehillim 4515, namely the palaces that are in Briah, which are Halashad legal rulings that have no reckoning being in Briah 58, and that young bird is the son of Yahweh, namely Zeir Anpin, which is within the fifty gates of Bana, namely Yahweh, where ten is multiplied by five, amounting to fifty. The Bob, which is Zeir Anpin, is called because it fell after that about whom it is said, How are you fallen from heaven, O bright star, son of the morning, Yeshayah 1412? This is Malchut which is so called because of its two states for in one state it is black and in the other it is brightly lighted and Zeir and followed after her when she was in exile in order to raise her up and that is why he is called fallen and it is not written that he fell or falls that is to say it is not he that falls but Malch
Letter of the Yud Hey Vav Hey the Yud and the Vav of the Yud Hey Vav Hey descended in order to raise up the two letters Hey as is written let the heavens rejoice and let the earth be glad Tehillim 9611 the initial letters of the four Hebrew words forming this verse are Yud Hey Vav and Hey and so the Yud and the Vav are joined with the two letters Hey 59 come and see the sun is seen by day and hidden by night when it shines through 600,000 stars the faithful shepherd is Similar after his departure from the world he returns in an incarnation and shines through 600,000 souls in Israel but only if the generation is worthy this is the secret of reincarnation concerning which Kahilat said one generation passes away and another generation comes but the earth abides forever Kahilat 14 one generation passes away and another generation comes we have learned that a generation is at least 600,000 but the earth abides forever this is the congregation of Israel which is Malchut concerning which it is written and the earth is my footstool Yishaya 661 and your seed shall be as the dust of the earth Bereshit 2814 60 and the sages have taught us yet another secret one generation passes away and another generation comes means that the generation that passes away is the same generation that comes a cripple goes and a cripple comes a blind man goes and a blind man comes and the sages further taught that Moses was destined to receive the Torah in the generation of the flood but did not receive it then because of the wicked people as it is written for that he also had Bishagam his flesh bear sheet 63 the numerical value of the word Bishagam is the same as that of Moses why is he called Bishagam in order to keep the matter secret and Kahilat even removed the bet from Bishagam to conceal it even more when he said I said that this also have Shagam is vanity Kahilat 814 Shagam you refers to Moses and Kahilat removed the bet in order to conceal the matter 61 and they taught about Jethro why is his name called Kanite because the Kanite had severed himself from Cain shoved him 411 the holy luminary rabbi Shimon arose and said therefore it is written about Cain I have acquired had Kanatai a man child from Hashem bear sheet 41 for she saw Jethro through the holy spirit and that his sons would in the future sit in the chamber of hewn stones where the Sanhedrin used to meet 62 and so it was with Rabbi Pedat who was in distress and who had no more than a measure of carobs from one Shabbat Eve to the next like Rabbi Janina. He asks why is this since a heavenly voice had proclaimed the whole world is fed only because of Janina my son 63. The answer I asked that he caused this in his first reincarnation when he destroyed Hadkarov the measure Hadkav Kof Bet from Yud which makes Yud Kof Bet hence he was left with only a measure of carobs Hadkarov. He explains his words why Yud. Bet Kof are the initial letters of the words Yushat and unification Barachat and blessing and Kedushat and holiness. The letter Yud stands for unification which is the secret of the name Yahyabana from which the emanation comes to the letter Bet standing for blessing which is the secret of the Yud Hey which is Zeir and which is holy from which Kof is sanctified which is his sanctification namely the name Adonai which is Malchut and Rabbi Pedat caused in his first reincarnation. His measure cough bet to be destroyed which are holiness and blessing without the unity shining upon them thus he had only a measure of carob so too was it with Job who was the son of a Levi right widow and he was punished because of what had already happened to him in the first reincarnation section 11 before the giving of the Torah they depended on constellations we are told that before the Torah was given even children life and sustenance were dependent on destiny. But afterward God removed Israel from the influence of the stars and constellations if a person does not keep the commandments however the stars and constellations will still hold sway over him finally we hear again that people grow old and die and then return again as children 64 and those who do not know the secret say children life and sustenance is not a matter of one's merit rather depends on destiny had Mazel take the case of Abram who saw that he was not destined to have a son and the Holy One blessed be he took him outside as it is said and he brought him outside and said look Bereshit 155 and it has been taught that he said to him leave your constellations namely do not consult the stars and he took him up above the stars and said to him look now towards heaven and count the stars Bereshit 155 so much for the words of the rabbis but they have to be interpreted mystically 65 come and see all creatures in the world before the Torah was given to Israel were dependent on destiny even children life and sustenance but after the Torah was given to Israel he removed Israel from the influences of the stars and constellations as we have learned from Abraham since his children were destined to receive hay from Abraham that is the five books of the Torah namely Malchut as it is said these are the generations of heaven and earth when they were created had Behibaram Bereshit 24 Behibaram Behibaram meaning he created them with a hay he said to Abraham because of that hay that was added to your name the heavens below you and all the stars and constellations that shine in hay will be subservient to your will because he raised him above them moreover it is said lo have he here is grain for you and you shall sow the land Bereshit 4723 with hay for in Isaac shall your seed be called Bereshit 2112 who is the secret of the left column from which Malchut the secret of hay is drawn and the sowing is thus in Malchut 66 for this reason everyone who engages in the Torah is released from the influence of stars and constellations by learning Torah here is meant with the intention of keeping its commandments if it is not his intention to keep its commandments then he is as one who does not engage in Torah and the stars and constellations hold sway over him this is even more true with respect to the common people who are likened to animals about which it has been taught cursed be he who lies with any manner of beast. Devarim 2721 The hold of the stars and constellations over them is certainly not an old 67 as for man his days are as grass as a flower of the field so he flourishes Tehillim 10315 and about man it is said I was young and am now old Tehillim 3725 and later it is said he returns to the days of his youth Eo 3325 it is like a tree from which the old branches were cut off but they grew again from its roots as at the beginning for people die when old and return to this world as children. And this is the secret of the Holy One blessed be he renewing the creation every day continually for a thousand die each day and a thousand are renewed each day reincarnation into the world section 12 one makes glad the heart of man cypress trees are her house the one is said to be the Torah but we are told that the secrets of the Torah should be disclosed only to those who fear God the red and white colors of the one are said here to be judgment and Mercy it is significant that certain commandments and blessings are performed with wine the heart of man means two hearts that of Buddha and that of Malchut and we read the numerology of the words letters and vowels associated with this lesson next Rabbi Lazar asks his father how Nadab and Abihu could have reincarnated into Pinchas when he was already alive at the time of their deaths Rabbi Shimon replies that both Nadab and Abihu died childless so they were not fit for the priesthood when Pinchas saw the tribe of Shimon coming after him his soul fled out of him in terror and the unamended souls of Nadab and Abihu joined with his soul and all returned to his body after this he deserved the priesthood Rabbi Shimon explains God's command to hang the chiefs up against the sun to demonstrate that everyone must make amends in his soul on the same level at which he sinned Rabbi Shimon talks for a long time about the sustenance that is provided for the righteous 68 one makes glad. The heart of man Tehillim 10,415 This is the one of the Torah for the numerical value of the letters of the word Yun and wine is the same as the letters of Sod and secret just as wine has to be kept sealed so that it should not be used in a libation for idol worship so also must the secret of the Torah be closed up and sealed and none of its secrets be disclosed other than to those who fear him and it is not for nothing that a number of commandments are performed with wine and blessings. To the Holy One blessed be here said wine comes into the letter bet colors white and red which are judgment and mercy and this is why we have the added bet and beaten with wine this bet hints at judgment and mercy it is like the rose which has in it both white and red, white from the right side which is Jesus and red from the left side which is Bura 69 he asks why does it say the heart had love of a man it should have said left and heart he answers there is one heart had left. Hidden in another heart had left namely two hearts there are the first lame bet equals 32 Elohim in the works of creation and this left is the secret of Buddha the second left lamed bet I as composed of the bet of Bereshit in the beginning and the lame dove in the eyes of Hebel in Yisrael Devarim 3412 and these two letters of bet at the beginning of the Torah and the lamed with which it ends come together to form the word left namely the heart of Malchut this is why it is written Levav for the
Discussed above 70 he asks what is the meaning of oil to brighten his face Tehillim 10,415 and answers these are the 12 faces 4 of the lion 4 of the ox and 4 of the eagle there is Michael the lion who is the secret of Chisa his 4 faces are the 4 letters Yud Hei where the Yud and the Vav have the vowel Sigali the 4 faces of the ox which is Gabriel namely Bure are 4 letters Yud Hei Vav Hei and Vav being pointed with the Tache the 4 faces of the eagle which is Nuriel are the 4 letters Yud Hei when the Yud is pointed with Chirik and the Vav with SHBA semi-vowel they are pointed under the 3 Svarot of Zeir and Penchisa Fear Truth which are Chisa Bure and Tiferet these are the steps of the 3 patriarchs Abraham Isaac and Jacob the sages have taught the patriarchs are the chariot the lights of the 12 countenances add up to Yud Bet which are Malachlid Reigns Malachlid Reign Yim Lachlid Will Rain for the total numerical value of these three names is Yud Bekoff, which is 11271. Rabbi Shimon was sitting and engaging in the study of this portion when his son Rabbi Lazar came to him and asked, How did it come about that Nadab and Abihu were able to transmigrate into Pinches? Had Pinches not been in the world when they died and had only come into the world later and they were incarnated in him and he had perfected their souls, it would have been fine, but Pinches was in the world at the time when Nadab and Abihu died and his soul already existed in him, so how could they have transmigrated into him? 72 He replied, My son, there is a divine secret here. When Nadab and Abihu left the world, they did not take shelter under the wings of the Holy Rock, which is Malchut. The reason for this is found in the verse, and Nadab and Abihu had no children. Bibit bar 34 That is, they decreased the king's image, for they did not perform the precept of being fruitful and multiplying, producing. Sons in the image of Elohim for this reason they were not fitted to serve in the high priesthood. 73 When Pinchas was zealous for the holy covenant and went in amongst the crowds and held up the adulterers on spear point in the sight of all Israel he saw the tribe of Shimon coming at him in large numbers and Pinchas' soul fled out of him due to fear and the two souls that were naked namely the unamended souls of Nadab and Abihu approached the soul of Pinchas and were joined together with it and it then returned to him his soul a collective spirit inclusive with the other two spirits and supported him and he earned the right to priesthood in their place of Nadab and Abihu for which he had not previously been fit. 74 And about this it is written recall now who that was innocent ever perished. Eo 47 This was said about Pinchas who did not perish at that moment and did not lose his spirit when it fled from him the same verse continues or where were the upright cut off? This refers to the sons of Aaron, Nadab, and Abihu who returned to the world by transmigrating into Pinches and were remedied that which they had lost in their lifetime, namely the emendation of the covenant. This is why the word son is used twice regarding Pinches. Pinches, the son of Elazar, the son of Aaron, Bimidbar 2511, teaching us about the two souls that had transmigrated into him, namely the sons of Aaron. Thus the son of Elazar refers to Pinches and the son of Aaron refers to Nadab and Abihu. 75 What does scripture say just before this chapter? And Hashem said to Moses, Take all the chiefs of the people and hang them up before Hashem against the sun. Bimidbar 254 He asks what about when they are killed at night or on a cloudy day. Scripture warns that they must be killed against the sun. What is the meaning of against the sun? Said Rabbi Yehuda, against the sun means that just as their sin was in public, so must their death be in public. 76 Rabbi Shimon said this was not the Reason why it said against the sun, but from this we learn that at whatever level a man sins before the Holy One, blessed be he, he must make amends in his soul at that same level they sinned in the Holy Covenant, which is called sun, and this is why their correction is against the sun, the secret of the covenant, and not elsewhere. It follows that a man requires to remedy the misdeeds he has committed only in the place where he sinned, and that if he attempts to remedy them elsewhere, but not where he sinned, he will never attain the proper emendation. 77 Rabbi Shia began the trees of Hashem have their fill the cedars of Lebanon, which he has planted. Tehillim 10,416, and before it one makes glad the heart of man will to brighten his face. Tehillim 10,415, he asks what is the connection between these two matters, and answers we have learned as follows. He causes the grass to spring up for the cattle. Tehillim 10,414, and did David really come with the Holy Spirit to speak the praises of cattle? That has grass he answers no but he causes the grass to spring up refers to the 60,000 myriads of angels messengers who were created on the second day of creation all of them are a burning fire it is they who are meant by grass why are they grass it is because they grow in the world as does grass one day it is cut short but then it returns and grows as previously 78 and this is why the verse says he causes the grass to spring up for the cattle the secret is that malchut in the aspect of yud hey fully spelled with the letter hey has the same numerical value 52 as the word behemoth and cattle as it is written a righteous man as it regards the life of his beast malchut michele 1210 and we have learned that a thousand mountains rise up for malchut each day and each one of the mountains is 60 myriads of angels who are called grass as mentioned above and malchut devours them 79 and plants for the service of lithium and 10,414 these are the Souls of the righteous for that man namely Zeir and Pen who is riding on and controlling the beast namely Malchut devours them and takes them into himself that is to say the souls of the righteous rise up and are incorporated into Zeir and Pen in the secret of the water of Mayan Mukban female waters in order to unite Zeir and Pen and Malchut and it is to their credit that the whole world is fed from that man who is Zeir and Pen for they cause his mating with Malchut and the food is bestowed upon Malchut and Malchut distributes it to the whole world as is written and upon the likeness of the throne was a likeness as the appearance of a man above upon it Yeshua 126 that is why it says for the service of the man with the definite article that is that specific man namely Zeir and Pen and this is in order to bring forth food out of the earth Tehillim 10414 namely to bring forth provisions for the world from the holy earth which is Malchut 80 and wine is old wine drawn from Above, namely the illumination of Chakma, which is drawn from Bina, makes glad the heart of man. Enosh and Ashir refers to the secret of that youth who attained old age and later returns to be a youth. As formerly, this is Metatron, prince of the world, who says, I have been young and now I am old. Tehillim 3725, which is in the secret of Ran and returned. Yashiskal 114, when he ran to receive Chakma, he is old, and when he is in the secret of return, he is young. Scripture therefore says, About him, as for man, his days are like grass. Tehillim 10315, for he is like grass, which is cut and grows again when he returns to youth. His first three upper spirot are cut, but later he again reaches old age, namely grows again, and so on and so forth. 81 to brighten his face. Tehillim 10415, these are the faces that are called large countenances and small countenances. The completed first three of male and female are the large countenances, and the first three of the six ends of male and Female are the small countenances oil namely from the drawing down of the next world namely of Bina from whom the oil derives as well as greatness of the divine holy one and bread which sustains the heart of Manabit that is the bread upon which the skies which is the secret of Netzach and Hod bestow and build the manna for the food of the righteous in general which is the secret of Yezid and Malchut who are called righteous and righteousness and who accept the main movement that Netzach and Hod grind for them from there it is drawn out to a number of hosts who are called the heart of man and everything comes from a divine emanation from Bina 82 the trees of Hashem have their fill of it 16 these are the eternal divine trees namely Zeir and Pen and Malchut the cedars of Lebanon which he has planted there Zeir and Pen and Malchut who are uprooted from their place the holy one blessed be he who is the emanating source planted them in place of Bina what is it? Connection between the trees of Hashem and the cedars of Lebanon. The trees of Hashem refer to the tree of life, which is Zeir and Pen, and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, which is Malchut. The cedars of Lebanon are the fifty gates of Bina, which he planted in male and female, which are called five hundred years, for they are the secret of Bina. Male and female rise up in and coaches at Bure Tiferet Netzach and Hot. In terms of Zeir and Pen, whose Firat are intense, they are fifty, while in terms of Bina, whose Firat are counted in hundreds, they are five hundred eighty three, which he has planted where the birds make their nests. Tehillim 
Mortalim 10316 he replied it is certainly as follows as for man his days are as grass is as explained by Rabbi Shia like a flower of the field, this is the known field namely Malchut so he blooms means that he is renewed and returns as formerly 85 for the wind spirit passes over it and it is not this is the heavenly concealed and holy spirit which is hidden from all namely the spirit of Bino which engulfs Metatron and then is not and this is the secret of Enoch about whom. Scripture says and he was not for Elohim took him Bereshit 524 the reference here is to the higher Elohim namely Bina who is an upper spirit hidden and concealed and its place knows it no more this is the small spirit of Metatron that is engulfed by the upper spirit of Bina and what is written further on but the steadfast love had Chesed of Hashem is from everlasting to everlasting Tehillim 10317 that means that the high priest who is Chesed introduces him into the Holy of Holies and takes him and has him born as before your youth is renewed like the eagles Tehillim 1035 and he becomes a youth again Moses tells Rabbi Shimon that this explanation is incomplete because it doesn't say what passes over it means Rabbi Shimon says this refers to anger and that the verse is to be applied to one who dies childless such a person must achieve a change of place a change of name and a change of action because his countenance is so changed the evil angel whose name is anger will Pass him over because he will not be recognizable. Rabbi Shimon advises anyone who lives in a city where he is unable to keep the commandments and where he is not studying the Torah successfully to move to a place where he can replant himself among good people. Sages of the Torah. Lastly, we are reminded that the most important thing is not talking about the Torah but performing its precepts. Rai Mahin of the Faithful Shepherd 86 said the Faithful Shepherd Holy Luminary the Commentary. Above of Rabbi Abba, Rabbi Shia and Rabbi Yusi on the verse as for man his days are as grass is very nice but what about the wind passes over it and it is not here matters have to be developed what is the meaning of passes have he over it and replies it refers to anger have ever wrath and indignation Tehillim 7849 where it is one of these evil angels the one called anger and this is the meaning of the verse the wind passes over it which should therefore be rendered the spirit of Anger is on him and the verse is to be applied to one who dies childless who transmigrates 87 in order that the monitors of sin should not recognize him who died childless it is necessary to perform for him a change of place a change of name and a change of action this is how it was with Abraham as scripture tells us get you out of your country and from your kindred Bereshit 121 is the change of place neither shall your name anymore be called Abram but your name shall be Abraham. Ibn 175 is the change of name and there is also the change of action for he changed from doing bad deeds as he had at first to doing good deeds a similar thing happens to the spirit of the man who dies childless for likewise the holy one blessed be he does to the man in banishing him from that world because he died childless and brings him to this world in a reincarnation into the son that is born out of his wife's Levi right marriage and this has already been discussed above 88 you change his countenance and sent him away of 1420 because he changes his countenance when he banishes him from the heavenly world it is said the wind passes have ever over it which alludes to one of the evil angels whose name is anger have ever as mentioned above and when he sees that he has altered when he meets him and the other demons of destruction ask about him is this your sinner he answers them and says he is not for he does not recognize him and this is the secret of the verse you change his countenance 89 now he explains what is the secret of the verse and sent him away when he is banished from his place and implanted elsewhere namely after he has already entered a body in this world it is said about him and its place knows it no more for and he shall take other mortar and shall plaster the house of 1442 namely he took another body of different dust for body is termed house and this is the secret of and he shall break down the house of stones of it and its timber Vayikra 1445 namely those bones sinews and flesh that he had previously returned to the dust what is written about it and dust shall be the serpent's food Yeshayah 6525 for the dust that is made up of the deceased body is of the aspect of the serpent since it was afflicted by it and therefore later and he shall take other mortar and shall plaster the house namely build for himself bones and sinews and be renewed as an old house that is made new which certainly gets renovated 91 about and its place knows it no more this I said about his spirit for his small spirit is engulfed in the supernal spirit this is a parable to a tree that is not producing fruit they take his branches and graft onto a better quality tree that produces fruits combining both into each other now both produce fruits about this moment it is said and its place knows it no more since even the place of the defective spirit is not recognizable 91 and so it is with a man who lives in a city where bad people dwell and he is unable to keep the commandments of the Torah and is not successful with the Torah he should change his place of residence and move from there and settle somewhere with good people sages of the Torah who keep the precepts this is because the Torah is called a tree as it is written she is a tree of life to those who lay hold on her Mishlei 318 man too is a tree as it is written for man is a tree of the field Devarim 2019 and the precepts of the Torah are like fruits and what is written about it only the trees which you know that they be not trees for food you shall destroy and cut them down Devarim 2020 that is to say you shall destroy it from this world and cut it down from the next world this is why he has to uproot himself from the place where there are evil people and where he cannot succeed with the Torah and the precepts and implant himself elsewhere among righteous people where he can succeed with the Torah and it Precepts 92 as the childless man is called barren and his wife barren so also is the Torah when unaccompanied by precepts is coney dear barren on this we have learned not the expounding of the Torah is the chief thing but the doing of it the companions came and prostrate themselves in front of him and said we have certainly learned something clearly new here how one spirit can be incorporated in another we were as someone whose vision was blurred and then became clear originally we had only a tradition about these matters but now they have been clearly explained section 14 why is the righteous punished for the iniquity of his generation Rabbi Shimon says that the other side is content to control the righteous because then it can afford to ignore the rest of the world for this assertion we have the evidence of the story of job where the Satan's attention to job enabled God to save the rest of his generation if the righteous one is strong and he bears his afflictions and overcomes the accuser he can save the whole generation, indeed this is how Moses became the faithful shepherd over Israel and why he will control them in the next world Moses asks Rabbi Shimon why one righteous person is affected while another is not and the response is that God does only what is necessary if one will suffice he only afflicts one but if the sins are widespread he will also afflict other righteous men Moses talks about three types of righteous people, all of whom become a chariot for Adam and the patriarchs and who acquire from them the strength to suffer and to protect the whole generation 93 moreover we learned in the first part of the compilation that the other side is more at ease to have control over the righteous than anything else because he can then afford not to consider the rest of the world while they were still discussing this a shade came upon them and asked how do we know that he prefers to have control over the righteous too? control over the whole world we know this from job for the holy one blessed be he saw that generation was deserving of annihilation and when the satan came to denounce the holy one blessed be he then said to him have you considered my servant job that there is none like him on earth he of 18 in order to save through him the whole generation the matter can be likened to a shepherd when a wolf comes to devour his flock and destroy them being wise what does the shepherd do he gives the wolf a lamb that is stronger fatter and larger than the others the leader of the flock and the wolf out of his desire to have control over the lamb forgets about the rest of the flock what does the shepherd do next while the wolf is preoccupied with that lamb he flees with the flock and brings them to safety later he returns to the lamb and saves it from the wolf 94 this is exactly what the holy one blessed be he did with the generation he offered the righteous man for indictment in order to save the generation on his account and if like Jacob the righteous man is strong the verse says of him and there a man wrestled with him Bereshit 3225 this is even more the case when he overcomes the accuser until he says let me go Bereshit 3227 he said oh shade oh shade that is just how it is happy is the portion of that righteous man who is strong in suffering afflictions and how much more so the one who by means of his afflictions manages to overcome his accuser who has spread his control over the whole generation and it is accounted to him as though he had saved them and the holy one blessed be he appoints him as shepherd over them in the place of the accuser this was how the faithful shepherd came to be the shepherd over
Parts of the body blood is left from the left arm also namely other righteous men are also afflicted 96 he said to him if the two of them were not afflicted at the same time that would be fine but what about the case of the two righteous men one of whom suffers from diseases and troubles while the other is treated with kindness why is it that if the disease namely the sins of the generation spread blood is not left from both of them namely both the righteous persons who are the two arms so that healing may be given to all parts of the body namely the whole of the generation and in the case where the illness does not become more serious and does not spread throughout the parts of the body why is more blood left from the right arm than from the left why is one made to suffer and not the other he said to him why don't you give the answer 97 he said to him certainly the body and the two arms stand for the three patriarchs and the head for Adam the right arm is Abraham and it. Left arm is Isaac while the body represents Jacob within the body the liver is on the right the spleen to the left these being the two clip of Esau and Ishmael the heart is Jacob between them the lungs and kidneys represent Abraham and Isaac the lung being water hinting at Jesus for the lung draws in all sorts of potions while the kidneys are fire which cooks the seed that descends from the brain 98 and since Abraham is water namely Jesus if therefore his offspring impairs Jesus he places his offspring in the exile of Edom which is the waste matter of the Bureau from the left and there they receive their punishment because of them being the opposite of its nature this is why the liver and the gall that is in the liver are to the right of Abraham namely to the right of the body his sword namely Malchut of the clip of Esau being the gall had marrow about this it is said but her end is bitter had marrow as wormwood Mishle 54 and if the sins become greater in number among it Children of Abraham, namely among those who extend from the side of Jesus who are placed in the exile of Edom, and the disease spreads over them from the side of the liver, they have to be smitten, and blood has to be left from the right arm, namely from those righteous who come from the side of Jesus, and not from those of the side of Bureau, for the fault is in those of the side of Jesus, and whoever has his money taken is as though his blood was spilled, for he remains poor, and the poor man is considered as dead. 99. But if the sins become greater in number among the children of Isaac, namely those who descend from him, impair the degree of Bureau, which is the secret of Isaac, they are then put into exile among Ishmael, which is the clip of the right, which is the opposite of the nature of the children of Isaac, in order to increase their punishment, the disease spreads from the side of the spleen, which is to the left of the body, and controls the children of Isaac who impaired it. Nature of the left and blood has therefore to be left from the left arm that is to say from those righteous who come from the side of Bura and not from any others this is because the impaired here are those who come not from Abraham the right arm but from Isaac the left arm 100 and if sins become greater in number amongst the children of Jacob namely those who descend from him impair his nature which includes both sides Jesus and Bura who are scattered in exile among the children of Esau and Ishmael namely in the clipot of the right end of the left and the disease spreads over the body which is the aspect of Jacob and blood has to be left from both arms but if all three of them namely those drawn from Jacob from Isaac and from Abraham are diseased together namely all of them have discredited their own roots the disease then rises to the head and blood has to be left from the veins that are in the head and these three types of righteous people those descended from Abraham Isaac and Jacob became a chariot for Adam and the patriarchs and acquire from them strength to suffer torments and protect the generation throughout the four winds of the world 101 woe to that generation that causes the patriarchs and Adam to be struck for this includes also the righteous men amongst them for there is no difference between Adam and the righteous of a generation and the patriarchs and Adam this is because those righteous are their souls drawn from them and their distress. Pain and anguish reach to the patriarchs and Adam it is like the sea when a number of rivers flow out of it and return to it impure and dirty and the sea extracts their impurity and dirt and because of the sea's strength for it is strong it does not suffer from their dirt but throws it out and the rivers remain clear and pure without that dirt 102 it can also be likened to a mother who cleans the dirt from her small children in such a manner the patriarchs cleanse the sins and the dirt. From their children Israel when there are among them people of righteous deeds who are strong enough to suffer torments for the sake of the generation at that time there is no difference between them namely and the patriarchs for they cleanse the sins of the generation like the patriarchs they all came and greeted him the faithful shepherd and said to him Sinai Sinai through whose mouth the holy one blessed be he and his Chechen speak who is able to confront him in any matter happy is our portion that we have merited to revise and refresh new matters in this first part of the compilation through you so that the Shechinah may give light in the exile 103 he said to them rabbis of every generation those who have been or will be during their time and how much more so the holy luminary that is Rabbi Shimon whose wisdom will shine in all the generations that come after him do not give the holy one blessed be he quiet in the Torah until the holy spirit is poured out on us there Appears to be an omission in the text here for none, but you may use Metatron the Great Prince since your name is intimated in the initials of his for the initial letters of the words Metatron the Great Prince are M-E-M Shinhe which spell Moses section 15 the patient's pulse in the exile of Edom the metaphor of Israel as a sick patient is used to show how the children of Israel are faring while in exile with the description of the ten blowings of the shofar we see. How the length of the exile and the coming redemption are indicated 104 and now there is need of a doctor to know by how many degrees the pulse of the patient Israel has increased in the exile of Edom for it is said about him that I am sick with love sure hashering 58 for a number of doctors gathered over him to consider the pulse rate in order to know when his illness would come to an end but not one of them could understand them for no doctor is competent to read the pulse beats of this. Particular patient for there are beats of Tikiya Sh Garam Tiru of Tikiya Tikiya Shabaram Tikiya Tikiya Tiru of Tikiya as the Prophet said about them like as a woman with child whose time of delivery draws near is in pain and cries out in her pants Yeshaya 2617 105 and all the ten chauffeur blows which are Tikiya Sh Garam Tiruah Tikiya Tikiya Sh Garam Tikiya Tikiya Tiruah Tikiya are included in three Tikiya Sh Garam Tiruah for they include only these three different variations in blows Tikiya. Stands for the length of the exile. The Sh Garam teaches about the proximity of the exile and the Tiruah about the coming redemption for the sounds of the Tiruah teach about Duras after Duras with no respite between them and clearly since the other nations make Israel's exile more difficult it is the Duras that they exert that brings the redemption closer and so it is too in our case of the patient's pulse beat as the beats come faster one after the other with no space between them the mans. So leaves him 106 Tikiya Sh Baram Tiru of Tikiya Tikiya Sh Baram Tikiya Tikiya Tiru of Tikiya which are the secret of the exiles beats as above make Kafshin Resh Had Kesher, tie the initials of Tikiya Sh Baram Tiru by which falsehood Had Shekher Shin Kafresh is removed from the world concerning this was the oath Hashem will have war with Amalek Shemot 1716 for the redemption will come by the beats hinted at Tikiya Sh Baram Tiruah Tikiya Tikiya Shabaram Tikiya Tikiya Tiruah Tikiya. And then a simple double, triple, and quadruple song will arise in the world where the letters of the Yud Hey Bob Hey will ascend and join together. First will come Yud, then Yud Hey, then Yud Hey Bob, and then Yud Hey Bob Hey, where Yud is a simple song. Yud Hey double, Yud Hey Bob is triple, and Yud Hey Bob Hey is quadruple, and their numerical value together total 72. At the time of the redemption, this name of 72 will awaken at that time the prayer will be answered, and therefore have Yud Hey Righteous shall see and be glad, the upright exult, and the pious rejoice in song. The word Yud Hey the numerical value of whose letters is 78, namely 72, with the addition of 6, which is the value of the letter Bob. This added Bob refers to the sixth millennium. The second temple was destroyed, Kafi in bed 172 years before the fifth thousand, and following its delay after the fifth millennium, it could be the completion of Resh in bed 272 years to the sixth millennium, as in the verse at evening. Have Rabbi in Reshbet and you shall know that Hashem has brought you out, etc. Shemot 166 also for your servant became sure to have Rabbi in Reshbet for the lad Bereshit 4432 end of R.A.I. Mahim Rabbi Abra calls a time when he asked Rabbi Shimon why the righteous are punished for the sins of a generation and was told that this atones for the
Many who do admonish but they will not accept it from them so they are subdued before those who do not listen to them is this why they are caught for the sin of the generation or maybe it is because the world has no protector and the righteous are caught and die so that the wicked can exist on their merit and I asked him were the righteous not to die and not to be caught for the sins of the wicked but if the wicked were to perish then would not this be a cause of joy for the righteous that the wicked should perish as written but when the wicked perish there is jubilation Mishlei 1110 109 he said to me the righteous are certainly caught for the sins of the generation and we have already discussed these matters but when the righteous are caught with diseases and pestilence it is in order to atone for the sins of the world for that atonement is effected for the sins of the generation since the side of holiness is thereby uplifted and the other side surrenders how do we know about this we learn it from all the parts of the body for when all parts of the body are in trouble and a serious illness prevails in them one limb has to suffer so that all of them should be healthy and which I ask the limb that is to suffer it is of course the arm from which blood is let and then all parts of the body regain health 110 and so it is that all mortals are parts of the one body when the holy one blessed be he wishes to grant healing to the world he inflicts diseases and pestilence on one righteous man from among them and for his sake gives healing to everyone where do we learn this from from the verse but he was wounded because of our transgressions and by his injury we are healed Yeshua 535 and by his injury this refers to the letting of blood as one who lets blood from the arm for in that injury we are healed that is to say we the parts of the whole body find healing 111 and he never smites the righteous man unless it is in order to grant healing to the Generation and to make atonement for their sins for the other side prefers more than anything else that judgment should have control over the righteous for he does not then consider the rest of the world important and he doesn't watch over them because of his great joy that he has control over the righteous and the righteous person who suffers because of the generation merits heavenly rule in this world and in the next world and where there is a righteous man with whom things are going well. The explanation is that the Holy One blessed be he is not concerned to make atonement for the world 112 I said to him but if there are two righteous men where one of them is righteous and things go badly for him while the other is righteous and things go well for him if they do not live at the same time then what you have said makes sense that is that the righteous man for whom things go well lives at a time when the Holy One blessed be he is not concerned to make atonement for the world while the righteous man for whom things do not go well lives at a time when the Holy One blessed be he is concerned to make atonement for the world but what about the case where there are two righteous men one here and one here both living at the same time and the one suffers from diseases and pestilences while the other enjoys all the good things of the world he said to me one or possibly two righteous are sufficient for the atonement of the generation for the Holy One blessed be he does not need to smite all of them just as it is unnecessary to smite and draw blood from more than one arm in order to grant health to all parts of the body similarly here too one righteous man suffices 113 but if the illness strikes all parts of the body it is then necessary to let blood from both of the arms so also in our case if the number of serious sins in the world increases then all the righteous have to be smitten in order to grant healing to the whole generation but when they are not so many then only one righteous man is smitten and the other righteous live in peace for the world is not in such need that all of them need to be smitten and if the people are healed the righteous are also healed but it sometimes happens that the righteous are inflicted with diseases throughout their lives in order to protect the generation at a time when the sins are heavier when the righteous die then everything is healed and atoned for section 16 all nations do not sway. Just Yisrael Rabbi Abba recounts Rabbi Shimon's explanation of why the children of Israel sway when they read the Torah he learned that the spirit of man is a candle of God and that light flickers and moves swaying to and fro 114 we got up and continued on our way the intensity of the sun's heat was excessively strong and made it difficult for us to continue then we saw some trees in the wilderness with water under them we sat down in the shade of one of the trees in the wilderness and I Ask him Rabbi Shimon can you explain to me why it is that of all the nations of the world the only one that sways is Israel for when they study Torah they sway back and forth and this is not something that they learn from anyone else but they just cannot stand still 115 he said to me you have reminded me of a heavenly matter yet people do not know and do not pay attention he sat down for a while and cried then he said woe to people who go around like the beast of the field without understanding in this matter alone are the holy souls of Israel distinguished from the souls of the other people's worshippers of idols the souls of Israel are derived from the holy burning candle which is Malchut as it is written the spirit of man is the candle of Hashem Mishlei 2027 20, and when this lamp is kindled from the higher divine Torah which is Zeir and its light does not repose in stillness for even a moment and this is the secret of the verse Elohim keep not silent Tehillim 832 which is written about Malchut and something similar is written about the souls you that make mention of Hashem keep you not silent Yeshua 626 namely you have no rest but once the light of the candle has taken hold of the wick that light will never rest rather the fire light sways and fro and never stays still 116 this is how it is with Israel too for their souls are of the light of the same candle which is Malchut once he has raised one Torah subject the light begins to burn and they are unable to obtain rest but this is why they sway hither and thither and from side to side just as the flame of the candle flickers for it is written the spirit of man is the candle of Hashem 117 and it is written but your men Yashiskel 3431 this means that you and not the nations of the world are called men the souls of the idol worshipping peoples are of extinguished straw with no light resting on them this is why they are in repose and do not sway for they have no Torah but which to be inflamed and no light rest on them this is why they stand like trees in a blaze burning without a light resting on them and so they are still without any light at all said rabbi you see so this is the explanation of the matter happy is my lot that i deserve to hear this answer section 17 let israel rejoice in him who made him we learn why people must involve god and his chechenot in their rejoicing 118 arise rabbi abba to expound and refresh new matters in the torah as you said in the compilation of the first part rabbi abba began sing to hashem a new song and his praise from the end of the earth etc yeshayah 4210 how beloved are israel before the holy one blessed be he for their rejoicing and their praises are only in him for so we have learned that any rejoicing of israel in which they do not involve the holy one blessed be he is no rejoicing at all and in the future samael and all his band will denounce that rejoicing and they will be left with sorrow and weeping and the Holy One blessed be he will not partake of that sorrow 119 but whoever involves the Holy One blessed be he and his Chechenah in his rejoicing if the accuser should come to denounce that rejoicing the Holy One blessed be he and his Chechenah participate in that sorrow for does not scripture say in all their affliction he was afflicted Yeshayah 639 and how is this because the verse says I will be with him in trouble Tehillim 9115 120 and how do we know that Yisrael have to involve the Holy One blessed be he and his Chechenah in their rejoicing it is as is written let Yisrael rejoice in him let they who made him Tehillim 1492 the meaning of which is that Yisrael has no rejoicing but with them who made him he asks why the who made him when it should be he answers that this refers to the Holy One blessed be he and his Chechenah and a person's father and his mother for even if the latter be dead the Holy One blessed be he uproots them from the Garden of Eden and brings them with him to that rejoicing so that they can participate in the rejoicing with the Holy One blessed be he and his Chechenah and the meaning of them who made him is in the verse let him that made him bring near his sword to him Eo 4019 section 18 three craftsmen heaven earth and water Rabbi Abba says that a person is made by the partnership between his father his mother and God he then refers to the three craftsmen made by God the heaven the earth and the water and with whom he produced the world when these three were finished God commanded them to produce the body of man and he provided the soul when a person rejoices he is rejoicing with his parents even though they may already have passed to the next world and also with God 121 an alternative explanation of they who made him is that it refers to the Holy One blessed be he the person's father and mother since man is made in partnership between man his wife and the holy one blessed be he and in the secret it is written let us make man bear sheet 126 us implying a partnership with his father and his mother for we have learned that the holy one blessed be he made three craftsmen with whom to produce the world namely the heaven the earth and the water and each one of them served for one day and then later each served for a second day as previously 122 on the first day the heaven
It is written and Elohim said let the waters swarm bear sheet 120 on the sixth day the earth again produced its craft as it is written and Elohim said let the earth bring forth living creatures bear sheet 124 124 these three craftsmen having finished their tasks the holy one blessed be he said to them I have one more creation to make namely man join yourselves together and let us I with you make man the body shall be made by you but I will be a partner with you by giving the soul and we shall make man and just as formerly the three craftsmen worked in the partnership in the act of creation so also was it subsequently with the creation of man there is the father with whom he made the works of the heavens and the works of the waters from whom comes the whiteness that is in man and the mother who is the third craftsman like the earth from whom comes the redness in the baby and then there is the holy one blessed be he who participated with them from whom comes the soul and in respect of the secret the text has they who made him in reference to the holy one blessed be he a person's father and his mother 125 and even though his father and his mother might have departed from this world a man rejoices with all the three partners of his making as we have learned when a man involves the holy one blessed be he and is rejoicing the holy one blessed be he comes to the garden of eden and takes his father and mother from there for they are partners with him and brings them with him to that rejoicing and all of them are there together but mortal men do not know it when on the other hand a man is in trouble the holy one blessed be he is there with him alone and he does not inform his father and mother as it is written in my distress i called upon hashem and cried to my elohim tale 187 section 19 three partners the holy one blessed be he one's father and one's mother we learn how many partners are responsible for creating and Sustaining a person including God and his Chechenah, one's mother and father, the angels, the sun and moon, the living creatures, the trees and the seed of the earth at the time of the redemption, all will come together and rejoice. 126 said the Holy One, blessed be he, I and my Shechenah are the partners in the soul, a person's father and mother are the partners in the body, for his father injects the whiteness in the baby, namely the white of the eyes, bone, sinews and brain, and the woman supplies the black of the eyes, hair, flesh and skin, the heavens, the earth and all their hosts also participate in man's creation, the angels to take part for from them come the good inclination and the evil inclination that man should be portrayed in both of them, the part of the sun and the moon is to give him light by day and by night, and even the beasts, cattle, birds and fish participate in man, for he makes a living from them, the trees and the seed of the earth participate in him to sustain and nourish him. Rai may him to the faithful shepherd 127 what does the holy one blessed be he do he uproots his father and mother from the garden of Eden and brings them with him so that they should be with him at the rejoicing of their children and so it is at the time of the redemption for there is no rejoicing like that of the redemption about which it is written let the heavens be glad and let the earth rejoice and let it be said among the nations Hashem reigns and shall the trees of the wood sing for joy before Hashem because he comes to judge the earth I to Rahim and 1631 to 33 for then the holy one blessed be he brings the patriarchs and matriarchs of Israel to be at the rejoicing end of Rai may him the section 20 behold I give to him my covenant of peace we learn about two alphabets the large letters belonging to the next world and the small letters belonging to this world as the yud was added to the name of pinches the explanation becomes clear that God asked Moses to give his Shechinah to Pinches next we realize that the shade of the departed Rabbi Pinches Ben Yahir has been with the rabbis in their discussions for he had spoken of those same matters while he was still alive 128 the same shade returned as previously and walked around the house in the likeness of a man Rabbi Abba fell on his face said Rabbi you see I recall that in this spot I saw Rabbi Pinches Ben Yahir one day he was standing on this spot and asked as follows in the verse Pinches the son of Elazer the son of Aaron the priest Bimidbar 2511 why is Pinches here spelled with the addition of the small letter YUD 129 and he answers because there are two sets of recorded alphabets one alphabet of larger letters and one of small letters and he explains the large letters belong to the next world and are in the aspect of Bano which is called the next world while the small letters belong to this world and are in the aspect of Malchud which is called this world. Here lies the reason for the small letter Yud which is a sign of the Holy Covenant namely Malchut since Pinches was zealous for this covenant a small Yud was added to him which is the secret of this covenant namely Malchut 130 at that time the Holy One blessed be he said what can I do with Moses for this covenant came from Moses and the bride who is Malchut is his it is not nice to give her Malchut to another unless Moses knows about it and desires it it just is not proper the Holy One. Blessed be he started by saying to Moses Moses Pinches the son of Eliezer the son of Aaron the priest Moses interrupted him and asked master of the universe what is all this about the Holy One blessed be he answered him you are the one who has given your soul for Israel a number of times so that they should not disappear from the world while he Pinches has turned my wrath away from the children of Israel the Midbar 2511 said Moses what do you want of me is not everything yours and of you. Want to cause Malchut to rest on him who can tell you what you should do 131 said the Holy One blessed be he to Moses here it is all yours you tell Pinches that my Shechinah will rest within him said Moses in all sincerity let Malchut be with him said the Holy One blessed be he you tell him yourself and in a loud voice that you are handing the Shechinah over to him willingly and sincerely thus the verse wherefore say you say it willingly behold I give to him my covenant of peace. The Midbar 2512 Moses started to say behold I give to him for if it was referring to the Holy Blessed One what should have been said was wherefore say to him behold I give to him my covenant of peace but this is not written but rather wherefore say without to him the meaning being that Moses was commanded to say it should you suggest that the Shechinah was completely removed and taken away from Moses and given to him you would be wrong for it is like a candle that is used to light. Something else the one gains the benefit of the light while the other is no poorer 132 the same shade came sat down and kissed him they heard a certain voice saying make room make room for Rabbi Pinches Ben Yahir for he is among you as we have learned in every place where a righteous man made a new interpretation of a matter in the Torah while he was in this world he comes from the next world and visits that place and this is even more likely when there are other righteous men in that place. Deriving new interpretations and speaking about the Torah and so it was that Rabbi Pinches Ben Yahir came to visit his place and found there a number of righteous men revealing new interpretations of the Torah and that matter was freshly renewed as previously in the presence of Rabbi Pinches Ben Yahir in other words that same Torah matter that Rabbi Pinches had spoken of was re-established in his presence when you mentioned it in his name 133 Rabbi Abba said this interpretation of Rabbi. Pinches Ben Yahir is very nice for it is indeed not written wherefore I give but wherefore say behold I should give to him meaning that Moses was commanded to say to him as noted above and just to think that this matter was hidden with you from that devout man and you said nothing until now happy is our portion that we were privileged to be here with the help of the holy shade section 21 whatever your hand finds to do do it with your strength Rabbi Abba says that righteous men draw their strength from the power of God when they undertake to do his will by awakening ourselves we awaken the holy and divine power thus shattering any power that the other side may have had over us Rabbi Abba tells us that the strength that includes deed and speech and knowledge and wisdom does not exist at all in Sheol we hear that all men actually go to Sheol but the righteous rise up again immediately having gone there to bring up with them anyone who considered repentance but was unable to repent before he died 134 then he began and said in the name of Rabbi Pinches whatever your hand finds to do do it with your strength Kahilat 910 how good it is for a man to try to fulfill the will of his master while the flame is yet burning and resting on his head for the light of that flame is strength resting upon him and so is it written let the power strength of my master be great Bimidbar 1417 the power of my master this is the power that rests on the head of the righteous and of all those who willingly undertake the will of their master which is the Sheshana and about this we have already learned whoever responds with all his power amen may his great name be blessed his sentence of 70 years is torn up 135 he surely has to awaken all his parts with great power in the worship of the holy one blessed be he for by means of this powerful awakening that he summons up he also awakens that holy and divine power which is Malchut and he is uplifted in holiness and shatters the power and hold of the other side hence it is written whatever your hand finds to do do it with your strength for it is with your own strength
Wisdom have you made them all Tehillim 10,424, 137 and all of them the deed the counting device knowledge and wisdom are included in that same strength which is the Shechinah that rests on the head of the righteous this is not the case on the side of Sheol which is a level of Gehenom for the end of everyone who does not try with this strength to enter with it into deed the counting device knowledge and wisdom in this world will be in Sheol where there is no deed nor accounting device nor knowledge nor wisdom for the other side is the way to Sheol as it is written her house is the way to Sheol Mishle 727 whoever becomes listless in that holy strength is attacked by the other side whose house is Sheol 138 whither you go he asks you indeed all men go there to Sheol he answers yes but the righteous rise up again immediately as it is written he brings down to Sheol and brings up Ishmuel 26 this verse however is not to be applied to the wicked who never for a moment considered repentance for they go down to Sheol and do not ascend again even the completely righteous go down there why should this be it is because they take from there a number of wicked and bring them up from there who are the ones that they bring up they who considered repentance in this world but were unable to repent for they departed from the world and it is for these wicked people that the righteous go down to Sheol and take them and bring them up from their section 22 Your eyes like the pools in Heshbon Rabbi Yossi is prompted by the shade of Rabbi Pinchas Ben Yair to remember the esoteric explanation of the accounting of the numerical values of letters 139 said Rabbi Yossi it is written counting one thing to another to find out the sum of Heshbon Kahilat 727 and he asked the account of the numerical values of letters is according to the moon which is Malchut but in which of her levels he did not answer but said I have heard this matter but do not remember it the same shade arose and hit Rabbi Abba in the eyes he fell on his face out of fear and while he was still lying on his face a verse came to him as it is written your eyes like the pools in Heshbon by the gate of Bath Rabbi Lit daughter of the many sure Hasherim 75 the explanation is this refers to the eyes of Malchut namely its Chakma which is called eyes and they are appetizers namely delicacies to the divine Chakma which is drawn from above from Bunna and her eyes are filled by reckoning have Cheshman and solstices and equinoxes and become pools flowing out from the right in all directions until they are counted in every account and intercalation of the moon from the outside namely of the external parts of Malchut also of the stars and the constellations in order to reach a sum and this is by the gate of Bath Rabbim, which is the moon which is Malchut from the outside section 23 in the evening she would go and on the morrow she would return Rabbi Abba again goes over the matter of God persuading Moses to give his holy covenant of peace to Pinchas we learned that Malchut has permission from Zer and Pin to live among the righteous in the world if Pinchas had not been given Malchut he would never have been able to attain the high priesthood 140 Rabbi Abba said to Rabbi Yossi that holy pearl that was in your possession with the help of the holy pious one who visited us namely the report from Rabbi Pinchas Ben Yahir with the help that came to us, it is so beautiful that I must go over it again for it is certainly unnecessary to remove a woman to another place unless her husband so commands and gives her permission to go accordingly one first of all informs her husband and placates him so that he should command her and give her permission to go to that place so the Holy One blessed be he placated Moses until he gave his permission and he said to him you say it, behold I give to him my covenant of peace. The Midbar 2512 that it should abide in pinches and so long as he had not given her permission to go she did not go 141 how do we know this from the righteous one of the world which is Yezid of Zeir and Pen who gave Malchut permission to abide among the righteous in this world and she dwells among them as a bride in all her jewelry and the righteous of the world sees it and is happy but she lies in the arms of her husband which is the secret of the right column and the left column which are she said and Bira of Zeir and returns from there to be with the righteous then returning to her husband as it is written in the evening she would go and on the morrow she would return Esther 214 in the evening she would go to her husband namely at midnight for then is the mating of the left and on the morrow when she is full of Shesedim from the mating of the right she would return to be among the righteous of the world everything being done with the permission of her husband Zeir. And Pen 142 what Moses said was behold I give to him my covenant which is the secret of Malchut just as the righteous one on high gives so also do I give a present on condition that the present be returned namely just as the righteous one on high gives on condition that it be returned as in the evening she would go and on the morrow she would return as expounded above so also with Moses and because of this covenant he earned the high priesthood which is the secret of Shesed and if he had not had Malchut with him Pinchas could not have risen to the level of the high priesthood for the covenant is an aspect of Malchut when she is always cleaving to the upper right which is Jesus of Zeir and, and this upper right will in the future construct the temple which is the covenant namely Malchut section 24 Aether temple is not mentioned in the Torah we hear how a Gentile told Rabbi Elizer that Israel were not close to God citing various kinds of evidence whereupon the Rabbi turned him into a heap of bones Rabbi Elizer recounts the answers that Elijah once gave him when he raised the same issues as the Gentile we hear an explanation of the first and second temples and how God will reveal the temple at the time of the final redemption 143 Rabbi Abba said I have remembered a certain matter I heard from the holy luminary Rabbi Shimon who heard it in the name of Rabbi Elizer one day a clever Gentile came and said to him old man old man I have Three questions that I want to put to you. The first is you say that another temple will be built for you, but the temple is not to be built more than twice. The first temple and the second temple are mentioned, but you will not find a third temple in the Torah, and that which you had to build has already been built, and there will never be another one. For scripture has referred to the two houses of Israel, and about the second temple it is written, The glory of this latter house shall be greater than that of the former Chagai 29, 144. Also, you say that you are closer to the divine king than all other peoples. Whoever is close to the king is forever rejoicing without pain, without fear, without troubles, but you are perpetually in pain, trouble, and agony more than anyone else. Look at us. No pain, trouble, nor agony approaches us at all. From whence it follows that we are close to the divine king, and you are far from him, and this is why you have pain and trouble and sorrow and agony, which we do not have 145 further you do not eat of an animal found dead nor ritually slaughtered so that you will be healthy and your body healthy we eat anything we want and we are physically strong and healthy and all our limbs are fit you do not eat and all are sick with bad illnesses and broken more than all other peoples you are a people whom Hashem hates above all old man old man do not say anything to me because I shall not listen to you nor accept it from you Rabbi Elizer lifted up his eyes looked at him and turned him into a heap of bones 146 when his anger had subsided he looked back cried and said Hashem our master how majestic is your name in all the earth Tehillim 82 how strong is the power of the holy and mighty name in all the earth and how beloved are the words of the Torah for nothing is so minor that it will not be found in the Torah and even the smallest thing in the Torah issued from the mouth of the holy one blessed be he those matters that that wicked one Asked I too once asked of Elijah and he replied that in the academy of the firmament these very matters were laid out before the Holy One blessed be he as follows 147 when Israel came out of Egypt the Holy One blessed be he wanted to establish them in the country as are the holy angels on high and he wanted to build a temple for them bring it down from the upper heavens and plant Israel in the land as a holy planting after the pattern of the heavenly form as it is written you shall bring them in and plant them in the mountain of your inheritance Shemot 1517 and where would that be in the place Hashem which you have made for you to dwell in Shemot 1517 in that place which you Hashem have made and in no other the place Hashem which you have made for you to dwell in refers to the first temple and the continuation of the verse in the sanctuary Hashem which your hands have established refers to the second temple both of them are the work of the Holy One blessed be he 148 But when they angered him in the wilderness they died and he brought their children into the land and the temple was constructed by man which is why it did not last for the building has to be the work of the Holy One blessed be King Solomon knew that the temple that he built was built by man and would not therefore last which is why it is written unless Hashem builds the house they who built it labor in vain Tehillim 1271 and indeed it no longer exists in the days of Ezra because of it. Sin they had to rebuild the temple which is why it had no lasting existence and up until now the first building of the Holy One blessed be he has not been
Clouds of glory that surround the temple that is revealed and within those clouds will be the first temple in a hidden action rising to the height of the glory of the heavens which is bind and this is the building for which we are waiting 151 so far this has not happened in the world for even the city of Jerusalem will not be the result of man's skills for it is written for I says Hashem will be to her a wall of fire round about and will be the glory in the midst of her Zechariah 29 if this is what is written about the city how much more so will this be the case for the temple which is his dwelling place and this action of the Holy One blessed be he should have been apparent at the beginning when Israel came out of Egypt but it was delayed for the end of days for the final redemption section 25 why Israel are in more trouble than other peoples we are told that Israel is the heart of the whole world and the heart is the only part of the body that Knows pain and trouble because it incorporates existence and intelligence thus it is the only part that is close to God at all 152 the second question asked by that Gentile is thus for surely we are closer to the divine king than any of the other peoples this must be so for the holy one blessed be he made Israel the heart of the whole world and the relationship of Israel to the other nations is as that of the heart to other parts of the body and just as the other parts of the body have no existence even for a moment without the heart so it is that none of the other peoples can exist in the world without Israel Jerusalem too has the same relationship with the other countries being as the heart to the parts of the body which is why it is in the center of the whole world just as the heart is in the center of the limbs 153 and Israel's conduct amongst the other nations is as that of the heart amongst the limbs the heart is soft and weak but gives existence to all the limbs and all the limbs do not know pain trouble and agony at all but only the heart does for in it is existence and intelligence pain and anguish come nowhere near the other limbs for they have no existence and know nothing none of the other limbs comes near to the king who is wisdom and intelligence that reside in the brain the heart is the only exception the other limbs are far from him and know nothing about him thus it is that Israel is near to the holy king while the other peoples are far from him section 26 why Israel who do not partake of animals found dead or not ritually slaughtered are weak Elijah teaches that the heart takes for its nourishment only the clearest and purest of the blood and this food is softer and weaker than the rest of the food 154 the third question posed by that Gentile was that Israel do not partake of animals found dead or those not ritually slaughtered nor of the filth and dirt of reptiles and insects as do the other peoples but is nevertheless weaker than they are this is how it is for the heart which is soft and weak and is the king and the sustenance of the other limbs does not take from man's food for its nourishment other than from the clearest and purest of all the blood that is made from food and its food is clean and clear and is softer and weaker than all the rest and it leaves the remaining waste matters of the blood for the other limbs and the other limbs are not concerned as to the cleanliness of their food but take all the waste matters even the worst and they are strong as befits them 155 this is why all the other limbs have skin eruptions and scabs bright spots and leopard spoils and the heart has none of them for it is clean and clear and has no blemish whatsoever thus the holy one blessed be he took Israel who is clean clear and without blemish for himself as scripture says you are all fair my love there is no blemish in you sure hasherim 47 rabbi you see came kissed his Hence and said if I had come into the world just to hear this it would have been sufficient section 27 now the name of the man of Israel that was slain Rabbi Elizer tells Rabbi Yitzhak that the title verse does not say who killed the man because Pinchas had by then achieved priesthood and it was not appropriate to mention a priest in connection with any killing 156 now the name of the man of Israel that was slain Bimidbar 2514 said Rabbi Yitzhak this verse should have been written so now the name of the man of Israel whom Pinchas slew and not that was slain that was slain simply without even mentioning the one who did the slain 157 he answers this is how Rabbi Elizer put it since the holy one blessed be he had raised Pinchas to the level of high priest he did not want to mention Pinchas in the context of a man slain for this is hardly fitting for a high priest before he elevated him to the high priesthood he did mention him and said and when Pinchas saw and took a spear and thrust both of them through Bimid bar 257 to 8 but once he was elevated to the high priesthood his name is not mentioned in the context of killing for this is unbefitting and the honor of the holy one blessed be he had compassion on him because it is not right for a high priest to be mentioned in the context of a killing and the name of the Midianite woman that was slain Bimid bar 2515 I is also given without stating who the slayer was for the same reason section 28 what is now first will be last at the resurrection of the dead Rabbi Pinchas Banyahir explains that God will reconstruct a man in the opposite order that the body disintegrates for now the body is first stripped of spirit and then the skin flesh sinews and bones rot 158 Rabbi Shimon was traveling from Cappadocia to Lot and Rabbi Yehuda was going with him while they were en route they were met by Rabbi Pinchas Banyahir and two donkey drivers. Following him Rabbi Pinchas donkey stopped he prodded him with a spur that he should continue but he did not do so said Rabbi Pinchas to the donkey drivers leave him before he can discern the smell of new countenances approaching us or a miracle will happen to us while they were still there Rabbi Shimon appeared from behind one of the rocks and the donkey continued on Rabbi Pinchas said did I not tell you that he discerned the smell of new countenances 159 Rabbi Pinchas dismounted from his donkey embraced Rabbi Shimon and cried he said to him I saw in my dream that the Shechinah had come to me and given me large presents and I had rejoiced with her and now what I saw has come to pass Rabbi Shimon said I knew that it was you from the sound of your donkey's footsteps now the rejoicing is complete Rabbi Pinchas said let us sit down somewhere as a Torah discussion has to be lucid they found a well of water and a tree and sat down 160 Rabbi Pinchas said I used to view matters such that the resurrection of the dead would be performed on us by the Holy One blessed be he in one way and that what is now first to leave will be the last at the resurrection how do we know this from those bones the ones into which the Holy One blessed be he breathed life at the hands of Ezekiel at the beginning it is written and the bones came together bone to its bone Yashiskel 377 and later it is written and as I beheld and lo there were sinews upon them and flesh came up Yashiskel 378 and the same verse continues and skin covered them above but there was no breath in them from here too we can learn that what a person takes off first will be the last to be put on again initially man is stripped of spirit and then his skin rots followed by the flesh then the sinews and finally the bones at the resurrection it will be the other way around initially the bones then the sinews followed by the flesh and lastly the skin section 29 the resurrection of the dead Rabbi Shimon says that at the time of resurrection God will remake a person from the remaining bone that has not disintegrated we learn that all the souls of the righteous are concealed under God's throne Malchut and that the throne protects them so they can be returned Rabbi Shimon says that wherever scripture does not explicitly state Hashem the reference is always to Malchut 161 Rabbi Shimon said the earlier teachers had difficulties with this passage but the truth is that the Holy One blessed be he performed strange miracles and signs with these bones into which he breathed life come and see remember I beseech you that you have fashioned me like clay and will you bring me back to dust Eoph 109 and then in the next verses have you not poured me out as milk and curdled me like cheese you have clothed me with skin and flesh and have knit me together with bones and sinews when a person has rotted in the dust and the time of the resurrection of the dead has Arrive the Holy One blessed be he will remake him from the remaining bone that has not rotted away make it like dough and as cheese from milk and as flowing as a stream of pure clear milk for the bone will be refined becoming very thin and polished as milk curdled and carved as in a drawing like curdled cheese after the structure is done he will create anew the skin veins and bones 162 hence have you not poured me out as milk and curdled me like cheese you have clothed me with skin and flesh all the verbs are in fact in the future form not have you not poured me out but will you not pour me out not have you not clothed me with skin and flesh but will you not clothe me with skin and flesh etc this is because the reference throughout is to a future time that of the resurrection 163 and what is written afterwards you have granted me life and favor of 1012 this is the spirit of life but you may say but it is written have granted in the past tense and not will Grant he answers that he said you have granted me life and favor for in that world you have given me the spirit of life but the verse continues and your providence namely that of the king's matron Malchut has preserved my spirit namely guards my spirit in that world
I commit him afkid my spirit tailum 316 and she protects them thus I as it written has preserved my spirit of 1012 for she preserves in 165 David said something similar preserve my soul for I am pious tailum 862 preserve refers to the king's matron for she has preserved my soul because I am pious and as a general rule whenever scripture simply generalizes and does not explicitly state Hashem the references to the matron who is malchut as for example in the verse and he called to Moses Shema 2416 where Hashem is not mentioned by name or and he said if you will diligently hearken to the voice of Hashem your Elohim Shema 1526 where the speaker again is not named and the reference is to Malchut 166 Rabbi Pinchas cried and said and did I not tell you that in my dream the Shechen I had given me large offerings and gifts the meaning was these sayings of Rabbi Shimon happy is my portion that I have merited seeing you and hearing this he said to him what you have said concerning the time of the resurrection is correct regarding the one bone that does not rot but what happens to the other bones that are there he said to him they will all be included in the totality of that one bone and will be incorporated with it and they will all be made into one dough out of which man will be formed as they said in the verse have and make strong your bones Yeshayah 5811 what is the meaning of Yachlitz it is as in the verse he has withdrawn have collapsed himself from them Hashia 56 in other words they will all be withdrawn from their place and incorporated in this bone making one dough and then you shall be like a water garden and like a spring of water Yeshayah 5811 Moses gives a warning to people whose hearts are blocked off and whose eyes are closed for the forces of the evil inclination will enter into them he says that all the lights in the eyes issue from the heart Rai Mahin to the faithful shepherd 167 the faithful Shepherd said woe to those humans whose hearts are blocked off and whose eyes are closed for they do not know that when the night comes the gates of Gehenna are open for it is called Gaul and the odors that spread from it rise up to the brain and a number of forces of the evil inclination spread throughout the parts of the body and the gates of the garden of Eden which are the eyes of the heart are blocked off and not open for all the lights that are in the eyes issue forth from the heart. Section 30 Into your hand I commit my spirit Moses goes on to say that the lights of the heart are angels that spread throughout the limbs like the branches of a tree he tells us about the evil effect of shutting off the lights and says that an ignorant man cannot be pious because unless he has studied the Torah he cannot join Zir and Ben and Malchut 168 and the gates of the heart which are the eyes are blocked off so that they should not view the evil spirits that are Lilith and Thus they do not control the lights of the heart which are angels that spread throughout all the limbs as the branches of a tree in every direction at that time all the lights are shut off in the heart and they gather to it as doves into their dovecots as Noah and his wife and all the species who entered with him into the ark 169 and the evil spirits that overcome all the parts of the body are like the waters of the flood which prevailed over them 15 cubits this is because he had sinned in the matter of Yah and Yah had left the body that is to say Yud had left Elohim Allah Flamet Hey Yud Mem and he remained a mute Hebi Elohim Allah Flamet Mem without sight hearing smell or speech and the secret of the matter is to be found in the verse I was dumb Hebi with silence Hebdumayat Elohim 393 Dumayat I spelled Dalit Bab Mem Yud which can be read as two words silence Hebdom of Yud in other words at that time of the flood the evil spirits prevailed for 15 cubits over the body and they encompass the body as a furrow surrounds the ditch of the flower bed 170 just as Noah sent the dove out on his mission so also does the soul of man send out his spirit on its mission and for this reason a man must commit his spirit with the matron who is malchute as it says into your hand I commit my spirit Tehillim 316 but if it is imprisoned by the powers of the evil inclination and sins of the body what does scripture have to say into your hand I commit my spirit you have redeemed me Hashem the of truth for the holy one blessed be he redeems him from their hand 171 and during the time that the soul is guilty what is said about his spirit they who join hands for wicked ends shall not go unpunished Mishlei 1121 for he goes from hand to hand in the camps of the evil inclination which rest upon him in his sins and cast him out from place to place it is this that is happening when a man sees himself in his dream in another country or another kingdom and sometimes in the refuse all depending on his sins but if he is righteous then all of the camps of the good inclination about whom it is said thus were their faces and their wings were divided upwards Yeshua 111 in order to accept his spirit and they raise it upward to the place of the living creatures the bearers of the throne which is Malchut and there he sees a number of visions likenesses and prophetic revelations and this is why the sages taught the dream is one 60th of prophecy 172 furthermore preserve my soul for I am pious Tehillim 862 but so did the sages teach an ignorant man cannot be pious for the Torah was given from the right side of the Holy One blessed be he which is Jesus for this reason one who engages in Torah is called pious and therefore I say to the Holy One blessed be he preserve my soul and do not judge it according to the deeds of these ignorant ones about whom it is said an ignorant man cannot be pious and should you ask about the many ignorant people who act with loving kindness have Jesus I would refer you to the teaching who is a pious man he who behaves piously with his maker like David who was an author the Hebrew root of author means joined together and what did he join together he joined together the heavenly Torah which is Zeir and with the Holy One blessed be he who is Malchut and this is what is meant by behaving piously with his maker that he united the Holy One blessed be he and his Chechenov this is why preserve my soul for I am pious section 31 two mirrors the faithful shepherd talks about the two mirrors one for the soul in this world and one for the soul in the world to come we learn that God created man with two countenances and that when the soul leaves the body the soul goes to the two gardens 173 when a man dies what is written about his soul when you walk it will lead you when you lie down it shall keep you and when you Awake at the resurrection of the dead, it shall talk with you. Mishlei 622 He inquires, This is fine as far as the resurrection of the dead is concerned, that it should awaken the body of man at the resurrection of the dead. But what will be the reward of the soul in the next world? 174 The answer to this is that the Holy One, blessed be, he dresses the soul as formerly in clouds of glory and as formerly it enters into a vision in the same sort of way that the body has 248 parts, it will also be in a vision included in 248 lights that spread forth from that vision for the numerical value of the letters of Bimara is 248. And it is said about it, If there be a prophet among you, I shall make myself known to him in a vision at Bimara, Bimidbar 126, and with the apparel of clouds of glory about which it is said, And I shall look upon it that I may remember the everlasting covenant. Bear sheet 916 This is a shining mirror, and speak to him in a dream. Bimidbar 126 This is a mirror. Mara that does not shine being made up of 365 lights corresponding to the numerical value of Yashina let sleep as in the verse I sleep Hasharim 52 one mirror therefore is for the soul in this world and the other mirror is for the soul in the world to come and they give light to the work of the hands of the Holy One blessed be he namely the souls 175 and their secret is to be found in the verse this is my name forever Shema 315 the numerical value of Yudhei and my name Hachimai is together 365 and this is my memorial have Zikri to all generations Shema 315 the numerical value of Bob together with Zikri is 248 and heralds descend and ascend before him proclaiming give honor to the likeness of the king namely to the soul 176 and this is the meaning of the verse so Elohim created man in his own image in the image of Elohim he created him Bereshit 127 in other words he created him in two forms one in his own image and the other in the Image of Elohim namely with two countenances one is as it is said for you saw no manner of form Devarim 415 and regarding the other forbidden forms it is written the similitude of any figure Devarim 416 2 and the similitude of Hashem does he behold Bimidbar 128 and 613 angels raise up the soul in these forms all of them with thus were their faces and their wings were divided upwards Yashiskel 111 to establish the verse that is said about them I bore you on eagle's wings and brought you to myself Shemot 194 177 just as they came out of Egypt and went with clouds of glory and all that honor so too is the exit of the soul from her body dash that putrid drop the soul goes to the two gardens the upper garden of Eden and the lower garden of Eden whose heavens and
Portion section 32 Allah Nanyad and Vab Hey hear another interpretation of preserve my soul for I am pious where the esoteric meaning rests on the words I and he and whereby we see how essential it is to refrain from separating Zir and Pin and Malchut. This is because I and he are one without distinction. We learn that the left and right columns are united in the central column Typharite 178. Another interpretation of the verse preserve my soul. For I am pious Tehillim 862 is as follows Why should he preserve my soul so that I should behave piously with I namely that I should unite with and bring the cheese from Yud Hey which is Zir and Pin to I which is Malchut for it has been said about it I and he where Allah Nanyad is Malchut and Vab Hey and he is Zir and Pin woe to anyone who separates I from he namely to anyone who causes a separation between Zir and Pin and Malchut as it is said it is he who made us and we belong to him Tehillim 1003 where he stands for Zeir and this is because everything is one namely I and he are one without distinction this is what it said see now that I even I am he I kill and I make alive I wound and I heal neither is there any that can deliver out of my hand to arm 3239 I am Hashem I am he and no other and this I is derived from Adonai namely the letters of Ani I are found in Adonai Yudhei Vav is the central column namely Zeir and 179 and because Yudhei Vav which is Zeir and is on the right namely Jesus he said preserve my soul for I am pious have chased meaning that I shall behave piously towards you and with I which is Adonai which is Gura that is to say I shall unite Yudhei Vav which is Jesus with Adonai which is Gura so Sassad and will be drawn down from Yudhei Vav to Adonai and it too will be Jesus and both the names Yudhei Vav and Adonai combine together in Typharet which is the central column and Come together thus Yud Allah Hey Bab Nun Hey for it is the central column that combines Jesus which is the secret of Yud Hey Bab Hey with Bureau which is the secret of Adonai and the inner meaning of the matter is with Jesus and Bureau which are the right and left columns about which it is said thus were their faces and their wings were divided upwards Yud Shiskal 111 since their faces I ask the secret of Chakma Bina and that and the two columns the right and the left which are Chakma and Bina are divided and so with the two wings the secret of the right and left columns which are different from each other and are therefore divided and in Tiferet which is the central column that is called Hashem is a man Havish of War Shemot 153 because he fights with the left column and makes it smaller in order to bring it together in unity with the right it is written two wings of everyone Havish were joined one to another Yud Shiskal 111 for the two names Yud Hey Bab Hey and Adonai were joined together in it and thus and two covered their bodies Yashiskal 111 for the two wings joined the body and became as one and Tiferet is called body this being the inner meaning of the verse his body was like barrel Daniel 106 and so it is with the two columns right and left of the upper three Sphiron which are Shachma and Bina that are the two names Yudhi Hei Vav Hei and Hei about which it is said their faces divided upwards also joined together and combined by the central column which is the secret of that and they come together thus Yudhi Allah Hei Hei Vav Yudhi Hei Hei section 33 three times was David made a servant we are told the three ways that a man must make himself a servant in terms of worship 180 it is written O you my Elohim save your servant rejoice the soul of your servant give your strength to your servant Tehillim 862,416 David is thrice referred to as a servant in the psalm which parallels the three times that a man has to be as a servant in the prayers as taught by the sages of the Mishnah. In the first blessings, a man should be as a servant arranging praises before his master, and the intermediate ones as a servant asking for a favor of his master. And in the last blessings, a man should be as a servant thanking his master for a favor received and going on his way. 181. And these are the three occasions that a man has to make himself as though a servant in terms of worship. And the sages of the Mishnah taught there is no worship but prayer. And the three patriarchs are called servants by the aspect of her, namely in the name of the Shechinah, which is the worship of Hashem. And so also is Moses referred to as the servant of Hashem, which is why for to me the children of Israel are servants. Vayikra 2555. But in terms of their other qualities in her, all Israel are called the children of kings from the point of view of Malchut in them. And why should Malchut be termed worship? It can be. Likened to the way of a woman who serves her husband or children who serve their father. Section 34 David was made poor, pious, and a servant. We learn how David's correction of the three columns was affected through making himself as if poor, a servant, and pious. We are told that except for Moses, there has never been anyone who could access the highest understanding, and it is even more impossible to access the highest wisdom, for it is said that a wise man is preferable to a prophet. 182 And David was made poor, pious, and a servant, as it is written, A prayer of David, incline your ear, Hashem, hear me, for I am poor and needy, preserve my soul, for I am pious, O you, my Elohim, save your servant who trusts in you. Tehillim 861 2 He became poor at the gate of the king, which is Malchut, about which it is said, Adonai, open my lips. Tehillim 5117 Adonai is a palace, and he became poor at the gate of the king's palace, which is Adonai, namely Malchut, and what does it say? Incline your ear, Hashem, hear me, and this is the lower Shechinah, which is Malchut, which is an ear to receive and listen to prayers as it is written, for he has not despised nor abhorred the affliction of the afflicted, nor has he hid his face from him, but when he cried to him, he heard Tehillim 2225, 183, for he became poor and needy in respect of the letter Dalit of the word Eshad Allah Shet Dalit equals one, which is the secret of Malchut in the first state when it is receiving from the left column, for it is then needy, for the letter Dalit teaches us of its poverty, have Dalit, and you request help from the other two letters of Eshad from Allah Shet, and this is the secret of Zeir Anpin, which in the state is Malchut is called brother Allah Shet, and Malchut sister being then at one stage evolving from Bana as a brother and sister, this is the central column, namely Zeir Anpin, with which to fulfill the verse I was brought low, and he saved me, Tehillim 1166, so that Messiah son of Ephraim should not die for Messiah son of Ephraim is drawn from Malchut when the latter is feeding from the left and is full of judgment and David further requested of him at this gate on behalf of Israel who are poor that the verse and the afflicted people you will save to Shmuel 2228 be established for them and this is why he made himself poor for it is the secret of the left column 184 and afterwards he requested for the sake of the priests the secret of the right column she said that the worship be returned to its place and he made himself as a servant and later he gave them the Torah from the side of Shisa to make a reward had with the letter Dalit of the Torah in other words the Torah which is the secret of Zeir and the central column unites the Shisa of the right column with the Gura of the left column and then he gives a reward with the Dalit which is the secret of Malchut receiving Shesedim and becoming rich in the secret of the two letters Gimel and Dalit that follow each other in the order of the alphabet and this is why he became pious what this means is that he thereby corrected the secret of the three columns Jesus Bureau Tiferet he made himself poor to correct the left column he made himself a servant to correct the worship of the priests which are the right column and he made himself pious to correct the central column so it would bestow Jesus upon Malchut subsequently he corrected the three columns Jesus Bureau Tiferet and when he reached the three upper Sphirot Chakma Bandadea he began to say Hashem my heart is not haughty nor my eyes lofty nor do I exercise myself in great matters or in things too high for me Tehillim 1311 namely he did not touch the 185 Solomon said since Bina belongs to Moses I shall ask for upper Chakma which is above the level of Moses it is written I said I will be wise but it was far from me Kahilat 723 for upper Chakma was not given to him he asked but what about the verse and Hashem gave Solomon wisdom I may 526 he answers this refers to lower wisdom which is Malchut and he wanted to ascend upwards from below namely from lower Chakma he wanted to attain upper Chakma but it drew away from him this is because there is no man in the world apart from Moses who can ascend to Bina and how much truer is this for upper Chakma which is above Bina in its terms a wise man is better than a prophet and even though the verse I said I will be wise but it was far from me was applied homiletically to a red heifer whose reason he could not understand there are 70 possible interpretations of Torah this too being a term in the secret of scripture section 35 the illus
Seed Hadzera, which are the letters of Ezra in a different order 187, and let Rabbi Yusi rise up with you, for he is a perfect throne for his master, for the numerical value of Yusi is the same as that of the throne Hadha and that of Elohim, and let Rabbi Yehuda rise up with him, for in him make up the two words Hat and Yah, the latter of which instructs us about the first stage of Malchud, which is then the first three in it are contained the letters Yah, Hey, plus Dalit, that means that it indicates Ceir and been called Yud Hey, and Malchud called Dalit prior to its being joined in a mating with Yud Hey, Bob it is the secret of the Dalit equals four living creatures, and about them it is said, thus were their faces and their wings were divided upwards, Yashiskal 111, this pertains to all of them, for they do not yet have the unity of right and left and are ready to receive the central column that will unite them, therefore they are the four living creatures for after the Unification of right and left they are considered as three living creatures which is the secret of the three columns each one of which has four countenances and from him from Judah came David who gave thanks to the Holy One blessed be he at the level of thanksgivings had hoted which is from the side of hot and let Rabbi Lay rise up with him for the numerical value of the letters of Lay is 112 the same as that of Yud Bekoth which in a different order spell B-A-K-I let Erudite for he is Erudite in the Halachah 188 and let Rabbi Yudai rise up with him for the numerical value of the letters of Yudai is the same as that of El and he is like the angels Michael and the others who have the letters of El in their names it is as in the meaning of the expression it is in the power of El of my hand Beershi 3129 where the word connotes strength and the secret of El Allah claimed is as follows the Allah is the likeness of a man for the letter has the form of a body with two. Arms and the lamed is the secret of the three living creatures, each one of which is with four countenances, and the three living creatures are intimated in the three yuds that amount to lamed, which are at the beginning of the three recited yud hey which are Hashem reigns, Hashem reigns, Hashem will reign forever. In other words, the three yuds at the head of each yud hey bab at the three living creatures, each of which has four countenances, for in each name are the four letters of yud hey bab and this is the secret of the letter lamed of El, and let Rabbi Abba rise up with them, for the numerical value of his name is four, namely the four living creatures. 189 Rabbi Shimon is like a tree, and Rabbi Laser his son and his friends, the five that we have just mentioned, are like large branches coming out of the tree, similar to arms and legs, where arms are chisit and bura, and legs are net sash and hot section 36 to the chief musician give. Thanks, rejoice, O you righteous, praise, melody, tune, song, blessing, Rabbi Shimon equates the kinds of music and praise to the various fire After a question from the faithful shepherd, Rabbi Shimon challenges him to show why if he was at the level of Bani Scripture says that God gave hot honor to him. Moses' answer includes a description of the work of the divine chariot, and we hear that this work can never be expounded upon by one person alone unless he is a sage who has merited Chakma Bani and Day 190, rise, Rabbi Shimon, and let us hear new matters from you on this verse to the chief musician upon Shushan Etut, a writ of David to teach Tehillim 601. It first says to the chief musician Hedlam Nats Ach, it contains the letters of Netzach, the meaning of which is Nigun Zachlit, pure melody, and by it Hashem called a man of war towards the nations of the world, but of mercy and justice towards Israel, and the secret of the matter is contained in and when the wicked perish, there is. Joy Mishle 1110 Thus when Hashem is victorious had Menatsich over the wicked there is a pure melody M-E-M and lamed of the word Lamnats A-C-H are the secret of the seventy names that he has together with Netzach and Had they come to seventy two which is the numerical equivalent of Chesed and the secret of the matter is in the verse at your right hand are pleasures had Netzach forevermore Tehillim 1611 for Netzach is to the right which is Chesed 191 having clarified that Lamnats A-C-H is the secret of the sphere in Netzach he continues about Had it is said give thanks had Had to Hashem I to Rehim and 168 of the righteous which is Yezid it is written rejoice in Hashem O you righteous Tehillim 331 and also sing with gladness for Jacob your Mayah 316 which is an indication of unity of Tiferet Yezid Malchut for sing I in which there is singing Jacob is Tiferet and gladness is Malchut of Tiferet it is said praise had Halal Tehillim 1501 Halal Yah praise Yah in the name of Yah Hey Bobhi since Yud Hey Bobhi which is a name for Tiferet of melody and tune these are Chesed and Bura melody being Chesed and tune Bura of song and blessing they are Chakma and Bina song being Chakma and blessing Bina happy Is Keter and praises Malchut 192 and he elucidates a song Hebmismor which is Bura that has in it the letters Rizlit secret and the letters Mumlit blemish from the side of the tune Hebzemra of the Torah and the tune of prayer for Wendit. Left column has control by itself, light turns into a secret which is the back part of the light, and therefore it has in it a blemish containing a hold for the external ones, and all of this is from the side of holiness. The psalm have more that is sung by a tune of the other side contains the phonemes mums are lit a foreign blemish, and this is why they said a tune have in the house is destruction in the house, and it is from the aspect of a menstruating woman handmade daughter of idol. Worshippers prostitute, and these are the letters of Mizmor, namely Mums are melody had Nigan Jesus containing the letters Ganlit Garden, which is Malchut, and such is the beauty of the melody which has in it Halal lit praise like the Halal, and it is a night of watchfulness to Hashem for bringing them out of the land of Egypt. Shemot 1242, in other words, not the whole melody is Jesus, but only the beauty of the melody tends towards Jesus, which is the secret of the Halal of the Exodus from. Egypt which inclines towards Jesus happy with which everyone begins to offer praises is Keter since like Keter it is the beginning of the Sfirah e.g. happy is that people that is in such a case Tehillim 14,415 of blessing it is as in I will bless Hashem at all times Tehillim 342 which is Bina for the emanation of Bina is unceasing of praise which is Malchut as in his praise shall continually be in my mouth but for mouth intimates Malchut 193 returning now to the verse to the chief musician upon Shushan Etut a writ of David to teach Tehillim 601 it has been explained that Lamnats Achis Netzach and continues upon Shushan Etut is hot that is Shushan Litros in which the red controls the white wall with Netzach the white controls the red but what is it at the testimony this is the righteous one who is the covenant namely is it which is held by the heavens and the earth which are Zeir and Ben and Malchut this is as it is written I call heaven and earth to witness Against you the state of Arm 426 which implies the unity of Tiferet Yezid and Malchud for I call to witness Is Yezid while the heaven and earth are Tiferet and Malchud what is red Hebmaktam it forms the two words Mach and Tam Machlit humble is the righteous one namely Yezid while Tamlit complete is the central column namely Tiferet which is secret of the body on the level of Jacob was Heb Tam plain man Bershi 2527 we consider the body and the covenant which are Tiferet and Yezid to be one which is why Mach and Tam are written as one word Maktam to teach this is Shisa and Bura for from there was the Torah given to study and to teach 194 the faithful shepherd said to him what you say is all very well but scripture says to the chief musician upon the Shemin Lit 121 this means that Netzach should not move from Had which is the eighth sphere and that is why he says to the chief musician Hedlam is Tach upon the eighth rather than two. The chief musician upon Shushan as you have IT the holy luminary Rabbi Shimon responded if that is so if you want to be so pedantic one can ask an even more profound question your level is that of Bina why then was it taught that he gave hot to Moses as it is written and you shall put some of your honor head hot upon him Bimidbar 2720 195 the faithful shepherd replied that is a good question that you have asked the reason is that the letter hey of Yud hey of the Yud hey bab hey ascends and is multiplied by the yud of Yud hey making five times ten which is the fifty gates of Bina whose extension is from Shisa to Had namely five Sfirot and in each of the Sfirot there are ten making fifty Sfirot that receive the fifty gates of Bina and there is therefore just one extension from Bina to Had thus when mentioning Had then Bina is generally included subsequently righteous one which is Yisit comes and by itself takes all fifty gates of Bina it being equivalent to all five. Since Yezid
Yashiskal 14 until Electrum Yashiskal 127 where the word Shashmal Chechen Mem Lamet forms the initials of Shayat Ashmemalelet lit muttering living creatures of fire for from the side of Buran Netzach and Hot are called living creatures of fire and the river that flows from the sweat of these living creatures of fire is Yezit all three of them that is Netzach Hot and Yezit form a chariot for the splendor head Tiferet of man which is Zeir and 197 the work of the chariot is Malchut. Inasmuch as it is made by the chariot that is Netzach Hot and Yezit and in these three Netzach Hot and Yezit are Chakmabana and Dad of Malchut for Chakmabana and Dad of Malchut are made from the heads of Netzach Hot and Yezit of Zeir and for this reason the sages of the Mishnah taught the work of the chariot may not be expounded by one alone unless he is a sage who understands of his own knowledge this refers to one who has merited Chakmabana and Dad since a sage pertains. To Chakma who understands pertains to Bana and of his own knowledge Iasta at section 37 the chariot of Metatron we hear the esoteric explanation of the chariot below Zerenpan that is Metatron who is also known as the small man this includes a description of the great and powerful flow of the waters of Chakma that run from the sea of Torah and from which three of the four rabbis were unable to emerge in peace lastly it is shown how the first nine letters of the alphabet correspond to the nine Sphira 198 and there is a chariot below Netzach Hot Yezid of Zerenpan which is Metatron also known as the small man and in his chariot which is an orchard head parts they are hurrying from the sea of the Torah like a river whose waters are flowing with great speed and force towards the sea flowing out of his orchard to the three of the four about whom it was said that four entered the orchard namely Ben Ezei and Ben Zio Ma Elisha Ben Abiyah and Rabbi Akiva. The first three were injured by the force of the flow of the waters of Chakma which are called an orchard and only Rabbi Akiva entered in peace and left in peace and we have already learned this 199 for he Metatron is the bird who was espied by Rabbi Barbarshan on the beach of the sea of the Torah when the sea which is the secret of Malchut rose and reached his ankles namely to the end of his netzach and hot called ankles and his head reached to the top of the heavens which is Zeir and the three of them that were faulted in it the secret of the parts as above these three did not fail by it because it contains much waters of Chakma but because of the force of the flow of the waters of Chakma in it that is to say that they are sharp and forceful with judgments and so have we learned 200 the letters Allah Petkim will include them that is the components of the chariot of Metatron for the numerical value of these three letters amounts to six which is the Number of letters in the name Metatron, the fourth letter of the alphabet Dalit is the secret of a still small voice I Melashim 19.12 which is the secret of Malchut for the king comes therefore it is a man to sit on the throne since Malchut is the secret of a man who sits on this throne of Metatron 201 the two in the shape of the Allah the upper Yud stands for the upper waters which is the secret of Zeir and the lower Yud for the lower waters which is the secret of Malchut and there is nothing between them apart from a hair's breadth which is Bob written like the line in the middle of the Allah it is a slant line between the two Yud is in the secret of the firmament which is the secret of the curtain that divide water from water Bear sheet 16 thus there should be a distinction between female and male and that is why it is written and let it divide Bear sheet 16 and the inner meaning of the matter is as follows in the combination of the two divine names Yud Havav. Hey and Adonai Yad Allah Hey Dalit Vav Nun Hey Yad the upper Yad of the combination is the upper male waters and the lower Yad of the combination is the lower female waters the six letters Allah Hey Dalit Vav Nun Hey which come between the two letters Yud are as the numerical value of Vav equals six which is the secret of Metatron which is the Vav between the two Yud's in the form of the Allah two hundred and two furthermore Yad is a point which is the secret of upper Chakma Vav is the secret of a will which revolves in the six Farah Chisid Bure Tiferet Net Sash Hot and Yizid and there is no movement in the will at the six extremities as the numerical value of Vav but only at the point for everything that is in Chisid Bure Tiferet Net Sash Hot and Yizid is received from this Yud and this point is the unity of everything and is witness to that unity which is the endless light who has no second and about whom the sages taught that one has to proclaim his unity in order to establish his kingship. Over the heavens and the earth and the four directions of the compass, this is the secret of the Allah equals one that equals two is the secret of heaven and earth, which are Zeir and Pen and Malchut Gimel equals three is the secret of the pillar that bears them, which is the secret of Yezid equals four is the secret of the four living creatures of the chariot, Hay equals five is the secret of the throne, Bob is the secret of the six steps up to the throne, which are Shisit, Bure, Tiferet, Netzach, Hot, and Yezid. Moreover, Allah Pet Gimel Dalit Hay Bob and Chetet are the secret of man, namely the first nine Sphirot of Zeir and Pen Yad is his unity, namely Malchut, which is the tenth sphere of Zeir and Pen, who is called Adam Lid Man. This is the secret of the Yud Hay Bob, fully spelled with Allah's making the numerical value of Adam the nine Sphirot of Zeir and Pen correspond to the nine letters. Happy are those of Israel who know the secret of their master, section 38, smoke and fragrance. And incense Rabbi Yehuda Rabbi Shimon and the faithful shepherd discuss the smoke that emerged from the left nostril and the fragrance that was drawn into the right nostril and we learn that these are judgment and mercy incense corrects the two and removes death from the world 203 another explanation command the children of Israel and say to them my offerings the provision of my sacrifices made by fire of a sweet savor to me be midbar 282 Rabbi Yehuda said with an offering there is smoke and there is fragrance and there is a sweet savor smoke is from the side of judgment as it is said but then the anger also knows of Hashem shall smoke devarim 2919 there went up the smoke out of his nostrils and fire out of his mouth devour tehillim 189 sweet savor is mercy as it is said and the scent of your countenance lit nose like apples sure hasherim 79 204 the faithful shepherd said both of them smoke and fragrance are in the nose and are called witnesses the former is in the Knows as it is written, there went up a smoke out of his nostrils, and the latter is in the nose as it is said, and the scent of your countenance lit nose like apples. If that is so, then why is the former smoke called judgment, and the latter fragrance called mercy? He answers that in the nose there are two windows, each of which is a nostril. There went up a smoke out of his nostrils. He said about the left hand nostril, which is judgment. What is the meaning of went up? It is that the smoke rose up from the heart, which is on the left, and is parallel to pure, and from the right a breeze descends to cool him and quiet his anger from the side of Chisid, which is where the brain is, namely Chakma, which is to the right. He who wishes to acquire wisdom, let him go to the south, and Bino, which is the secret of Chakma of the left, is in the heart opposite the left, and he who wishes to enrich, let him go to the north. And this is why there went up a smoke out of his nostrils, namely. From Bino which is on the left to Chakma which is on the right and Chakma welcomes it with rejoicing to the accompaniment of the music of the Levites 205 and the smoke only rises up with fire that is kindled with pieces of wood that are limbs filled with the precepts which are called the wood for the burnt offering. Bereshit 223 and the Torah of Torah scholars is enkindled by the precepts their fire is by virtue of Bira and the smoke rising up in them in Bina is called the smoke of the set order on the altar 206 and when the smoke has arisen to the nostrils it is called incense as it is written they shall put incense in your nostrils Devarim 3310 and nothing is as effective as incense for doing away with death in the world for incense is the connecting of judgment with mercy with the sweet savor in the nostrils for the Hebrew for connect is in Aramaic Tyru and hence incense hepter means connection Rabbi Yehuda said happy is our portion that we have gained hidden matters and can understand them openly the holy luminary added since prayer is like a sacrifice anyone therefore who says the prayer compounding of the incense after a praise of David Tehillim 1451 does away with death from the house section 39 the three prayers the faithful shepherd tells us how the three prayers were arranged to parallel the sacrifices 207 the faithful shepherd said one has to know how the prayers were arranged to parallel the sacrifices for the prayers are three the morning prayer Shacharit parallels the one lamb you shall offer in the morning Shema 2939 and Bimidbar 284 as it is said and Abraham went early in the
Scripture says continues on paragraph 238 end of RAI Mahin Rabbi Pinchas has been thinking about the meaning of keeping and remembering and he opens the topic of the role of the liver in the sacrifice Rabbi Shimon furthers the explanation telling how the heart receives the confession and offers it to the brain he closes by saying that all ills come from the liver and all goodness comes from the heart 209 Rabbi Pinchas said I have been thinking keeping certainly is in the heart which is why it is written keep the barm 512 of the heart which is Malchut and of nowhere else remembering Hebzakara is a matter of the male Hebzakara namely in the brain which is Zeirn that rides and controls the heart and it is therefore written remember the Shabbat Day Shema 208 for the male which is Zeirn and while keep the Shabbat Day the barm 512 is for the female which is Malchut the brain which is the male Zeirn and mounts and controls the heart which is Malchut the heart controls and mounts the liver and liver is a male and serpent intertwined and they are one and they are the lobe of the liver and the liver and so it is with the sacrifice the lobe of the liver is serpent and the liver is devour the male who is the secret of the male 210 Rabbi Shimon said that is certainly how it is and it is good and it is a clarification of the matter and thus are the secret of the hidden matters of the sacrifice he first takes the liver together with its lobe. Which are some male and serpent is made, and all those arteries that are in the liver are their hosts and encampments, and their receiving is that they devour the fatty parts and the fat of the sacrifice as it is written, and the fat that is upon them. Shema 2922, and then everything is offered to the heart 211, and the heart does not receive from the whole of the sacrifice, but only from the confession made with it, which ascends with the smoke and the prayer that is made over the sacrifice. Subsequently, the heart offers to the brain the desire of the unification of the priest in it and the rejoicing of the love. It's this brain which is Zeir and is the light that comes from the divine brain, which is Father and Mother, and the divine brain offers to the all hidden who is completely unknown that is Keter, and everything is interconnected, and the brain which is Zeir and offers pleasure to all to all the heavenly beings 212. The arteries that are in the liver, these are the Personages, namely the angels of the evil forces, and all these are their hosts. The liver is, as we said, that is a male, while the lobe of the liver, which is feminine, is his female, and why is it called lobe hebuter? It derived from leftover. It is because it does not join together with the male, which is a male, unless it has some spare time left over after the prostitution in which it engages, and after it leaves him it means leftover, for she leaves the male and makes him into a leftover. After all her fornications, again the female is therefore called uterate, for when she wants to join together with a man to make him, since she first of all becomes for him as leftovers without any importance, namely without the power to rule over man, for the start of a sin is as the breadth of a hair. Later she draws close to him little by little until she is in one union with him, and he can no longer separate himself from her and from those arteries that are in the liver, other forces of a number. Of type spread out, and they all take the limbs and the fats that are burnt on the altar at night, and all of them are included in the liver, which is a male 213, and the heart, which is the main thing in holiness, namely Malchut takes and offers to the brain, as we have learned, the heart rests over the two kidneys, which are net and hot, and they are two cherubs who are advisors in the secret of the advising kidneys, that is to say, they arrange the emanation that descends from Zeir and Benen. Malchut in the secret of the heavens that grind the manna for the righteous, which are the righteous one, and righteousness, namely Yizit and Malchut, and they are far and near right and left, for when net which is right is in control, they are near, but when hot, which is left, is in control, they are far, and all of them take and eat from the light of the mating, which is by their sacrifice, each one as befits it until everything is tied together as one 214, the sacrifices of Elohim are broken. Spirit Tehillim 5119 This namely a broken spirit confession and prayer is an approach offered to the heart for it is certain that and the spirit returns to the Elohim who gave it Tehillim 127 namely a broken spirit ascends to Elohim who is Malchut that is called heart and the liver which is Samael offers it closer to the heart for it has become a good advocate for him and everything is one bond in the sacrifice 215 and from the liver which represents Samael come all the diseases and illnesses to all parts of the body and rest in it but the heart which represents Malchut is the purest of all the parts of the body and from it are derived all goodness all health of all the parts and all the strength and all the joy and all the perfection needed by all the parts section 40 the sacrifices the faithful shepherd says that the purpose of the sacrifices is to remove the impure sides and bring the holy sides near Rabbi Shimon argues that God distributes the food of the sacrifices is appropriate, he gives the nourishment of the Torah to those on the side of holiness and he gives ordinary food to those on the other side. God takes nothing from the sacrifice other than the desire and remorse of the heart. Rabbi Shimon says that the priest is the brain, the Levite is the heart, and Israel is the body. The faithful shepherd continues the discussion with a higher explanation of the union affected by the sacrifices and we learn that those who are like animals were commanded to sacrifice animals for atonement but that those who are like angels offer up their good deeds instead. Moses talks about the prime cause Einsof saying that the four elements have no proximity to one another except when he is among them and saying that the sacrifices draw them close to him. Rai Mahin the faithful shepherd 216 the faithful shepherd said the purpose of the sacrifices is to remove the impure sides and bring the holy sides near and we learned in the First compilation that among the arteries of the liver which are the soldiers of Samael as above there are large ones and there are those that are both large and small and they spread out from there in a number of directions and they take the parts and the pieces and fats that are devoured on the altar the whole night for the whole of the sacrifice belongs to Hashem and the other side takes only the parts and the fats 217 the holy luminary that is Rabbi Shimon said O faithful shepherd did you not say before that the only purpose of the sacrifices of the holy one blessed be he is to draw close the yet to the hay and the bob to the hay nevertheless although all the sacrifices have to be offered before him before the holy one blessed be he and he distributes the foodstuffs of the sacrifices to all the various camps to each as befits him to the mental ones namely on the side of holiness he gives the nourishment of the Torah and drinks of the wine and water of the Torah which is the Secret of the central column that is called Torah by which all the lights are corrected to the natural ones which are the demons who are like people namely the other side he gives them natural foodstuffs and their fire descends to devour them namely the illuminations coming from the left column of separation without the reconciling of the central column that is called Torah 218 and this is as the sages taught if Israel is meritorious he would descend like a lion of fire to devour the sacrifices but if they were not meritorious he would descend like a dog of fire likewise when a man dies if he has been meritorious the image of a lion descends to welcome his soul but if he has not been meritorious an image of a dog descends concerning which David said deliver my soul from the sword my only one from the power of the dog Tehillim 2221 219 and since the holy one blessed be he desired to save the bodies of Israel from them and their souls too he commanded that sacrifices be offered of beasts and bodies in their stead so that the other side should not have control over them but should enjoy them the sacrificed animals this is according to the verse if your enemy be hungry give him bread to eat and if he be thirsty give him water to drink Mishlei 2521 and thus will the accuser become counsel for the defense but the holy one blessed be he takes nothing from the sacrifice except the desire of the heart and remorse of the heart as it is written the slaughtered sacrifices for Elohim are a broken spirit a broken and contrite heart Elohim you will not despise Tehillim 5119 they are like earthenware vessels about which it is said after they are broken they become clean 220 the priest is brain standing for Zeir and which is rightly by his heart standing for Malchut which is on the left Israel is the body namely the central column for when the souls of Israel rise up to the female waters they become the central column between Zeir and Benen. Malchut and it is said about them the priest at their service the levites at their stand and Israel at their post and if the liver which is Samael which is to offer fatty parts that are originally impure to the heart he takes only the fat of originally pure fatty part for just as in the body there are pure and impure fatty parts clean blood without waste matter and blood contaminated with waste matter the arteries of blood in the heart which is Malchut are the holy hosts while the arteries of the liver which is Samael are the impure hosts here also there are camps of the evil inclination and camps of the good inclination the latter are appointed over the arteries of the heart and the
commanded those who are like sheep to sacrifice animals in their stead to make atonement for them but the sacrifices of those who are like angels are the good deeds over which are appointed angels who offer the good deeds before the Holy One blessed be he in the stead of them 222 and those who are the children of yud heh vav about whom it is written you are the children of Hashem your Elohim Devarim 141 it is because of their sins that the letters of the yud heh vav become separated for there is no heavenly mating of yud and there is no mating of zeir and ben and malchud which are vav and their correction lies in the Torah which is the name of yud heh to bring the letters together by means of their sacrifice yud which is the secret of the mating of Abba and ima and vav with which is the secret of the mating of zeir and ben and malchud 223 and for all the sacrifices whether of those who are animal like or those who are like the aspects of angels appointed over the precepts or of those who are of the aspect of Malchut or of those who are of the name of the Yud Hey in all cases the sacrifice has to offer to the Holy One Blessed be he the union of the four holy letters of the Yud Hey and the Holy One Blessed be he mounts with the four letters of the Yud Hey on the four living creatures of the angels Michael Gabriel Uriel and Raphael which are the chariot that is in Bria and the Holy One Blessed be he rides with the four letters of the Yud Hey on the four elements of fire wind water and earth which are the secret of Chesed and Buritiferet and Malchut that are in Yetzirah which is the aspect of Yezid from them were created the four natural beings namely Chesed and Buritiferet and Malchut that are in the world of Asiyah and the Holy One Blessed be he himself brings water close to fire which is the secret of the two columns Chesed and Bura and this is the secret of Yud Hey and the bringing of wind to the earth, namely Tiferet, that is called wind to Malchut, that is called earth, this being the secret of Vav and this is as it is written, he makes peace in his high places, Eo 252, and so also he brings together the four living creatures of the angels, namely Michael, who is considered mental water, with Gabriel, who is thought mental fire, which is the secret of right and left, the basis of Yud and he also brings close Uriel, who is air, namely the mental wind, with Raphael, earth, who is mental dust, which is the secret of Vav for the moment, the Holy One, blessed be he departs from among them, they have no strength, 224. You might suggest that we have a problem here, since it is written that all the sacrifices are to Yud Hey and ask how therefore it can be said that there is a separation of the letters of the Yud Hey and that the sacrifice now comes to unite them, he answers this is said about those stages that were created and called by. His name and not that they are he himself as it is written everyone that is called by my name for I have created him for my glory I have formed him yeah I have made him Yeshayah 437 and there are the four letters of the Yudhei Vavhei and Atzala containing no separation nor cessation for they are as fountains for all the worlds watering the trees and regarding those that were created namely Visavis the Yudhei Vavhei attired in the world of creation the four letters of Atzala are likened. The Yud to a head the Vav to a body while the two Hays are likened to ten fingers 225 but the prime cause namely the endless light blessed be he who is over everything who is called Yudhei Vavhei that is its light is attired in the Yudhei Vavhei about him it is said to whom then will you liken me that I should be equal says the Holy One Yeshayah 4025 to whom then will you liken El or what likeness will you compare to him Yeshayah 4018 for I am Hashem I do not change Malachi 36. The sins of the creatures below do not touch him nor separate in him the letter yet from the letter hey nor the vav from the hey for there is no separation in him and it is said about him nor shall he be well with you tell him 55 he rules over all and there is none who rules over him he comprehends all and there is none who comprehends him and he is not called by yet hey vav hey nor by all the other names but is known by his light that spreads over them over the levels that are in the four worlds at salapriya yet yeah, and when he departs from them he has of himself no name at all exceeding deep who can find it kahilat 724 226 and there is no light that can withstand his radiance without appearing dark even upper keter of Atzala, whose light is stronger than all of the levels and all the hosts of the upper and lower heavens and it is said about him concerning himself he made darkness his secret place tell him 1812 concerning chakma and bandai is said cloud and mist around about him tell him 972 how much more is it so for the others fire and for the celestial beings and the elements that are dead without life he surrounds all the worlds and none but he surrounds them in any direction up or down or to the four corners of the compass and no one has left his domain for the outside for he fills all the worlds and there is no other that fills them 227 he grants life to all the worlds and there is no other aloha above him to give him life as it is said and you do preserve them all Nechmai 96 and for him Daniel said and all the inhabitants of the earth are reputed as nothing and he does according to his will in the host of heaven Daniel 432 he joins together and unites members of each species above and below and the four elements have no proximity to each other apart from when the holy one blessed be he is among them 228 immediately when those who are called you are the children of Hashem your Elohim Devarim 141 who are from the side of the Yud Hey Vav Hey, he removes himself from the letters of the Yud Hey Vav Hey, which are left separated from each other. How is this to be corrected by bringing together the letters in the Holy One? Blessed be He Yud Hey, which is the mating of Chakma and Bina Vav Hey, which is the mating of Tiferet and Malchut. So also those who are his servants, who are from the side of Metatron and are from the side of the celestial beings, Michael, Gabriel, Uriel, and Raphael, who sins, caused his divinity to leave them. How are they to be corrected by again bringing the Holy One? Blessed be He down to them and to bring them close to each other. So also with those who are the four elements, fire, wind, water, and earth, which are called the flock of the Holy One. Blessed be He who by their sins caused the Holy One. Blessed be He to ascend from them. What is their correction? It is to draw them close to the Holy One. Blessed be He 229, and this is why He commanded for all of them. A Sacrifice to Yud Hey Vavhe, namely in order to unite the letters of the Yud Hey Vavhe that were separated and removed as explained above. My offerings, the provisions of my sacrifices made by fire. Bimid bar 282. Also, the one lamb you shall offer in the morning and the other lamb you shall offer towards evening. Bimid bar 284. Elsewhere, it is written two turtle doves or two young pigeons. Vayikra 57. One goes after its own kind and joins it. And the Holy One, blessed be He, brings all together in this place for He is the cause of all. There is no Aloha beside Him and none, but He is able to bring the forces together. 230. But the forces of the idol worshipping nations are from the side of separation. Woe to Him who by His sins brings separation to the letters, beings, and prime elements. For the Holy One, blessed be He, immediately removes Himself from Israel and the idol worshipping nations come in among them. The idol worshippers have no proximity to the Holy One, blessed be He, since there. Are no rapprochement sacrifices outside the land of Israel where the idol worshippers are in this context? The rabbis taught he who lives outside the land of Israel is comparable to one has no aloha as the faithful shepherd said these things. All the holy letters from Atzala and the holy living creatures from Bria and the four prime elements in Yetzirah and Asiyah came down to him, blessed him, and said, By your doing, O faithful shepherd, did the holy one blessed be he descend upon us? And each kind was drawn close to his own kind. You were blessed to the holy one blessed be he by the four prime elements. Now everything has been clarified in its rightful place. And of Rai Mahim, the section 41, delight yourself also in Hashem. Rabbi Shimon talks about the scripture that begins with trust in Hashem and do good, dwell in the land and enjoy security. He once more reminds us why after his promotion to the office of high priest, pinches is not named in the Killing of Zimri 231 he began by quoting trust in Hashem and do good dwell in the land and enjoy security. Tehillim 373 trust in Hashem this is as it should be and do good that is undertake the correction of the holy covenant that you should correct it and keep it properly and if you do this you will be here in the land namely dwell in the land and it will receive nourishment at your hand and will flourish at your hand namely that upper faithfulness which is Malchut this being the meaning of enjoy security also cherish faith 232 and the following verse delight yourself also in Hashem and he shall give you the desires of your heart. Tehillim 374 all this is remedied with the correction of the covenant for once the covenant is corrected everything is corrected and pinches because he was zealous for this covenant merited everything and not only that
was slain Bimidbar 2514 to 15 without mentioning by whom they were slain 234 Rabbi Pinchas said happy is the generation that hears your interpretations of Torah and happy is my portion that I have so merited Rabbi Shimon replied to Rabbi Pinchas happy is the generation in which you and your piety are while they were still sitting appeasing and enjoying each other's company Rabbi Lazar the son of Rabbi Shimon came and found them there Rabbi Pinchas commented this is certainly in fulfillment of the verse and when Jacob saw them he said this is Elohim's camp Bereshit 323 Rabbi Shimon said Lazar my son sit you down my son and expound to us this verse and Rabbi Lazar sat down section 42 lighting upon means words of reconciliation Rabbi Lazar gives his interpretation of the time that Jacob was on his way and was met by angels of Elohim 235 he began and Jacob went on his way and angels of Elohim met him Bereshit 322 he asks what is the meaning of met him the answer to this I ask that there is a meeting for good a meeting for evil and a meeting for prayer when Jacob was on his way to Torah what does scripture tell us and he came upon the place Bereshit 2811 for he prayed the evening service at that place which is Malchut that is called place as it is written and Hashem said behold there is a place by me Shema 3321 for the evening prayer is proper for that place that is the evening prayer is the aspect of correction of Malchut and this is in accord with what was said above meeting is none other than prayer 236 again and he lighted on a certain place Bereshi 2811 this means that he spoke words of conciliation namely as he has already noted there is no meeting that is not conciliation because the sun was said of it the holy one which is Zeir and comes to the moon which is Malchut the husband to the wife it follows that it is not right for a husband to come to his wife without words of appeasement to placate her for it is written and he lighted on a certain place of it which means that he addressed her with words of appeasement and afterwards and he stayed there the night of it but what does scripture tell us about his return from Charon met him Bereshi 322 namely Malchut sent messengers to placate him so that he would come into her 237 and when Jacob saw them he said of it three he asks what is the meaning of when Jacob saw them the answer is that they were the daytime angels of Zeir. And who is called day and the nighttime angels of Malchut who is called night they were hidden from him and subsequently revealed to him which is why it is written when Jacob saw them the verse continues this is Elohim's camp from here we know that there were those of the day and those of the night concerning those of the night it is written Elohim's camp for Malchut is called Elohim and concerning those of the day it is written this for Zeir and is called this and thus the verse continues and he called the name of that place Machanaim the two camps and now I see your holy camps namely the camp of Rabbi Shimon and the camp of Rabbi Pinchas happy is my path that brought me here section 43 lighting on me as appeasement from the words of Rabbi Shimon and Moses as they continue speaking about Jacob's encounter with the angels we come to understand that there were two camps the daytime angels and the nighttime angels and that Jacob could not see them at night. We also learn the difference between coming upon meaning appeasement and lighting on meaning union in the evening prayer. A person seeks for Adonai the Sheshana with entreaties and he seeks for mercy from God. R.A.I. Mahim the faithful shepherd. 238. This is the continuation of Rabbi Shimon's words. Paragraph 208. But coming upon means words of appeasement. When the groom comes to the bride, the groom does not unite with the bride without words of appeasement. And afterwards he spends the night with her. This is the meaning of because the sun was set. Bereshit 3811. 239. The faithful shepherd said, If this is so, what is the meaning of because the sun was set? Hep Kiva, which is here explained homiletically that Kiva is derived from extinguishing Hep And so because the sun was set means when the light of the sun was extinguished. However, what we can learn from this is that whoever unites with the wife must extinguish the lights at night. And that the sages do not advocate sexual intercourse by the light of day but only by night with modesty when therefore does one stay overnight scripture says when the sun has set namely after the light of the sun has turned away from the world 240 for this reason just as one has to cover oneself up from the sun so does one have to cover oneself from the angels who are the good inclination on the right in a number of camps as well as from the angels who are from the evil inclination that goes on the left in a number of camps and so it was that after the morning had dawned Jacob spoke when he saw the angels for at night he did not see them and there was no one with Jacob the plain man who is the central column except for the camps of the king and the queen who are called the daytime angels and the nighttime angels this is why and he called the name of that place Machanaim the two camps Bereshit 323 about the daytime angels who are of Zeir and who is called day is written and when Jacob saw them he said this is Elohim's camp Bereshit 323 for Zeir and is called this and when the nighttime angels came namely those of Malchut who is called night who gathered around him to protect him it is said and he called the name of that place Machanaim the two camps and there is no difficulty here for the verse when Jacob saw them I has written about the time after he had returned from Laban for there is no earlier or later in the Torah 241. The author here wishes to reconcile what he said initially on and he lighted on a certain place that there is no coming upon that is not prayer and what he said later namely that coming upon means appeasement when a groom comes to a bride according to which and he lighted on a certain place means the unity of bride and groom and this is what he says since prayer is a bride namely Malchut as it is said come with me from Lebanon my bride with me from Lebanon Sher Hashirim 48 thus. Malchut is here called with me have iti and in the written Torah it is said about her behold there is a place by me have iti shema 3321 hence a place I as Malchut as I as with me and since Malchut is called a place in this world it is said about her and he lighted on a certain place and tarried there all night Bereshit 2811 242 and for this reason she says oh that I were in the wilderness in a lodging place of wayfaring men your male 91 for then she would have been independent without those who impose an obligation on her and without her groom and whenever a man prays the holy one blessed be he precedes him and protects her and the secret of the matter is to be found in the verse and the man have ish wondering at her Bereshit 2421 for whenever the word ishlet man is used the reference is to the holy one blessed be he as it is written Hashem is a man have ish of war shema 153 and it came to pass before he had done speaking that behold Rip Koresh Bet Came out Bereshit 2415 just as and his arrow have Habarak Habet Reshkov shall go forth like the lightning Zechariah 914 243 you might raise the possible objection to the above that the rabbis taught that in a gathering of ten the Sheshanah is preceding to come among them but does not come for a single one until he sits down and what did I say that whenever a man prays the Holy One blessed be he precedes and receives him namely even a single person he answers that the explanation is as follows in the case of ten there is yud numerical value ten before he that is to say if there is yud he the mokin of Chakma and Bina for the yud includes the he also then the Sheshanah which is the secret of he comes in the case of one which is Bob if the Bob is alone without yud he until he sits himself down and receives the mokin of yud he the second he of yud he Bob he does not come to him and the secret of the matter is that the he that is Malchut does not come to a place. Where yet hey are not whoever wishes to unite the letters Yudhe and Bob he must pray with supplications and entreaties this being the reason for the verse and I besought Hashem at that time saying Adonai Elohim you have begun to barm 323 to 24 for Adonai which is the Sheshanah is sought with entreaties and mercy is sought from the Holy One blessed be he and up to here I ask the explanation for the evening prayer section 44 the one lamb you shall offer in the morning. The sages taught that one should not pry into the secrets of God or mysteries of the world and so the secrets of the Torah must be kept covered up and hidden from the wicked and the ignorant we are reminded of the role and importance of scripture Mishnah Talmud and Kabbalah 244 the one lamb have you shall offer in the morning and the other lamb you shall offer towards evening Shema 2939 and Bimidbar 284 and about the secrets have of the merciful one the sages have taught why. Do you probe into the secrets of the merciful one the meaning of which is matters that are of the mysteries of the world let them be concealed under your dress just as clothes cover the body so also must the secrets of the Torah be kept covered up and this applies even more to the secret of the sacrifices which are like a wife drawing near to her husband which is why a sacrifice is called Corbin from the same root as the word Corbin meaning
Secret of four three things the earth is disquieted for a slave when he becomes king and a fool when he is filled with food and a handmaid that is heir to her mistress Mishlei 3021 to 23 for the hay has moved away from its place which is the queen and is a good inclination and in her stead has come in a handmaid the evil inclination 246 and the secret of the matter is to be found in the verse it seems to me there is as it were a plague in the house Vayikra 1435 namely the impure blood of menstruation just as in the one case of the plague then the priest shall shut him up for seven days Vayikra 1321 so also in the other she shall be seven days in her menstrual impurity Vayikra 1519 happy are the organs that are sanctified at the time of intercourse for they are called the wood of the burnt offering for they are engulfed by holy fires from the name Yod Hey which is C E I R and who takes hold of their fire and for this reason it is written wherefore glorify Hashem in. The regions of light, Yeshua 2415, thus the mysteries of the merciful one are the one lamb lit secret you shall offer in the morning and the other lamb you shall offer towards evening 247 and the end of the scriptural text continues and a tenth part of an ephah of fine flour, Gimid bar 285, that is happy is he who draws down from his brain a drop of clean refined flour without impurity and waste at the time of the mating and this is hinted at in the letter Yadav Adonai and that is why it says a tenth part and is inherent in the tenth fire and she is to be mingled with the fourth part of a hint of beaten oil but that is it is mingled from four namely scripture Mishnah Talmud and Kabbalah on which the righteous beat themselves and so raise up the female waters for her mating section 45 the chariot of Ezekiel the faithful shepherd tells us about Ezekiel's ten visions of Metatron and we hear a good deal about the meaning of the color blue and why it is so important in the tzitzit and the talit through the sacred numerical meaning of many words and letters we are led through an explanation of the throne and the sapphire stone and the six steps and the four beasts and the four faces we are told that Metatron includes all the stages downwards from above and upwards from below 248 when Ezekiel saw the Shechinah among the clipot that is to say among the garments he saw with her tents fire without any separation whatsoever and these are the brain that is among all of them he saw them within the earthly river Kavar Caf Bet Resh namely the earthly chariot Resh Caf Bet namely the letters of Kavar rearranged of Metatron that is the chariots of Elohim are twice ten thousand thousands upon Hebshin and thousands Tehillim six thousand eight hundred and eighteen twice ten thousand are twenty thousand from this you should deduct two that are missing as Shin and I spelled the same as Shin and missing Shin and thousands are the missing two thousand eighteen. Thousand remain, which is as the number of the eighteen Chedyad worlds. This is Yezid, which is called Chilid Live, Ched Yud, which includes the tenth rod attired in the tetet nine plus nine equals eighteen of Metatron M E M tetet Reshvav none, and this tetet is taken from the word Totafat Lit frontlets about which it is said, and they shall be as frontlets between your eyes. Devarim sixty eight, who are the eyes? They are those above about which it is said, the heavens were opened, and I saw visions of Elohim Yashiskel eleven. These are the ten visions of Metatron, whom Ezekiel saw as a candle within a lantern. Nine of the visions being clear, with one being big. Two hundred and forty nine. One vision that he saw at the beginning of those ten visions was the one about which it is said, and above the firmament that was over their heads was the likeness of a throne in appearance like a sapphire stone. Yashiskel one hundred and twenty six. Although this verse has already been explained above, new things have to be said about it. Two hundred and fifty. Holy One, blessed be he said to the heavenly encampments, anyone who prays, whether he be a mighty man, a wise man, or a rich man, if he is mighty in merits because he overcomes his evil inclination, a wise man in Torah, and a rich man who is rich in the precepts, do not allow his prayer to enter this chamber until there is seen in him these signs that he has applied my corrections to himself. For this reason, the sages of the Mishnah taught if the rabbi is like an angel of Hashem, Sebiat, let people come to consult him in matters of the Torah. In other words, you may accept the prayer of anyone who is impressed with these signs in his dress. One sign is that he should be marked in his prayer on the blue of the four corners of his fringes, for blue is like the firmament which is Metatron, and it would then follow that he would be like an angel of Hashem, Sebiat, whose form is the blue that is in the fringes, sits at 251, and for this reason, the rabbi set the size for fringes and taught about. A cloak talent that a minor wears and which covers his head and most of his body this is the same as was said about it and a little child shall lead them Yeshaya 116 which alludes to Metatron that is called a little child he leads the four living creatures and includes the throne had six steps I Melashim 1019 namely Chesed Birat Tiferet Netzach Hot and Yezid which are six and since he is composed of ten the tenths Firat of Zeir Anpin and Malchut of Atzalat attire themselves in him for they two are ten and through him the Holy One blessed be he appears in his Shechinah to the prophets for he is composed of tenths Firat and from the side of the Shechinah which Metatron serves as garment to which is the tenth sphere and the blue of the fringes Metatron also appears as the blue of all colors that is to say all the colors were included in this blue 252 for it Malchut that is called blue had Tichlet is the ultimate Hetiklet objective end of the tenths Firat and in it thus was. All the work of the tabernacle of the tent of meeting finished had Badashel Shema 3932 since it is the objective ultimate of all had to clip perfection and the word teachlet and blue comes from the root had Kala CAF lame meaning bright and consummation as it is written and it came to pass of the day that Moses finished had Kalo setting up the tabernacle Gimit bar 71 and the sages said it also as Kala lip bride consummation this is why the Shechinah is called teachlet lip blue. She is the blue flame in a burning candle which consumes the fatty parts of the burnt offerings 253 and about it namely about the light of Shachma in it that is called blue Ezekiel said the likeness of a throne in appearance like a sapphire stone Yashiskel 126 and the particular virtue of this stone is that whoever inherits it the fire of Gehenom has no control over him and there is no flame in the world that can damage it nor any type of metal for if one hits the sapphire stone with the hammer the hammer will break but the stone will be undamaged as the sages said it is therefore quite obvious that water cannot harm it thus for whoever inherits it the verse when you pass through the waters I will be with you Yeshaya 432 will be upheld and all the upper and lower grades of the other side are fearful before him it was also for the blue of the sea that it was said when you pass through the waters I will be with you for with this special attribute the blue light of Malchut that is called sapphire stone the horse and his rider has he thrown into the sea Shema 151 for it is the one appointed over Egypt who drowned in the sea in the strength of this blue light 254 from this blue color the upper and lower beings are fearful the encampments of the sea are fearful of it and the encampments of the firmament which is blue hold it in eyes do the encampments of the blue fires of Gehenom namely the blue of the other side 255 and this blue is judgment for the name of Malchut is Adonai, the letters of which can be rearranged as Dinalit law, and this is the secret of the ruling that the law of the kingdom is indeed the law. The Talit Prayashal has two colors, white and blue, and in respect to these two colors, it is said, and there was under his feet a kind of paved work of sapphire stone. Shema 2410 Lip Nadlit paved work is the white lit leaven of the sapphire because the sapphire is composed of two colors which are mercy and judgment. Namely, white which is mercy and black from which comes the darkness of the blue, and the sages hinted at these two colors when they asked, From what time in the morning may the SH Yisrael be recited as soon as one can distinguish between blue and white for the daughter of the king which is Malchut, which is the secret of the recital of the SH which is the unity of the Holy One, blessed be he is composed of these two colors, white and blue, which are the Yadhevav, Adonai, the Yud Hey is the secret of white while Adonai is the secret of blue thus combining mercy and judgment similarly the Holy One blessed be he who is Zeir and is composed of two colors which is the secret of Yud Hey hey Adonai being mercy and judgment namely the throne of mercy and the throne of judgment 256 the likeness of a throne in appearance like a sapphire stone Yashiskel 126 he asks if the sapphire stone is the blue of the fringes what then is the likeness of a throne he answers that it is to parallel the throne that has 72 bridges namely 72 lights from the name of 72 so should a person be no
numerical value of 600 and if the word sits it is written in the abbreviated spelling with one yun omitted and the chiric vowel ias like a yud and makes up for its omission and on each side of the four corners of his garment there is a fringe with the numerical equivalent of 600 which together it's the 13 links make 600 and 13 258 again the throne had six steps or bob and with the inner meaning of its being spelled out in full is bob alip bob its numerical value is 13 and this bob alip bob is hinted at in three words of the combination of 72 words included in the three verses have and the angel elohim who went before the camp of israel removed have and it came between have and moses stretched out shemot 1419 to 21 and these three words are bob hey bob alip nunyad bob hey bob initial letters of which are bob alip bob and there are hey equals five knots on the fringe namely on each side of the four corners of the garment and the completion of hey which is Aleph is the garment itself, which is one for all of them, and with the letter Hay that is joined with the Bab Aleph Bab that amounts to 13, the total comes to Chai equals 18, which is a tet tet 9 plus 9 equals 18 of Metatron, and 18 Chai hence at Chai a living creature, one of which is on each side of the four corners, and which is made up of four living creatures, for the four corners comprise each other, each living creature having four countenances and four wings, making a total of 32 countenances and wings, all of which are dependent on the fourth of the four living creatures, that is the face of a man, namely a man wearing fringes 259, and these the fringes are 32 in number, as explained above, as is the numerical value of Yud Bab Dalat Hay Aleph Hay Aleph, their complement being Bab Aleph Bab, namely 13 links of each of the four corners, and the Bab Aleph Bab unites with all the four living creatures of the four corners and completes the name Yud Bab. Dalit hey alaf bab alaf bab hey alaf above in zeir and ben and malchut of atzala and completes it below in the living creatures for the purpose of the central column which is metatron is to complete above like typhoret of atzala for metatron's name is as that of his master typhoret in whose image and according to whose likeness he was created for he metatron includes all the stages downwards from above since typhoret and malchut of atzala are attired in him and also upwards from below namely including all four of the holy living creatures Michael Gabriel Muriel Raphael and is held in the center as it is said and the middle bar in the midst of the board shall reach from end to end Shema 2628 260 and he metatron is made up of the four countenances and the four wings of each of the living creatures above in male and female which are yud alaf hey dalit bab non hey yud namely the combination of the two names yud hey bab hey and adonai which are zeir and ben and malchut then heb Az sang Moses Shema 151 for Zeir Anpin, which is the secret of Moses, has in each of his living creatures four countenances and four wings, which is as the numerical value of the word Az equals eight in like manner. There is Az in a lion, Az in an ox, Az in an eagle, Az in a man, making up 32 wings and countenances four times Az 261. And these four countenances are the four letters of Yud Hey Vav Hey, and the four wings are the four letters of Adonai that stand for the four garments of gold, which is the secret of Adonai, and the four garments of white, which is the secret of Yud Hey Vav Hey. The priests wore to make atonement for Israel, and they stand for Adonai. Open my lips, Tehillim 5117, which is said at the beginning of the Amidah prayer, and the prayer itself has in each of the 18 blessings the Yud Hey Vav Hey at the end. Thus Yud Hey Vav Hey occurs 18 times, which makes a total of 72 letters, which is the same as the numerical value of, and they were finished. Have Vachulu Birshi 21, and this is the secret of Yezid, which is called Kolit. All 14 Yud Hey Bab Hey are included in the righteous one that lives forever, which is the secret of Vachulu Birshi 21, 262, and each one of the four living creatures contains the Yud Hey Bab Hey Adonai, namely a total of eight letters on each direction, that is a total of 32 letters, and there are 13 letters in the initials of the three words Bab Hey Bab Alaf Nunyad Bab Hey Bab, which are Bab Alaf Bab having the numerical value of 13, and 13 since the upper and lower beings are included in this Bab Alaf Bab is explained above completes man, which is the central column for the 32 letters of the Yud Hey Bab Hey and Adonai on each side together with the 13 of the Bab Alaf Bab come to 45, the numerical value of Adam Lit Man equals 45, section 46, the four clipots surrounding the four living creatures of faithful. Shepherd tells us about the clipot that's around the four beasts of Metatron saying that they are formless and void and thin and the DP compares the milling of wheat to remove the bran with the hollow that refines Torah matters and provides food for the soul. He talks about the four archangels who control man's four good elements, water, fire, wind, and earth, and the four clipots in destruction, anger, and wrath. When these clipot move away from man, the tree of life takes control of him. In every part of the body is found water, the firmament, the spirit, and the earth, and all the parts of the body are open to welcome the spirit. Were the spirit not to blow in the heart, the fire in the heart would burn up the whole body. 263 above at the tree of life, which is Zeir and there are no clipot, none might enter within the king's gate clothed with sackcloth. Esther 42 lower down around Metatron, there are clipot for he Metatron is in the form of the central column, which is Zeir and for when the Holy One blessed be he is deprived of his Malchut, namely when Malchut is in exile he covers himself with the countenances and wings of his servant who is Metatron as it is written and he rode upon a cherub and did fly to Smuel 2211 for Metatron is called both cherub and chariot 264 and these clipot that's around the four living creatures of Metatron are a formless about which is written a great and strong wind rent the mountains and broke in pieces the rocks before. Hashem I Melashim 1911 be void about which is written and after the wind and earthquake but Hashem was not in the earthquake but these are two clipot which are the secret of the green clipot and the white clipot of the shells of the nut the former formless is the green line while the latter void is smooth stones and is a clipot as hard as a smooth stone these two clipot are also represented by the chaff and the straw of we 265 the third clipot that's around the four living. Creatures of Metatron is thin and is represented by the brand of the wheat for here it sticks to the wheat and cannot be separated from there without grinding it in the millstones which are represented by the grinding molar teeth in a man's jaw with which matters of Torah have to be ground until they are as fine flour and in a seed which is the lips the waste matter which is the brand of the Torah is sorted out until the halacha is as clean fine flour at that time the heart and the brain and all those parts of the body through which the soul spreads take that halacha which is as clean refined flour and the soul lives on it just as the body lives on things from the material world the Elohim has made the one as well as the other Kahilat 714 just as their is food for the body so I ask their food for the soul as it is written come eat of my bread Michelin 95 266 and this clip is like the shell that sticks to the kernel of the nut for when the nut is soft the shell separates from the kernel without difficulty but when the nut is dry it is difficult for man to remove it from there and the difficult problem still remains for this reason the holy one blessed be he commanded man to return in repentance during his youth before the evil inclination makes him old as it is written you shall rise up before the hoary head vayikra 1932 that is to say rise up in repentance before your own old age and this clip is fire about which is written and after the earthquake of fire but hashem was not in the fire i may 1912 the fourth clip is surrounding the four living creatures of metatron is the deep namely and darkness was on the face of the deep Bear she 12 and this is the secret of the space that is in the nut about which is written a still small voice i may 1912 for this is where the king comes and about it is written and out of the midst of it as it were the color of electrum out of the midst of the fire yashiskal 14 267 and these four clip are marked on the four parts of the body and the lung in which is moisture from which come the adhesions of the lung that attach the lobes of the lung to each other and enfeeble it about which it is written her feet go down to death her steps take hold of Sheol Mishle 55 and there is also the great and strong wind rent the mountains that beats in the lobes of a man's lung this is the wind that stirs up a man's body this refers to the first clip of which in Ezekiel is called a storm wind. Yashiskal 14 and this is the wind that Elijah subjugated and on which he ascended on high as it is written and Elijah went up by a storm of wind into heaven to Melashim 211 and this wind bangs against the lung that imbibes all manner of drinks concerning which is written and a wind from Elohim moved over the surface of the wa
These 10 letters of the fourfold Y U D A Bob A 269 and when do they amount to 72 types of melody this being the secret of the first three of the 72 letter name it is when the rule of sin destruction anger and wrath passes for in them does the storm wind beat on the four sides adding up to you 10 crowns as above this is so in the four letters of Y U D A Bob A in the double triple and quadruple song they are 10 letters adding up to a total of 72 and they then subjugate 72 nations. Which are the 70 nations plus Edom and Ishmael as it is written but when the wicked perish there is jubilation Michelet 1110 since when the four clip out of sin destruction anger and wrath perish the first three are revealed which is the secret of jubilation namely 72 types of melody 270 for Michael Gabriel Muriel and Raphael who are the living creatures of the chariot control man's four good elements which are water fire wind and earth which are the secret of Chesed and Buritiferet. And Malchut each one of them having four countenances lion ox eagle man and sin destruction anger and wrath are dependent on white gall which is the lung in which they make an adhesion and on the red gall that is in the liver that turns red with Mars head myadim from red and on the green gall head mara that is attached to the liver which is the sword of the angel of death about which it is said her end is bitter head mara as wormwood sharp as a two-edged sword Michelet 54 and on the black. Gall which is Lilith which is the planet Hep Shabtai Saturn which is controlled by the spleen which is melancholy lower Sheol poverty and darkness weeping and mourning and starvation 271 immediately when these four clipot move away from man the tree of life takes control over him with 72 countenances of the illumination of Malchut namely the fourfold Yud Hey Bob Hey Thus Yud Hey Yud Hey Bob and Yud Hey Bob Hey the numerical value of which I 72 thus there are 10 letters suspended from. The four winds which are the four letters of the Yud Hey Bob Hey about which it is said thus says Adonai Elohim come from the four winds O breath Hebrew Ash this is the spirit of Messiah about whom it is said and the Hebrew Ash spirit of Hashem shall rest upon him Yeshua 112 which is the spirit of Malchut when Yud Hey Bob Hey which is Z E I R N blows in the right oracle of the heart where Shachma from the side of Chesed is in which one who wants to gain wisdom will move to the south with. Wisdom and Chesed blows in Bina and then in Zeir and and then in Malchut when it blows in Chakma it is Yud when in Bina hey, when in Typhoret Bob and when in Malchut it is Hey the Yud Hey Bob hey, which is Zeir and knocks on all four of these Firot and becomes four combinations when beating in Chakma he is Yud when beating in Bina Yud Hey when beating in Typhoret Yud Hey Bob and when in Malchut Yud Hey Bob and Hey making a total of ten letters paralleling the tenth Firot and there. Numerical value is 72 which is Chakma namely the thought of the heart 272 Yud Bob Dalat Hey Aleph Bob Aleph Bob Aleph has a numerical value of 45 which is Zeir and whose right is water and is the great hand namely Chesed and the right column is left is fire which is the strong hand namely Bure and the left column in the central column that is between them he is the uplifted hand namely Typhoret which is the central column which is the Holy Spirit and he has altogether Yud Hey. For he has the mokin of the first three from Yud 273 wherever the spirit was minded to go they moved for the spirit of the living creature was in the wheels Yashis 120 water and fire are directed by the spirit for it grips both of them and throbs on the arteries of the brain which is water and is chakma and on the arteries of the heart which is fire and is bina and the place of the spirit wind is in the lobes of the lung is above 274 in every part of the body are to be. Found these four namely the wheels of the sea of the Torah which is water and the wheels of the firmament which is fire all of them ascending and descending in it in the bodily part for the water which is right and she descends while the fire which is the left and bura ascends for the left illuminates only upwards from below while it the spirit which is typhoret and the central column has its place in the center between the firmament and the sea which are the left and the right and its tool. Of the spirit which is typhoid is the earth which is dust which is the Sheshina 275 and just like the birds who spread their wings against the wind so that they can fly with it so also all the parts of the body are open at a number of sources at a number of joints a number of arteries a number of compartments of the heart and a number of areas of the brain in order to welcome the spirit which is the central column were it not to blow in the compartments of the heart the fire that is in the heart which is the secret of the left column would burn up the whole body that is to say were it not for the central column which is called wind uniting the right and the left with each other the judgment of the left side which is the secret of the fire that is in the heart would burn up the whole body for the illumination of the left without the right is harsh and bitter judgment and a number of ladders namely steps and compartments from the arteries of the aorta and trachea are all Corrected with it with the wind which is the central column section 47 voice and speech we learn how speech arises through the body and the effect of speaking the sh mal yisrael and the amid of the faithful shepherd talks about the speech and silence of the beast of fire in ezekiel's vision 276 when speech rises that is to say at the beginning of the formation of speech in a man to the lobes of the lung it there becomes a voice at that time it is said for a bird of the sky shall carry the sound kahilat 1020 the voice of hashem is upon the waters tehillim 293 because it ascends from the side of the water which is the right which is the brain where it ascends through the lobes of the lung the voice of hashem hews out flames of fire but 297 from the side of the heart which is the left which is fire and when the voice emerges from the mouth which is the secret of malchut it is called speech 277 and just as there are two lobes lit wings to it. Lung namely the two halves of the lung that open up to welcome the voice as it is written thus were their faces and their wings were divided upwards yet it's called 111 for the lobes of the lungs are separated from each other so also are the lips two in number that take the speech and cast it upwards 278 and just as there are five lobes to the lung namely five divisions in the two halves of the lung all of them being open without an adhesion to receive this voice so must there be five corrections in the mouth all of them open without adhesions and the five corrections are the guttural letters Allah Chetayin that are formed in the throat the labial letters Betbab M-E-M-P that are formed with the lips and the letters Gimel Y-U-D-C-A-F-K-O-F that are formed in the roof of the mouth Dalit Lamet Nuntop that are formed on the tongue and Zayin Samechin Rush by the teeth 279 and speech will be in them in the five emissions of the mouth without any adhesion or Hindrance as it is written and it came to pass before he had done speaking that behold Rivka came out. Bershi 2415 where Rivka is the prayer that is speech for this reason have we learned if the prayer is fluent in my mouth I know that it has been accepted but if there is an adhesion and it comes out with a hindrance I know that my prayer is in disorder because there is an adhesion in the lung which is defective 280 and this voice refers to the SH Yisrael namely the unity of the six words of the SH Yisrael which is the unity of Zeir and called voice on this I heard the noise of their wings Yashiskal 124 when Yudhei Bob Zeir and whose voice emerges to welcome the Sheshana with whispered prayer which is speech namely Malchut that is called speech of which IT is said Adonai you open my lips Tehillim 5117 all the parts namely all the 248 lights of Chesed of Zeir and which are called the 248 parts of the body their wings namely Malchut which is in each part are all of them opened by the 248 words in the four sections of the recital of the SH Yisrael in which the voice descends 281 and when the voice descends to welcome the Sheshana in the Amit Ang standing prayer a number of birds chirp with it they being the secret to the 248 lights of the Sheshana which is the secret of speech and for this reason they chirp all of them in a number of types of melody on the parts of the body which are the 248 lights of Zeir and which are the branches of the tree and on all the wings that are in all the parts namely on Malchut which is in each part which is called wing for there is a lodging place of the bird that is called Adonai namely Malchut for the 248 lights of Malchut dwell on the aspect of the wing that is in each of the 248 lights of Zeir and for each aspect receives from the one that is parallel to it above for on each of the branches of Zeir and Malchut is open to her husband this being the secret of Adonai. You open my lips which is opening to Zeir Anpin with the Amit of prayer for there is not one of the 248 parts of the Shechinah that is not open to receive Zeir Anpin. This is why the Shechinah is called the talk of the ministering angels
Voice are united together that is Zeir and and Malchud, which are the combination Yad Aleph Hey Dalit Bav Nun Hey Yad. During the Amid of prayer, they are silent, but when their countenances, which is the secret of Zeir and and their wings, which is the secret of Malchud, are divided, dash when Yad Hey Bav Hey is separated from Adonai, the Yud Hey Bav Hey is to be found in the four countenances of the living creatures, which are all open and before the wings of the living creatures that are the aspect of Adonai and the aspect of speech. They speak, requesting nourishment from Zeir and for and it was food for all. Daniel 418 Adonai, who is Malchud, is to be found in the wings of the living creatures, and all of them are open to receive from the living creatures. 283 The living creatures that are in Yetzirah or with a voice that is Zeir and called Yad Hey Bav Hey, and they are all on the right, namely which Esedim the Ophanim, which are in Asiyah, and speech, which is from Malchud. Called Adonai, and they are on the left in the seraphim, which are in Bria, voice and speech become joint beings, Zeir and and Malchut, and they are in the center, and they attire themselves in one unity in the two names, Yud Hey Bav Hey Adonai, and combine one with the other, Yud Aleph Hey Dalit Bav Nun Hey Yud about the mighty is said, and left Alpha Bear Sheet 120, and also then one of the seraphim flew to me, Yashiah 66, the reference being to Metatron, and it is said about them for a bird of it. Sky shall carry the sound, and that which has wings shall tell the matter, Kahilat 1020, where the sound is from the side of the Yud Hey Bav Hey attired with Metatron, and that which has the wings shall tell the matter, Is from the side of Adonai attired with Metatron, above him stood the seraphim, each one had six wings, Yashiah 62 is from the side of the letter of numerical value equals six, which I has attired in them, and is the central column incorporating right and left, including the six of. Jesus Bureau Typhor at Netzach Hadiz and it includes the six words of the unity as expressed in the SH Israel and that is derived from with two he covered his face with two he covered his feet and with two he did fly Yeshayah 62 284 from Enalot Yashiskal 14 to appearance of a man Yashiskal 126 I as considered to be one correction for there are four clipot within which are the four living creatures and the secret of Metatron is that Visavis the living creatures he is the inner meaning of the firmament which is above their heads and leads them while Visavis Malchut he is the inner meaning of throne and all of this is the first correction the second correction is and upon the likeness of the throne was a likeness as the appearance of a man above upon a divid whereby man is meant the imprint of the scroll of the Torah namely Malchut that is the imprint of Zeir and who is called the Torah scroll and this is according to the beauty had Typhoret of man that it may remain in the house Yeshayah 4413 in other words Malchut is according to the Typhoret of man but not really Typhoret itself so also here where it is said as the appearance of a man but not man itself it is applied to Malchut for whom Metatron is a throne section 48 the recital of the SH Mothef Island and straps the sages taught that reciting the SH Mah Yisrael twice daily is as good as meditating day and night the faithful shepherd goes over the meaning of it. Number of knots in the prayer shawl, the four passages and the knots in the Tefillin and the length and winding of the straps. We learn that God and his Shechinah are the voice and speech of every angel, and that they are in every voice and speech of Torah, and in every voice of prayer, and every single precept, and in every place of God's rule in the upper and lower worlds. 285 The sages taught anyone reciting the SH Yisrael morning and evening is as though he had observed the saying that, but you shall meditate there in day and night. Yahashua 18 This is because the recital of the SH Yisrael encompasses right and left, which are the secret of day and night. He explains for a prayer shawl is white, that is to say, the garment of the fringes is of the aspect of the white that is in it, and not the blue that is in it, and is to the right from the side of Jesus, and it is said about it, Almighty King who sits on the throne of mercy governs with kindness, had chased it, Yeshua 165, and also. And in mercy had Chesed a throne is established with the numerical value of Chesed is 72 which hints at the 72 links and knots of the prayer shawl namely 4 times 18286 and there is a prayer shawl from the side of Metatron which is the tetet of Metatron which includes the 18 links and knots on each corner of the prayer shawl i.e. 5 knots paralleling the 5 books of the Torah and 13 links namely the 13 loops that are wound around the fringes which parallel the 13 attributes of mercy mentioned in the Torah about which it is said there are 13 exegetical principles by which the Torah is expounded which is the secret of the 13 attributes of mercy that are drawn down from the 13 emendations of the beard of Eric and Pen 287 about Malchut it is said as the appearance of a man above upon it Yashiskal 126 namely that Malchut has the form of Typhoret which is Typhoret of man upon it from above and is called by the name of Typhoret which I asked Yadvav Dalit Hey Aleph Bav Aleph Bav Hey Aleph This is the inner meaning of the verse Everyone that is called by my name for I have created him for my glory I have formed him I have made him Yeshayah 437 Therefore as the appearance of a man from above is the Shechinah which is as the form of the central column which is Typhoret with four countenances and tense that make man that is the ten letters Yud Bav Dalit Hey Aleph Bav Aleph Bav Hey Aleph have the numerical value of Adam 45 and the four faces of Adam are the four simple letters of Yud Hey Bav Hey which together make Yad Dalit equals 14 letters about which IT is said and used similes by the hand Hebyad Yad Dalit of the prophets Hashia 1211 288 Again the Tzitzit is called living Hebshai equals 18 namely the 13 links and five knots from the aspect of the righteous one which is Yazid in whom namely by whose unity the Holy One blessed be and his Shechinah are called by the name Man that is why Yudhi Bob he spelled out in full with Aleph has the same numerical value as man where he the central column that is Zeir and is why Yudhi Bob Dalit Hey Aleph Bob Aleph Bob and has the numerical value of Du Hatal equals 39 while his Chechenat is Hey Aleph and with Hey the name Adam I has completed this is because Du is in numerical value equal to Yudhi Bob Dalit Hey Aleph Bob Aleph Bob and this the righteous one called living causes the Du to fall which is why Yudhi Bob Dalit Hey Aleph Bob Aleph Bob onto the Hey Aleph which is the Chechenat for yes it is the knot of the prayer shawl which is 18 worlds on each side namely five knots and 13 links that bind together and unite the Holy One blessed be and his Chechenat on all sides with the four corners of the prayer shawl which are Chesed Bureau Typhoret and Malchut 289 Tefilin are the aspect of the left column as it is said Hashem has sworn by his right hand and by the arm of his strength Yeshayah 628 whereby his right hand refers to the Torah and by the arm of his strength refers to Tefillin. The four passages in the Tefillin are the four letters Yud Hey Bav Hey Adonai is a palace for the four letters which are the four passages in the four receptacles of the Tefillin. The knot of the hand Tefillin is the righteous one who lives forever which is Yezid and is the bond between the two of them between the Yud Hey Bav Hey and Adonai on the left arm. The knot of the head Tefillin is the central column. Namely Tiferet by which are united together on high the Yud Hey Bav Hey and Hiya which are Shachma and Bina for Zeir and Benesense and unites Shachma and Bina which are called the Yud Hey Bav Hey and Hiya where Dad I has made 290. The recital of the SH Mah is the unification that is at the center namely the unity that is in Chesed Bureau Tiferet and it is held between the fringes and the Tefillin for the fringes that are of the aspect of the white that is in them are on its right end. The Tefillin are its left for all of the passages of the fringes and Tefillin are included in the unification of the recital of the SH Ma'an from the side of the central column namely Prayer Shal and Tefillin it is said and it shall be for a sign upon your hand and for frontlets between your eyes Shema 1316 and it is also said that they make the fringes be Midbar 1538 291 the letter Shin of the Tefillin is tradition Moses received on Mount Sinai as it is written and all peoples of it. Earth shall see that you are called by the name of Hashem and they shall be afraid of you Devarim 2810 and it has been taught what is the Yud Hey Bav Hey it is the head Tefillin specifically the Shin Shin of the Tefillin that are visible on them from the two external sides the two Shin have the numerical value of 600 Shin Shin are the six Hebshish stages Chesed
to 613 and the sages have taught that the recital of the SH Yisrael incorporating tefillin and fringes contains 613 and the fringes estes in numerical value is 600 which together with the 13 links thereof makes 613 and there is also 613 in the aspect of tefillin like the numerical equivalent of the two letters chin on them and so it is throughout 293 and they shall be as frontlets tot fitlet frontlet which can be split into two tetet and pe top the numerical value of Tetet is living at chai equals 18 worlds the righteous one namely is a parallel to which is Metatron for Yezid is attired with Metatron P.E. Toph refers to Typhoret whose letters may be rearranged as Toph Alafresh P.E. Toph namely a description of P.E. Toph and Metatron is Typhoret's horse that is to say Typhoret rides upon him for all the Sphirot dress up in Metatron at one time it might be Typhoret that wears him at another Yezid and at another Malchud while at other times all three might be attired with him and so it is that his relationship to them is as that of body to soul and when the Holy One blessed be he removes himself from him Metatron is left dumb having neither voice nor speech for the Holy One blessed be and his Chechenot are the voice and speech of every angel and they are in every voice and speech of Torah and in every voice of prayer and in each single precept and in every place of his rule in the upper worlds and in the lower worlds he is the life of everything. He carries everything 294 just as there is no speech without voice and no voice without speech so is there no Adonai without the Yadhei Vavhei and this is true for the world of Atzalat since there no separation exists between Zeir and Ben and Malchud who are voice and speech but in the world of separation namely in the three worlds of Briya Yitzra and Asiyah there is voice without speech yet in Atzalat they are united and the knot of the Tefillin which is Shetay which is Yezid is held by them from above and from below and this is the righteous one the life of the worlds who is held between voice and speech and unites them 295 at this point the faithful shepherd chanced upon the old man and said old man old man the Tefillin and the fringes and the section on the mezuzah are three precepts that are incorporated in the recital of the SH Yisrael and the recital of the SH is the fourth precept and the four correspond to Chesed Bira Tiferet and Malchud where fringes and Tefillin are Chesed and Bira the recital of the SH Mahias Tiferet that unites them and the mezuzah is Malchud fringes are mentioned three times paralleling the three columns and regarding Tefillin the word sign which is Yezid is mentioned twice once for the knot of the head Tefillin and once for the knot of the hand Tefillin in respect to the fringes the letters A of the word Tiskerlit that you remember Bimit Bar 1540 has to be well stressed for this letters A in numerical value. 7 implies Malchud which is the seventh sphere and is the secret of the blue that is in the fringe on which the remembering depends and on the mezuzah which is Malchud the name Shade is on the outside while Yadhei Vavhei is on the inside this is because there are two matings the external mating with Yezid and the internal mating with Tiferet the faithful shepherd clarified all this to the old man for him to understand on his own 296 the faithful shepherd answers the various questions that face us why are there open and closed sections why does the fringe have a fixed length and width for the length of each fringe was determined as the size of 12 thumbs why was the precept of the blue fixed at one through twisted threads and two thirds branched untwisted threads why between each pair of knots in the fringes does there have to be a space of a full thumbs breadth and why should each link be triple namely three loops also why are tefillin on the brain and against the heart and why is the length of the straps to the heart on the left and to the navel on the right and why does the strap of the hand tefillin have to be wound three times around the middle finger 297 he answers but the garment is certainly not important unless it has three on three for each side of the four sides making 12 and they represent the four garments of white that parallels eir and which is the secret of the four letters of the yud hey and the four garments of gold that Parallel Malchud which is the secret of the four letters of Adonai and the four garments of the ordinary priest which is the secret of Metatron in terms of the blessing of an ordinary priest it is implied let not the blessing of an ordinary man be considered lightly in your eyes and therefore the blue is one through twisted thread namely braided as thirteen links are wound around the fringes for it is parallel to the four garments of white which is the secret of Zeir and who is the root end. Two thirds are branched untwisted thread for it has to hang loose like the branches on a tree 298 and every link must be triple made up of three namely of three loops and the reason is that each tripling is from the side of holiness which is the secret of the three columns as it is written they proclaim you holy three times and Yisrael is made up of three parts namely priest Levites and Yisrael in order to subjugate the captains Hepshalashim from Shalash three of the other side is it is written and captains over every one of them Shemot 147 for the fringes from the side of the central column which is Tiferet which is the third of the patriarchs for the patriarchs are Chesed, Bira and Tiferet and everything that comes in threes has its root in the 72 letter that starts with Vav, Hei, Vav, Yud, Lame, Yud, in which every word consists of three letters from its point of view every link is composed of three triple loops and the link is the Shechina which is the secret of they proclaim you holy three times and is tripled in the central column for it receives from the central column the three columns that are in it thus is it made up of the three branches of the patriarchs namely of Netzach, and Yezid which are the branches of Chesed, Bira and Tiferet which are called the patriarchs and they are the letter Shin from the word Shabbat which has three heads which is the secret of Netzach, and Yezid the bat from the word Shabbat alludes to the Shechina. Who is an only daughter had bad, which is the secret of the link and the secret of the blue that is in the tzitzit 299 happy is the body who is thus marked with the sheshana and the holy one blessed be he through the wings of a precept namely with the 13 links in the precept of the fringe and marked with the strap of the hand tefillin on the middle finger with three loops which is like a link wound around with three loops around the finger this also parallels the three columns just like the link of the fringe and there are 14 links and it is marked with the knot of the tefillin that consists of two knots the one on the head and the other on the arm for they also are triple and altogether there are 15 triplets for two knots in one knot is also considered a triple making therefore 15 triples 300 the 13 triple links contain 39 loops as the numerical value of the word do have tall equals 39 which together with the 13 links themselves that have it Numerical value of the word one have equals thirteen adds up to sun have ben equals fifty-two and this hints at the sun of Yudhe which is the central column Zeir and ben three hundred and one each knot is in the form of a right palm each link is in the form of a finger with three joints paralleling the three loops and so it is that all the fingers have three joints except the thumb that has just two and it is the thumb that gives the distance between each pair of knots in the fringe for there has to be a space between them of the full thumb breadth and this is the same measurement as the nose the width of the right and left eye the distance between the eyes the measurement of the right and left ear and of each lip and of the tongue and the curtains shall be all of one measure Shema two hundred and sixty-two three hundred and two cubit lit arm is the measure of the body in four directions and up and down making six cubits and each arm has three joints namely the aspect of three columns making eighteen joints in the six cubits being. The secret of the eighteen wavings with which we wave the lalav in six directions, three in each direction, and about them it is said, This year's stature is like a palm tree, Sher Hasharim 78, for a palm tree grows in seventy years, which is the secret of the seven lords, Firot, that are in the body where Chakma, which is the secret of the stature, is revealed and not in the head, as explained above, and therefore the stature, which is the secret of the first three, is likened to a palm tree, and this is the height of the stature that it is only in the body that the gathering had might be of Israel, which is Zeir and bestows upon the Shechin offer the letters of the word might be rearranged, spell stature had coma, that is to say, Zeir and emanates the stature of body to Malchut, and we wave the lalav four times when we recite Halal, this makes four times eighteen, which is seventy two, for the seventy two letter name is the root of the three columns, and is the secret of the three verses, and the angel of Elohim. Who went before the camp of Israel removed and it came and Moses stretched out Shemot 1419 to 21 303 and the secret of the living creatures their stature is the secret of the verse as for their rooms they were so high that they were dreadful and their rooms Yashiskel 118 their rooms refers to the four living creatures of the lower chariot which are from Malchut they were so high refers to the four living creatures of the central chariot which is the secret of Zeir
Answers when one bows one should bow at bless the first word of each blessing and when returning to the upright position one should do so at the mention of the divine there are four occasions when one has to bow and four when one has to stand upright one has to bow and then stand upright at the beginning and end of the first blessing of the Amida and also at the beginning and end of Madam we give thanks by so bowing and standing upright one suggests going to and bringing to him to whom the four directions belong and ascending and descending for him to whom the heaven and the earth belong the same as with the law these are the six directions towards heaven and towards the earth and to the four points of the compass which parallel the first three blessings which are Chisid, Bura and Tiferet and the last three blessings which are Netzach, Hot and Yezid making a total of eight bows and again standing upright and there are four in Mayhi who makes peace in his high places. Make peace for us and for all Israel, namely bowing and again standing upright to the left and bowing and again standing upright to the right. And this is like one who stands opposite his master. His right will be his master's left and his left will be his master's right. He thus offers peace to his left and his right. Where his right is opposite his master's left and his left is opposite his master's right. Three hundred and five. This makes a total of twelve bows and standing upright, namely four bows and standing upright at the beginning and end of abot. Four bows and standing upright at the beginning and end of madam. Four bows and standing upright to the right and left during Mayhu makes peace. And they contain seventy-two eyes. For there are six directions, namely to him to whom the four points of the compass belong, together with the heavens and the earth as above. And six times twelve by seventy-two. And because they draw down chakma in the secret of the standing upright, they are therefore called. Eyes the six bows contain eighteen movements, three in each bow for one has to bend the head, the back, and the tail, loosening the eighteen vertebrae in the spine, thus alluding to Yezid, which is called living Hachai equals eighteen. And the implication is that one has to include Yezid in these six bows and the twelve bows and standing upright amount to seventy-two as above. And these seventy-two eyes of the Holy One, blessed be He, that are emanated to Malchud, illuminated the seventy-two wings of the Shechinah that rises up over them and is called standing, which is the secret of the Amidalit standing prayer. For initially Malchud was a state of prostration, which is the secret of the bowing, and has to be raised up through the name of the Yudhei Vavhei, and has to be set upright through the divine name through eighteen worlds, which is through Yezid that is called living, and through the four standings upright in six blessings, which is Tiferet, including the first three blessings and the last three blessings. 306 and one has to bow at the living of the world, namely at the attribute of Yezid which is called living and this is Vav Vav and Vav for when one bows one should bow at blessed which is Yezid that is called blessed and when returning to the upright position one should do so at the mention of the Yudhei Vav which is the central column that is Tiferet which is called the Yudhei Vav and the righteous one that is called blessed and they are Vav Vav and Vav for Tiferet is the secret of the letter Vav fully written with Vav Vav while Yezid is the secret of the letter Vav written as a single Vav and these three BABS are alluded to in the initial letters of the three verses and the angel of Elohim who went before the camp of Israel removed Hebei and it came Hebei and Moses stretched out Hebei at Shemot 1419 to 21 and they are the secret of the three columns of the 72 letter name the upper Vav Vav which is Tiferet is connected with standing upright and with Bowing down and is therefore with two bobs, but Yezid which is connected with bowing only has just one bob and all of them all the three bobs add up to eighteen corresponding to the eighteen blessings of the Amid of prayer three hundred and seven there are four bows at Adonai and four standings upright at the Yudhei Vavhe which is the central column called Yudhei Vavhe while the Sheshanai is called Adonai the living one of the worlds which is Yezid unites them namely Yudhei Vavhe and Adonai one with the other making Yud Aleph Hei Dalet Vav Nun which is the letters of Yudhei Vavhe and Adonai interwoven the numerical value of these Ayas Amen ninety one at the conclusion of each of the eighteen blessings of the Shemet Esrei where is Yudhei Vavhe there are eighteen times the four letters of Yudhei Vavhe and eighteen x four equals seventy two which are the seventy two eyes that illuminate in the seventy two wings which are eighteen times the four letters of Adonai three hundred and eight and the secret of the matter is in the verse. As for their rooms, they were so high that they were dreadful, and their rooms, Yashiskal 118, that refers to the living creatures. As for as for their rooms, refers to the wings, which is Malchut, they were so high, refers to countenances, which is Zeir and Ben, and their rooms, which are over them in the aspect of Bina, are full of eyes round about them. For, for all of them are surrounded on the four sides by the four letters, and there would seem to be a contradiction here, for he has said that the 72 eyes are in Zeir and Ben, he thus adds, and everything is true, that is to say, all three aspects, pinions, countenances, eyes are all included in Zeir and Ben, which is called truth, and the proof of this is to be found in the saying, there are I and Lid I equal 70 faces to the Torah, thus the Torah, which is Zeir and Ben, has eyes and faces, but in the particular aspect, the wings are considered Adonai, which is Malchut, the faces are Yudhei Vavhe, which is Zeir and Ben, and the eyes are Ihaya, which is Bina the sum total of the three names Adonai Yudhi Hei Vav Hei and Hei is Yud Bet Kaf equals 112 and these three letters are the initial letters of the words Yushad Lit Unity Barachalit Blessing and Kadashalit Sanctification the name Adonai alludes to the aspect of action the Yud Hei Vav Hei at the aspect of speech and Hei at the aspect of thought 309 each and every eye is of the size of a thumb and this is the middling Vav namely the aspect of the central column of the only two joints the upper joint is missing in IT for the thumb has but two joints which are the secret of Yud Yud in respect to the nose the thumb is called Vav namely middle Vav and in respect to the two nostrils that are in the nose which are right and left and not as one they are called Yud Yud the numerical value of the Vav together with the two letters Yud is Yud Vav Dalit Hei Alat namely 26 and this is as in Vayitzer Lit form Bereshit 27 which is spelled at the beginning with Vav N. 2YUDS which teaches about the size of the thumb and is the secret of the control of Chesedim which is the attribute of the thumb and is the size of each measure of Yud Vav Dalet Hayalat which is the upper three Sfirat whenever the upper three Sfirat have control in each and every part of the body that is to say in every limb there is a head and the body and the measure of thumb which is Chesedim controls the measure of the head of the limb every limb here means every whole limb such as in spreads abroad her wings takes them bears them on her pinions also limbs to bar 3211 there are wings which are the lower aspect of the limb which is the aspect of a three jointed finger and there is a limb and there is the aspect of the thumb of two joints because it is the upper aspect which is the secret of YUDH that is in IT 310 and there is no limb in the whole of his chariot that does not have the form of a complete limb namely aspect of head and of body is above in the Preceding paragraph and in every place you will find thus where their faces and their wings were divided upwards. Yashiskal 111, namely in the aspect of the upper three sphirot of the limb where a thumb's measure is in control as the right and the left of the central column are separated as above. And this corresponds to the open sections, namely the biblical text leaves the line open and continues on the subsequent line in the tefillin which parallels the aspect of the upper three sphirot which are separated to welcome the Torah which is Zeir and Ben as it is the upper three sphirot, namely the eyes and the countenances as above. And when they are below in the aspect of the six ends, there is then a mating between right and left of the central column as well as between Zeir and Ben and Malchud which are right and left. And then the sections of the tefillin are closed, namely the next verse in the biblical text continues on the same line paralleling the Yadalaf Hadalaf Vav Nunhayad that are on. Them with their faces and their wings, which are Zeir and Ben and Malchud, who are here united in each other, and thus the sections are closed. And here their faces and their wings are not separated because it is from below, which is the six intermediate Sfirah 311. And the Holy One, blessed be He, makes marks on Yisrael in respect thereof, namely in respect to the countenances and wings of the living creatures in the prayer, in order that Yisrael should be friends with the living creatures, namely by bowing with the whole body in the eighteen blessings of the prayer, so that He should in each and every one of their limbs make Amen King over them, which is the secret of Yud Aleph Hey Dalit Vav Nun which has the same numerical value as Amen. For by bowing one draws down Adonai, and by standing upright one draws down the Yud
It is said thus were their faces and their wings were divided four faces parallels the yud hey and their wings parallels Adonai and this is the secret of and make one cherub at the one end Shema 2519 which is the yud hey and one cherub at the other end David which is Adonai and the two are separated for the unity of Adonai and the yud hey and the combination is not achieved in the prayers in general but only in the prayer of Amida but when the cantor of the service repeats the prayer and one responds Amen which unites and combines yud hey with Adonai the numerical value of Amen being the same as that of the two names combined he is thus greater than the one who says the blessing for he is in the second coupling namely in the lower joining of the six intermediate spirot for it is in the second coupling that the two names the yud hey and Adonai join together at the beginning namely at the first joining which parallels the first. Three spirot the loops held one curtain to another Shema 3612 on the boards which are the connection of the fingers as the word Kerashim Lit board is composed of the same letters of Kesharim Lit connections for then the tabernacle is not one according to the secret of Yud Allah Hey Dalit Vav Nun Hey Yud but at the repetition by the cantor of the prayers which is the secret of the Amida he answers Amen which is the unification of the combination Yud Allah Hey Dalit Vav Nun Hey Yud whose total numerical value is as that of the letters of the word Amen then the tabernacle may be one Shema 266 for in it they are coupled one to another Shema 263 that alludes to Yud Hey Vav Hey Adonai thus greater is the one who responds with Amen at the Amida prayer more so than the one who blesses during the other blessings of the prayer section 50 at times they are silent and at times they are speaking the section tells about the arrangement of speech in Prayer the title refers to the beast of fire in Ezekiel's vision and we hear that they are silent when God speaks even as Israel should be quiet when the Torah is being read those who are silent during prayer and Halachah will receive the reward of understanding 313 the third correction is the arrangement of the speech in prayer in which the living creatures of fire speak and this is and I saw something like the color of electrum like the appearance of fire round about enclosing it. Yashiskel 127 this is the secret of the electrum that those living creatures of fire sometimes are silent and at other times speak and they are the secret of the congregation listening to the reading of the Torah for they are silent before the Torah scroll at this time when speech emerges from the mouth of the reader for they consider it as though they were receiving the Torah on Mount Sinai and when the Holy One blessed be he said I am Hashem your Elohim Shema 202 nothing but his speech was Heard no other sound nor speech of the living creatures and therefore since the one who reads in the Torah is in the place of the Holy One blessed be he on Sinai it is necessary then to be quiet 314 and likewise as we have said regarding I am so is it always when the speech emerges from the mouth of the Holy One blessed be he the living creatures of fire are quiet for that is the time of the unity of voice and speech and Shachma ceases and the control of Shasadim begins this being the secret of their being silent and when he is silent namely before there is yet unity of voice and speech then the living creatures of fire are speaking this is as it is written and all the people perceive the thunderings live voices Shema 2015 namely the voice of the beings who were roaring and the lightnings which were emitted with the speech of the living creatures with many types of melody before the king for this was before the Holy One blessed be he started to speak and when he said I am the living creatures fell quiet and nothing was to be heard except his voice as explained above and those who are quiet at the time of the reading from the scroll of the Torah have the same form as those living creatures who are quiet at the time of speech of the Holy One blessed be he as explained above and the Holy One blessed be he commanded that the beasts be brought into the room that is like the appearance of fire round about enclosing it for this is the secret of harsh judgments that are revealed at the time when Shachma is revealed and these judgments were ordained by the Holy One blessed be he that they should enclose them as does a room to protect them from the external forces that these latter should not suckle from them 315 again those who are silent during the prayer during the 18 blessings for that is where the unification is will enter into the room of its appearance namely like the appearance of fire round about enclosing it this will be there Reward for the future and also those who are silent before the Halachah, namely those who are silent in order to hear and understand the practical law is expounded by the rabbi about which it is said the reward of listening to the exposition of the law is in the understanding thereof they will enter into the room which is the palace of its appearance of the Torah which is fire about which it is said is not my word like a fire says Hashem and like a hammer that breaks the rock in pieces. Yermea 2329 and the rock mentioned here is that about which it is said and speak to the rock before their eyes and it shall give forth its water be midbar 208 which is malchute for those who engage in the study of the Torah for its own sake the waters of the Torah come forth for them corrected and it is said about them and the congregation drank and their beasts also be midbar 2011 but those who do not engage in the Torah for its own sake shall find that the waters emerge for them bitter end. About them it is said, and they made their lives bitter with heart, had kasha bondage in mortar, had jimmer, and in brick, had levanim, shemot 114, kasha is with difficult questioning or apparent contradictions, had kushishimer refers to the exegetical principle of inference from minor to major, had kal vashimer, and levanim means the elucidation of the halacha section 51, and their feet were straight feet, the faithful shepherd undertakes a difficult explanation of a portion of Ezekiel's vision from which we understand that people must run to the Torah and its precepts and return in repentance 316, the fourth and fifth corrections are from what appeared to be his loins upward and from what appeared to be his loins downward, yashiskel 127, about which it is said that the thighs of the living creatures are equivalent to all of them, and they are in the sphirot of netzash and hot, for netzash and hot are called loins, and from what appeared to be his loins. Upward is Netzach and from what appeared to be his loins downward is hot and Metatron is a letter in his army for he has the form of a righteous one which is Yezid for righteous ones Adik which is Yezid of Zeir and is a letter in his heavenly host in Atzalot while Metatron is a letter in his earthly host in Briya Metatron has Shaday in him as he has the same numerical value as the Shaday about whom it is said and the living creatures ran and returned like the appearance of a flash of lightning Yashiskel 114 317 and their feet were straight feet Yashiskel 17 for the feet of the demons are crooked while about their feet namely about the feet of the holy beings it is said and their feet were straight feet this is from the point of view of a living creature which is Yisrael and Yisrael includes three living creatures about whom it is said the patriarchs are the chariot 318 and the sole of their feet was like the sole of a calf's foot Yashiskel 17 because they are from the side of the living creature that is called ox which is the secret of the left column and this is why they had a calf's foot and they sparkled like the color of burnished brass yashiskel 17 namely from the side of the slithering serpent that is in the sea and which ascends to the one on the dry land namely that ascends to fight with the serpent that is on the dry land serpent had nakash and brass had nakoshe are male and female which are in the brightness and it is therefore said and they sparkled like the color of burnished brass namely from the side of the serpent who illuminates in them ran yashiskel 114 which is said about the beings is from the side of nuriel which has the same numerical number as ritzol it ran similarly and returned which is said about the living creatures is from the side of shade which has the same numerical value as and returned had bashif and this is the numerical value of metatron and this has already been explained above 319 And whenever Israel heard the voice of Torah and prayer from the east, they would run to the east and similarly to the west and likewise to the south and to the north, said the Holy One, Blessed be he to the ministering angels, those who run to the ordained prayer and who run to hear the lesson on the Shabbat and run to do my will and who return in repentance, they are to be received in the temple of this appearance, namely in the temple of Netzach and Hot, for by these signs that they run to the Torah and precepts and return in repentance, namely ran and return, they are fellows with you, for they run and return in Torah, just as the living creatures who ran and returned in the speech of Halachah, and they are recorded with you, them you shall bring into this temple 320. And so it is that when Israel prays, Michael flies around the world with one flap of his wings and Gabriel with two, and when the speech emerges from Israel in Halachah prayer or any precept where the Shechina is they run to her to the Sheshana and return with her with the Sheshana on a mission from their master to unite her with Yud Hey Vav Hey and in every place where the voice of Torah is heard there the Holy
rests on doing touching using and walking the faithful shepherd explains what he means by this and he tells us how Chakma rose in a thought that is bana. he says that thought and inspiration are both in the heart the Shechina is God's sight hearing sweet savor speech and performance of precepts and in prayer it is also his bowing and standing Moses says that in the future God will remove all of Lilith's children from the world but not so the children of the Shechina who are Yisrael the latter are virtuous God fearing men of truth who despise unjust gain Moses tells what the sages meant when they said no disciple whose inside does not correspond to his exterior may enter the house of study and this explains why Yudhei Bapay is called Adonai 322 the sixth correction is I saw what appeared to be fire Yudhei 127 this is the first time that he uses the words I saw this was not mentioned up to here for here the meaning is proper sight said the holy one blessed be he Whoever enters in this vision and during his prayer his heart is lifted up at the name of the Yudhei Bapay and his eyes are cast down at the name of Adonai who shall you bring into this temple for he is like the angels about whom it is written as for their rooms Yudhei 118 above in the Yudhei Bapay and they were dreadful of downwards towards the Shechina who is the dread of the Yudhei Bapay 323 the Yudhei Bapay rests on sight hearing smell and speech for sight and Hearing or why Yudhei and smell and speech are Bapay Adonai rests on doing touching using and walking the sight is that mode of vision by light and by candle flame about which it is said and Torah is like Mishlei 623 smell is the smell of the sacrifices which are prayer speeches in Torah speeches in prayer and doing refers to precepts using also refers to precepts as does touching and walking where there is sight and hearing but no Torah and no precepts neither do the holy. One blessed be he nor his Shechin arrest there for the holy one blessed be he rests on sight which is Chakma and so does the Shechin offer it is Torah and Torah is light and his sight is the Shechin offer Chakma is not revealed other than in Malchut for the Yudhei Bapay which is Zeir and said make myself known to him in a vision Bimidbar 126 which I ask the Shechin which is his vision 324 the thought that is within the senses of sight hearing smell and speech I ask Bana whose letters can be rearranged as the sun had been of Yudhei because Yisrael which is the secret of Zeir and who is called sun arose in the thought which is the secret of why Yudhei inspiration is Chakma hint being sufficient for the wise man namely an inspiration is prior to conceptualizing the thought Chakma arose in the thought which is Bana since thought and inspiration are all one for Chakma is known only through Bana and Bana is in the heart thus thought is in the heart and inspiration is in the heart 325 likewise there I as hearing in the Torah for it is a precept that one should hear the reading of the scroll of the Torah and likewise in the nose there is a sweet savor to Hashem the Shechinah is a sacrifice to the Yudhei Bapay his burnt offering and prayer is like a sacrifice for by means of the sacrifice or the prayer the Shechinah sends to the Yudhei Bapay as a sweet savor unto him and is offered to him in prayer and likewise about speech I as written is not my word like a fire says Hashem Yirmeyah 2329 the final hay of the Yudhei Bapay which is the Shechinah is his speech 326 just as the Shechinah is his sight is hearing his sweet savor his speech in the head so in the hands she is his performance of precepts in the body is bowing in prayer his straightening upright and also in the prayer is his standing for reception of the upper three Sfirat is called both standing up and standing as above for she stands before him always and bows. Before him and falls on her face at his feet to ask mercy from him for her children she is humble before him and she is modest in his presence 327 and she is not as a wicked bond woman who is called Lilith for this latter is insolent having no humility and no modesty and she is the mother of a mixed multitude for this reason Solomon said a virtuous woman is a diadem to her husband being the Shechina but she that acts shamefully is as rottenness in his bones Mishlei 124 this is the handmaid Lilith who has no humility nor modesty before the Holy One blessed be he and her children are similar being a mixed multitude and the Holy One blessed be he will in the future remove her and her children from the world for they are bastards born of the nine attributes as described by the sages namely the children of a wife raped by her husband b a wife hated see menstruating at the time of intercourse d a wife whose husband at the time of intercourse thought she was someone else or his other wife, a wife who was rebellious at the time of intercourse, f a husband drunk at the time of intercourse, g having intercourse with a wife divorced in his heart, h a wife who is insolent, i children born to a wife who had relations immediately prior to her marriage, they are considered bastards by the Torah 328, and likewise the Shechinah is the mating of the Holy One, blessed be he is unity with the righteous one who lives forever, which is Yezid, and the Shechinah is his walk. Righteousness shall go before him, Tehillim 8514 to act on his desire, and the Shechinah is called righteousness also, and it came to pass before he had done speaking that behold Rivka came out, Bereshit 2415, that is the Shechinah that is called Rivka came out to him to do his will, and so inside hearing smell speech doing body mating walking, and indeed in every part she is commanded to serve him and to do his will, 329, and the children of the Shechinah, namely Israel, are also of her. Form for they have humility and modesty, all of them have her qualities, and this is why the Holy One blessed be he commanded Moses. Moreover, you shall provide out of all the people able men such as fear Elohim men of truth hating unjust gain. Shema 1821 able men are from the right side, which is Abraham, who is Chisid, that becomes Chakma since at greatness of Zeir and Chisid, Bura and Tiferet ascent and becomes Chakma Bana and that as is known for the side of the Torah is there as it is written from his right hand went a fiery law for them to harm 332 such as fear of Elohim are from the side of Isaac who is Bura that becomes Bana for hearing is there as the prophet Habakkuk said Hashem I have heard the report of you and I am afraid. Shabakkuk 32 men of truth are from the side of Jacob who is Tiferet that becomes Dad for a sweet savor to Hashem in the nose hating unjust gain is from the side of speech which is Malchut the fourth pillar which is the aspect of Adam. Who has joined together with the patriarchs and is considered as Malchut for them and Malchut is called man for the three living creatures are lion ox and eagle that are Chesed, Bura and Tiferet inside hearing and smell as above and the fourth pillar for them is the face of a man in speech namely the first man 330 and place such over them to be rulers of thousands Hedelfim namely from the side of the letter Aleph of Adonai rulers of hundreds from the side of the letter Dalit of Adonai which is the secret of the Dalit equals 400 years that Israel was enslaved in Egypt rulers of fifties the nun equals fifty of Adonai and rulers of tens Shema 1821 the Yad equals ten of Adonai 331 Israel is recognized in these qualities to be the children of the Holy One blessed be he and his Shechina that is that there should be among them Abel Hebjayil men as in the verse a virtuous Hebjayil woman is a crown to her husband Mishlei 124 for they are bestowed with Chesed as Against Jesus of Zeir and Ben, such as fear Elohim parallels Bura of Zeir and Ben, men of truth parallels Tiferet of Zeir and Ben, and not men of falsehood for the children of Israel shall not do iniquity nor speak lies, neither shall a deceitful tongue be found in their mouths. Fanyah 313 hating unjust gain parallels Malchut as a man who rejoices in his portion, and they are not as a mixed multitude the children of the wicked bondwoman Lilith who are as a serpent before whom is the whole land. As it is written, and dust shall be the serpent's food. Yeshayah 6525 with all this he fears eating the dust until he is full, for he is afraid that there will not be enough for him. This is how it is with men of unjust gain, for even if they had all the money in the world, it would never be enough for them. 332 and this is why the sages of the Mishnah taught not the expounding of the law is the chief thing, but the doing of it for the Holy One, blessed be he is concealed by the secrets of it. Torah in what then can he be known in the precepts for there are the Shechina which is his form just as the Holy One blessed be he is humble so is his Shechina humble he is pious and she is pious he is valiant and she is valiant over all the nations of the world he is truth and she is faith he is a prophet and she is a prophetess he is righteous and she is righteous he is king and she is kingdom he is wise and she is wisdom he understands and she is his understanding he is a crown and she is his diadem a crown of glory Yeshayah 623 this is why the sages taught no disciple
will be mercy from all sides and this is why the Holy One blessed be he commanded the ministering angels whosoever's inside does not correspond to his exterior in all his parts both internal and external that person may not enter this temple this is why scripture says he is the rock his work is perfect Devarim 324 and you shall be perfect with Hashem your Elohim Devarim 1813 namely his inside exactly corresponds with his exterior section 53 rainbow tefillin Sitsit blue white and the recital of the SH Mother metaphor of a marriage is used to explain the unification of Zir and Pen and Malchu 334. The seventh correction is as the appearance of the rainbow that is in the cloud in the day of rain. Yashiskal 128. The sages said the work of the chariot is from and I looked and behold a storm wind did before until as the appearance of the rainbow. These are the work of the chariot and the sages further said when Rabbi Kiva was expounding the work of the chariot fire came down from heaven and engulfed the trees and the ministering angels assembled as though at a wedding feast for the chariot is the secret of the unity of Yudhi Hay and Adonai which are the secret of groom and bride. This is the reason for the work of the chariot to conclude with the verse starting as the appearance of the rainbow for there is no unity and connection of the chariot of the Yudhi Hay with Adonai other than by means of the righteous one which is Yes, it also called rainbow for through him is the upper chariot which is yet Allah hey Dalit Vav Nun hey yet complete 335 the Shechanah is the work of creation and it has been taught the work of creation may not be expounded in the presence of two people because the branches of the tree which are the living creatures are divided above in the wings of the living creatures with the yet hey Vav hey to the right and Adonai to the left for Zeir and Pen is the secret of the Shechadim on it. Right and Malchut is the secret of the left without any unification between them and it follows that the bridegroom is to the right while the bride is to the left and when she is brought to the wedding canopy with a number of types of melody Israel must awaken them from below to the unification with songs and praises and all sorts of melody and prayer for behold they are approaching the wedding canopy namely are coming to be united 336 and Israel must give the ring of marriage from it. Bride groom to the bride with the knot of the hand tefillin so that the Shechanah should be bound to Zeir and, and crown them with the head tefillin which is the secret of bringing down to them the mokin of the upper three sfirot which is glory hapeer as it is said bind on your turban hapeer yeshis called 2417 and the three loop of the strap upon the middle finger parallel the three holies which are holy 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 they proclaim you thrice holy and they have to be blessed with seven blessings which are the seven blessings of the recital of the SH namely two before and one after in the morning service and two before and two after in the evening service 337 and the bride under the wedding canopy namely in the unity of the recital of the SH which is called the wedding canopy is in the form of the wings of a precept which in the fringes are gilded that is to say that they are bound with blue which is the secret of the illumination of Chakma which is drawn down. From the left side of Bino which is called gold and thus the fringes are as though gilded with blue and the blue and the white that are in the fringes are the throne of judgment and the throne of mercy interwoven with each other for blue is judgment and white is mercy and there are a number of knots and links surrounding the fringes with a number of pearls and precious stones namely the lights of Chakma and Chesedim full of special qualities surrounding it in the form of bells and pomegranates of the apparel of the king and the queen which are the four garments of white of Zeir and Pen and the four garments of gold of Malchud which are from the side of the two names the Yedhe Bapay and Adonai is his name so is his throne so is his wedding canopy so is his apparel his name is marked on all for he is Yezid who is called all when he wishes to let enter into his palace his groom and bride to be there in the eighteen blessings of the prayer where eighteen hints at Yes, it which is as the appearance of the rainbow, namely Yes, it is above section 54 mystic speculations on the divine chariot and prayer. Moses speaks about the amid of prayer and says that everyone should pray quietly so that his neighbor cannot hear him. He says that prayer can be learned from what is said about the sacrifices. We hear about Rabbi Kiva discussing the work of the chariot and we are given another explanation of the rainbow 338 and regarding the amid of prayer. They taught the work of the chariot may not be expounded before one person because he who expounds to a single person is not that person now with him during the exposition and are they not two and he does not have to let his voice be heard there in the prayer but only her lips move but her voice was not heard. Ishmael 113 and in this lies the secret of the verse and the stranger that comes near shall be put to death. Bar 338 and so it is with prayer everyone should pray. Quietly in such a way that his prayer is not heard by his neighbor this being what they refer to when they said the work of the chariot may not be expounded even before one person it is just as one who is expounding to his fellow and he wants to silence the speech to him so that he should not hear he does not have to do anything other than speak in silence and then his fellow will not hear all this is why the sages taught one who says the prayer so that it can be heard is of small faith. 339 and this is why the heavenly living creatures of fire speak as the branches of the tree which are the ministering angels who assemble there at the wedding feast and where is this to happen at the unification of the recital of the SH Ma which is the secret of the wedding canopy for their IT is said I heard the noise of their wings Yashiskal 124 for the lower unity Yud Allah Hey Bab Nun Hey is not yet there and they are therefore speaking and there are 64 for each of the four. Wings that is to say the four living creatures each of which is composed of four make sixteen living creatures each living creature has four wings making a total of sixty four wings but the wings are interwoven and there are four wings in each wing thus sixty four has to be multiplied by four making two hundred and fifty six and this is sing Hadron equals two hundred and fifty six with gladness for Jacob your three hundred and sixteen and when will this be after he has wreaked vengeance on those who hate him and burnt their deities as it is written but when the wicked perish there is jubilation Hadrina Michele one thousand one hundred and ten which has a numerical value of two hundred and fifty six together with the one that represents the inclusion three hundred and forty and the sixty four are derived from eight times AZ lit then equals eight for AZ indicates the eight letters of the unity Yud Allah Hey Dalit Bab Nun Hey and thus the sixty four is derived from eight times AZ and with the sixty four on each of the four corners the total is two hundred and fifty six and when he reaches heart head left equals thirty two which is four times AZ which is four times the letter Chedyat is joined with them on each side making Hashem lives namely that Yezid which is called living joins with the Yud Hey Bab Hey in the eighteen blessings of the prayer in which the Yud Hey Bab Hey appears eighteen times for a total of seventy two letters at the moment the Yud Hey Bab Hey is joined with Adonai by the living eighteen of the worlds namely Yud Allah Hey Dalit Bab Nun Hey is formed by Yezid who is called life of the worlds immediately the living creatures of fire fall silent. For at the time of the unification they are quite what is written about them when they stood they let down their wings Yashis 124 the meaning of which is when Israel stands in prayer this being the time of the unification they let down their wings that their presence should not be felt until that time namely they fall silent 341 and this is the meaning of only her lips moved but her voice was not heard where lips refer to the wings of the living creatures for the electrum was previously living creatures of fire who were speaking while now they are silent and this is why silent prayer was ordained and thus the work of the chariot is without sound for he speaks there to himself in a whisper three prayers were ordained and in each one the Yadhe Bab is enunciated 18 times making 72 letters in each prayer in the concluding sentences of each of the 18 blessings and 3x72 makes 216 letters that are included in Shisit and 3x72 together with the 32. Paths of Chakma comes to 250 minus 2 namely adds up to 248 which is Chisa that are included in the central column which is Chisa 342 from what is said about the sacrifices prayer can be learned and prayer is deduced from the sacrifices just as it is said above about prayer I heard the noise of their wings Yashiskal 124 so with regard to the cherubs which are the secret of sacrifice namely of the unification of the holy name Yud Hey Bab Hey and Adonai that is attained through the sacrifice as it is said then he heard the voice speaking to him Bimid Bar 789 and so we deduce about prayer from the sacrifices about the latter it is written the voice speaking which hints at both voice and speech which are the Yud Hey Bab Hey and Adonai similarly about prayer it is said only I heard the noise of their wings without speech being
The cause of causes which is the infinite one is the all-uniting and the all-arranging and the all-illuminating is light passes through the soul and body and apparel and he is unchanging and without partnership or account or picture or likeness of any chariot or vision or likeness that the mind's eyes can summon up the upper and lower steps are a vehicle and chariot to him but none ride on him 344 the rainbow had keshit, kaf shin tof stands for initials of tekiah shabaram teruah and they are assigned for the patriarchs chariot tekiah is abraham shabaram isaac and teruah is jacob about whom it is said and the trumpet blast had teruah the king is among them Ebed bar 2321 and in it three colors are visible white red and green from the side of bureh yes it is called the bows of the mighty are broken ishmuel 24 and from the right side which is jesus it is called as the appearance of the rainbow that is in the cloud in the day of rain yes 128 when it appears on a rainy day mercy is visible but when it appears when there is no rain judgment is visible and when it is blended in between rain and sun this shows that mercy and judgment are both apparent and this is the letter shin of shade shin dalat yud that teaches about the three branches of the patriarchs namely the yud hey vav hey elohim the yud hey vav hey these being the three names that parallel the three branches of the patriarchs which are shesed bura and tiferet and these three names contain yud dalat equals 14 the letters of which form the dalat yud of shade and shade is yesed of zeir and pen and the apparel of shade is metatron which has the same numerical value as shade and of rai mayhem the section 55 he who says a praise of david every day rabbi laser says that one must recite the title psalm three times each day twice for the food of mortal man and once to give force to the world above 345 rabbi shimon said let he who has Started continue this is the reaction of Rabbi Shimon to Rabbi Lazar's words see above 237 Rabbi Lazar said we learned whoever recites the psalm of praise of David Tehillim 145 three times daily is sure to inherit the world to come and we have already learned the reason namely that it contains the verse you open your hand and satisfy the desire of every living thing Tehillim 14516 this being a prayer over food he asks if the reason has to do with sustenance and food for all the world's then. He should say it twice each day in the morning and the evening for it is written when Hashem shall give you in the evening meat to eat and in the morning your fill of bread Shemot 168 if a man eats only twice a day why should he have to recite it three times daily the answer is that he says it twice for the food of mortal man and for the whole world and once is to give force to that place where his hands are open 346 these two footsteps of man differ from each other for the one is for the rich and the other for the poor and all three types of food are mentioned here in the psalm of praise of David and you give them their food in due season Tehillim 14515 refers to the food of the rich for he gives them their food in due season this is the first of the three the second is and satisfy the desire of every living thing Tehillim 14516 this refers to the food of the poor for they are satisfied not with much food but with what he satisfied them with the third is the verse you open your hand David this being strength to that place for when he opens his hands favor and abundance for all emerge 347 again I have learned that a man has to say a praise of David twice a day only for his daily food and sustenance and these two times are mandatory for a person and if he says it more than twice this is not in fulfillment of an obligation but in praise among the songs of praise of King David what is the reason it is because it is not fitting that a man should ask for his sustenance until after the prayer for the prayer itself is his master's sustenance and the king should eat first and his servants should eat afterwards section 56 I have eaten my honeycomb with my honey I have drunk my wine with my milk Rabbi Lazar explains the title verse in the context of the recital of the SH Ma 348 it is written I am come into my garden my sister my bride I have gathered my myrrh with my spice I have eaten my honeycomb with my honey I have drunk my wine with my milk sure hasherim 51 the verse continues eat oh dear ones I have eaten my honeycomb refers to that part of the prayer service that is said seated namely from who forms light and creates darkness until the recital of the SH Ma with my honey refers to the recital of the SH Ma he explains I have eaten my honeycomb have yeah refers to that part of the prayer service that is said seated because the forest have yeah of Lebanon which is the world of Bria includes who forms light and creates darkness including the wheels and the holy living creatures all of which are called the forest of trees and the saplings in it with my honey refers to the recital of the SH Ma which is the sweetest of all with much nectar and sweetness 349 I have drunk my wine is that part of the prayer service that is said standing for it is the drawing down of the upper cellared wine which is the illumination of Chakma that is in Bina and it is therefore said about it I have drunk my wine and this is in the first three of the 18 blessings of the Amida paralleling Chakma Bina and Dad with my milk refers to the final three blessings of the Amida and the parallel net Sachat and Yizid and the illumination of Shesedim is termed milk and the ones are included in each other namely the illumination of Chakma and of Shesedim are included in each other to this point is the food of the king and after the king has eaten eat oh dear ones namely the angels drink people living companions below namely the souls 350 and thus there is no obligation to offer praises for food until after the prayer namely until after the king has eaten as above and what is the reason for the recital of a praise of David Tehillim 145 in the afternoon service before the Amida it is because the afternoon service parallels Isaac which is judgment so before there is harsh judgment namely before the prayer while the king's countenance is still shining with cheesed favor let him say a praise of David in that order of footsteps in the three aspects for after the prayer when judgment prevails and impends over the world it is an inappropriate time for that Rabbi Pinchas came and kissed him section 57 now there was a day when the sons of Elohim came to present themselves before Hashem Rabbi Shimon talks about Rosh Hashanah the Jewish New Year when harsh judgment is present in the world telling us that the day spoken of in the title was Rosh Hashanah we learned that the sons of Elohim are the supreme court the 70 officials who always surround the king and that everyone must take care to honor the holy name in order to avoid judgment 351 Rabbi Yehuda said to Rabbi Shimon let my master say some beautiful things about Rosh Hashanah Rabbi Shimon began by quoting there was Hebei a day Eo 16 wherever it is written Vehi it is a term of anguish now there was a day refers to anguish certainly now there was a day refers to a day on which there is anguish and this is Rosh Hashanah a day on which harsh judgment is on the world similarly and it happened one day that Elisha passed to Shinnam 2 Melashim 48 was on the day of Rosh Hashanah and wherever it is said and it happened one day the day referred to is Rosh Hashanah consequently now there was a day when the sons of the Elohim came to present themselves before Hashem Eo 16 refers to the day of Rosh. Hashanah 352 Rosh Hashanah always lasts for two days what is the reason for this it is so that Isaac who is the left column which is the aspect of Rosh Hashanah should be composed of judgment and mercy which are two days and Isaac will not be just one for were Isaac to be just one without the inclusion of mercy he would destroy the world and this is why it is written in Job twice now there was a day that the sons of Elohim came to present themselves before Hashem Iyob 1621 353 the sons of the Elohim came these are certainly the supreme court the sons of the Elohim before whom the sons of the king namely Israel draw near and they are the 70 officials who always surround the king and they decree judgment on the world to present themselves before lit upon Hashem he asks do they stand upon Hashem he answers no but when they stand to judge the world the first to be judged is the one who does not honor the holy name and does not respect the Torah and his servants so to whoever is not concerned about the honor of the holy name which is the Sheshana that it be not desecrated in the land and whoever is not concerned over the honor of the holy one blessed be he who is Zeir and he does not give honor to this name and the adversary came also amongst them but also adds a female of the adversary Lilith and so it is here to present themselves before Hashem means that the Satan too was concerned for the honor of this name that is to say he came to incite. About this section 58 the righteous suffer the wicked thrive Rabhamnada tells Elijah that a righteous man whose sins are few is punished in this world but a man with many sins and a few good deeds is rewarded in this world he goes on to say that people must confess their own sins to God and then he will hear judge and forgive him 354 here the ancient pillars of the world were divided one said Job was one of the pious of the nations of the world and another said Job was one of the pious of
Hashanah 70 seats of justice arise to judge the world many for the defense and many for the prosecution standing on high those on the right for innocence and those on the left for guilt to recall the sins of the world and the sins of each individual a man has therefore to confess and specify his sins each one just as it is for whoever expounds his sins before the Holy One blessed be he judgment is passed on him by the Holy One blessed be he and by no other and whoever is judged by the Holy One blessed be he it is for his good this is why King David requested judge me Elohim Tehillim 431 you and none other similarly Solomon said that he maintained the cause of his servant I Melashim 859 he and no other and the heavenly court leaves him 356 this is why the sins of every limb have to be expounded and everything that he did in detail as it is written I acknowledge my sin to you Tehillim 325 and the same verse concludes and you forgave the iniquity of my sin as Elah how do we Know this we know it from Moses for it is written this people has sinned a great sin Shema 3231 and about Israel is written we have sinned because we have forsaken Hashem Shmuel 1210 should you suggest that the verse about Moses refers to an individual alone while in public one does not have to specify one sin then the other verse we have sinned because we have forsaken Hashem comes to teach the opposite for it is said in public and should you agree that it is to be in public but that it is not the cantor who has to detail the sins the opposite is suggested as it is written and Moses returned to Hashem and said this people has sinned a great sin and it is written in the continuation of the same verse and have made them an Elohim of gold what is the reason it is because the heavenly court leaves alone the person who expounds his own sins and does not find him guilty because a man may be considered as one of his own close relatives and a relative is unacceptable as a Witness he is therefore not judged according to his own testimony 357 again he does not let the prosecutor teach guilt and fault about him because the person himself comes first and tells all leaving nothing for anyone else to mention and the Holy One blessed be he forgives him as it is written but whoever confesses and forsakes them shall have mercy Mishlei 2813 section 59 Rosh Hashanah we learn why Rosh Hashanah lasts for two days and that when people are coming to be judged Israel comes in first it is important that we know the meaning of the blowing of the shofar that arouses leniency and mercy 358 on the days of Rosh Hashanah the court prepares a throne for the king to judge the whole world Israel comes in first to be judged before him so that mercy will multiply namely before anger is aroused at the sinners of the world it is written that he maintained he cause of his people Israel as each day may require I may Lashem 859 what is it? Meaning of as each day may require the meaning I ask the two days of Rosh Hashanah and why are there two days because there are two courts joined together there is the upper judgment which is harsh and the lower judgment that is lenient and both of them exist 359 and in this respect the Babylonians did not know the secret of the SHRM and Tiruah and that both of them are required the Tiruah his strict judgment the three notes of the SHRM are lenient judgment and it is like someone who groans from his heart which is soft they did not know which of the two was required and they therefore had both of them but we know both that both of them are required and do both of them and everything comes out by the way of truth 360 he began by quoting blow the horn at the new moon in concealment for our feast day for it is a statute for Israel and ordinance of the Elohim of Jacob Tehillim 814 to 5 what is blow the horn at the new moon it means a lenient judgment that is called new Moon and what is in concealment, this is harsh judgment, which is also termed the fear of Isaac. It is a judgment that is concealed permanently, namely the manual, which is not judgment openly, for it is concealed in the upper three spirat is above, for it is a statute, refers to lenient judgment, which is the secret of the mafcha, which is in the open, and ordinance refers to judgment contained with compassion, and the two of them are there together as in the paragraph above, and this is why. There are two days of Rosh Hashanah, both of which are in the same secret. 361 Happy is the people that know Teruah, Tehillim 8915. It does not say that here, nor does it say that blow the sounds of a Teruah, but that know this is because only the sages who dwell in the atmosphere of the Holy Land are the ones who know Teruah. The secret of the Teruah is as it is written, you shall break them at Teruah with a rod of iron. Tehillim 29 What people is there like Israel who know the Heavenly secrets of their master and enter in before him and associate with him and all those who know the secret of the Teruah will draw near and walk in the light of the countenance of the Holy One blessed be he because this is the first light that the Holy One blessed be he hid for the righteous this is why it is necessary to know it the Teruah section 60 the appendix of the liver gall trachea esophagus and the shofar rab hamnon it talks about the iniquity of Lilith and Samael saying that they are the liver and the appendix and that from them emerge the gall that is the sword of the angel of death on Rosh Hashanah the gall wanders the world collecting up sins and all of Israel are in trouble this is when they blow the shofar 362 it is written the appendix of the liver Vayikra 910 and also the appendix above the liver of 34 the appendix of the liver means a woman of harlotry that is Lilith who comes out and emerges from the liver that is some male to mislead the world and denounce them and she leaves the male to practice prostitution and that is why it is written the appendix of the liver the appendix above the liver means that after making her adulterous union she rises above him she has a harlot's forehead your male 33 and subdues her husband who is a male who is called liver with the anger of the gall being a quarrelsome and anger prone wife who rules over her male thus the harlot's forehead has control over the liver which is a male because she is a woman of quarrel and anger and is therefore called the appendix above the liver 363 the appendix of the liver because she emerges from the liver who is explained above is a male her husband in order to harm the whole world and practice adultery with all she then mounts the male with the harlot's forehead audaciously and she is then above the liver again she is called the appendix of the liver from another point of view for after she has gone out to Play prostitute with all she gives the leftovers to her husband and this is the meaning of the appendix of the liver appendix meaning the remaining leftovers 364 from the liver and the appendix which are Samael and Lilith emerges the gall which is the sword of the angel of death from which come bitter drops to kill human beings it is written her end is bitter Hebmerah also meaning gall is wormwood Mishlei 54 and the gall is hanging over the liver all sickness and death being dependent on it on the clipper that is called gall and on that day of Rosh Hashanah she prowls through the world collecting up all the sins that are in the world and then all the parts which are Israel are in trouble for Israel is composed of the parts of the Shechina as it is said the soul of man is the candle of Hashem Mishlei 2027 which means that the soul of man is derived from the candle of Hashem which is the holy Shechina and then on Rosh Hashanah all Israel is in trouble so they Take a shofar to awaken with those calls. Tikiya sh baram tiru. Moses talks about the participation of the body, the trachea, the lungs, the arteries, the breath, the esophagus, and the mouth. In the blowing of the shofar, he says that the Satan has no control on Yom Kippur, the day of atonement. Israel's strength is in the voice, not in eating and drinking like everyone else in the world, and it is necessary to awaken the voice with the ten shofar verses. Rai mehim to the faithful shepherd. 365 said the faithful shepherd. Certain it is that since the limbs and the arteries of the heart that are likened to Israel are in trouble, they have to awaken in the trachea pipe, which is the secret of the shofar. This being a wind pipe connected to the lungs, since the lobes of the lung are unable to quiet the anger of the gall, which overcomes the arteries of the heart and all the arteries in the limbs of the body. That breath, which is the secret of Shesedim, that blows in them, rises in the Trachea which is a shofar namely the next world for a shofar is the secret of Bina that is called the next world and so it has been taught the esophagus is like this world which is the secret of Malchut for there is eating and drinking in it namely the Mokin of Shesedim and Chakma that are termed eating and drinking the trachea is likened to the next world which is Bina for there is no eating and drinking in it for those Mokin are not disclosed there in Bina but in Malchut 366. And after the Bab of trachea Hebshit, Vav Shintet has wandered off Hebshat, Shintet because of the great amount of eating that it robbed it grew longer and the Bab became a final nun and becomes the Satan Sintet nun who caused that the people wandered about Hebshit and gathered Bimidbar 118 Shit can be derived from the word sh Tudlet stupidity for that one brought about their stupidity and that they intermingled with the foolish mixed multitude whose craving was for food and Drink and robbery and violence for the violence
Full 365, 367, and the Day of Atonement is like the trachea of the lung which is bud, and the next world is above, and it is bob the sun had been of yod, hey, and in respect thereof the sages of the mission atad. If one sees a reed had can in a dream, he may hope for wisdom, for it says, Get had king of wisdom, get understanding, Mishlei 45, for there is no canna that is less than two, namely yod chakma hey, bana, for there is no bana without chakma, and no chakma without bana, and this is why they should awaken the shofar, for it is a trachea as above, which is the next world, a long world that receives from Eric Lidlong, and from whom come the thirteen attributes of mercy, because in Bab Allah, Bab of which the Allah is the secret of Eric Lidlong, and the two Babs are the secret of Apaim suffering, Lidlong is 368, and upper mother is Tekiah from the side of Abraham, who is Jesus, Shabarimar from the side of Isaac, who is Bura Terah, is from the side of Jacob, who is Typhur at the lower Sheshana, which is Malchut, is a link at Kesher, Kaf Shinresh between them all, for it receives them all, and the word Kesher is formed from the initial letters of Tekiah, Shabarim, Teru, where Tekiah is Kaf Shabarim, is Shin, and Teruah is Resh, and all of them are tripled in the Sheshana, as it is written, they proclaim you thrice holy, for the voice cannot come out of the body other than through the mouth, so here too the Sheshana must not be separated from the holy. One blessed be he for about the holy one blessed be he it is said the voice of Hashem hews out flames of fire Tehillim 297 and the Sheshanah is the prayer of every mouth and these are the mnemonics Kaf Shin Resh Kaf Kaf Shin Kaf Kaf Resh Kaf and the blows are explained above 369 the shofar is taken in order to awaken with the Tiru and Tikiya which are harsh judgment with mercy for the Truahis harsh judgment and Tikiya is mercy and Sh Baram Tikiya means lenient judgment with mercy. Since Shabaram is lenient judgment and Tikiya is mercy and then they thus awaken on high and intermingle with each other that is judgment with mercy and mercy with judgment 370 and in the compilation of the first section the faithful shepherd said that through this the Satan was sweetened and the final nun of Chitlid Esophagus Bob Shin was folded and it returned to be a Bob where the Esophagus became the Satan it is now put back and becomes an Esophagus again as it was this is. Because the voice is the voice of Jacob Bershi 2722 for Israel have no power through eating and drinking as do the other nations who inherit this world for their strength is in eating and drinking but as for Israel their strength is in the voice which is the next world a long world that was created with the letter Yah and since the voice of the Shofar which is the secret of the Mokin of Zeir and that are called voice which receives from Shofar which is by emerges from it from it. Yud which is Chakma the sages said one may not blow less than and Shofar verses namely corresponding to the letter Yud equals ten for with the letter Yah is certainly made a long world which is Bob the next world namely that receives Mokin of the next world is above and with the letter Hey he created this world which is small Hey namely Malchud in which there is eating and drinking of the Torah namely the Mokin of Chakma and Chesedim that are called eating and drinking 371 and there. Is yet another secret for after the decree is enacted in the two letters Hey Hey, which are the two courts of Bana and of Malchud, who is able to rescind the decree of both of them, if not the Yud Bab of Yud Hey Bab Hey, for the letter Hey of his upper mother Bana and Yud his father Chakma, and what is written every vow and every binding oath to afflict the soul which is Hey that is called soul had Nefesh, her husband may let it stand or her husband may make it void. Bimidbar 3014 here Yud is the husband of the first Hey which is Bana and Bab is the husband of the second Hey which is Malchud, thus the Yud and Bab can rescind the decree of the two Hegis the two courts. It is thus necessary to awaken the voice that is Bab which is Zeir and with the ten Shofar verses that is Yud in order to annul the judgments of the two Hegis courts which are Bana and Malchud, and the main thing is that each of the mnemonics the order of the prescribed blowing sounds should be sounded in one breath in. The mouth which is the tenth part of ten the mnemonics being KOF Shin Resh KOF standing for the Shofar calls Tikiya Shabaram TRUAH Tikiya KOF Shin KOF standing for the calls TEKIA Shabaram Tikiya and KOF Resh KOF standing for Tikiya TRUAH Tikiya 372 immediately on hearing these matters Rabbi Shimon and the friends exclaimed Blessed be Elohim that we have been privileged to hear such matters from him who is called the master of all the prophets master of all the sages master of all. The ministering angels through whose mouth the Holy One blessed be he and his Sheshana speak and by whose hands he wrote these secrets the like of which have not been heard since the revelation of the Torah until now 373 the faithful shepherd said to Rabbi Shimon Holy Luminary complete the matters of the secrets of the first compilation part by expounding on them for the heads of all of the academies on high and the heads of all the academies below are ready to hear these things from. Your mouth with your clarifications for thereby will rejoicing and redemption awaken in heaven above and on the earth below give no rest Yeshua 627 neither you nor any of your friends section 61 the liver and the heart Rabbi Shimon says that the heart God takes from the liver only that which is pure and clean leaving all the foulness for Samael who distributes it to the idol worshipping nations 374 with Tiruah and Tikiah and Sh Verim everything is perfumed. One with the other for all of the judgments are mitigated and everything that the liver is holding it sacrifices to the heart which is the king to nurture him and it is neither the way of that heart nor its desire the foulness of the deeds of his people but he takes everything that is clear and pure namely all the merits and the good deeds while all the foulness the filth and the dirt which are the bad deeds he leaves for the liver which is Samael about whom it is said he saw a hairy head, sir. Man Bershi 2711 and all its arteries which are the other idol worshipping peoples are as it is written and the goat have seer shall bear upon him all their iniquities Vayikra 1622 what is meant by their iniquities have Abinotam Abinotam namely the iniquities of Atam a complete man the reference being to the same one about whom it is said and Jacob was a plain Hatam Man Bershi 2527 and the iniquities of his people are in the arteries and sinews that pulsate in the heart 375. And this is why boils and leprosy and skin sores of all the limbs are to be found in the liver deriving from the filth that remains there from the heart comes health for all the limbs for that is how it is since the heart took all that is pure clean and bright the liver takes what is left over there of the dirt and the filth and distributes it to all the other limbs which are the other idol worshipping nations against their will and from the garbage the refuse of the liver the spleen which is. Lilith takes about whom it is said let there be lights Bear sheet 114 where the word lights is spelled without Bob which can also be read as Emirat the curse of because Lilith was created as in the verse the curse have Emirat of Hashem is in the house of the wicked Mishlei 333 section 62 the spleen and the gall Moses talks about the spleen that is laughter and the gall that is anger and says that anger is better than laughter this illustrates its point that the righteous are punished now for their sins so that they will inherit the world to come 376 more was compiled in this first section the faithful shepherd said did not the sages teach about it the spleen laughs and this is the laughter of the fool Kahilat 76 for this reason the sages of the mission taught woe to him to whom time laughs for he receives his reward during his lifetime and Kahilat said anger is better than laughter Kahilat 73 the meaning of this is the anger of the liver which is the gall the whiplash of the Holy One blessed be he is a whip with which to beat the righteous in this world with bad illnesses and plagues and this is better than the laughter with which the spleen which is Lilith laughs at us with the dirt of this world and better than the laughter of time namely temporary wealth for they receive in this world the reward of the good deeds that they did so that they should utterly perish from the next world while the righteous receive the punishment for the since they have committed in this world so that they will inherit the next world again venom of the spleen is a reptile of the dust which is stronger than the venom of the gall 377 and since the mixed multitude are the leaven in the dough namely they intermingled with Israel as leaven in the dough and the nations of the world are like chaff the mixed multitude delays Israel in exile more than do the idol worshipping nations as the sages taught but what prevents us the leaven in the dough for the mixed multitude stick to Israel as does eleven to the dough, but the nations of the world are no more than like the chaff which the wind drives away. Tehillim 14, section 63. The scapegoat, the liver, and the heart. The faithful shepherd explains
From the ancient of days happy is the world in which you reside woe to the world where orphans remain without knowing matters of Torah properly for it is certainly like that the liver which is to male takes everything good and bad and although it moves around and gathers in all the sins of Israel it likewise gathers up their merits too to establish his slanderous informing for the liar has to speak some truth at the beginning for people to believe him and it sacrifices everything both merits and demerits to the heart and the way of the heart is not to take anything but the purest clearest and brightest of all namely the merits as you have said and the remaining filth and dirt which are the iniquities it returns to the liver who has no choice but to take everything as it is written and the goat shall bear upon him all their iniquities vi 1622 i am going over this matter again although you have already stated it so that it will be sweet in my mouth as the sweetness of honey Happy is my portion that I have been privileged to see this with my own eyes. 380 he too began by quoting Hashem, My heart is not haughty nor my eyes lofty. Tehillim 1311 David spoke this verse when he was walking on the bank of the river and said, Master of the universe, has there ever been a man in the world who gave thanks and praised his master as I have a frog chance by and said to him, David, you have no cause to be proud for I have achieved more than you for I have sacrificed my body at my master's command as it is written and the river shall bring forth frogs in swarms. Shemot 728 and this indeed is how it has been interpreted and also I give praises and sing day and night without interruption. And at that moment David said, Hashem, my heart is not haughty nor my eyes lofty. Hashem, my heart is not haughty. The continuation is missing. Section 64 The rose we learned that when Israel opened their hearts in repentance, they immediately emit a sweet. Fragrance and God removes them from among the thorns. 381. The beginning of the article I is missing. This is a sacrifice that is on every day and at every time to the Holy One. Blessed be he in which the Shechinah is included among all her other crowds who are Israel and all these services remove her from among the thorns, namely from among the other nations. So it is with Israel so long as they are hard hearted and do not make a start at repenting. They do not send up an aroma and there is none to remove them from among the thorns. But when they open their hearts in repentance, they immediately emit an aroma and he removes them from among the thorns. And the congregation of Israel, which is Malchut, obtains pleasure from them as it is written, Open to me, my sister, my love. Sure, Hasherim 52. For so long as the rose is closed, it gives off no aroma and does not rise above the thorns, but sits among them as they have said. And the only reason that the Holy One, blessed be he, sent us along this path. Was so that we should learn these matters. Section 65 The eagle and eagle descends, takes a rose from among the rabbis and flies away. Rabbi Pinchas talks about the inner meaning of this event in the morning. The rabbis see a comet, and Rabbi Pinchas says that when God calls the stars by name, they run to praise him. 382 While they were still sitting there, an eagle came, descended in his flight, and took one rose from among them, and went, they said, From here on we shall go. On our way, they rose and left, and so far they had all gone in the way of Rabbi Pinchas, for Rabbi Shimon went together with Rabbi Lazar and the other companions, while Rabbi Pinchas was with the other companions. 383 Rabbi Pinchas began by quoting about this about the eagle that took the rose to the chief musician upon Shushan, a might deliver it of David to teach Tehillim 601. What is the meaning of to teach it is to teach wisdom to mortal man, and we have already expounded this. Shushanadad refers to the great Sanhedrin which is Malchut that attires Bina for the Mokin of Bina are called Edut Le Testimony a Mictum of David refers to a sign that was shown to David in Shushanadad that he would win the war when he sent Job to Aram Naharim Mesopotamia and Aram Sobah to make war against them. Rabbi Pinchas said the Shushanadad that is mentioned here is when the stars that are in the heavens and the Sheshanah are over us and with it the upper levels namely. The Mokin of Bina that are called Testimony and it is a holy help for extolling praises this is Shushan in perfection as is fitting they arose and went on their way some in one direction others in a different direction Rabbi Pinchas went to the village of the Kaiman and stayed overnight and Rabbi Yitzhak and Rabbi Shia were with him 384 as they got up early to leave and set to wait for the morning light Rabbi Shia looked up and saw those comets namely stars that carry along a tail of Light behind them streaming in the sky he said a number of times I have asked about those stars what is their significance 385 Rabbi Pinchas said these comets are known in the understanding of the companions for the Holy One blessed be he created all these stars of the firmament both great and small and they all give thanks and praise to the Holy One blessed be he and when their time to sing praises arrives the Holy One blessed be he calls them by name as it is written he calls them all by names Yeshayah 4026 and they then run and hold out a scepter of light to go and praise their master in the same place where they were numbered as it is written lift up your eyes on high and behold who has created these things that brings out their host by numbers even meanwhile the light dawn they arose and went section 66 a great eagle and King Solomon an eagle circles over the heads of the rabbis Rabbi Pinchas interprets this as a sign of mercy for those who are on their sickbeds and says that this is the time for them to be healed he calls to the eagle but it flies away and Rabbi Shi recalls how King Solomon used to ride on a great eagle every day to the place where Uzzah and Azel were imprisoned from them Solomon learned wisdom 386 while they were walking along a large eagle came and circled their heads remaining over them Rabbi Pinchas said this is certainly a favorable time right now and the gates of mercy are open for all those who are on a sickbed and this is the time to heal them and although they are the prisoners of the king for they are confined to their beds this eagle is a sign of mercy for the face of the eagle is the secret of the central column which is mercy 387 he began by quoting as an eagle that stirs up its nest roots over its young Devarim 3211 there is none in the world that has mercy over its young as does the eagle this we have already learned as it is written and the young vultures shall eat. It Mishlei 3017 for he is merciful to his children and since now is the time of mercy the eagle has come and circled around us this is the time of mercy for all those who are ill and lying on their beds and this is as is written my voice shall you hear in the morning Hashem Tehillim 54 this being the morning of Abraham which is the secret of Chesed and the awakening of Chesed 388 while he was speaking the eagle flew in a circle and went ahead of them Rabbi Pinchas said eagle eagle what are you doing here with us if you have come on a mission from your master behold we are here if you have come for something else behold we are here ready the eagle flew upwards and disappeared from their sight and they sat down 389 Rabbi Shia said this matter of King Solomon is wondrous for we have learned that a large eagle used to come to King Solomon every day and King Solomon would ride on the wings and they would travel 400 parasangs in one hour where did the eagle take him? And had more in the wilderness I may 918 in the hills there is a certain place among the mountains of darkness that is called Tarmat in the wilderness and this is not the place where the Tarmatites live but Tarmat that is in the wilderness in the hills where all the spirits and forces of the other side gather and that eagle would fly there in one hour 390 once the eagle stood over that place Tarmat the eagle drew itself up and Solomon wrote a note and threw it down there and thereby was saved from those spirits and the eagle used to look into the darkness of the mountains to the place where Uzzah and Azel were imprisoned by chains of iron thrust and anchored in the depths there is no man in the world that has the ability to enter there not even birds of the heaven with the exception of Bilam 391 and since the eagle used to look into the great darkness he flew down low and took King Solomon under his left wing and covered him and the eagle stood upon those chains of Uza and Azel and drew near to them Solomon and took out a ring on which he had engraved the holy name and placed it in the eagle's mouth and immediately the Uza and Azel would say everything that Solomon wanted and from there Solomon knew wisdom this is as it is written and Solomon built Hebaiven Tadmor in the wilderness in the land of it he asked did he really put up a building in the land no so what is meaning of Hebaiven Hebaiven comes from the word of Adalit understanding for he looked with understanding and knew that place Tadmor from which he knew wisdom section 67 the rose part 2 the eagle returns drops a rose to the rabbis and again flies away Rabbi Pinchas says that God sent them this rose through the agency of the eagle as testimony to the work of creation he explains the meaning to be derived from the parts of the rose 392 and while they were still sitting there the eagle came back to them with one rose in its mouth which he Dropped in front of them and flew away. They saw this and rejoiced.
inherit from above from the thirteen attributes of Eric Enpin and all of them are attached to one root which is one covenant namely Yezid of Zeir Enpin by whose means Malchut receives the thirteen attributes of mercy of Eric Enpin and thus the root of the thirteen leaves of the rose that are beneath the Mayas an example of the covenant which is the foundation Yezid of everything the five strong leaves that surround it are the fifty gates namely Chesed, Burit, Tiferet, Netzach and Hadab Bina. Each one of which is composed of ten and they are five hundred years that the tree of life which is Zeir Enpin goes by for it receives them in the place of Bina whose Firat are in the secret of hundreds and they are five hundred years three hundred and ninety-five the rose I as witness to the work of creation for all the works of creation are words known with understanding and take part in the reckoning of Elohim of the work of creation which is Bina and it is seen above and seen below it is seen above namely in the secret of the next world which is Bina and seen below in the secret of the congregation of Israel which is Malchut 396 the rose is witness to the work of creation for it has all these signs namely the thirteen attributes of mercy and the five Sfirat of Chesed, Burit, Tiferet, Netzach, and Hot for it is written in the beginning Elohim created Beersheet 116 this is the rose which is Bina and which is Malchut because it is seen above and seen below as above in the preceding section it thirteen leaves are the thirteen words from in the beginning Elohim Beersheet 11 until and a wind from Elohim of the two namely one the two heaven three and the four earth five and the earth six was seven without four mate and void nine and darkness was ten on eleven the face of twelve the deep thirteen and a wind these then are the thirteen leaves of the rose that allude to the thirteen attributes the five stronger leaves that surround these thirteen are one move two over three the surface of four the waters five and Elohim said from the word Elohim in the expression and a wind from Elohim until Elohim in and Elohim said for there are five others that allude to the five Sfirat Chesed, Burit, Tiferet, Netzach and Hot is explained above after this comes let there be light this being the prime cause and the root of the rose for all the grades are included in and attached to it 397 the rose I as witness to the unity for the five strong leaves are the roots and the unity to which these thirteen leaves are attached the five words. Here Yisrael Hashem are Elohim Hashem Devarim 64 parallel the five leaves of the rose while one is the prime cause and the root to which all of them are attached for the word Eshad one is a secret having the numerical value of thirteen and this is a king's signet ring 398 come and see like the rose among the thorns Sure Hashirim 22 so is Yisrael among the idol worshipping nations and so is the congregation of Yisrael which is Malchut among the many other angels appointed over. The nation so long as the rose stands there closed unopened it has no fragrance and one does not lift it out and remove it from among the thorns when the rose is open and gives off a fragrance then one takes it out from among the thorns and the congregation of Israel will benefit from them as it is said open to me my sister my love sure Hashirim 52 and the Holy One blessed be he only sent to us the eagle who brought the rose so that we should continue on our journey with the Sheshanah. Section 68 Internal Organs Rabbi Shimon explains to his son the secret of the inner organs telling him about the wings of the lung that are like the wings of a dove covered with silver chesed 399 Rabbi Lazar said to his father we have already heard the exposition of the finished organs namely the external limbs in the secret of the sacrifice but what is the secret of the other organs the inner ones Rabbi Shimon said to Rabbi Lazar Lazar my son all the other organs that are Internal have a supreme secret 400 come and see we have already learned about the heart the heart is a burning fire and if the supreme king had not arranged for it the wings of the lung that bring to it a breeze from the wind that blows with the upper spices namely from the upper three spirot of zeir and then the heart would burn up the whole world in a single moment 401 he began by quoting then hashem caused to rain upon sdom and upon the brimstone and fire beersheet 1924 why did he burn them because at that time the wings of the lung did not blow a wind on the illumination of the left that is in the heart and thus it was the illumination of the left that burnt them up and the secret of these wings of the lung is the secret of the verse the wings of a dove covered with silver tail limb 6814 for dove which is the secret of malchut of which the root is from the left of bina from the aspect of the heart has to be covered with silver which is the secret of chesedim and when it is covered with silver it is the secret of angels Raphael and Sitiel which are drawn down from it for the health and salvation of the world and it is said about them who makes the winds his messengers tell him 1044 namely permanently to blow on the heart namely to illuminate which Esedim Moses tells Rabbi Shimon about the inner meaning of the brain the heart the lungs and the kidneys further refining his interpretation of the brain which he says is the throne of mercy R.A.I. Mahim of the faithful shepherd 402 and in the compilation of the first section the faithful shepherd said to Rabbi Shimon holy luminary everything that you have said is good but the brain is water i.e. Chakma that is on the right which is the secret of Chesedim the heart is fire which is the secret of the Chakma which is in the left column of Bano which is the secret of judgments and the two of them are mercy and judgment this the brain is the throne of mercy while the other the heart is the throne of judgment and the Holy One blessed be he is the king who stands up from the throne of judgment which is the heart and sits down on the throne of mercy which is the brain 403 when iniquities multiply in the organs and in the arteries of the heart which is the throne of judgment it is said of the heart and the king arising from the banquet of wine in his wrath Esther 77 which is the wine of the Torah but when the wings of the lung blow on the heart it is said and it king's wrath was pacified but ten for the two wings of the lung are the secret of the verse and the cherubs shall stretch out their wings on high over spreading the covering with their wings Shema 2520 this is the atonement of the heart 404 and in what way was the king's wrath appeased it was because then he heard the voice Bar 789 this being the voice of the Torah the voice of the recital of the SHMA which is the central column which is Chesedim that unites the right and it Left with each other under the control of the Shesedim, and then the judgments are quieted as explained in the previous paragraph, and it spoke to him, Ibn, which is the secret of the revelation of Chakma that is in Malchut, which is called speech, and this is in the prayer that is formulated in the mouth, which is Adonai, open my lips, and my mouth shall rehearse your praise. Tehillim 5117, which is Malchut 405, and that wind that blows in the wings of the lung, namely the Shesedim that are revealed by Chakma of the right as above in the preceding paragraph, carries the voice out through the trachea, Hadkana, which is get Hadkana wisdom, get understanding, Mishle 45, for the voice which is Zeir and namely Bob is the son of Yudh, which are Chakma and Bana, and about this it is said, thus says Adonai Elohim, come from the four winds, O breath, Hebrew Ash, Yashis, 379, and the four are the four letters of the holy name, Yod, Hey, of Zeir and and this is the wind that. Beats and palpitates on all the arteries of the heart about which it is said wherever the spirit Rash was minded to go they went Yashiskal 112 406 the holy luminary said to the faithful shepherd certainly O faithful shepherd it is your level at which it is said then the king's wrath was pacified have for the level of the faithful shepherd is the central column which is Zeir and that is called voice by which the judgments are quieted as above happy is the people that is. In such a case have Shikatayalim 14,415 Shashasha having the numerical value of Moses the faithful shepherd said to him blessed are you O holy luminary for you are the candle that burns before the king and his matron the candle of Hashem Mishle 2027 is your soul 407 Rabbi Shimon said to the faithful shepherd you have given an explanation for the brain the heart and the wings of the lungs but what about the two kidneys what are they the faithful shepherd replied we learned about it. Wings of the lungs who makes the winds his messengers tail him 1044 this being the secret of chesed in which are called winds the kidneys are the flames of fire his ministers ibid namely judgments and the two wings of the lung with the two kidneys stand for the four living creatures of the throne where the wings of the lung are lion and eagle which are chesed and the two kidneys are ox and man which are gurat and the throne is the heart that is in the middle which is the throne of judgment 408 and so too does the brain have four living creatures for the brain is the throne of mercy and who might they be there sight hearing smell and speech sight is lion namely chakma hearing is ox namely bina smell is eagle namely zeir and, and each of them has four countenances and four wings speech is man namely malchut he is attached above namely on the mouth of the head and below in the
Haste that the angel of death kills them that he oppresses them and replies not really for scripture ads and on the side of their oppressors there was power but they had no comfort or but then who is that power that kills them the answer to this is to be found in the verse let there be lights had Miro in the firmament of heaven bear sheet 114 and the word Miro is written in the abbreviated spelling namely without a bop and can be read Mirat the reference therefore is to Lilith who is appointed over that oppressor 410 and Lilith is called spleen and she goes to play with the children later killing them and creates in them anger and tears and bewailment the spleen goes to its own kind the liver which is Samael who is the angel of death this namely the liver was created on the second day of the work of creation while the other namely the spleen was created on the fourth day of the work of creation and for this reason it is not a good omen to commence something on Mondays. Or on Wednesdays liver is death for adults spleen is death for children Moses repeats some of the information from earlier sections and adds the fact that anger comes from the gall and that anyone who is angry is the same as an idol worshipper we learn that the Shechen wraps the body that is sick in order to heal it but the totally wicked person is surrounded on all sides by the angel of death R.A.I. Mahim the faithful shepherd 411 and in the compilation of the first section said The faithful shepherd that is certainly how it is for the liver is the level of Esau and Esau is Edom namely is all blood have dam and gathers in all blood whether clear or turbid and does not differentiate between good and bad between impure blood and pure blood for it makes no distinction between them but the heart which is Israel does distinguish between good and bad between impure blood and pure blood and takes only the clear and the clean of that blood like one who picks food out of it Waste matter 412 and after the heart which is Jacob namely Zeir and takes the clear blood which is at the top and the liver which is Esau namely Samael remains in the waste matter of the blood it is angered at it with the gall which is Gehenom which was created on the second day of the work of creation the liver being the death of all the adults while the gall is the wicked female of Samael which is called a strange fire heart bondage and idolatry 413 and since the anger awakens from it from the gall towards the liver the sages taught in the mission anyone who is angry is as though he worshipped idols and furthermore any burning up and heat that comes with any of the illnesses of the parts of the body is only from the gall for at the time of illness it engulfs the arteries of the liver in flames and wishes to burn up the whole body it is like a storm in the sea and its waves reach up to the skies and want to break out of their limits and destroy the world and this would indeed happen were it not for the Shechinah which is for a sick person like the sand to the sea surrounding it so that it should not break out so too is the Shechinah in wrapping the body and assisting it as it is written Hashem strengthens him upon the bed of sickness Tehillim 414 414 and for this reason the sages of the mission taught one who visits a sick person should not sit at the head of the bed because the Shechinah is over his head nor at the foot of the bed because the angel of death is at his feet and this is not the case for every person but just for ordinary people in the case of the perfectly righteous Hashem strengthens him upon the bed of sickness namely at his head and the Shechinah wraps his body up to his feet and this is why it was said about Jacob he gathered up his feet into the bed Bear she 4933 this is the Shechinah about which it is said and the earth is my footstool Yeshayah 661 and the Shechinah is also called bed in the case of the thoroughly wicked person the angel of death surrounds him on every side and this is the evil inclination for the angel of death is the evil inclination for the angel of death surrounds him on every side and his sword is the gall whose edges turn green with one drop of the three drops that the gall sprinkles on it as it is written but her end is bitter same word as for gall as worm which sharp as a two-edged sword michelet 54 liver is male which is a male and the appendix of the liver is his female and of rai mahin we learned that the stomach is one sixtieth part of death 415 the stomach is one part in sixty of death and is called a deep sleep since the stomach sleeps and is a which is the sixth stage of the angel of death and because it came from afar it is from the side of death but is not death itself the hint is one sixtieth part of death the faithful shepherd tells us about the good and evil inclination in each part of the body about the four kinds of Offerings and elements and holy beasts are A.I. Mahim the faithful shepherd 416 the faithful shepherd said since this body is of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil Beersheet 29 there is no part of the body that does not have in it both the evil inclination and the good inclination this being the case for ordinary mortals in the case of the perfectly righteous each part does indeed also have two inclinations which are male and female but both of them are good being like the bride and the bridegroom the utterly wicked have in each part of their bodies two evil inclinations male and female from the side of Samael and the serpent 417 and it follows from this that in terms of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil in the case of ordinary mortals there are in the stomach two levels good and evil and this indeed is what the sages taught the stomach is asleep and there is sleep that is one sixtieth part of death and there is also sleep that is one sixtieth part a prophecy and for this reason the heads of the academy taught it is written and the dreams tell falsehood Zechariah 102 and it is also written and speak to him in a dream Bar 126 there is no contradiction here in the former case it is through a demon namely the other side from the side of the evil in a man's sleep and in the latter case it is through an angel which is from the good side in a man's sleep a dream through an angel is one sixtieth part of prophecy a dream through a demon which is falsehood is from the side of death and is straw thus indeed was it taught just as we cannot be without straw so there cannot be a dream without some nonsense 418 the stomach is a peeled gizzard namely it is like the peeled gizzard of a bird and the sages taught the gizzard grinds for it takes everything and pulverizes the food sending it to all the parts if the parts are without iniquities it is as the sages taught that there are matters that delay the sacrifice and the one who is sent by the Holy One, blessed be he to receive his offering. The peeled stomach muscle does not descend to accept it, for there is an offering that the Holy One, blessed be he, receives through the lion as it is said, and they forehead the face of a lion on the right side. Yashiskel 110, and the Holy One, blessed be he, rides on him and comes down with him to receive that offering, and there is an offering that he receives through the ox as it is said, and they forehead the face of an ox. On the left side, Ibid 419, and there is an offering that he receives through the eagle as it is written, the four also had the face of an eagle. Yashiskel 110, and they are two turtle doves or two young pigeons. Vayakra 57, and there is an offering that he receives by man about whom it is written, if any man of you bring an offering to Hashem, Vayakra 12, in the form of the same one about whom it is written, as for the likeness of their faces, they had the face of a man. Yashiskel 110. Explanation here is that the four living creatures are the secret of the four letters Y U D H A B A lion and ox being Y U D H A and eagle and man being Bob Hay for Yud Hay Bob Hay descends on them to receive the sacrifice which is the secret of the four living creatures 420 and there are natural living creatures namely angels appointed over bodies that are of the four basic elements fire wind water and earth and they are pure opposite them are four living creatures of prey namely the angels of destruction who being impure are appointed over the four galls namely white gall red gall green gall black gall who are the demons of the world for all temperature and every illness comes from the gall 421 and there are mental living creatures namely the four angels Michael Gabriel Uriel Raphael who surround the throne which is Malchut and above them and higher than they are the divine living creatures from the side of holiness namely Chesed Bure Typhera and Malchut of Z E I R. And then there are also the living creatures of the other side, and they are called other Elohim, while the divine living creatures of holiness are called living Elohim, and those divine living creatures of holiness are called Elohim of divinity, and the cause of all causes, El Master over all works, a kind is drawn to its own kind, and so since there are other Elohim, it is said about them, he that sacrifices to any Elohim save to Hashem only, he shall be utterly destroyed. Shema 2219, and this is so that the living Elohim should not be mingled with the other Elohim, and of Rai Mahim, the grinding of the stomach is likened to the distribution of the offering 422, and the stomach takes and grinds and distributes in all directions below, namely to the parts of the body, and from it are nourished the lower beings, and from those drinks all those spirits and other parties who take their nourishment at night drink below from those parts and fats that are burnt on the altar at night end. The remainder is taken by the other parts of the liver taking everything and sacrificing to the heart as we have learned and this is what is written the face of a lion on the right
is the meaning of what is written. I have gathered my myrrh with my spice, I have eaten my honeycomb with my honey, I have drunk my wine with my milk. Sure, Hashirim 51 and the verse continues. Eat, O oh dear ones, and drink, drink deep loving companions. If the companions are the other parts of the body which are the hosts and camps of the king who distributes food to them by means of the chief baker which is the mason, while the drink is by means of the chief butler which is the lung 424 and the liver is on the right side of man wherefore and they forehead the face of a lion on the right side namely to the right of the king which is the heart the minister of Esau and the spleen is Lilith as explained above the spleen is to the left and they are of the other side for the liver is a male and the face of an ox on the left side refers to the pouring out of wine mixed with water before the king for wine is of the left side and the lion devouring the sacrifices is the liver who collects together the food namely the prayer in the stead of the sacrifices before the king which is the heart he is therefore on the right for eating comes from the right and the wine from the left and all this refers to the time of exile as will be explained 425 but there is a difficulty here if the liver is Esau how does it arrange food for the heart which is Jacob the answer is that the heart is certainly like Isaac namely the left column and the liver is Esau who hunted venison then Says to him, Let my father arise and eat of his son's venison. Bear she 2731. This refers to the prayers of the poor who are sent away and are not accepted on high, and Isaac suffers trouble and anguish because they do not know how to direct the prayer. This is why Esau did not say, Eat of my venison, but eat of his son's venison, namely of Israel, as it is written, Israel is my son, my firstborn. Shema 422. Likewise, Israel in exile has no food except through the nations of the world. 426. But when they are in the land of Israel, their food is through the Sheshanah, and the two wings of the lung will give drink to the nation of Israel, for they are the chief butler as above, and the two kidneys which are the chief baker cook the seed that descends from the brain and cook the water that they receive from the wings of the lung, and after the king which is the heart has eaten it is said of its two kidneys, Eat, O dear ones, sure, Hashirim 51, and of the two wings of the lung and drink. Drink deep loving companions, Ibid 427, for the heart is the throne of judgment, and the four living creatures that are its messengers are the two wings of the lung and the two kidneys, namely Shesed, Burin, Netzach, and Hot, for the wings of the lung are the secret of thus were their faces, and their wings were divided upwards. Yashiska 111 to welcome the king, which is the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel, and might, the spirit of knowledge, and of the fear of Hashem. Yeshua 112, for it is he who sits on the throne, which is the heart, which is the throne of judgment, and all the pulse beats follow after it as soldiers after their king. 428, and the wind that blows from the wings of the lung blows through the two nostrils of the nose, and it is cold and chilled on the left, and warm on the right, and from the point of view of the brain, which is the throne of mercy, the cold wind is to the right, which is Shesed, and the warm is to the left, which is Burin, that is where the heart is and the brain is tempered between the two of them the right and the left and so the heart is blended of cold and hot namely by means of the wind of the wings of the lung that blows on it and the brain also is blended of cold and hot for the brain and the heart receive from each other 429 and the spleen with its camps which are the bondman and bondwoman takes the drinks of everything and Solomon said about them I acquired men servants and made servants Kahila 27. The two kidneys are called fire offerings named after the heavenly fire offerings about which it is said the offerings of Hashem made by fire and his dues shall be Devarim 181 430 and in the trachea there are six cartilage rings about which it is said ascribe to Hashem O you mighty Tehillim 291 for ascending through them is the voice that subdivides into the six voices of the Sheshana while the seventh ascends to the mouth which is the throne and the six cartilage rings of it. Trachea are like the six steps of the king's throne which is the mouth and the trachea is a ladder with the angels of Elohim ascending and descending on it. Bershi 2812 for the angels of Elohim are the vapors that ascend from the heart while the spirits of air descend into the heart to cool its heat so that it should not burn the body up. 431 and when the breath descends it does so in a number of breaths like a king with his soldiers and the wings of the lung welcome the breath which is as a king over them as I have noted thus were their faces and their wings were divided upward this being in order to welcome the king over them and also and the cherubim shall stretch out their wings on high Shema 2524 if the parts of men are meritorious in keeping the precepts of the supreme king who is the holy spirit he descends on the ladder which is the throat with a number of holy spirits about which it is said who makes the winds his messengers tell him 1044 they rise to Except the vapors that are in the heart about which it is said, the flames of fire his ministers it, and it is also said about them the voice of Hashem hews out flames of fire. Tehillim 297 because the heart is Adonai from whom ascend the flames of fire in the mouth which is Yudhei Vavhei for a number of spirits of holiness descend with him that is from the four letters Yudhei Vavhei concerning which it is said, thus says Adonai Elohim come from the four winds O breath Yashis call 379. 433 the trachea Hebkana is get Hebkana wisdom get understanding head by the Mishle 45 for they are to the right of the trachea which is Chisa this being the secret of get wisdom and to the left of the trachea which is Bura this being the secret of get understanding Tiferet is in the middle of the trachea and is a letter and the secret of that and the body has six extremities namely the two arms which are Chisa and Bura the torso and the covenant which are Tiferet and Yizit and the two thighs which are Netzach and Hot and the six extremities of the body parallel the six cartilage rings of the trachea 434 and when Yudhei Vav descends to the heart to Adonai judgment joins with mercy in the heart making Yud Aleph Hei Dalet Vav Nun and when Adonai ascends to the mouth at Adonai open my lips Tehillim 5117 to welcome Yudhei Vav in the mouth the two names become their one union namely Yud Aleph Hei Dalet Vav Nun just as they were combined in the heart for this reason the sages of the Mishnah taught no one whose inside does not correspond to his exterior may enter the study house namely who does not have in his mouth the same as in his heart for just as there is a unity of the Yudhei Vav and Adonai in the heart there will also be a unity of the Yudhei Vav and Adonai in the mouth and of Rai Mahim the six rings of cartilage in the trachea and the air and voice that blow through them are likened to the functions of the shofar 435 the six cartilage rings of the trachea are combined together and they are called O you mighty Hebelim Tehillim 291 and they give forth the wind to blow over the world and they come from the side of Bura and when they join together they are like a shofar which is the secret of Bina and they are called shofar which is the secret of the shofar Lidhorn of Isaac's Ram Hebel and they are the Rams Hebelim of the breed of Bashan Devarim 3214 as it is written ascribe to Hashem O you mighty Elim Tehillim 291 for they are the Elim of Isaac that bring forth breath and voice and that voice goes out and meets with rain clouds and is heard by the creatures of the outside it is thus written but the thunder of his mighty deeds who can understand Eo 2614 for they certainly come from the side of Bura and for this reason the L of glory makes to thunder Hashem is upon many waters Tehillim 293 it is not written the L of glory thunders but the L of glory makes to thunder the meaning of which is that he activates others to do the thundering namely through the mighty and there is none that recognizes the praise of this voice which is why it is written who can understand Eo 2614 the faithful shepherd tells us that voice is made from water wind and fire and he explains how the heart gets understanding rai mahin the faithful shepherd 436 and in the compilation of the first part the faithful shepherd started by saying woe to those people whose hearts are closed and whose eyes are unseen who do not know the parts of their own body and according to what they are arranged for the trachea is composed of three forces of vapor head hebel hey bet which is a flame head lahav lamed hey which is the flaming fire that issues from the heart and which is divided into seven vapors or vanities as mentioned by kahila beer which enters it from outside sea water of the wings of the lung which are attached to the trachea and from these three that is from water wind and fire is voice made and each one is subdivided into seven and there are seven flames seven airs and seven brooks 437 and when the flames of the heart meet with the rain clouds which are the wings of the lung by way of the trachea of the lung the result is but the thunder of his mighty deeds who can understand for therein the heart understands with bino which is in the heart on the left which is bura and
The throne which is I am a so that Chakma will descend to it from the brain to the heart for with it the heart understands for this reason it is written get Hapkina wisdom have Chakma get understanding have by for Abba which is Chakma descends in it and Abba ascends in it and this is a ladder on which to ascend and to descend for Abba and I am a are incorporated in each other and descend from the brain to the heart and ascend from the heart to the brain and are a I am a in Rabbi Shimon. Says that the esophagus is the stage of offerings by fire 439 the esophagus that swallows the food and from where it enters all the parts is the stage of offerings by fire these offerings by fire draw near immediately swallowing and taking everything from the upper fire that includes the offerings by fire and this is the secret of the verse the offerings of Hashem made by fire and his dues shall be devour 181 these are the offerings by fire that devour and swallow and the others. Do not eat that way 440 and all the people of the world on the outside know not how they eat nor do they know their secret but the stages that are inside do know and they take from them for the esophagus cannot be examined from the outside for they do not know but on the inside they do know and take until it enters the mill and is pulverized and cooked and the liver takes everything as we had learned but from those offerings by fire issue forth stages that take before the liver and what are. They there are the molar teeth which eat and grind the sacrifices therefore on the destruction of the temple it is written and the grinder cease because there are few Kahila 123 these are the first to grind 441 once it has been ground those who exercise control over them swallow and receive it and they are called the esophagus why is the esophagus have chit, vav shin tet so called because the shape of the vav of chit, the vav is like a vav over esophagus afterwards it wanders. About Hebshat, Shin Tet to drink wine and water as it is written the people went about and gathered Bimidbar 118 food to eat and to drink wine and water namely the libation of wine and the libation of water 442 those seraphim with their flames enter through the esophagus and are drawn into the lung where they take a drink and they are called lung in one union with the lung and everything is absorbed into them and each one of them takes as befits him and on the destruction of the temple and the grinder cease because they were few for their form and their food have been diminished and there is no day that passes without a curse Rabbi Shimon lifted up his voice and said woe to Jerusalem the holy city woe to the people that has lost all this goodness and the image of ministers mighty men and officials has been reduced the companions cried about this and said alas Rabbi when you depart from the world who will reveal to us such deep and hidden secrets that have not been Heard from the days of King Solomon until now happy is the generation that hears such matters happy is the generation amongst whom you are woe to the generation that will be orphaned without you section 69 7 firmaments the faithful shepherd lists the seven firmaments curtain firmament heavens abode residence dwelling and skies and tells us a little about the first three of these are a.i. the faithful shepherd 443 the faithful shepherd began by saying it is written though our lips were full of praise as the expansive firmament and the firmaments are seven in number curtain firmament heavens abode residence dwelling and skies heavens have shechachim is so called because they're in the millstones grind the manna for the righteous which are yezid and malchut that are called righteous and righteousness in the future namely from the emanation of bina that is called the future to come and the basis for the name shechachim and heavens is a verse and you shall beat have shashik to some of it very small shema 3036 and they are net sash and hot about which it is said and let the heavens pour down righteousness yeshea 458 which is the lower shechina namely malchut which is called righteousness to which the emanation pours down from the heavens 444 the first firmament which is malchut is called curtain for he pours plenty into it in the evening and brings out that is bestows in the morning this being the time for emanating and the second one to be called the firmament is yezid for in it the sun and the moon give light for they are the central column namely tiferet and the lower shechina namely malchut that is to say that yezid unites ceir and pen and malchut with each other and both of them illuminate through it as it is written and elohim set them in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth Bereshit 117 and the righteous one which is yezid is called sign when uniting net sash and hot and I ask called testimony when uniting Tiferet and Malchut section 17 Netzach and Hot we are told that Netzach and Hot are called heavens because they are two halves of one body that must not be separated the faithful shepherd talks about Netzach and Hot in connection with the sin of the tree of knowledge of good and evil and in connection with grapes and wine he explains why Netzach and Hot grind up the manna for the righteous yezid that is between them he also says that Netzach and Hot are cherubim 445 Netzach and Hot are the two halves of one body like two twins which is why they are called heavens the two of them together are Vav of Chidlid esophagus from the aspect of the left and they are the two molar teeth from the side of the right 446 and Moses took the bones of Joseph with him Shemot 1319 that is the bones of the righteous is an everlasting foundation Mishle 1025 which is the level of Joseph the righteous and about them about Netzach and Hot it is said by offering the provision of my sacrifices lip bread made by fire Bimidbar 282 and by bread is mentor namely Netzach and Hot who fight each other in the secret of the above mentioned grinding and it is said about them come eat Hedlash who also fight of my bread Hedlash my Mishle 95 and they Netzach and Hot are the bunches of grapes that are bestowed by the righteous one which is Yezid and the righteous one which is Yezid is called the fruit tree. And for it is it said and they bore it upon a pole have MOT between two Bimidbar 1323 and why on a pole why does it not say and they bore it upon with a tree it is because the righteous one who is called tree was not there for Yezid which is the central column did not unite the two bunches of grapes which are Netzach and Hot so that they might be included in each other and they therefore bore on a pole between two without the inclusion of the righteous one 447 and because Netzach and Hot must not be separated it is said about the righteous one which is Yezid he shall never suffer the righteous to be moved have MOT Tehillim 5523 that is Yezid will never cease uniting Netzach and Hot and it is a tree about which it is said whether there is a tree in it or not Bimidbar 1320 but those who spread an evil report of the land uprooted this tree the righteous one which is Yezid and gave rise to and they bore it upon a pole between two and the two are Netzach and Hot in it. Aspects of Bob Bob without the unification of Yezid for the righteous one is collapsed have MOT because they spread an evil report on the land 448 and about Netzach and Hot it was said in connection with the sin of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil that Eve squeezed grapes and she gave to him for Netzach and Hot are called bunches of grapes and grapes are the secret of the illumination of Chakma that is on the left for it is forbidden to draw it down from above downwards and it's being drawn down from above is compared to the squeezing of grapes which is the secret of the sin of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil the righteous one which is Yezid contains the secret Hebsad for in Yezid there are the letters of Sod this is the one preserved with its grapes from the six days of creation for Yezid guards the grapes which are the secret of the illumination of Chakma so that they would not be squeezed namely that they should not draw it down from above but only upwards from below and the six days of creation are the six levels of Chesed Bure Tiferet Netzach Hot and Yezid of the letter Bob which is Tiferet the central column which is to say that Yezid receives its power of protection from IT and they are called Seraphim when they are Bob Bob without unity as it is written Seraphim each one had six wings lit six wings six wings for each Isha 62 that is Bob equal six is mentioned twice and they are called Seraphim from the aspect of the left that is in them and they extract water from the aspect of the right that is in them and they are thirsty because of the flame that is in them from the side of Bure namely from the left side and they draw water from the side of Chesed 449 about Netzach and Hot it is said who makes the wind spirits his messengers Tehillim 1044 namely from the side of the central column which is Zeir and that is to say that they are the winds that are drawn down from Zeir and within the lobes of the lung that blow on the heart which is the tenth level of the Holy Spirit namely Malchut which is between them namely between Netzach and Hot and this is Yezid which is the letter Bob which is a letter in his host that includes the six joints of the two legs which are Netzach and Hot each one of which has three joints because it is the central column for it is written about them his legs are as pillars of marble Hebshish Shurhashirim 515 and this is the righteous one the sign of it. Covenant that includes the six hepshish of Netzach and Hot 450 the upper bob of the two bobs of
The righteous one which is Yezid is the central column between Netzach and Hot and receives from the manna that they grind and this is why Netzach and Hot are called grinders 451 and from the side of Esophagus Hebshit Bob Shintet before which there is grinding in the teeth it is said the people went about Hebshitu, Shintet Bob and gathered it Bimidbar 118 it being a collection of judgment decisions that is in the mission namely the female waters that Yisrael causes to rise up. By engaging in Torah and Mishnah which is sent to the secret of the upper Chitlet Esophagus for Chitlet spelled with the same letters of Chit and grounded in Mills Bimidbar 118 it follows that whoever brings out of his mouth words of Torah must grind them in his teeth namely pick them completely in order to express complete words and these words are called complete but as for the other words that are scorned these words are swallowed when eaten greedily without being ground in. Their molars and their teeth, namely, they do not clarify fully the words of the Torah that they bring out of their mouths about them. It is written, and while the meat was yet between their teeth, the wrath of Hashem was inflamed against the people. Bimid bar 1133. This is because they come from the root of him who said, Give me to swallow, I pray you. Bershi 2530. Namely, the wicked Esau and Netzach and Hot are called cherubim once the verse and the cherubim shall stretch out their wings on. Hi Shema 2520, which refers to Netzach and Hot, as explained in the preceding paragraph, section 71 said, Shabbat, you have given me no mate even as the ninth sphere, yet it is not paired with another sphere. The Shabbat has no partner. 452. There are eight Sphirot, Chakma, Bani, Gradens, Gurit, Tiferet, Malchut, Netzach, Hot, the righteous one, which is Yezid, has a diadem on his head, for it has no mate. What is the meaning of his diadem? It refers to the upper Keter crown. And in respect thereof the sages of the Mishnah taught in the next world there is no eating or drinking but the righteous sit with their diadems upon their heads and this is as they taught the Shabbat pleaded before the Holy One blessed be he to all the days you gave a partner but to me you gave no partner and of R.A.I. Mahin the section 72 I of S.H. Madalad of Eshad the name of I and equals 70 Rabbi Shimon gives us the concealed meaning of the letters in the title and his explanation teaches us about rejoicing and unity 453 Rabbi Shimon began by quoting here Yisrael Hashem our Elohim Hashem is one to Barim 64 IT is written with a large letter I in the word S.H. Malad here and so is the letter Dalit in the word Eshad lit one and these form the word Ed I and Dalit a witness as is written Hashem is witness against you I 125 and from the word S.H. Mashin M.E.M. I in the letters Shin M.E.M. remain the M.E.M. being open what is the reason that the M.E.M. is not final namely the form of the same letter used when it is the last letter of a word what is the difference between a medial open mem and a final mem it is that the final mem is the upper king namely bina while the medial mem alludes to the lower king namely malchut and the letters shin mem of the word shma allude to malchut and the other letters of eshad one alat chet dalat that remain are alat chet it is the glory of elohim to conceal a thing mishlei 252 it is written 454 i have found in the book of rabbi hamdan asaba everyone who makes this unity each day rejoicing is prepared for him on high in the secret of the letters shin mem of the word shma here at the side the beginning of the verse and alat chet of the word eshad at that side the end of the verse and he starts to join together the letters in reverse namely the alat of the alat chet from eshad at the end of the verse is placed before the shin of the shin mem from shma at the beginning of it verse and he ends straightforwardly namely the mem of the shma and subsequently the chet of eshad the four letters so arranged alaf shin mem chet make the word smash as in the verse i will rejoice smash in hashem tehillim 10434 and this is so literally for it is the holy unity alluded to in the letters i and dalit have edlin witness for the letters of the two words shma and eshad when rearranged as above form the two words smash lit i will rejoice edlin witness and this is only right and thus is it in the book of enoch who similarly said that whoever makes this unity each day rejoicing from above is made ready for him 455 furthermore let us reflect upon the word shma for it includes the two letters shin mem together with the large i and these are the i and equal 70 names that are in the secret of the holy patriarchs namely the 72 names in shesed bura and tiferet that are called patriarchs of which there are 70 main names in the secret of the 70 Members of the Sanhedrin and the two witnesses, and this is the secret of S.H. Mashem Lit name I and equal 70, where Shem Lit name I as Malchut that is composed of the 70 names Yisrael Hashem are Elohim Hashem, these being the four compartments of the Tefilin, which are the four Mokin Chakma by the right of that and the left that is in that to which Allah Chet have a ch lit brother from the word are attached. This refers to the one who said, Open to me, my sister, my love, Sher Hashirim. 52 namely Zeir and Pen and the Dalit from the word Eshat is the knot of the head Tefilin, which is the shape of the letter Dalit for Malchut is attached to them, and the secret was given to the sages, but not to be revealed. Rabbi Shimon fell silent, he cried, then laughed, and said, I shall tell the secret, for certainly the heavenly will is abiding, for there will be no generation such as this one until King Messiah comes, in which permission will be granted to reveal its section. 73 The straps and the knot of the hand Tefilin Rabbi Shimon explains why the straps of the Tefilin are arranged and fastened as they are and he emphasizes the importance of the Yad 456 Two straps come out of each side namely from the right and the left this being the secret of the two thighs that are from the chest and downwards of Allah Chet which is Zeir and Pen namely Netzach and Hot of Zeir and Pen onto which the prophets of truth hold for from above on the head two straps come out which are the secret of the two arms that surround the head from the right and from the left which are the secret of Chesed and Bura and to which the Dalit which is Malchut is attached in the secret of the knot of the head Tefilin later Malchut descends and the straps which are the secret of the thighs below extend downwards for since it is attached above with the Dalit of the knot of the head Tefilin as is proper it descends below to Netzach Hot and Yezid to hold onto her hosts which means sharing. Beneficence to the dwellers of the worlds of Bria, Yetzirah, and Asiyah, and when it becomes attached there with Netzach Hot Yezid, it is so attached at the top of the thighs and the imprint of the Yud, which is the holy covenant, namely Yezid, I it from above, and it then unites in one unity with Zeir and Pen 457 Yud is the secret of the covenant, namely Yezid, for everyone who keeps this covenant will be saved above and below, because Pinchas P.E. Nunchet Samik was zealous for this covenant, he was saved from the heavenly judgment and from earthly judgment, which is why the letter Yud was added in him into his name, as it is written, Pinchas P.E. Yud Nunchet Samik, the son of Elazer, Bimidbar 2511 458, this Yud has to be such that it will never move from the hand Tefilin, namely the knot of the hand Tefilin that is in the shape of the letter Yud, which alludes to Yezid as above, this is so that there should be no separation between Yezid, which is Yud, and the hand Tefilin, which is Malchut. And the whole of Malchut's rejoicing is with this Yud which is Yezid and this Yud is to be found in the male but not in the female he is it is called righteous Hebzadik, Zadik Dalit Yud Kaf while the female Malchut is called righteousness Hebzadeka, Zadik Dalit Kaf He without Yud for Yud is to be found with the male and not with the female and this is why the Yud is close to it on the hand Tefilin and whoever removes the Yud which is Yezid away from this place from Malchut which is the hand Tefilin will himself be far from the delights of the next world namely he will not be privileged to receive the emanation coming from the mating of Yezid and Malchut that is drawn down from the upper Eden called the next world 459 the righteous Hebzadik, Zadik Dalit Yud Kof is in the male while in the female it is righteousness Hebzadek, Zadik Dalit Kof without a Yud similarly Ishlit a man, Aleph Yud Shin is written with a Yud while Ishlit a woman, Aleph. Shin is written without a yud, this is why it is her rejoicing to come close to the yud so that it will delight with her in the mating. Whoever removes this delighting is himself removed from delight on high, and thus it is written for them that honor me, I will honor Ishmuel 230, section 74. And when Pinchas saw it, he took a spear in his hand. We hear that the yud was added to Pinchas' name because he halted the strong judgment of the plague 460. Come and see. Pinchas stood before the strong judgment of
70 members of the Sanhedrin and the number 70 ayin equals I is because they are drawn from its eyes thus everything is one because Isaac and the eyes of Malchut go together for Malchut is built up from Isaac and its eyes are from him namely from the left column and so the two of them are really one and everything fits 462 so Pinchas is Isaac for Pinchas stood up and judged the case of Zimri and Kashbi and put on the strong bureau which is left called Isaac and because of the steed. Pinchas merited the right namely he earned the priesthood which is Jesus left being here included in the right has turned by wrath away Bimid bar 2511 what is the meaning of turned by wrath away the answer is that this refers to the three officials in Gehenna who are called destruction anger and wrath for Pinchas saw that wrath spreading and being drawn down from the side of Isaac what did he do he put on the level of Isaac which is the root of wrath and then he took hold of that. Wrath is one who takes hold of his neighbor and pushes him back 463 and then he judged the case and executed judgment he judged according to the rule that if a man has sexual intercourse with a gentile woman the zealots may fall upon him and it was permitted to strike Zimri and he passed judgment as it is written and thrust both of them through Bimid bar 258 wherefore it is written has turned by wrath away lit back while elsewhere it is written he has turned back his right hand from before the enemy Egypt 23 just as the turning mentioned in the letter is back so also in the former case it is back and thus the yud that was added here to pinches is the yud that is in Isaac which alludes to Yizid and it is all away from above the children of Israel Bimid bar 2511 for when he saw that wrath he saw it as it was descending over the heads of children of Israel and it is therefore written has turned back my wrath back from lit above the children of Israel. Section 75 The letters M E M Bob and Toph are assigned for the angel of death. Rabbi Shimon works through some numerology and rearrangement of the letters in Mavis and death to show that Pinches was dedicated to the holy name of God and that he turned away God's wrath by willing the spear. We are told that none of those who died in the plague were of Israel, with the exception of those from the tribe of Shimon. Those who died were the wicked, and the wicked are already considered to be dead. 464 He asks it is written, and when Pinchas Owen took a spear in his hand, Bimid bar 257. What did he see? And answers he saw a letter M E M flying through the sky, and this letter is a sign of the angel of death. For the M E M wants to be built up with the letter Bob and the letter Toph to form the word Mavis lit death. M E M Bob Toph. What did Pinches do? For he was then attired with Isaac. He then took that letter M E M and snatched it away from the angel of death and joined it with himself and. When the angel of death saw that Pinchas had taken the letter M.E.M. to himself he immediately turned back 465 he asks but what is the reason behind all this he answers when Pinchas was zealous in his heart he attired himself with Isaac and he rose up to 208 which is the numerical value of his name it is also the numerical value of Isaac and since he saw the letter M.E.M. flying in the sky he snatched it and joined it to himself and immediately became Roma lit a spear, Rush M.E.M. Chet that is. The letter M.E.M. joined the numerical value of his name Rush Chet 208 and formed the word Roma K spear as it is written and took a spear in his hand 466 because the letter M.E.M. was the first mark for Adam that death was ordained over the world because this letter flew over Adam's head at the time when as is written she took up had me the fruit thereof bear she 36 and this M.E.M. was waiting for the letters Bob and Toph as is written and did he have Veda call starts Bob Toph and she gave him. Vatapan starts Bob Toph also to her husband with her and he did eat and the eyes of them both were opened had Vatapakak Nebit 6 to 7 and thus was death had Mavis, M.E.M. Bob Toph established over the world 467 and similarly now Pinchas saw that same letter M.E.M. that was flying over the heads of the children of Israel and how did he see it he saw the shape of an open M.E.M. covered in blood when he saw it he said this is certainly a sign of the angel of death he immediately snatched it mentioned. Over it the ineffable name written in full and brought that letter down to himself and as the numerical value of Pinchas is the letters Rush Chet and the M.E.M. combined with the Rush Chet to form Rush M.E.M. Chet had Roma lit a spear as it is written and took a spear in his hand and this is why it is also written has turned my wrath away from over the children of Israel and that he was zealous for my sake Bimid bar 2511 for he was zealous for the holy name for they had joined it to another. Dominion among them, but what is the meaning of among them? The answer is that he went in among a number of hordes and a number of great ones and gave himself over to death for their sake in order to save them. Therefore, it is written among them, but the secret of among them is as follows. The letters of among them had Bidakam or Bidakam M.E.M. for the zealousness that he showed was within M.E.M. 468. He asks what's the reason that Pinches was zealous for this M.E.M. and he answers this. Is because this was a sign for death, a sign for forty lashings. This is the sign of the four deaths decreed by the court, and from whence it rises and descends, descends and rises. When it rises in numerical value, it evolves to M.E.M. equals forty, and when it comes down, it's a dollar equals for the four directions that separate from male and female of impurity because of them are the four deaths decreed by court, and from there they rise to M.E.M. Thus the M.E.M. is a sign and utensils of the angel of death in this. Is what Pinchas took and established within MEM, and therefore I consumed not the children of Israel in my jealousy. But 469 he asks, How can it be said that Pinchas turned away the wrath of the Holy One? Blessed be he when it is written, and those that died by the plague were twenty and four thousand. Bimid bar 259 had not even one of them died, I could have said, Has turned away my wrath, but since so many died, it does not make sense to say, Turned away my wrath, so that I consumed not the children of Israel. The answer I ask that the matter certainly needs clarification as follows Woe to the person who falls his own seed, woe to the one who does not guard his seed properly, for these are they who died in the plague, but heaven forbid not even one of Israel died, with the exception of the tribe of Shimon. When the mixed multitude came, they intermingled with the women of the tribe of Shimon after they had converted and bore them sons, some of whom died at the golden calf episode end. Others of whom died in the plague while those who remained alive died here as it is literally written and the dead ones by the plague were twenty and four thousand Bimid bar 259 scripture does not say which had died namely using a verbal form but rather the dead ones namely using a noun form which teaches that they were already considered dead for the wicked are called dead 470 and because Israel were careful and the holy seed were all counted and not one of them was missing. Wherefore it is written I consumed not the children of Israel Bimid bar 2511 the inference here is that he did consume others who were not of the children of Israel and so too turned away my wrath from over the children of Israel he turned away from over the children of Israel but he did not turn it away from the others who were a mixed multitude and therefore scripture explicitly states from over the children of Israel this is why the children of Israel were counted and the holy one. Blessed be he joined them to himself again as formerly something similar happened in the case of the golden calf as it is written and there fell of the people Shema 3228 all of these were from the mixed multitude to prove the point that they were not of the children of Israel scripture later says and Moses gathered all the congregation of the children of Israel Shema 351 which shows that all of them were in perfection section 76 take from among you an offering not from among the mixed multitude Rabbi Shimon and Rabbi Lazar discussed the question of whether the offering was to be taken only from the children of Israel or from the mixed multitudes as well they also determined that Israel did not in fact worship Baal P.E. or 471 take from among you an offering Shema 355 come and see in the first instance it is written of every man whose heart prompts him to give Shema 252 that is from absolutely anyone even the mixed multitude since the Mixed multitude had made the golden calf and those of them who had died had died the holy one blessed be he wanted to be reconciled with Israel he said to them join yourselves together all of you to one side as it is written and Moses gathered all the congregation of the children of Israel Shema 351 by themselves he said to them my children I want to rest upon you my tabernacle shall be amongst you and so it is written take from among you an offering from you and not from anyone else. I do not want the others to have any connection with me nor with you and this is why all of the mixed multitude were destroyed and so also here all those about whom it is written and those that were dead Bimid bar 259 were of a bad stock namely they were the offspring of the mixed multitude who had intermarried with the
A bracelet is joined to a person among his jewelry that is Yisrael also sinned and not only the mixed multitude he said to him so it is indeed a laser that Yisrael joined himself to Baal Peor but I did not say that Yisrael was innocent of that sin all I said was that they were cleared of death that death should not rest on them 473 he said to him but it is also written take all the chiefs of the people and hang them Emid bar 254 and the reference is clearly to Yisrael he said to him it does indeed specifically say the chiefs of the people namely the mixed multitude who are called people without further epithet it does not say the chiefs of the children of Yisrael and from the use of the term the people we can learn that wherever scripture uses the people the reference is to the mixed multitude here Emid bar 254 it is written the people and elsewhere it is written and when the people saw that Moses delayed Shema 321 and the people gathered themselves together. Ibid and, and their fellow the people Ibid 28 in all these cases the people means a mixed multitude but come and see all that is written is and Yisrael joined himself to Baal Pe or Ibid bar 253 it does not say that they worshipped Baal Pe or as understood from the end of the verse as is written and the people ate and bowed down to their Elohim Ibid 2 scripture does not say that Yisrael ate and bowed down but it is written the people and since it is written and Yisrael joined what is the meaning of and the people ate scripture should have said and Yisrael ate however it was the bad stock namely the mixed multitude who married Israelite wives which was the sin of Yisrael 474 another comment take the verse and Yisrael joined himself to Baal Pe or come and see and Yisrael joined himself within Baal Pe or is not written but rather to Baal Pe or this is so because they gave only embellishment and strength to Baal Pe or without awareness because the worship of P.E.R. consisted of uncovering oneself and depositing in front of him hot feces which worship used to give him pleasure and Baal P.E.R. grew strong from it Israel when they saw this thought that they were there by scorning him and disgracing him for about idolatry it is written you shall say to it get you hence had Zayashayah 3022 and the word for feces had tzoa comes from the same root so they Israel uncovered themselves and answered the call of nature in order to deride the idolatry without awareness and it was for these that pinches made atonement and stopped the plague from them as it is written and he made atonement over the children of Israel Bimid bar 2513 the faithful shepherd confirms that the offering was not taken from the mixed multitude he says that the rule of the mixed multitude over Israel causes Israel to come under the jurisdiction of the stars and planets rather than God R.A.I. Mahim the faithful shepherd 475 the faithful shepherd said Ites written turned away my wrath Bimid bar 2511 what is the meaning of turned away my wrath the answer is that this refers to three officials over Gehenna one is over bloodshed another over incest and the third over idolatry and they are called destruction anger and wrath and the latter wrath was flying through the world and about it is said turned away my wrath he said turned away my wrath from the children of Israel but he did not say from the people which would refer to the mixed multitude for it is said and there fell of the people that day about 3,000 men Shema 3,228 where the meaning of the people is the mixed multitude but here it does not say turned away my wrath from the people but rather from the children of Israel this is to teach that the wrath was not turned away from the mixed multitude for this is how we explained it and we asked the holy luminary that is Rabbi Shimon 476 what does scripture say take from among you an offering to Hashem Shema 355 from among you and not from the mixed multitude for Israel was not called a community and a union until the mixed multitude had been removed from them when the mixed multitude was intermingled amongst them as it were it was as though they were not one people that is why it says take from among you an offering and not from any other partnership namely not from the mixed multitude for I do not want to involve others between me and you 477 and not only that but when the mixed multitude were intermingled with Israel what is written her adversaries have become the chief each of 15 and after the mixed multitude have been removed from Israel what is written take the sum of all the congregation of the children of Israel Bimid bar 262 the literal translation of which verse is lift up the head of all the congregation of the children of Israel and not only that but the Holy One blessed be he said I want to dwell with them this being what is written and let them make me a sanctuary that I may dwell among them Shema 25 8, 478 and not only that but when the children of Israel are in exile it is said about them what prevents the yeast in the dough for the sages of the mission have taught when the mixed multitude are the heads over Israel as it were it is as though the rule of the Holy One blessed be he was removed and they had come under the rule of the jurisdiction of the stars and planets this is why they cry out saying Hashem are Elohim other masters beside you have had dominion over us Yeshua 2613 section 77 mem of Mabes flying in the air Rabbi Shimon says that Elijah Elijah being pinches in reincarnation snatched the letters mem and Bob from the word Mabes which means death by means of the great pity he had for Israel and his determination that they should not be lost because of the sins of Zimri and Kashbi this is how and why he killed the two sinners with the spear Rabbi Shimon Concludes by saying that whenever there is a righteous man in the world, the patriarchs come to help him. 479. Another explanation of the verse pinches be midbar 2511. Arise, O holy luminary, and say things in the presence of the Shechinah, the holy luminary that is Rabbi Shimon arose and said in the complication of the first part, it was said, Come and see pinches arose before the strong judgment of Isaac and stood in the breach, namely the outbreaks of the plague, as it is written, and stood up. Pinches and executed judgment, and so the plague was stayed till 10,630. And as he did in order to protect Israel, this is the reason why pinches and Isaac have the same numerical value, and now new things have to be said here. 480. He began by saying, Elijah, the beloved of the divine king, namely pinches, for Elijah is pinches, saw the letter MEM from the word Mavis, let death flying in the air, snatched it down, and joined it to Rush Chet, which is the numerical value of both Isaac and pinches. And with the MEM completed the combination Rush MEM Chet subsequently he saw the letter Bob from the word Mavis flying in the sky and he snatched it down also and placed it with the Rush MEM Chet thus completing the word Rush Bob MEM Chet had Romic a spear in the fuller spelling as it is written and he took a spear in his hand Bimid bar 257 481 and with what was he able to snatch down these two letters the MEM and the Bob he used the two spirits that were preserved for him on high four. They make up pinches namely Nihai Chez lit the countenance of pity for with these two countenances he had pity on Yisrael that they should not be lost because of those two Zimri and Kashbi and he thrust both of them through Ibid 8 with the two letters the MEM and the Bob as is written in that he was zealous for my sake among them Ibid 11 482 why did pinches associate himself with Isaac it was because Isaac gave himself over to death which is why he joined himself to Isaac that he should help him for from the side of the two fonts of the dough Abraham and Jacob participated in him for Abraham whose level is that of Chesed participated in the Chet Samech of Pinches while Jacob is the Nei of Pinches because it is said about him about Jacob and as he passed over Penuel Bershi 3232 and the letters of Penuel can be read as two words Nei the face of El for whenever the world is in trouble but there is a righteous man in the world who is zealous for the covenant then. The patriarchs combined with him and for their sake Moses said when Israel was in trouble remember Abraham Isaac and Israel your servants Shema 3213 and with the three letters Yadhe Bab of Elijah which are the secret of Abraham Isaac Jacob he earned the hay which is Malchut of Hanay by the prophet and this is Elijah the prophet and thus the Yadhe Bab come together in him section 78 the Yad that Pinches merited was the Yad of Shade the Zohar. Expounds upon the meaning of the lower yud and the upper yud in terms of the covenant. The yud of Shaitay prevents the evil inclination from harming a person. We hear that Pinches was zealous for the covenant both in thought and in deed. 483. The yud that Pinches earned where his name is written out in full with the yud. Pinches was because he was zealous for the covenant and thus merited the covenant for the yud that was added to his name is an indication of the covenant. There are two yuds upper. Yud from yud Hey with which he made the covenant with Abraham between the yud ten fingers of the hands and small yud which is from Adonai with which he made the covenant between the yud toes of the feet and it is a holy letter that is adorned by the supernal print. 484. The small yud is always ever recorded that is to say that it is marked upon all the
They should receive the mokin of lower chakma which are drawn down from Malchut and this they merit by keeping guard over the covenant and by engaging in the Torah they are marked with the upper yet of Yudhi Habab namely they merit upper chakma for they are the children of the divine king it is as we have taught and so it is said you are the children of Hashem your Elohim Devarim 141 in the secret of their receiving from Yudhi of Yudhi Habab which is from Zeir Anpin who is called Yudhi Habab 485 and the letter yet of Shadeh Shin Dalit that is the sign of the covenant is a ring halter that is lowered onto the neck of the demon which is the evil inclination for the letters of Shadeh make two words Shed let a demon Shin Dalit and Yudhi to prevent it from harming man and this is as David said deliver my life from the sword my only one from the power of the dog Tehillim 2221 for the evil inclination is serpent dog lion about which David said he lies in wait. Secretly like a lion in his den, Tehillim 109, or in the words of the prophet of bear as it is written, he is to me a bear lying in wait and like a lion in secret places, each of 310 and it is likened to all the animals, namely is likened to all the beasts of prey and the likeness is drawn for each person according to his sins, that is according to a person's sins, so is the evil inclination called lion or bear and so on, but this has already been clarified 486 and this the evil inclination is. Dog and serpent and brain donkey onto which the soul is mounted and as soon as it is known that its rider is wicked it is written about it his rider shall fall backward Beersheet 4917 and the secret of the matter is if any falling man fall from it Devarim 228 and for this reason Job said I am not inferior to you Eof 123 the literal rendering of this verse is I do not fall from you but the righteous person who rides on it binds it with the knot of the Tefilin straps the sign of it Tefilin which is the yet of Shadeh Shin Dalit Yad being the ring the halter on the neck while the shin of the Tefilin is a chain on the neck 487 and Elijah rode on it when he ascended into the heavens as it is written and Elijah went up by a storm of wind into heaven to Melashim 211 also then Hashem answered Job out of the storm wind Eof 381 and this is why the sages of the mission taught who is mighty he that subdues his inclination and there are those for whom it becomes a donkey. Hebchamer that causes no trouble for its rider and they are the ones who make efforts at exposition by inference from minor to major Hebchamer and this is why it is written about Abraham and saddled his ass Spearshi 223 and this is also why it is said about Messiah humble and riding upon an ass Zechariah 99 488 and for this reason all demons and spirits are fearful of the Yud of Shadeh Shindalat Yud namely the sign of the covenant which is the news ring from the chain and immediately on seeing the Yud of Shadeh on the doorposts of the gates they flee for about the Yud of Shadeh it is said to bind their kings with chains and their nobles with fetters of iron Tehillim 1498 and even more do they flee away when they see it on the Tefilin that are on the arms namely in the knot of the hand Tefilin and of those who are marked with it with the sign of the covenant in their own flesh about them it is said and the stranger that comes near shall be put to death. The Midbar 151 namely the evil inclination that is called stranger shall be put to death for stranger is none other than the evil inclination that is similar to all the beasts and birds of prey as above 489 and for this reason recall now who that was innocent ever perished EO 47 this refers to Pinchas who was zealous for the covenant since the letters of the word innocent had not he when rearranged spelt in the IRMA for zealous and it is recorded upon him that he is the son of it. King and the queen for when he was zealous in thought he earned the letter yet of Yadhebabhe which is the secret of the upper chakma and he became the son of the king and when he was zealous indeed he earned the letter yet of Adonai which is lower chakma and he became the son of the queen and this is the meaning of chakma at the beginning of the combination Yud Aleph Hey Dalit Bab Nun Hey which is the Yud of Yud Hey and chakma at the end of the combination Yud Aleph. Hey Dalit Bab Nun Hey which is the Yud of Adonai and since Adam was marked with these two Yud the sages taught about him that he is the first in thought but the last indeed namely the last of the created for the Yud Hey Bab is the secret of thought and Adonai is the secret of deed and while he was still saying these things he disappeared from their side Rabbi Lazar said happy is our portion that we have been privileged to hear these matters from those of the next world 490. And in compilation of the first part he said wherefore say be midbar 2512 namely this being what the Holy One blessed be he said to Moses an oath upon you whether you want to say to him behold I give to him my covenant of peace of it or whether you don't want to say it to him say it this was what Rabbi Pinchas Ben Yahir said for wherefore I asked the language of an oath the same shadow came and smote Rabbi Abba in the eyes and said to him did the Holy One blessed be he really not know if Moses wanted to say this or not did he really have to say it to him with some doubt either ways he said to him even if it is apparent to the Holy One blessed be he who says that it is obvious to others therefore he said to him wherefore say this the other section 79 Israel are the members of the Shechinah the faithful shepherd talks about the Shechinah giving testimony about Israel as the Shechinah is their help from heaven people take strength from the study. And teaching of Halachah and Mishnah and in the study of the Sheshanah has a home we learn that those who bring others to righteousness are like the stars forever and ever 491 and it was also said in the compilation of the first part to the chief musician upon Shushan Edut a mictum of David Tehillim 601 David was shown a sign in a rose Hebshishanah that he would win the war when he sent Job to Aram Naharim Mesopotamia and Aram Soba to make war against them the faithful shepherd said. Shushan Edut is the Dudlet testimony of the Sheshanah which is called Shushan Edut because it testifies standing over us and testifying on us before the king and the holy upper levels are with it and it is holy help for us to offer praises therefore it is called Shushan Edut the faithful shepherd said it is called Shushan Edut because the Sheshanah gives a Dudlet testimony about Israel that they are its parts and it is their soul over them it is help from heaven about which is written then hear you in heaven I may 832 it is holy assistance about which it has been said here is Tanya lit support to help you for the Shechinah is called Tanya 492 strong head Itan is your dwelling place and you put your nest in a rock Imid bar 2421 Itan Aleph Yad Tafnan is written with the letters of Tanya Tafnan Yad Aleph namely Mishnah and Beretha there in the Mishnah and Beretha is the nest of the upper eagle which is the Shechinah and about it is citizen. Eagle stirs up its nest broods over its young Devarim 3211 and those who study or teach Halachah and Mishnah are called the young of the eagle and each speech that emerges out of the mouth of that Tanya namely from the teachers of Mishnah whether for the sake of the Yad Hey and whether in Torah prayer blessing or in any one of the precepts what is written about it spreads abroad its wings of it namely that same eagle that is speech for the Shechinah is called speech with which is. The Yud Hey namely Zeir Anpin, who is called Voice that Eagle will spread its wings. 493 takes them, bears them on its pinion. Have ever Devarim 3211. He asks what is the meaning of its pinion, and he answers on that part. Have ever of man with which he performed the precept of the Hashem called the limb of the Sheshanah thus bears them on its pinion, and the meaning of bear Heb is as in the verse Hashem lift up his countenance to you. Bimidbar 625 494. And what is it? Meaning of and you put your nest in a rock. But David said about the Sheshanah Hashem is my rock and my fortress. Two Shmuel 222. So also for the Tana, namely he who studies mission in which the Halachah is as firm as a rock that no hammer can break. With all the objections in the world, it is here that the eagle, namely the Sheshanah, makes its nest, and all the Tana are called nests of the Sheshanah. Therefore, if a bird's nest chance to be before you, Devarim 226. That is the Sheshanah. That is. Call the bird namely that comes by pure chance once as a visitor as a wayfarer who just happens to come to the in 495 and there are ten of students of the Mishnah in whose study of the Mishnah the Shechinah has a permanent home as it is written wherefore the children of Israel shall keep the Shabbat to observe the Shabbat throughout their generations had Dorotam Shema 3116 Dorotam is written in the abbreviated spelling derived from apartment had and indeed there are sages of the Mishnah whose study of Torah is their art in such cases the Shechinah does not move from them all their days but those about whom the scripture
mother bird together with the young but they do not let her go and there are sages of Halachalit legal tradition who are like the stars as it is written and they who turn many to righteousness like the stars forever and ever Daniel 123 but they are not as the stars about which it is written and all their hosts shall fall down Yeshayah 344 but rather as though they were the stars of the next world that remain always forever and ever and to which is applied the verse and they who turn many to righteousness like the stars forever and ever section 80 let us make man in our image after our likeness the faithful shepherd tells us that God's last act of creation was to make man and by man is meant Israel and not the idolaters Rabbi Shimon talks about the tradition given to Moses at Sinai and how Moses illuminates all of Israel with the light of the Torah as a faithful shepherd and Rabbi Shimon discussed the creation of man Moses clarifies that Man was indeed created from all of the angels and other creatures and he was made to rule over the creatures. He goes on to say that the holy Malchut is the image of everything including all the inhabitants of the three worlds and that God looked into it before he created everything. Lastly we are told that man depends solely on God for his punishment or reward and not on an angel or seraph or any other creature. 497 And Elohim said let us make man in our image after our likeness. Bereshit. 126 After each craftsman had completed his work the holy one blessed be he said to them one craft remains for me to undertake and all of us shall be partners in it. Let all join together and let each one do his share and I shall join in partnership with you to give it my share for this is what is written. Let us make man in our image after our likeness and the sages taught that only the people of Israel are referred to as man as it is written but you my flock the flock of my pasture are men. Yashiskel 3431 that is your men but the idolaters are not and therefore is it written let Israel rejoice in his maker Tehillim 1492 498 said the holy luminary that is Rabbi Shimon this must certainly have been said by that same Tana who hid in the rock of the serpent for it is written about him strong Hebiton is your dwelling place and you put your nest in the rock Bimidbar 2421 for the three patriarchs are called the strong ones and the fourth one that is Moses is strong is your dwelling place for in him the Halacha which is the Sheshana takes shape as in the expression and tradition given to Moses from Sinai and he spreads over the 600,000 of Israel and gives them light with the Torah as the sun which is hidden by night but gives light to all the stars and constellations so it is with Moses had he not hidden in that rock he would have been unable to give light to Israel and night always refers to the exile as in watchmen what of the night Watchmen, what of the night? Yeshayah 2111. This refers to the exile for then Moses hides in the rock and appears by day at the time of the redemption about which it is said. As soon as the morning was light, Bereshit 443, which is the morning of Abraham, about which is said, and in the morning you shall see the glory of Hashem. Shemot 167. As Hashem lives lie down until the morning, Rod 313, 499. While he was yet speaking, behold, the faithful shepherd came out from that rock and appeared to Rabbi Shimon. He said to him, Holy Luminary, what good did it do me to hide from you? For I have not left a place that I did not enter to hide from you, and I could not hide from you. And I see that being so, there is no sense in my continuing to hide from you. 500. The Holy Luminary said to the faithful shepherd, After Scripture records, let us make man in our image after our likeness. Bereshit 126. What is the meaning of the verse that is written later? So Elohim created man in his own image. Ibid 27. He replied, This is what the sages of the Mishnah taught. He asked the ministering angels whether to create man or not. Some said, Let him be created, while others urged, Let him not be created. And the Holy One, blessed be he, created him as it is written. So Elohim created man in his own image. He said to him, If that is so, then he did not place in him one part from the ministering angels, and he was not made after their form, but after the form of the king in his image, in his likeness, which is the image of the likeness of his form alone. He noted that is the seeming meaning of what you say. 501 said, The faithful shepherd, heaven forbid, I have not said that he is not made up of any of the angels and creatures. What I said to you was that he was created from all the angels and creatures, and was made to rule over all the creatures. Had each one given his chair to man, then when he would have been angry with him, each one could have come back and taken his chair away from him, for in what is he to? Be accounted of Yeshayah 222, 502, but the Holy One, blessed be he, created him in his image, which is the Holy Malchut, that is called image, which is a picture of everything for all the inhabitants of the worlds of Briah, Yetzirah, and Asiyah are included in IT, and the Holy One, blessed be he, looked into it and created the world and all the creatures that he created in the world, and he included in it the upper grades and the lower grades without any separation whatsoever, and he included in it tense Firat and all the names and appellatives, and Yudhav and the Supreme Cause who is master of all, and there is no Elohim beside him is not to be found in upper and lower grades less than it, for it is the connection among all of them, the perfection of all of them to establish in it, and his kingdom rules over all. Tehillim 10319, and there is no cause of all to be found in even one of the upper and lower grades less than it, IT is not included in him, and is called the faith of. Israel from the point of view of the supreme cause it is said for you saw no matter of form to bar 415 but from the point of view according to which it is inclusive of the other creatures it is said and the similitude of Hashem does he behold in bar 128 503 the holy luminary came with the other companions and they prostrate themselves before him saying certainly there is now none that can take from him from man his portion for not even one in the world contributed to him apart except the creator of the world the first cause alone and on him depends his punishment or reward and not on an angel nor a seraph nor any other creature that is in the world thus the sages of the Mishnah taught anyone who combines the name of heaven and something else is uprooted from the world immediately on his hearing what Rabbi Shimon the holy luminary said the faithful shepherd rejoiced and all the companions blessed him the faithful shepherd and said O faithful shepherd if a man were to have come into the world just to hear this it would be enough for him. Section 81 What is Yishchakma? We learned that those people are happy who in the last exile make a great effort to know the Shechina to suffer for her and to keep the precepts. We are told that Yishchakma substance out of nothing that is drawn from Keter. This means that those who love God will inherit wisdom. 504 Happy is he who makes an effort in the last exile to know the Shechina to honor her with all the precepts and to suffer for her a number of exigencies. As they said, the wages of attending the bride lies in the crush and trouble. That is to say, according to the suffering, so is the reward. And he lay down in that place. Bereshit 2811 The Hebrew word for and he lay down. Hebeishchak can be read as two words. Vashcaf bet meaning and there are 22. That is if the 22 letters of the Torah exist, namely that he is perfect in Torah, then the Shechina lies. With him 505 he asks what is the meaning of Yishlit there is he answers that it refers to Chakma which is substance out of nothing that is to say that it is drawn down from Keter which is called nothing for in the place where the upper Shechina is which is Bina there is Chakma for Chakma is revealed only in Bina and for it is said that I may cause those that love me to inherit substance have Yish Mishlei 821 for Chakma that is in Bina illuminates only in Chisit and those that cleave to Chisit are called the lovers of Hashem and it is only they who can inherit Yish which is Chakma because they have Chisit and this is but showing mercy to thousands of generations of those that love me Shema 206 namely from the side of the love of Chisit for thousands is the secret of Chakma and he shows mercy Chisit in adding Chakma which has and this Yish which is Chakma is on the right that it illuminates only when attired in Chisit of the right as has been taught he who wants to grow wise should turn to the south and that is why it is written that I may cause those that love me to inherit substance have Yish Mishlei 821 since they have Chisid which is the right 506 come and see into the hidden secrets in the attributes of the Holy One blessed be he for about the same quality over which people make an effort and which they mention it is said with the same measure that a man meets out so is it measured to him for he is treated with the same attribute that he mentions and there are 70 countenances to the Torah in the secret of the 70 attributes there are the 7 Chisid Burei Tiferet Netzach Hod Yizid and Malchut each of which is composed of 10 Tzvarot making 70 this being the secret of there are 70 countenances to the Torah thus in all places where I cause my name to be pronounced mentioned I will come to you and I bless you Shema 2021 should scripture not have said you cause my name to be pronounced I will come to
what was not known to other people come and see any other craftsman in the world when he has something to make looks at it and considers it once and twice and then makes it subsequently he adds to it or takes away from it with the Holy One blessed be he it is not like that he brings true craftsmanship out of chaos that has no substance at all and it is perfected properly in actuality and he does not need to add or take anything away from it that is why it is written and Elohim saw everything that he had made and behold it was very good Bereshit 131 and it was about this that Solomon said I know that whatever Elohim does it shall be forever nothing can be added to it nor anything taken from it section 82 whatever the Elohim does it shall be forever Rabbi Shimon explains about the tree that is Zer and and that is the Torah on which faith is suspended he says that God is was and will be nothing can be added to him or taken from him he then talks about a lower tree that is Malchut that is nourished from the upper tree and concludes by saying that only those who are fit should come close to God and that all others should be afraid 509 whatever the Elohim does Kahila 314 a further explanation is that whatsoever he does to correct the world it will surely be forever but the demons and the other side will be nullified at the completion of the correction and are not eternal Rabbi Yitzhak said if that is so what is the meaning of end the Elohim does it so that men should fear before him of it which is understood to allude to the other side who cast fear on the world it is not so for we have learned that the verse and this is a divine secret amongst the companions should be read as follows that whatever the Elohim did it shall be forever but what is meant by whatever the Elohim does live will do for is it not written that which is already has been and that which is to be has already been of it 15 yet you say whatever. The Elohim will do 510 he answers we can understand the matter from another verse it is written neither has the I seen that an Elohim beside you should do such a thing for him who waits for him Yeshua 643 it should have said have done instead of should do and for him who waits for you instead of for him he answers rather it is an upper place that is drawn down and emerges and kindles all the lights namely all this fire out of Zeir and and Malchut in all directions both to the right and to the left and is called the next world namely Bina and from it emerges a tree which is Zeir and to be watered and corrected and this tree is higher and more precious than all other trees and we have already learned about this and that next world which is Bina which is drawn down and emerges corrects this tree eternally and waters it namely it emanates Mokin to IT and corrects it in its work namely Bina corrects the tools of Zeir and with its tools so that it should be fitted to receive the mokin from IT and crowns it with diadems which is the secret of the upper three sphira and none of the fountain ceases to flow from it forever and ever 511 on that tree which is Zeir and faith is suspended which is Malchut that is called faith which rests on it rather than all the trees in the secret of the verse like the apple tree among the trees of the wood so is my beloved among the sons Sher Hashirim 23 the existence of everything is to be found in it inasmuch as it is the central column that gives everything its existence and therefore it is written whatever the Elohim does it shall be forever specifically he was he is and he will be nothing can be added to him nor anything taken from him of it and thus it is written in the Torah you shall not add thereto nor diminish from it Devarim 131 for this tree is the Torah since Zeir and is called Torah and the Elohim who is Bina corrects this place always and the Elohim unless specified Otherwise is Bura from the infinite and unfathomable one, namely Bina, that is called Bura in the secret of the verse. I am understanding Bina, I have strength. Bura Mishlei 814, as it is written, there is no searching for his understanding. Yeshea 4028, namely, there is no fathoming to his Bina. This is why the Elohim is written, and not just Elohim for Elohim without the definite article refers to Malchut, thus he does always as constant as a spring whose waters will not cease for all generations. 512, for this reason it is written, and the Elohim has so made it that men should fear before him. Kahila 314, this means that he ordained for that tree which is Zeir and perfect correction until it is held on all sides, the right and the left above and below, namely by Bina and Malchut, so that they should fear before him and not replace it with any substitute for all generations. 513, Rabbi Abba said, What you have said is indeed nice, but one has to look into it even. Further at the beginning of the verse of it, he says, Does lit will do, and later, and Elohim does lit made it. Why this difference? He answers, Surely because he will do and correct this tree, Zeir and so that its waters should not cease for all generations, since the waters of Bina do not cease for all generations as they are drawn down from the upper Abba and Ima, whose mating is without interruption forever connected, and then it is written, Made what did he make? Rather, he made the Elohim, which is Bina, another tree which is Malchut below it, but he does not make it like this one, like Zeir and that is to say, Bina will not bestow upon it a never ceasing bounty which is chastened from upper Abba and Ima as it bestows upon Zeir and therefore it is written, Made and not will make for this lower tree which is Malchut, he made it and corrected it in the aspect of the left which is judgment, so when one enters the upper tree which is Zeir and one will so enter with the authority. Of the lower tree which is Malchut, and on finding the lower tree he will be afraid to enter the upper tree other than in a proper way. 514 Come and see that this one, the lower tree which is Malchut, is the doorkeeper of Zeir Anpin, and Malchut is therefore called he who keeps Israel. Tehillim 1214 For it keeps Zeir Anpin, who is called Israel, and it is this lower tree that the Elohim which is Bina made that it should be watered and nourished from the upper tree which is Zeir Anpin, and it is therefore not written will make but made for he had made it to be a keeper and so that it should be nourished from Zeir Anpin. What was the reason for his making him a keeper? It was so that men should be fearful of him and not draw close to him except for those who are fitted to come close and not any others, and that men should keep the ways of the Torah and not deviate to the right nor the left but should cleave to the central column. Section 83 According to the lot Rabbi Shimon begins by telling us that the lot to which David was attached is the tree Malchut. Rabbi Abba talks about the voice from the firmament saying that this firmament is nourished from the voice we learn about the stone of Israel that descended from its place under the divine throne and upon which the lot is written. Rabbi Lazar concludes by saying that those who follow righteousness are the ones who seek God. 515 Come and see about this tree Malchut on which rest all of it. Host of the worlds of Briah, Yitzhah, and Asiyah. David said, You maintain my lot. Tehillim 165. What is the meaning of my lot? It is the lot to which David is attached, which is Malchut, and it is therefore written according to the lot. Bimidbar 2656, where the Hebrew for according to is literally on the mouth of this alludes to Malchut, which is called mouth, and the same expression is used in the verse. So Moses, the servant of Hashem, died there in the land of Moab according to the word lit. Mouth of Hashem, Devarim 345, which is Malchut. Consequently, the lot is written with the definite article here to refer to Malchut. Happy are the portions of those who engage in the study of Torah day and night and who know its ways and they each day eat the divine food of the flowing emanation of Chakma as it is written. For wisdom gives life to those who have it. Kahilat 712 for the Torah on high, namely Zeir Anpin is nourished from this place from Chakma and it is said about them, Behold, my servants shall eat. Yeshua 6513, 516. Rabbi Abba started by quoting and there was a voice from above the firmament. Yeshua 125 about this voice. Zeir Anpin, which is attached to this firmament, is it of Zeir Anpin and participates with him. It is said he has made his wonderful works to be remembered. Tehillim 1114, which refers to the firmament, which is Yezid that is called remembrance and this firmament stands over those living creatures as it is said and there was a voice from above. The firmament that was over their heads, and this is the firmament that was created on the second day of the works of creation, about which it is said, Divide water from water, Bereshit 16, the upper waters and the lower waters, 517. It has been taught there are seven firmaments higher on high, corresponding to Chesed, Burit, Typhor, Abnet, Sash, Hadiazit, and Malchut that are in Yezid, certainly curtain, which is parallel to Malchut, that is in IT, serves no purpose for Malchut, has nothing of its own. Apart from what Zeir and gives it, and the poor take hold of it, this being the inner meaning of the verse, now behold, in my trouble, poverty I have prepared for the house of Hashem, my Debraham, in 2214, inasmuch as David was attached to Malchut, which is poor as above, hence he said, In my poverty, and this firmament curtain, which is Malchut, introduces the morning and ushers out the
is drawn down from the voice which is Zeir Anpin to that firmament which is Yezit and they are blessed because of it namely that they receive from the firmament and therefore Zeir Anpin is above the firmament that is over their head and they cannot receive other than from the firmament which is Yezit 519 come and see and above the firmament that was over their heads was the likeness of a throne in appearance like a sapphire stone Yeshitzkel 126 in appearance like a sapphire stone refers to the stone of Israel which is Malchut and this is the inner meaning of what is written and they rolled the stone Bereshit 293 from on high descended a certain stone which is Malchut when Israel wanted to inherit the land of Israel and on it the lot is written namely according to the lot and the lot would say this part for so and so this part for so and so and the stone descended from under the divine throne namely Malchut which is the secret of the throne of Zeir and surely is written from hence from the shepherd the stone of Israel Bereshit 4924 for this is the stone of Zeir and that is called Israel and for this reason according to the lot which is Malchut shall their inheritance be divided 520 Rabbi Yitzhak and Rabbi Yehuda were walking from Shachalot Rabbi Lazar encountered them and they ran after him saying surely we shall run after the Sheshana when they caught up with him they said let us now certainly join you and hear a new matter. 521 He began by quoting Hearken to me you that follow after righteousness you that seek Hashem Yeshayah 511 Hearken to me you that follow after righteousness refers to those who follow and pursue after the faith which is Malchut that is called righteousness for those who follow righteousness are certainly the ones who seek Hashem if you want to know the faith and to take hold of this righteousness then do not look at it on its own without Zeir and as do other people who cleave to Malchut without Zeir and this being the secret of left without right and for which reason they bring death to themselves but look to the rock whence you were hewn and to the hole of the pit from which you were dug out of it namely to unite it with Zeir and Abba and IMA section 84 the sacrifices Rabbi Lazar says that the perfect offering is one made without sin i.e. the peace offering anyone who sins draws upon himself an unclean spirit that controls him it Function of the sacrifice is to break that spirit and make atonement. We hear that God loves a broken and contrite heart. Rabbi Lazar says he learned in the book of Enoch that all sacrifices when they ascend go first to the Garden of Eden and we learn why animals are sacrificed. Rabbi Shimon offers a deeper explanation saying that the secret of the sacrifices is the secret of the holy beast and he elaborates with many details about ox, eagle, lion and man. He says that man's prayer is similar to the sacrifices we learn from this section that no one is allowed to eat before the Supreme King does. Rabbi Shimon tells Elijah how it could be possible for the Supreme King to eat since it seems that there is no eating or drinking above 522. Command the children of Israel and say to them, My offerings, the provisions of my sacrifices made by fire. Bimidbar 282 it is written, Has Hashem as great a delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying to the voice of Hashem. My Shmuel 1522 it. Holy One, blessed be he does not desire that a man sin and then offer a sacrifice because of his sin, but a sacrifice that is without any iniquity is the perfect sacrifice have shalom and it is called peace offerings have shalom. The daily offering is also perfect for although the daily sacrifice atones for sins, it is nevertheless a perfect sacrifice. 523 Rabbi Abel began by quoting the sacrifices of Elohim are a broken spirit. Tehillim 5119 This verse has been interpreted to mean that the Holy One, blessed be he does not want a man to bring a sacrifice for his sin, but rather he wants a broken spirit. People do not know what they say from the Holy Luminary. I heard as follows when a man becomes impure in his iniquities, he draws down onto himself a spirit from the side of uncleanliness and the spirit becomes domineering on that person and controls him. And will the aspect of uncleanliness from which the spirit is drawn down grows stronger with his strength and becomes more powerful and Controls him to its wish when a man comes and takes control over it in order to become pure. He is helped to be purified from above 524 in the period when the temple was still standing. The sinner would offer his sacrifice, his whole atonement being dependent on it until he feels remorse and breaks down that spirit from the side of uncleanliness that he drew to himself with his sin from its pride and humiliates it. And it is this that is meant by the breaking down of those stages of uncleanliness from which the spirit is drawn. And when that spirit of uncleanliness is broken and he offers his sacrifice, this is an acceptable and proper sacrifice. 525. But if that spirit of uncleanliness is not broken, then his sacrifice is worth nothing and is given to the dogs. For this is a sacrifice not for the Holy One, blessed be he, but for the dogs. And this is why scripture says that the proper sacrifices of Elohim are a broken spirit, for that spirit of uncleanliness has to be broken. So that it will not be in control consequently about the one who breaks it as it should be broken it is written a wind or spirit that passes away and comes not again Tehillim 7839 and that man can be assured that it will not ever come to him again hence and comes not again a broken and a contrite heart Tehillim 5119 this is a man who is not proud and does not take pleasure in the delights of the world and Elohim you will not despise him before he has a place of honor with him 526 command the children of Israel to what does command refer it refers to idolatry that is he should not bring himself in to become impure in the spirit of uncleanliness for this would be real idolatry 527 Rabbi Lazar began by quoting I am come into my garden my sister my bride Sher Hashirim 51 we have already learned this verse yet it contains secrets concerning the sacrifices but then we have already learned it all Rabbi Shimon said to him it is good that you have started it. Discussion on these matters, but why have you concealed them? It is as though you have said something, but it has not been fully said. Tell us what you know about the sacrifices. Rabbi Lazar replied, It was because I saw something in the book of Enoch and learned it that I said something as though it were not said. Rabbi Shimon said, Tell us that matter that you have seen and heard. 528 He said, It is all really just one matter. The Holy One, blessed be, he said, I am come into my garden, sure. Hashirim 51 Because all the sacrifices that are made in the world when they ascend to the female waters first enter into the garden of Eden, which is the secret of the congregation of Israel, which is Malchut. But initially, how is it at the beginning of the sacrifice? For I have said that they first come into the garden of Eden, meaning when a man confesses his sins over the sacrifice at the time of the slaughtering and the scattering of the blood over the altar, then the sacrifice ascends to the Female waters to the garden of Eden and then says the Holy One blessed be he who is Zeir and I am come into my garden which is the garden of Eden Malchut for the female waters of the sacrifice awaken the union 529 now one has to concentrate to understand how these holy spirits benefit from this from the ascent of the female waters of the sacrifice also what is the reason that the sacrifice has to be of an animal when it is more important that a man should break that spirit that he has drawn down by his sin and return in repentance what is the reason for the ritual slaughtering of the animal and the burning of it by fire on the altar 530 he answers it is a mystery there is an animal that lies on a thousand hills which is the secret of Malchut which is the aspect of why Yudhi Hebab fully spelled with haste whose numerical value is the same as that of animal Hebbihima equals 52 and it devours a thousand hills each day all of the thousand being the secret of the grades of Chakma that are drawn down from the left for Chakma is termed a thousand heavy lef in the secret of the verse and I shall teach heavy alfeq wisdom iyop 3333 and they are called and the cattle upon a thousand hills tehillim 5010 and we have already learned about this that there is an animal that devours animals and what do the animals consist of they are a fire and this animal which is Malchut consumes all of them with one gulp as it is written for Hashem your Elohim is a consuming fire jealous al 424 and all the waters of the Jordan which is Yezid of Zeir and that flow through it during six years which it receives from Shesid Burit Tifer and and Yezid of Zeir and that are called six years are made into one gulp namely one swallow by Malchut as it is written he trusts that river will thrust some food into his mouth Eo 4023 531 and the secret of the matter is that from the east of those animals on a thousand hills which are the Secret of the illumination of Chakma that is on the left is the principle and basis for those animals below for the spirit spreads downwards from them and the spirit is reflected in the animals below that is to say it becomes the spirit of the animal below and when a sinner brings an animal for
Shimon said, Blessed is my son to the Holy One, blessed be he about you. It is said, Let your father and your mother be glad, and let her who bore you rejoice. Mishlei 2325, Let your father on high be glad that is Zeir Anpin, and your mother is the congregation of Israel, which is Malchut, and let her that bore you rejoice, namely the daughter of the pious rabbi Pinches Ben Yair, the mother of Rabbi Lazar Lazar, my son, what you have said is correct regarding the sacrifice of an animal, but what is it? Reason for the offering of fowls, for it is written, and if the burnt sacrifice for his offering to Hashem be of birds, Vayikra 114, he said to him, I have not seen, but I draw an analogy from what is said about animals to what is said about fowl, nevertheless I will not speak because I have not seen it, nor until now have I heard it. 533, Rabbi Shimon said, Elazer, what you have said is good, but there are many secrets among the secrets of the sacrifices, and they have not been handed down to be revealed except to the truly righteous from whom their master's secret is not hidden. The secret of the sacrifices is the secret of the holy living creatures, the four forms engraved on the throne, this being the throne of the holy king, namely Malchut, which is a throne for Zeir and Pen, and these four are the face of an ox, the face of an eagle, the face of a lion, the face of a man, the face of a man includes all of them, for lion, ox, and eagle are the secret of the three columns, and the face of a man is. Malchut that receives them and therefore includes all of them and all four of the faces look at each other and are included in each other and from them they spread out in many directions and tens of thousands above and below without measure number or account 534 from the face of an ox which is the secret of the left spreads a spirit to the animals in four species that are included in each other as one namely oxen sheep rams and goats and these serve for the sacrifices and the sacrifices from them these holy hosts that spread out from the face of that ox and draw close by the act of sacrifice to their element which is the face of an ox and benefit from that element and their apparel and were it not that they contain the element of this world which is the sacrifice that ascends to them they would not draw close there to their element which is the face of an ox 535 and just as the holy shechina takes pleasure in the spirits of the righteous that ascend to it for the female waters and it draws close to welcome the spirit of a righteous person and enjoys it because that spirit is drawn from it so is it also with those hosts that spread forth from the face of an ox they benefit from the side of their element which is the face of an ox and from that rhyme that is offered to their element which is the sacrifice for the spirit of the sacrifice is from the rhyme of their spirit and this is why they enjoy it 536 from the face of an eagle spreads a spirit to the fowl for the spirit that is in the fowl is drawn from the face of an eagle and eagle is on two sides on the right and on the left for eagle is tied for at the central column that includes the right and the left and this is the secret of and let birds fly bear sheet 120 which teaches about two spirits for this reason the sacrifice of fowl spreads out and descends from the right and from the left while the sacrifice of cattle is only from the face of an ox which is the left is above the sacrifice of Fowl is from the face of an eagle that includes the two columns 537 of all the pure aspects of fowl only a dove and turtle doves are sacrificed because they are true to their partners more than all the other fowl and they are preyed upon but do not pray they are faithful to each other the female to her partner and therefore the sacrifices of them and those holy spirits descend and draw close and enjoy their element and essence is above 538 and you might well ask how can the little that ascends from the dove or from the turtle dove spread out in the number of directions to the hosts on high who are without measure and the same question can be asked about what ascends of the single animal he answers come and see the whole world fills with light from one thin burning candle again one thin piece of wood and kindles a large piece 539 so far the sacrifice has been clarified from two sides engraved on the throne namely from the face of an ox for cattle and from the face of an Eagle for fowl now the question has to be put there are four shapes that are engraved on the throne so what is the reason for there being no sacrifice from shapes of the other forms he answers there is certainly sacrifice from all of them the lion that is engraved on the throne when the sacrifice is perfect the lion descends and enters the fire eats and has enjoyment from there and the man that is engraved on the throne behold man is the main one of all of them and he sacrifices there to the face of a man which is malchut his spirit and his soul and upper man benefits from lower man and each species draws near to its own and benefits from it from that which is really its own and from its own element 540 you might well ask but lion has no basis below in the sacrifice while the face of an ox has a basis below in the animals the face of an eagle has a basis below in the birds the face of a man has a basis below in the spirit and soul of the man offering the sacrifice but lion has no basis below at all and he answers lion is included in all of them for it is on the right which is cheese and cheese includes all of them for this reason it eats from all of them that are below it while the others ox eagle and man do not eat from his species because it is to the right and higher than they behold all four of the forms that are engraved on the throne come close to the sacrifice which is why it is a perfect sacrifice and when they enjoy their principle and element then a spirit descends to kindle the upper candles namely the mating is made between zeir and pen and malchut 541 priests love it and Yisrael give a basis and principle to the upper grades from which they are drawn and each grade gives to its element on high first the four shapes of the throne as we have said in the preceding paragraph each species unto its like and they first draw near like unto like the face of an ox all the faces namely the hosts and camps that spread out to those species as we have Noted all of them draw near to their principle and basis the face of an ox and similarly for the face of an eagle it is as we have noted so too with the face of a lion it is as we have noted as well as the face of a man who offers a sacrifice his spirit and soul approaching to the upper man which is Malchut 542 the priest who pronounces the unity of the holy name over the sacrifice is himself approaching to the upper priest which is Jesus of Zeir and the same that enters the house of the holy of holies which is Yezid of Malchut and he draws close to the latter and kindles the candles of Malchut by his correction with welcome corresponding to the priest below who offers the sacrifice when the levites play their instruments happily when the sacrifice is made their side which is Gur of Zeir and rejoices and illuminates the faces Yisrael who bring the sacrifices who begin to pray over the sacrifice for prayer was ordained for all the sacrifices awakens Yisrael Sabbath. Holy and definite towards them and Yisrael Saba welcomes them 543 and each species is sacrificed to its own kind and everything follows its element on high the lower grades awaken the higher grades and although all of them stir and the grades that are engraved on the throne which are the four living creatures awaken towards the grades that are on earth being their basis namely the face of an ox for animals the face of an eagle for fowl as above and also those upper hidden grades they all stir and come close for the meal of the sacrifice and find pleasure yet none of them has permission to eat neither the higher grades nor the lower grades and not to enjoy it nor to put out a hand to the sacrifice until after the supreme king who is Zeir and has eaten and enjoyed it and given them permission 544 after he gives them permission each one of them enjoys it and eats this being as it is written I have gathered my with my spice sure hasherim 51 these are the upper grades of Zeir and Pinmimer and my spice, eat and enjoy as is fitting and this is the unity of the right arm which is cheesed with the left eye which is hot I have eaten my honeycomb with my honey this is Jacob with Rachel namely the unity of Typhoret with Malchut and this is eating proper for only here is the word eat used I have drunk my wine with my milk this is the unity of the left arm with the right thigh namely Bure with Netzach and these are all the upper grades from which the holy king has enjoyment first and this is his eating and his pleasure so far we have discussed the food of the supreme king who eats first 545 from this point on the king which is Zeir and Pin gives permission to the four forms that are engraved on the throne and to all those that spread out from them to enjoy and eat for the verse continues eat oh dear ones drink drink deep loving companions sure hasherim 51 eat oh dear ones are four forms that we have mentioned lion ox eagle man drink Drink deep loving companions meaning all those who spread out from them and they all eat stretch out and enjoy as is fitting and their faces shine and all the worlds rejoice and each one whether at the upper levels or at the lower levels draws closer to its element namely each one to its parallel aspect cheese to the face of a lion viewer to the face of an ox and they enjoy this is the secret and mystery of the sacrifices in a proper manner 546 Rabbi Lazer and Rabbi Abba together with the other companions came and prostrated
of the four living creatures spread out over them so that they should be sacrifices for their creatures the basis of whose spirit in this world is of them of the four living creatures and that is Hashem how manifold are your works Tehillim 10424 for over the creatures whose spirit is suitable for sacrifice spread out the four forms that are in the throne which are come over these sacrifices and it is to this that we refer when we say the wills and holy living creatures for this is the secret of the four living creatures that are in the throne and all those other hosts who spread out from them to which are joined the spirit of animals and fowl that are fitted for offering as sacrifices 548 and afterwards the high priest proclaims the unity of the holy name namely with the bounding love where love is Jesus the attribute of the priest the unity that the priest proclaims is hero Yisrael Hashem our Elohim Hashem is one Devarim 64 and afterwards the love is arise to play the music which is and it shall come to pass if you hearken diligently to my commandments Ibid 1113 take heed to yourselves that your heart be not deceived Ibid 16 to 21 which portion parallels the left which is pure for this is the melody of the left that is to say that the signing of the Levites is from the left in order to awaken the side the side of the left with the sacrifice namely with the prayer that is in place of the sacrifice and then come Israel with true and firm Established and enduring which alludes to Yisrael Saba who stands over the sacrifice for he the ten upper inner levels to everything namely the ten Sfirot is at the table while they are true and firm and established and enduring 549 but not one of them has permission to eat and to stretch a hand out to the sacrifice namely the prayer until the supreme king who is Zeir and has eaten by which is meant the first three blessings and the last three blessings of the Amida prayer which is where the mating of Zeir and and Malchut takes place and this is the secret of the king's eating after he has eaten he grants permission to the four forms namely the four living creatures in the throne and to all those parties that spread out from them to eat 550 and then man who is the form that includes all the other forms lowers himself and throws himself on his face and gives himself and his spirit to supernal man who stands over these forms and who includes all the forms that he should awaken towards him as is fitting and this is what is meant by saying to you Hashem do I lift up my soul Tehillim 251 namely in order to awaken other forms and all those who spread out from them and this is what is meant when saying in the praise of David Tehillim 1457 they shall utter and shall sing and they shall speak on talk of it 11 and they all eat and enjoy the prayer each one as is fitting for him 551 from here on a man may mention the troubles that are in his heart as it is written may Hashem hear the Lord hear you in the day of trouble Tehillim 202 for example a pregnant woman in labor so that they should all become advocates for the person therefore it is written happy is the people that is in such a case Tehillim 14415 552 Rabbi Shimon was on his way to Tiberias when Elijah met him and said greetings Sir Rabbi Shimon said to him with what is the Holy One blessed be he engaged in the firmament Elijah replied he is occupied with the sacrifices and Saying new things in your name happy are you and I came to welcome you with greetings and there is one thing that I wanted to ask you to settle for me a question has been asked in the academy of the firmament in the next world there is no eating and drinking yet it is written I am come into my garden my sister my bride I have gathered my myrrh with my spice I have eaten my honeycomb with my honey sure hashering 51 with one for whom there is no eating nor drinking say I have eaten my honeycomb with my honey I have drunk my wine with my milk 553 said Rabbi Shimon and what did the holy one bless be he replied to them Elijah answered the holy one bless be he said there I asked the son of Yaqay let him tell you so I came to ask you Rabbi Shimon said in what great affection did the holy one bless be he hold the congregation of Israel and out of the intense love with which he loved it he altered his deeds from the way he had been normally doing for although he does not Usually eat and drink nevertheless because of the love of it he ate and drank since he had come to her he did as she wanted if a bride just entering a wedding canopy wants to eat does it not follow that her bridegroom will eat with her even if he is not used to doing so this is what is written I have come into my garden my sister my bride since I have come to her to go with her into the wedding canopy I have eaten my honeycomb with my honey I have drunk my wine with my milk 554 and we can learn this also from David who invited the Holy One blessed be he and changed his actions from the way the Holy One blessed be he was accustomed and the Holy One blessed be he accepted it and did as he wanted for he David invited the king together with the queen as it is written arise Hashem to your resting place you and the ark of your strength Tehillim 1328 namely the king together with the queen and in order not to make any separation between them he changed the vessels and he Altered the deeds of the king 555 this is what is written let your priests be clothed with righteousness and your pious ones shout for joy for your servant David's sake turn not away the face of your anointed Ibn it should have said let your levites be clothed with righteousness and not let your priests be clothed with righteousness since righteousness is from the side of the levites namely Malchut from the aspect of the left is called righteousness and the left is the aspect of the Levites similarly it should have said and your levites shout for joy and not and your pious ones shout for joy since joyous melody and song are from the side of the levites namely from the left side but he changed things and said your priests and your pious ones who are from the right side 556 the holy one blessed be he said to him David this is not the way I do things David replied for your servant David's sake turn not away the face of your anointed tail 13210 do not Alter the correction that I have instituted the Holy One blessed be he said to him David since you have invited me I have to do what you want and not what I want from this we learn that if one invites another the guest has to do as a host which is even if that is not his usual way 557 thus and he took up the stones of the place bear she 2811 when the bridegroom comes to the bride for Jacob is the secret of Tiferet and places the secret of Malchut where Tiferet and Malchut are the secret of the bridegroom and bride although it is not his custom to lie down without pillows and cushions when she gave him stones to lie on he accepts it all willingly as it is written and lay down in that place of it on those stones although that was not what he was used to 558 the same applies in our case I have eaten my honeycomb with my honey although this was not his way he nevertheless did it because of love of the bride and this only happens in the house of the bride and not Anywhere else in his own place he neither eats nor drinks but in her place he both eats and drinks as it is written I have come into my garden namely the garden of Eden which is the place of Malchut similarly the angels whom the Holy One blessed be he sent to Abraham neither ate nor drank in their own place but for the sake of Abraham they both ate and drank Elijah said to him master upon your life the Holy One blessed be he wanted to relate this matter but in order not to pay himself a compliment before the congregation of Israel he raised it to you happy are you in this world that your master on high is praised through you about you is it written just ruling in the fear of Elohim 2 Shmuel 233 559 my offerings the provisions of my sacrifices made by fire Bimid bar 282 Rabbi Yudeh said in sacrifices there is smoke there is smell and there is sweet savor smoke is those with a temper as it is written but then the anger that knows of Hashem shall smoke Devarim 2919 and those with the temper enjoy smoke the meaning of which I as anger in the nose smell refers to those who are called apples Rabbi Abba said those who are like apples as it is written the scent of your nose like apples Sure Hashirim 79 560 the one lamb shall you offer in the morning Bimid bar 284 what is meant by morning this refers to the morning of Abraham namely the light of Jesus as it is written and Abraham rose up early in the morning Bershi 223 how do we know that this morning is that of Abraham Rabbi Lazer answered from here where it is written as soon as the morning was light Bershi 443 not morning but the morning is written with the definite article hey for this was the first light that the Holy One blessed be he created in the act of creation thus I as it written shall you offer in the morning namely on the particular morning for the sacrifices offered against the morning of Abraham the lamb that is offered as a sacrifice at dusk is against Isaac Against the evening of Isaac, which is the light of Bureau, which is judgment, how do we know this? Because it is written, and Isaac went out to meditate in the field at eventide. Bereshit 2463, which is the evening of Isaac, and we have already learned this. Moses talks about the precepts of sacrifice and prayer, and says that offerings are sent to Zer and Ben by Malchut the Sheshan. Now we learn which prayers are optional and which obligatory. Moses says that Messiah, son of Ephraim, will come from the line of Joseph,
This reason the sages of the Mishnah taught the evening prayer is optional and reached for the prayer which is Malchut is in the domain and Rashut of her husband for although being in exile which is like the night time which is the time for the evening prayers and where Samael and serpent and all those appointed over his regiments have control and although the Shechina goes into exile with Yisrael nevertheless she is to be found in the domain of her husband as it is written I am Hashem that is. My name and my glory I will not give to another Yeshea 428 563 because of this IT is written and he lighted on a certain place Bereshit 2811 discovering inadvertently Hebrew P.E. Gimelayan is only reconciliation and appeasement as in neither make intercession Hebrew P.E. Gimelayan to me or may 716 the congregation of Israel appeased Z.E.I.R. and that he should not leave her for the Holy One blessed be Z.E.I.R. and is the place of the world what is meant by world it. Shechinah for the Aramaic equivalent to world is Alma which is derived from youth as in the verse Amit Alma Bereshit 2443 namely Malchut that is Amit and what is written about him and tarried there all night Bereshit 2811 that is Z.E.I.R. and made peace with her to stay there in the exile with the Shechinah and should you suggest that the meaning of and he lighted on a certain place of it is that Jacob appeased Malchut that is fine but it can also be taken to mean that Malchut appeased Jacob who is Z.E.I.R. and so that he should not leave her in the exile as above and because every night which is the aspect of exile she is in the domain had Rashid of her husband as above the sages taught that the evening prayers are optional had Rashid for prayers Malchut and evening is exile so that saying that the evening prayers are optional is the same as saying that Malchut in exile is in the domain had Rashid of her husband and the other literal explanation of the saying namely that the evening prayers really are optional and not obligatory is but material straw for the fodder of animals by inference from minor to major hebchimer it is easy for one who is material hebchimer to understand but not for one of intelligence the sages of the Mishnah came down to him prostrated themselves before him and were happy over this matter and they bound him with a number of knots of mysterious secrets namely they expounded that matter in a number of ways with Torah secrets and they crowned him and raised him up to the other companions who had remained there 564 the faithful shepherd said to Rabbi Shimon holy luminary this is why it is obligatory with the remaining prayers imposed on them as a promissory note to bring together Malchut and the righteous one the living of all worlds which is yes for in this connection the sages taught one who joins Geula live redemption to the Amidah prayer will meet with no mishap for the whole of the day where Geula is Yezid and Tefila is Malchut and how is she joined to Yezid by the right arm which is Chesed as it is written as Hashem lives lie down until the morning rut 313 namely until Chesed that is called morning shall give life 565 the arrival time of the afternoon prayer Minjai the secret of in the evening she would go Esther 214 namely the unity just before dusk as it is written and the dove came unto him in the evening Bereshit 811 for the dove is Malchut because it is a present. Had Minchah sent to my lord in the exile of Esau Bereshit 3219 for evening is the secret of exile and behold also he is behind us Sibid namely Zeir and is coming after us to redeem us from the exile furthermore to my lord refers to the lord of all the world which is the righteous one namely Yezid for from there from the aspect of the mating of Minchah that is at even time it is said about Joseph the righteous one his first ling of his herd grandeur is his Devarim 3317 for the unity of the Mincha comes from the control of the left that is called evening and since the Mincha is sent to my lord namely Jezid which is Joseph therefore Joseph also becomes the aspect of firstling of his herd which is the left column and in the future Messiah the son of Ephraim will issue from him for Messiah the son of David is the aspect of the right and Messiah the son of Ephraim is the aspect of the left and for his sake for the sake of Messiah the son of Ephraim it is said in Loma. Chief Hebrew root Aleph Lamed Mem rose and also stood upright and behold your sheep came round about and bowed down to my sheep Bereshit 377 for Messiah the son of Ephraim is called mute Hebrew root Aleph Lamed Mem in the exile and about the righteous one it was said everyone who boasts should do so at the word blessed and it was therefore said for his part and bowed down to my sheep which is Messiah 566 said the holy luminary that is Rabbi Shimon faithful shepherd it is said about. You and Moses took the bones of Joseph Shemot 1319 since Moses is Typhorite which is called body and Joseph is Yezid that is called covenant and we consider body and covenant to be one it is therefore said about you and Loma Shif arose and also stood upright namely Malchut that is called El in exile for so is the Amidah prayer said while standing upright where prayer is the secret of Malchut likewise everyone who returns to an upright position should do so at the mention of the divine name which is Typhorite namely Moses and therefore it is said about him my Shif arose and about the righteous one everyone who both should do so at the word blessed and thus it is said and bowed down to my Shif for from the point of view of Typhorite the rising up is to Malchut while from the point of view of Yezid the bowing down is to Malchut for you are attached to the right and to the left to the body and covenant which are Typhorite and Yezid and Typhorite inclines to the right and Yezid inclines to the left subsequently you will ascend on them to bind to open their fifty gates of freedom for Israel namely to draw down the great mokin of freedom to fulfill the verse as in the days of your coming out of the land of Egypt I will show to him marvelous things Mishnah 715 for this reason the morning prayer is obligatory and the evening prayer is optional 567 in the evening prayer Malchut is Hashkabin will it cause us to lie down namely she lies between the arms of the king in exile for she lies down and has no standing upright since night time is the aspect of exile when the morning which is the aspect of redemption comes the holiday of Passover which is the secret of right namely she said of Zeir and takes hold of her on the right namely emanates chassidim to her but it is said about the left arm of Zeir and that is called Isaac which is the aspect of Tishrei and it came to pass before he had done speaking that behold Rivka came out Bereshit 2415 from the exile for the redemption comes from the correction of the left side which is Isaac and so that Malchut should not emerge from the exile from the side of judgment for the left is judgment therefore Jacob who is Zeir and changing his hands Bereshit 4814 placed ox which is left on his right which is Chesed and lion which is right he placed on the left which is judgment for which reason Hashem says to my master sit at my right hand Tehillim 1101 this is the righteous one which is Yezid. That parallels Messiah the son of Joseph which is judgment and he said to him sit at my right hand which is the arm of Abraham which is Chesed at the time of the exile of Ishmael that is because Jacob changing his hands said to my master which is the left of Yezid which is Messiah the son of Ephraim which is judgment that he should sit at the right which is Chesed until I make your enemies your footstool Tehillim 1101 section 85 additional nefesh additional. Ruash additional Neshama at the time of redemption the Zohar tells us an additional spirit will awaken over Israel and they will have rest from their enemies for each individual the extra spirit is allocated according to his deeds or level if a person is completely perfect having all ten of the qualities that are in Malchut he is given the crown Peter has written in I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh there there is then no rule left for Samael or his adherents Moses concludes by saying that on Shabbats and festivals the prayers are more important to God than all sorts of spices 568 at that time an extra spirit will awaken that is an additional spirit over Israel as it is written I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh OL 31 and Israel will have rest from the nations of the world rest from their enemies Esther 916 and it will be as on the Shabbat when an extra nefesh is added to a person and he obtains rest therein and if he has rest with an extra nefesh which is Feminine how much more will he have rest with the spirit which is masculine 569 and Tanaim and Amram here the extra nefesh on the Shabbat is for the whole of Israel together just one which is the secret of Keter but for each person it is allocated according to his deeds namely for each one according to his level and this we have learned from repentance by inference from minor to major for all of Israel together whenever making repentance are all found acceptable as it is written as Hashem our Elohim is in all things that we call upon him for Devarim 47 this being the reason for it being for all Israel together they are crowned with the name of yod heh with his crown which is upper Keter and this upper Keter is an additional Neshama
And this keter of Zeir Anpin is the secret of the additional Neshama that gives life for the whole of Yisrael together as above 570 for each individual of Yisrael. However, the additional Nefesh descends to him according to his level. If he is pious, had chased, he is given an additional Nefesh from the attribute of Chesed. According to his level, if he is a mighty man, fearful of sin, he is given an additional Nefesh from the attribute of Bure. If he is an honest man, he is given an additional Nefesh from the attribute of Truth. For the additional Nefesh is Malchut and is made up of the tenth Sfirah, and therefore a person receives from a sphere of Malchut according to his character. That is, if he is a chief in Yisrael or a sage or one who understands wisdom or Torah about which is said to understand a proper and a figure, Mishlei 16 or the prophets or the hagiographer, so is he given an additional Nefesh accordingly, which is called keter of Malchut. If he is a chief in Yisrael, 571. Continuing the explanation of his words, if he is a scholar, as we have learned, who is a scholar, he who adds wisdom to every man, as it is written in wisdom, have you made them all? Talim 10,424. He is given an extra nefesh from there, namely from Shachma, and if he understands one matter from another in the Torah, he is given an extra nefesh from Bana, and if he is a scholar in the prophets and hagiography, he is given an extra nefesh from Netzash and Hot, and if he is completely righteous, keeping the sign of the covenant, the sign of the Shabbat, the sign of the festivals, and the sign of the Tefillin, he is given an extra nefesh from the righteous one, which is Yezid, and in every case, the extra nefesh that the individual receives is from Malchut, and if it has been said that he is Yezid, for example, then this means the sphere Yezid of Malchut, and so with the others, Farah 572, and if he is a person who has all the above mentioned qualities, then he is comparable and similar to the whole of. Israel together and is given Keter in the name of the Yad Hey and this is in the secret of the verses as Hashem our Elohim is in all things that we call upon him for and there is none holy as Hashem I Shmuel 22 as Hef Caf that is prefixed to Hashem is the secret of Keter of Zeir Anpin and this is an extra Neshama from the world of the male which is Tiferet and is not as the extra Nefesh of an individual which is only from the Sfirat of Malchut for he is a king crowned with an upper crown from Bana in which he rules with his Shechina which is extra Nefesh and Keter is extra Neshama that is received from the Yad Hey which is Rash about which it is said I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh and this spirit which is why Yud Hey is composed of the tenth Sfirat downwards from above as follows Yad is Chakma Hey is incorporates the sixth Sfirat from Shisa to Yezid Hey is Malchut and the Caf is in as Hashem our Elohim is the crown on the head. Of the Yud Hey and this is the Neshama that is added on the Shabbat day either to all of Israel together or to an individual who has all ten of the qualities that are in Malchut 573. And because the prime cause is superior and covered with this crown, and on the Shabbat days and festivals the crown Hepketer spreads with the Yud Hey there is therefore no rule and for Samael and Serpent and all his officials, nor does Gehenom, which is the wicked female of Samael, have any rule, nor his camps, for all of them take cover before the camps of the king, just as the idolatrous nations of the world will hide when Messiah is revealed as it is written, and they shall go into the holes of the rocks Yeshayah 219, and in the holes of the rocks Yeshayah 719, 574. The Tanaim and the Amram arose and said, Faithful Shepherd, you are the one who is equivalent to all of Israel, filled with all good qualities, and certainly in your rescue about whom it is said there is none. Holy as Hashem, namely the CAF equals as that is prefixed to the Yud Hey which alludes to Keter of the Yud Hey You are a crown Keter on each and every one of Israel, for there is no man who can be a crown over you, not a chief, nor a scholar, nor one who understands, not a pious man, not a mighty one, nor an honest man, not a prophet, not a righteous person, nor a king, for these are the tenths of Malchut from which each individual one of Israel takes, but you are in the form of the Holy One. Blessed be he, namely Zeir Anpin, which is the secret of the world of the male as above the sun, being in the form of his father, for Moses is the son of Zeir Anpin, just as is Israel as a whole, about whom it is written, You are the children to Hashem, your Elohim, to Aram 141, complete the precept of your master, for there is no precept of those that you perform with which the Holy One, blessed be he, and his Chechenah will not be adorned above and below with upper Keter in every attribute 575. It. Faithful Shepherd opened and said Tanaim and Amram listen and the Zohar explains that every time that the Faithful Shepherd called the companions with Rabbi Shimon among them by the title Tanaim and Amram he said to them I praise you according to your munificence for you are the sons of princes namely Abraham, Isaac and Jacob no one but the master of the universe can praise you for even the whole of the Torah in its infinite extension is dependent on you as it is said in the Torah its measure is longer than the earth and broader than the sea of 119 so is your praise but may what was fulfilled in me be fulfilled in you also for I rejoiced in the honor of Aaron my brother as we have learned about Aaron the heart that rejoiced at the greatness of his brother shall put on the Urim and Tumim 576 and listen Tanaim and Amram all the additional prayers of Shabbats and festivals every additional service in which Keter is mentioned they are known from here namely Keter of Zeir and which is said, there is none holy as the Hashem, and the smell of all the prayers of Israel is as the smell of myrrh and frankincense with all the powders of the merchant. Sure, Hashirim 36. This is the case of weekdays, but on Shabbats and festivals, when the keter of Zeir and illuminates as above, the prayer is much more important for the Holy One. Blessed be he than all sorts of spices. 577. On festival days, the prayers are more sublime and important than all the powders. Hebuk of the merchant, about which it is said, and there wrestled Hebuk a man with him. Verse 3225. For Samael wrestles with faulty prayer, using it to fight and denounce by means of that fault of a transgression in the prayer, namely with that dust. Hebuk of the prayer he ascends and denounces, and this rises up to the heaven. Section 86. The evening prayer, the faithful shepherd talks about the evening prayer, calling it Jacob's ladder, on which the Prayers ascent and merits descent. He says that those who teach merit are the defenders in the war of the Torah, and he talks about the war of the evening prayer that continues until dawn 578. And there are two sorts of dust for the dust of Jacob, namely his war comes to teach merit about prayers in a number of hosts of merits that are regiments and camps that gather with him to teach merit about prayer, and the dust from the level of Samael ascends in a number of camps of dead teaching guilt. About prayer and this prayer in the evening is called Jacob's ladder, in which and behold the angels of Elohim ascending and descending on it. Bear she 2812. These are the prayers that ascend when they are liabilities and merits descend in their place for the camps of the teachers of merit of Jacob overcame the camps of the teachers of liability of Samael, and there are those that ascend as merits and liabilities descend in their stead, in this case the camps of the teachers of liability of some male have overcome the others for these camps humiliate them in a number of wars 579 for they the ones that teach merit are the defenders in the war of the Torah until the war becomes audible to the great mountains that is to Abraham, Isaac and Jacob as it is written here O mountains Hashem's controversy which is 62 this is the controversy of prayer the controversy of Torah namely the controversy of those who teach merit and of those who teach liability over man's Torah and prayer and this war of the evening prayer continues until sunrise for Rabban Gamliel determined it as until the rise of dawn for the evening prayer may be said at any time during the night but the sages erected a boundary around it and determined it as until midnight 580 and because the duty of reciting the evening prayer is until the rise of the dawn it is said and there wrestled a man with him until the breaking of the day Bereshit 3224 what is meant by the dawn it refers to the evening prayer. Namely the Shechinah whose limit is until the morning of Abraham whose time I asked the fourth hour and Abraham rose up early in the morning Bereshit 223 namely at the beginning of the first hour at the end of the dawn which is Netzach of Jacob for there to the chief musician had been at ACH upon the morning star Tehillim 221 to wreak vengeance on Samael for having touched Jacob's left eye which is hot of which it is said he has made me desolate and faint had Deva, Dalit Vav all the day. Each 113 where the letters of the word Deva rearranged spell hot from the side of hot which is the fifth millennium the temple
From what time may one recite the SH mod in the mornings? It does not say in the morning, but in the mornings two of them, the reference being to Netzach and Had, which illuminate towards the female during the first two hours of the morning, is above in the preceding paragraph, and they are called mornings 582 and two Messiahs coming from two Malchutes lit kingdoms awakened before them. Netzach and Had, Messiah, son of David, parallels Netzach and is connected with the morning of Abraham, which is Jesus, since Jesus is drawn down to Malchut from Netzach of Zeir and Pen, which is as is written at your right hand, our pleasures forevermore have Netzach Tehillim 1611 Had, I is connected to Gura, since to it to Had is attached Messiah, the son of Ephraim, for Gura is drawn down to Malchut from Had of Zeir and Pen, as above you, Moses, the faithful shepherd, are in the center for your level is Tiferet, for the central column, which is Tiferet, is connected with you, and also he is the life of the worlds. Is in your level, therefore he is the central column between the two Messiahs that parallel to Netzach and Hot for Yezid is the central column of Netzach and Hot and Chakma is on the right. Let him who wants to be wise turn south and Bina is on the left. Let him who wants to be rich turn to the north and it follows that Chakma Chesed and Netzach which are on the right Messiah son of David receives them from Netzach of Zeir and Pen while Bina Gura and Hot Messiah son of Ephraim receives them from Hot of Zeir and Pen and Moses is in between them and illuminates that Tiferet and Yezid to them uniting the two Messiahs with each other. 583 at Malchut is a rainbow with you for Malchut receives from him the three colors of the rainbow which are the secret of the three columns and this rainbow is the apparel of the Sheshanah and the apparel of the righteous one which is Yezid that is called the covenant of the rainbow and it is the sign of the Shabbat and the sign of a festival and the sign of Tephilin and the sign of circumcision and the Holy One blessed be he said one who is not marked with the sign shall not enter into this vision into this room which is Malchut and Malchut is a bed for the central column which is Zeir and Ben inclines on it towards Jesus which is the secret of the right column for the completely righteous to accord the merits with the eighteen blessings of the Amid of prayer and inclines towards liability which is the secret of the left column for the wicked to judge them with judgment in view according to their deeds and in the central column it is lenient to those who are mediocre and this is the form of the letter Shin that has three heads paralleling these three columns 584 the three colors of the rainbow white red and green which are the secret of the three columns are a sign of the covenant namely of Yezid the rainbow itself is an only daughter the queen Shabbat which is Malchut that receives the three colors of the rainbow from Yezid and it Malchut has six grades Jesus Bura Tifer at Netzach Hot and Yezid of Metatron under its control for there are the six days of creation that are included in Metatron about which it is said six days you shall do your work Shema 2312 but the only daughter Malchut of Zeir and Pen is Shabbat to Yadhav Hey whoever does work on it shall be put to death Shema 352 585 the Yadhav Hey is called by the letter Hey that is to say the letter Hey completes the name Yud Hey Bav Hey for Zeir and Pen is the Yud Hey Bav and the final Hey is Malchut and from this side to the right Yadhav Bav where the Hey is its completion and so it is with each of the six intermediate Svirat of Zeir and Pen the Hey is the completion for there are six combinations of the letters Yud Hey Bav and the six intermediate Svirat of Zeir and Pen namely Yadhav Hey Bav Yadhav 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 Hey 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 Yadhav one the life had chai equals eighteen of the worlds which is Yezid Malchut is the fourth part of the hin on each side that is to say Malchut is the fourth letter that is the final hay that complements each of the above six combinations thus it is called the fourth part of the hin because it is the fourth letter and therefore the fourth part end of the hin because it is the letter hay 586 and it Malchut is hayfully spelled with Aleph from the point of view of the explicit name Yadvav Dalit. Hay Aleph Bav Aleph Bav Yadvav Dalit is in Chesed Hay Aleph is in Gira Bav Aleph Bav is in Tiferet while the final hay Aleph is in Malchut and when these 39 are in control the sages prohibited 40 save one types of work that are called the main classes lit fathers of work because they are parallel to the patriarchs who control them namely the Svirat Chesed Gira and Tiferet that are called patriarchs for Yud Bav Dalit Hay Aleph Bav Aleph Bav are Chesed Gira and Tiferet as above. And their numerical sum is 39, namely 40 save 1, 587, and with these 40 save 1 types of work that are permitted on weekdays, lashes were administered 10 to Adam, 10 to Eve, 10 to the serpent, and 9 to the land, making a total of 39 curses. And because these 39, namely Yud Bab Dalit, Hey Aleph Bab Aleph Bab rule on Shabbat, which is Hey Aleph, no lashes are administered, and these 39 are not the same as the 39 types of work permitted on a weekday, for the former are from the side of it. Servant Metatron, while the 40 save 1 types of work are sowing plowing 588, the faithful shepherd said to Rabbi Shimon, Old man, old man, the Shechinah is called the earth of the Holy One, blessed be he, as it is said, and the earth is my footstool, Yeshaya 661. From the point of view of Shesed, the Shechinah is called water, and from the point of view of Bura, it is called fire, while from the point of view of the central column, which is Tiferet, it is called air, but in itself it Shechinah is called earth ground for all of them, namely it accepts all of them 589 and whereas the extra Neshama spreads in the Shechinah which is the Shabbat queen about which is said and his kingdom rules over all Tehillim 10319 from there is Malchut whose rule is over the earth and over the trees and the seeds and since the tree of life which is Zeir and Pen which is the extra Neshama that comes on the Shabbat contains all her offspring the earth which is the Shechinah has rest. 590 and since the upper Shechinah which is Bina spreads in the land which is Malchut and about Malchut it is said a red heifer without defect in which there is no blemish and upon which never came a yoke. Even bar 192 it is forbidden to plow with an ox on the Shabbat as it is written the plowers plowed upon my back. Tehillim 1293 namely the judgments of the left for it is therefore said about Malchut upon which never came a yoke and the lower Shechinah which is Malchut is a red heifer. From the aspect of Bura perfect from the point of view of Chesed which is the level of Abraham about whom it is said walk before me and be perfect Bereshit 171 in which there is no blemish is from the side of the central column which is Tiferet and upon which never came a yoke is from the side of the upper Shechinah which is Bina which is freedom for where it is in control the stranger that comes near shall be put to death Bimit bar 151 since permission to control is not granted to the other side not to the Satan nor to destruction nor to the angel of death for they are from the side of Gehenna 591 for this reason on weekdays Yisrael says but he was full of compassion for giving iniquity and he did not destroy them often he turned away his anger not stirring up all his wrath Tehillim 7838 on weekdays the lower Shechinah puts on these clip out of death and judgment but on the Shabbat she sheds them because of the tree of life which is the son of Yod, hey, that is it has. The Mokin of Yudhe which are Shakma and Bina being Yudhe Bab as Zeir and Pen is Bab and has the Mokin of Yudhe on Shabbat it joins with Hay which is Malchut at the time there is rest for the Hay and everything that is under it which is why it is not necessary on the Shabbat to say but he was full of compassion and who are they who are under it Israel and wherever Israel is to be found keeping and rest are to be found 592 and this is why it is forbidden to plow the land or to make ditches in it for the land alludes to Malchut and it is like one who makes a defect in the holy land which is the Shechinah and it is forbidden to use the tools of the land even to move a stone or any tool so that they should have rest in the merit of the Shechinah that is called stone about which is written and this stone which I have set up for a pillar Beersheet 2822 in the prayers and it is called a pillar because it stands up for Israel and for its sake Israel exists in it. World and it is said about it from hence from the shepherd the stone of Israel Bereshit 4924 and upon one stone are seven eyes Zechariah 39 and the stone which the builders rejected Tehillim 11822 593 and the sayings are for this reason wherefore the children of Israel shall keep the Shabbat to observe the Shabbat throughout their generations had Dorotim for a perpetual covenant Shema 
Have gathered my myrrh with my spice refers to the right arm over the left thigh. I have eaten my honeycomb with my honey refers to Jacob with Rachel. I have drunk my wine with my milk refers to the left arm on the right thigh. The explanation of this is the right arm on the left thigh are cheesed with hot Jacob with Rachel are the central column which is tied for it along with Malchud. Left arm with right thigh is pure with net sash 595. He asks why did he so change his attributes and he answers the secret that is here stated is because David said here let your priests be clothed with righteousness and let your pious ones shout for joy. Talim 1329 and we learned there that he should have said your love is the holy one blessed be he said it is not my way to change my attributes but since you have invited me I have to do your will and we further learned that even when a householder invites a king the latter has to do the will of the former it was thus taught whatever. The host tells you to do do except leave nevertheless for all that the secret is beautiful it is still written for I am Hashem I do not change Malachi 36 and indeed in respect of all the sacrifices it is written of them for Hashem only in which there is no change in him and how could it indeed be that he would change the levels of his name with the sacrifices 596 he answers I have gathered my myrrh refers to the blessing of who forms light with my spice refers to everlasting love I have eaten my honeycomb I ask my Israel and with my honey I ask blessed be the name of his glorious kingdom forever and ever I have drunk my wine refers to and it shall come to pass if you hearken to Devarim 1113 to 21 of 2 and Hashem spoke and with my milk refers to from and Hashem spoke Demidbar 1537 to 41 of 2 true eat oh dear ones refers to the first three blessings and the last three blessings of the Amid of while and drink drink people loving companions refers to all the remaining blessings of the prayer 597 and in the compilation of the first part he said the secret of the sacrifices is that cattle and sheep and rams and goats are the four countenances of the face of an ox the face of an eagle and these are two turtle doves or two young doves but this matter is in need of further clarification lion which is cheesed descends to ox which is left which is bure in order to link cheesed with bure namely that they should be incorporated within each other man which is malchud descends to eagle which is typhoret which is the level of jacob so that typhoret and malchud will mate with each other this is why the sages of the mishnah taught that jacob's beauty was that of adam and who caused his ascendancy so that he should be called israel the holy one blessed be he as it is written your name shall be called no more jacob but israel bear she 3229 will be your name the meaning of which i ask that israel should be the primary name to spread among them section 89 he that disregards breadcrumbs rabbi shimon says that anyone who throws bread on the ground will be assured of poverty for only god has dominion over the five kinds of grain 598 why the tenth part of an f of Imidbar 285 he answers the tenth part of an f of parallels the congregation of israel which is the tenth grade namely malchut and it has to be placed between the two arms which are chesed and bureau of zeir and so that it should be made up of chakma of the left and chesedim of the right and then it is fine flour for the baking of bread and it is bread and because malchut is the secret of bread no official in the world is appointed over bread made of the five kinds of grain that are wheat barley riots and spelt and no one is appointed over them excepting the holy one blessed be he alone 599 and therefore poverty follows anyone who shows contempt to bread and throws it on the ground and an angel is Appointed over this matter and follows after him to assure him poverty and he will not depart from this world until he has been in need of assistance from others and it is written about such a one he wanders abroad for bread saying where is it he of 1523 the meaning of which is that he shall wander abroad going from place to place in his search for bread where is it and no one will have any regard for him as it is written where is it where I ask the one who will have mercy on him for such a one will not be found Moses leads a discussion into the foolishness of those who treat lightly the crumbs of the Torah the secrets in the crowns of the letters as these unwise people will perish so will those who transmit secrets of the Torah and Kabbalah to people who are dishonest or who have an evil inclination are AI Mahin of the faithful shepherd 600 and in the compilation of the first part the faithful shepherd said whoever treats lightly crumbs of bread and throws them where they should not be and even more so one who treats lightly pieces of marrow that are drops of seed and throws them on the ground it is said about them for all flesh had corrupted its way upon the earth bear sheet 612 or he who throws them to a menstruating woman or the daughter of an idolater or a bond woman or a prostitute and much more so one who treats lightly the crumbs of the bread of the Torah which are the secrets that are in the crowns of the letters about these it is said he that makes worldly use of the crown shall perish 601 and how much more so whoever transmits secrets of the Torah and the secrets of the Kabbalah and the secrets of the works of creation or secrets of the letters of the explicit name to people who are not honest who are in the control of the evil inclination a harlot about whom it is written for by means of a harlot a man is brought to a piece of bread Mishlei 626 and whenever bread is mentioned the meaning is the 22 letters of the Torah and Whenever peace is mentioned the meaning is even a single halacha 602 and in the compilation of the first part he did not reveal the secret of these crumbs teaching only according to the literal meaning nor did he determine the amounts but the sages of the Mishnah taught the amount of the crumbs is not less than the size of an olive and how much more so if they are of a quantity the size of an egg for the sages of the Mishnah were stringent about them how much should one eat to have to say the grace after meals in olive size and egg size section 90 olive size and egg size Moses tells the esoteric meaning of the amount of the crumbs and he asks God and the Shechina to give everyone perfect food for the correction of the world to come next the faithful shepherd engages in a dialogue with great grandfather upper Chakma who descends to him and talks about who is the host and who the guests that break the bread and distribute it and bless it. Rabbi Shimon and the other friends join the discussion and bring up the topic of Levirate marriage and reincarnation. The faithful shepherd invites all those present to gather around for the banquet of the king and while talking about the breaking of the bread into an egg size and an olive size, he explains the secret and importance of Amen 603 and by a secret method Aleph Chet equals 9 of the word 1 Heb Eshat. Aleph Chet Dalet make 9 crumbs 3 in each direction and with the 3 of the Dalet equals 4 of Eshat we have a total of 12 crumbs again the 4th of the Dalet of Eshat completes to 10 and this completes the 4 which is the 4 letters of Yud Hey Vav Hey what is the 10 they are the 10 letters formed by filling in Yud Vav Dalet Hey Aleph Vav Aleph Vav Hey Aleph now the tip of the letter Dalet of Eshat is the size of an olive size the Yud of Yud Hey Vav Hey is the measure of an egg size 604 this fourth living creature that is the secret of the face of a Man Yashiskal 110 which is the completion of the chariot of man which is Z-E-I-R-N and that is called man in the secret of Y-U-D Hey Vav Hey spelled with Aleph whose numerical sum is the same as that of man Hebatim and it is also the completion of the four faces that are in the face of a man for the face of a man is Malchut which itself has four faces lion ox eagle and man and is the fourth face which is the secret of Malchut that is in Malchut for this reason it is written Hashem lift up his countenance to you Bimidbar 626 and the sages of the mission taught is it not written who favors no person lit who does not lift up countenance to Barim 1017 but the holy one blessed be he said did I not command them and you shall eat and be satisfied and bless Hashem your Elohim to Barim 810 and they are very particular about saying the grace after meals even if the quantity is but that of an olive size or an egg size how then should I not then lift up my countenance for them and not only that but the sages of the Mishnah and the Amram arranged their whole study according to the secrets of the Torah 605 the faithful shepherd rose spread out his hands before the Holy One blessed be he and his Chechenah and spoke thus O Holy One blessed be you may it be your will to give us perfect food for correction to you and to the heavenly queen that is the world to come namely by about which it is said for the kingdom is Hashem's and he is ruler over the nations Tehillim 2229 and regarding the second queen which is Malchut it is said a second time and the kingdom shall be Hashem's Obadiah 121 and the whole table is corrected with all delicacies and dishes 606 and I invite with you all the sages of the Mishnah the scholars of the Bible and the sages of the Talmud and especially the masters of the secrets of your Torah and your bride who I ask your Holy Queen both the upper one which is Bina and the lower
and Nefesh wake up now in all of you and remove the sleep from yourself for this certainly is mission of the literal explanations of this world but I stirred you only with heavenly secrets of the world to come for you are involved with them and in this respect it is said there behold he who keeps Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep Tehillim 1214 608 he began by saying the sages of the mission taught the host breaks bread and the guest says grace after the meal and they also taught one must pronounce clearly the hay of Hamati and the two hays of Yud Hay Bav Hay which are bun and malchut stand for the two loaves of bread the two shallot of the Shabbat the yud of Yud Hay Bav Hay is a slice of bread equal in measure to the size of an egg that is given to each one and who is the host that breaks bread this is the Bav of Yud Hay Bav Hay and so all the four letters of it are here alluded to 609 while they were still having this discourse behold great grandfather which is Upper Chakma descended to him and said faithful shepherd take back what you have just said for bread is the Bav its two loaves of bread are as you have said hey hey and he explains Bav is surely parallel to Jacob who is Zeir and while the two hays parallel Leah and Rachel and therefore bread is in general the secret of Bav which is Zeir and that has two mates one mating is with Leah who is his female from the chest and up while the second mating is with Rachel who is his female from the Chest and down, and this is why the bread is divided into two loaves. The yud of Yud Hay Bav Hay is the secret of the slice that is given to each one as the size of an egg for each. For egg is the secret of Yud of Yud Hay Bav Hay, which is chakma, which is the emanation that is drawn down by the Bav and the two Hays of Yud Hay Bav Hay. Six hundred and ten. He said to him, Grandfather, Grandfather, in how many places is it taught that Jacob is the host, which is Zeir and Ben, and Joseph is a guest whose level is Yisit? The life had Chai equals eighteen of the worlds, which incorporates the eighteen blessings of the Amid of prayer. For which reason it was taught about it. Blessings are upon the head of the righteous. Mishlei one hundred and six. Therefore they said that the host who is Zeir and Ben breaks the bread while the guest, which is Yisit, pronounces the grace after meals. But now you say that Zeir and Ben is the secret not of the host, but of the bread. The grandfather replied to him, That is how it is, and everything is true each. Secret has its rightful place both what I said and what you said and now according to my opinion that Zeir Anpin is the bread who is then the one who breaks the bread and distributes it 611 the faithful shepherd said to him grandfather you have his likeness namely the grandfather himself which is the secret of Chakma is the form of the host who breaks the bread which is Yud Vav Dalit Hey Aleph Vav Aleph Vav Hey Aleph whose numerical sum is 45 which is the secret of Chakma Chet Caf Mem Hey whose letters spell out coachlet strength Caf Chet of Mem Hey which is man which is Mem Hey in numerical value he is of the upper chariot the face of which namely Chakma is the Yud Hey Vav Hey written out fully with Aleph the numerical value of which is Mem Hey and for this reason Vav is bread there being two loaves the two Hays and the amount of the emanation as taught is the size of an olive and the size of an egg and we have already learned in which name it is measured as an olive. Namely in the Yud, but the sages have taught one does not make precepts into bundles, but each precept must stand on its own. Here also we do not give two quantities in the letter Yud that both an olive size and egg size should be Yud, but there are two alphabets where the large alphabet is in bun and the small alphabet is in malchut. Therefore there is an upper Yud and a smaller Yud. The Yud which is the Yud of Yud Hay Vav Hay is the upper Yud which is the secret of upper Chakma, while the Yud of Adonai is a small Yud which is the secret of Chakma of the left end of these two Yud. S one is an olive size, namely the small Yud of Adonai, and the other is an egg size, namely the upper Yud of Yud Hay Vav Hay, and they are in the secret of Yud Aleph Hay Dalit Vav Nun Hay Yud, namely the combination of Yud Hay Vav Hay and Adonai, where the initial Yud is the secret of an egg size and the final Yud is the secret of an olive size. The grandfather came and kissed him six hundred and twelve while they were still. Considering this, the holy luminary that is Rabbi Shimon arose and opened by saying, What Hema, Mem Hay is his name, and what Mem Hay is his son's name, Mishlei 304 come together for Chakma is the secret of Yud Hay Bav Hay, fully spelled with Aleph, whose numerical value is Mem Hay, and the son of Chakma, which is Tiferet, is also Yud Hay Bav Hay, filled in with Mem Hay as above in the preceding paragraph, and it follows that Ma is the name of Chakma, and Ma is the name of his son, which is Tiferet, and the grandfather who is Chakma joined with the faithful shepherd who is Tiferet, the companions rejoiced and said, Happy is the one who was privileged to eat of this bread, which is the Bav of Yud Hay Bav Hay, about which it is said, Come eat of my bread, Mishlei 95, and happy is the Nefesh of whom it is said, She shall eat of her father's bread, but no stranger shall eat of it, Vayakra 2213, for about the Holy One, blessed be he, it is said, Have we not all one father, Malachi 210, and it Soul that occupied herself with the Torah shall eat of her father's bread 613 and who is the cause for the nefesh to eat of her father's bread this is because she returned in repentance and united with the Holy One blessed be he as in her youth as it is written and has returned to her father's house as in her youth Vayikra 2213 and the meaning of this is the same as he shall return to the days of his youth Eo 3325 just like a tree that has been cut down and has grown again from its roots and this is a secret for one who dies childless that by Levi right marriage he reincarnates and is renewed 614 and there is a further secret for a man who dies childless will later come back in a reincarnation and be renewed as formerly as it is written be a widow or divorced Vayikra 2213 as his soul being driven out of the garden of Eden hence she is called divorced had Grusha is in so he drove had Vayikar shout the man bear she 324 and what was the reason for this it was because she had no child Vayikra 2213 for he died childless and has returned to her father's house as in her youth that is returns to this world and transmigrates to the son of the Levi right marriage this is the meaning of and has returned to her father's house as in her youth and after she has been privileged to have offspring she shall eat of her father's bread but no stranger shall eat of it this is what is written the wife of the dead man shall not be married abroad to a stranger. Devarim 255 For if she does not marry the kinsman she will fall into the hands of a stranger namely the other side 615 The faithful shepherd said Hillel and Shammai that is you two one of whom is of the side of mercy namely Hillel while the other is of the side of judgment namely Shammai are and Gvira the levels of Abraham and Isaac and you are of their stock gather around here you and the eighty peoples that Hillel had as well as the peoples of the house of Shammai gather around for the banquet of the king 616 you have taught you and those with you who give legal and ethical instructions you have taught he who breaks bread may not eat until the diners have answered Amen and the guest may not eat anything until the one who breaks the bread has eaten obviously when the host breaks the bread and gives it to the guest he does not measure out the same amount for each person for those who break bread do not usually break it into equal parts and he could give to one egg size and to another an olive size and when they respond amen over this breaking of the bread before the host eats they join together the two quantities the egg size and the olive size where the egg size quantity is drawn down from the yud of yud hay bav hay and the olive size quantity is from the yud of adonai is above and thus the joining of the egg size and the olive size is the secret of the combination of yud olive hay dalit bav nun hay yud which is the secret of amen and this unification is not over the eating but over the breaking of the bread and therefore after these quantities the egg size and the olive size have joined together in the unification of yud olive hay dalit bav nun hay yud and the saying of amen and the host may eat and this is i have gathered my myrrh with my spice i have eaten my honeycomb with my honey i have drunk my wine with my milk after which comes eat oh dear ones and drink drink people loving companions sure hashirim 51 eat oh dear once refers to the guests so that the sons who are the guests should be as their father who is the host who breaks the bread which is the secret of upper chakma that is called father 617 and here we have bread in two loaves where bread is bob and each of the loaves is hay and the amount of the eating is an olive size and an egg size which is the secret of the unification yud alaf hay dalit bob nun hay yud is above he asks what is the shoe bread that is on the king's table namely the 12 shallot that were arranged on the
12 countenances 619 and you might wish to suggest that from the Torah we learn about 6 jalat as only double the bread was required for each of the three meals making a total of 6 only not 12 the answers we cannot mention Bob equals 6 without also mentioning its companion Bob namely Bob Bob the sound of the pronounced Bob and this points to the 6 fire of Chesed Bura Tiferet Net Sash Hot and Yezid of the direct life from above downwards and the 6 fire of Chesed Bura Tiferet Net Sash Hot and Yezid of returning life from below upwards and they parallel the 6 steps that are in the upper throne from the chest and upwards of Zeir and namely Chesed Bura Tiferet Net Sash Hot and Yezid that are included in Chesed Bura and Tiferet and the 6 steps of the lower throne from the chest downwards of Zeir and namely Chesed Bura Tiferet Net Sash Hot and Yezid that are included in Net Sash Hot and Yezid the 6 of the upper throne are concealed for Chakma has no revelation from the chest and upwards while the six from the chest downwards are in the open for Chakma does have revelation from the chest and downwards and this is the secret of the verse the secret things belong to Hashem our Elohim but those things which are revealed belong to us and to our children forever Devarim 2928 where from the chest and upwards of Zeir and Ben are the hidden things and from the chest and downwards are the things that are revealed section 92 the things one should observe at the Shabbat table we are told of the parallel between all the breads prescribed at Shabbat and the four faces of the holy beast we learn of all the deep meanings of the ten preparations for the meal lastly the bread of the Torah is said to be the Shechinah 620 the breads of thanksgiving are 40 shallot 10 wafers 10 mixed with hot water and oil 10 of leavened bread 10 of unleavened bread making a total of 40 paralleling the four YUDS that are in the four Yud Hay that are in the four faces, namely paralleling the Yud of Yud Hay of the four faces of a man and paralleling the Yud of the Yud Hay of the four faces of a lion and paralleling the Yud of Yud Hay of the four faces of an ox and paralleling the Yud of the Yud Hay of the four faces of an eagle. And this is the first preparation for the king's table, for there are ten things that a person must observe at the Shabbat table 621. The first preparation that is in the Shabbat table I ask to prepare the table as for one who eats in the presence of a king, as it is written, This is the table that is before Hashem Yashiskal 4122. The second preparation is to wash the hands to the extent that the sages decreed, namely five knots, that is the five fingers of the right hand, which contain fourteen joints for each finger, has three joints, and the thumb only two totaling fourteen joints. Similarly, there are fourteen joints in the left making a Total of 28 joints and against these 28 joints is the secret of the power of Hashem where the word for power is coach equals 28 and these are the 28 letters of the first verse in the works of creation in the beginning Elohim created the heaven and the earth. Bear sheet 11 there are 28 letters in the verse and about them it is written and now I pray you let the power have coach of Adonai be great. Bimidbar 1417 622 the 10 fingers correspond to the 10 sayings at the creation of the world. For this reason the sages of the Mishnah taught whoever is careless over the washing of the hands is uprooted from the world. Why is this? It is because the 10 fingers of the hands and the 28 joints of the fingers contain the secret of the 10 sayings and the 28 letters with which the world was created. 623 the third preparation is the cup of benediction for which 10 things were ordained. It requires washing, rinsing, crowning, wrapping and must be undiluted full taken up with both hands and Placed in the right hand, he who says the blessing must look at it, it must be raised a handbreadth from the surface, and he must send it around to those members of his household as a present. 624, and according to the secret, it is the secret of the cup full with the blessing of Hashem Devarim 3323. For the numerical value of the word cup, Hepkos is the same as Elohim, which is by the name Malchut in clothing in Bina, and from there comes the Neshama that is named after it, cup as it is written. I will raise the cup of salvation. Tehillim 11613. What is the meaning of salvation? It is the five fingers that hold the cup, which correspond to the five Sphira, Chesed, Bura, Tiferet, Net, Sash, Hot, and Yezid that are in the cup, which is the living Elohim, which is Bina, that spreads through the five Sphira to fifty gates, which are five times ten. That is the letter Yud stands for the ten things that the sages ordained for the cup, which is the living Elohim, and the five A letters of the word. Elohim which are 5 in number and 10 times 5 comes to 50 gates 625 and they taught about the cup that it needs washing and rinsing where washing refers to the outside rinsing to the inside and the secret of the matter is that the inside and the outside of the cup should be the same for whoever has been privileged to receive a neshama from this cup which is by such a neshama must be pure both within and without and the secret of the matter is and cleanse it and hallow it. Bayakra 1619 with purification on the inside and sanctification on the outside and just as the cup whose purification and sanctification both inside and outside is only with water so the purification and sanctification of the soul both inside and outside is only with the Torah and this is why Rabban Gamliel said no one whose inside does not correspond to his exterior may enter the academy house this is because such a person is not from the tree of life but from the tree of knowledge of good and Evil for whoever is lacking holiness on the outside or purity on the inside is a mixture of good and evil. 626 The crowning that is stated in respect of the cup they taught us he crowns it with pupils and the secret is that hay is the cup namely bun and it is crowned with pupils with the letter yud which is a diadem on the hay for the pupils multiply and draw down shock with the wrapping that is mentioned in respect to the cup refers to the need to wrap the head namely to cover it because the Shechinah is over his head for this is what the sages of the Mishnah taught a scholar of the law is forbidden to walk four cubits with his head uncovered because the whole earth is full of his glory. Yeshua 63 and even more so I ask it forbidden to go with uncovered head during a blessing or the mention of the holy name 627 and the reason for the prohibition of going with uncovered head I ask that the letter yud of yud hey, bah, hey, which is chakma is enveloped in light head or alak, bah, Resh and becomes air heavy for Allah Bob Yud Resh since the letter Yud which is Chakma is in the air and this is the light with which he enveloped himself when he created the world as it is written who covers himself with light as with a garment Tehillim 1042 thus let there be light Bereshit 13 is let there be air and the sages of Sitrei Torah taught before anything else was formed the existences were formed thus let there be light and there was light refers to light that had existed previously 628 and regarding the undiluted in respect to the cup of blessing they taught undiluted from the barrel which means that it should not be mixed with any water there and the secret is the upper Sheshana which is by is the eighth sphere of the tenth Sphira when one starts to count from the bottom up and is for that reason called Chet whose numerical value is eight and this is alluded to in the verse through wisdom house have it is built Mishlei 243 hence a barrel have Chabot, Chet Bet Yud Taf Ayas the letters Chet and Bet Bet Yud Taf for this shows that the wine which is the secret of Bura of Zeir and Ben is to be drawn down from Bina that is called Beryl namely Chet Bet and because Bina is life as it is written she is a tree of life to those who lay hold on her Mishlei 318 therefore the wine that is drawn down from there from Bina is undiluted lit live and this is the wine of the Torah for whoever engages in it is called live and furthermore the righteous one which is yes it is called live and is undiluted from the barrel because its lights are drawn from Bina that is called Beryl as above 629 wine comes in two colors white and red the numerical value of wine is 70 facets this makes 72 and this alludes to the fact that the lights of the 72 letter name illuminate in wine and corresponding to the two colors of the wine are remember and keep referring to the Shabbat and these together with the 70 words of it. Shabbat Yiv Kiddush make 72 630 and the cup of benediction must be full as it is written a cup full with the blessing of Hashem Devarim 3323 and also he has to be full of the wine of the Torah and so must the person be perfect as it is written a plain man Bereshit 2527 the meaning of this is a perfect have Shalem man as in the verse and Jacob came to Shalem Bereshit 3318 namely Jacob is here called perfect so also must the Neshama be perfect without any fault being in it because for whatever man he be that has a blemish he shall not approach Vayikra 2118 so also here the letters of Elohim Allah Lamet Hayyud Mem can be rewritten as Allah L
Up with both hands corresponding to the Torah which was written on two tablets of stone and there were five commandments on the one tablet corresponding to the five fingers of the right hand and there were five commandments on the second tablet corresponding to the five fingers of the left hand that were given with the right that is the right hand that is to say that the five of the left were included in the five of the right and for this reason it is written and he took in his hand two tablets of stone Shema 344 and not in his hands namely in only one hand which was the right and this is as scripture testifies from his right hand went a fiery law for them to Barum 332 632 regarding the instruction that he who says the blessing must look at the cup of benediction this is because it corresponds to the land of Israel which is Malchut in clothing by about which it is said the eyes of Hashem your Elohim are always upon it to Barum 1112 and the eyes of heaven are the 70 numerical value of the letter I in which as a word means I members of the Sanhedrin with Moses and Aaron over them they being the two upper eyes namely Chakma and Bina being one right eye and one left eye amounting to 72 the same numerical value as the expression with one head bayin for the 70 members of the Sanhedrin correspond to the seven Sfirat Chesed Bure Tiferet Net Sach and Malchut each one being composed of ten and over them are Chakma and Bina which are Moses and Aaron and this is the secret of his looking at it to draw down Chakma and Bina to the cup which is Malchut and this is the secret of why he who says the blessing must look at the cup 633 and the cup of benediction must be raised a handbreadth from the surface since the letter hey of Yud hey Bab hey is a cup it has to be raised up to the letter yet of Yud hey Bab hey which is called a handbreadth for the hey is opened up in it with the five hey fingers which is the Secret of the fifty gates of Bina and he must send a cup of benediction round to members of his household as present namely in order that his wife should be blessed for she is the secret of the nefesh about which it is said but now our soul is dried away there is nothing at all Bimid bar 116 and she is blessed and prepares fruits as it is written let the earth bring forth grass bear sheet 111 634 and the fourth preparation at the table is that matters of Torah should be discussed over the table so that the verse for all tables are full of vomit and filth Yeshaya 288 should not be fulfilled in him as it is with the ignorant but it was taught in Sitrei lit hidden Torah he who wants to grow rich turns to the north namely he should place the table northwards for the table is left which is judgment he has therefore to connect it to the right which is the Torah that was given out of Chesed which is mercy which is the right hand of Hashem 635 and the fifth preparation in the table was taught by the sages of the mission the meal must be lengthened for the sake of the poor that he will be able to give them something to eat and the secret of the matter is that charity should lengthen his days that he should not die young just as does the Torah which is longevity for the Neshama in two worlds this world and the world to come charity likewise is longevity for the body in two worlds as it is written for he is your life and the length of your days to Barum 3020 which is interpreted to mean your life in this world and the length of your days in the world to come and the meaning of the world to come for the body is at the resurrection of the dead that after he rises at the resurrection of the dead he will not die and just as he will be in the world to come so will he be in this world 636 and the sixth correction is that he should not be a voracious glutton at the king's table as was Esau who said give me to swallow bear she 2530 by gulping it down but by way of mastication grinding the food with his teeth so to one who produces words of prayer or words of Torah from his mouth should bring them out shoot over and complete namely he should consider them and go over them as though chewing them over and not in a gulping fashion imperfectly and furthermore because of the danger that the food might enter his trachea instead of his esophagus he must eat by way of masticating and not gulping 637 and the seventh preparation is water at the end of the meal as it has been taught water to wash the hands at the beginning of the meal is a precept and at the end of the meal is an obligation while water in the middle between courses it is optional with the water at the beginning of the meal he has to raise his fingers up so that the dirty water will not run back and defile the hands and there are sages who held the opinion that the water at the end of the meal is because of sdom salt lest it blind the eyes thereby Remove from us the obligation for to wash the hands at the end of the meal is no more than good advice in order not to blind the eyes and is not obligatory and there are secret matters with those who held that water to wash the hands at the end of the meal is obligatory and it is not good practice to contradict the words of the great but to them may be applied the verse according to the sentence of the Torah which they shall teach you to Barum 1711 638 and furthermore three sanctifications were stated in this connection as it is written you shall therefore sanctify yourselves and you shall be holy for I am holy Vayakra 1144 sanctify yourselves refers to the water for washing the hands at the beginning of the meal and you shall be holy refers to the water at the end of the meal for holly is pleasant oil to remove the dirt from the fingers I am Hashem is a blessing and the water in the middle is between cheese and meat and this is why it is written you Shall therefore sanctify yourselves and you shall be holy for I am holy happy is this people whose master places them near to him and who imbues them with his holiness 639 so too could be said sanctify yourselves Vayikra 1144 refers to the time of sexual intercourse the initial emission of a man's seed is a precept namely keeping of the commandment to be fruitful and multiply while the latter is the seed of the female which is obligatory that is to say the seed of the male obligates her to produce seed and that in the middle waters is hinted at in and curdled me like cheese of 1010 namely the holy one blessed be he who gives solid form to the seed for the building up of the embryo as it is written have you not poured me out like milk and curdled me like cheese and this is the allusion to the waters that are in the middle between cheese and me for it is said about him about the holy one blessed be he you have clothed me with skin and flesh of it 11, Preparation is that at least three men must be present for the cup of benediction. Why? Because the cup alludes to Bina and Bina is the third of the ten spirat when counting them from the top downwards, namely Kita Shakma Bina. For this reason, if less than three persons are present, the cup is not required. Another explanation why at least three persons must be present for the cup of benediction is that it refers to they call you thrice holy. Furthermore, the Torah did not descend less than three, namely priests, Levites, and Yisrael, which are the Torah prophets and Hagiographa, and it was given in the third month on the third day. And this Bina is Yud Hey Bab Yud Hey Bab Hey, which is the secret of the three columns. And in its regard, they said the night has three washes, and Malchut is the fourth Hey, which receives all three of the columns. And about it, they said the night has four washes corresponding to the three columns, and Malchut that receives them, and the letter Shin with it. Three branches corresponds to the three washes while the letter shin with four branches corresponds to the four washes 641 and the ninth preparation is the cup of benediction that is one quarter of a log the amount corresponding to the letter hey which I ask the fourth letter of yod hey bab hey and the tenth preparation is that when there are ten people present he who says grace adds let us bless our Elohim the reason for this is that the lower sheshana which is malchut is both fourth and tenth the fourth letter of the name yod hey bab hey and the tenth in the count of the tenth spirat which are the secret of the ten letters yod bab dalad hey alaf bab alaf bab hey alaf and therefore the presence of ten persons is required in order to mention the name our Elohim and a man must be very careful not to throw these matters in a place where he shouldn't like one who throws away bread and how much more so one who throws out from his table the bread of the Torah for it is the Sheshana about which it is said, this is the table that is before Hashem Yashiskel 4122 and of RAI Mahim the section 93 3 who harm themselves. Rabbi Shimon tells about the three ways a person can harm himself by cursing himself, by throwing bread on the ground, and by kindling a light before the doxology is finished on Shabbat. He who commits the last of these three transgressions is considered to have profaned the Shabbat, and a special place in Gehenom is reserved for him. 642 and in the compilation of the first part, he says there are three who cause harm to themselves, two of whom are in this world and one in another world, and these are the one who curses himself. As we have learned, one official is appointed before man, and when a man curses himself, this official together with his 70 appointed subordinates take that word and respond Amen, and they raise it up on high and judge it, and the official follows him until he does something, and then he puts into effect for him the curse of that word that he uttered 643 who do we have that is greater than Moses who said and if not blot me I pray you out of your book which you have written Shema 3232 this he said for the sake of Israel
Having no respect for it as we have learned and these are the two who receive their punishment in this world and the one who does harm to himself in another world is the person who kindles a light towards the end of the Shabbat before Israel recite the doxology after the daily portion during the passages of Yudah Kadash at the end of Shabbat and such a one is considered as a profaner of the Shabbat because he causes the fire of Gehenom to be kindled before its time 645 there is a special place in Gehenom for those who profane the Shabbat and since he kindles the light before its time a certain official exists in Gehenom on the end of Shabbat and he first lights that place and says the spot is for so and so and all the wicked ones who are in Gehenom help him to light up that spot and that official calls out saying behold Hashem will thrust you about with a mighty throw and will seize you firmly Yeshua 2217 and the wicked who are in Gehenom respond he will violently roll and toss you like a ball into a large country there shall you die but 18 and this is because he caused them to be kindled before time and this makes three who cause harm to themselves as we have learned section 94 3 yuds in the yud hey faithfully spelled with yud amounting to 63 rabbi shimon tells moses that in the future he will be exalted above all creatures because he ascended to the name yud hey faithfully spelled out 646 another explanation and he dreamed and behold the letter bear she 2812 faithful shepherd just as the letter lane descends higher than all the other letters because the lament alludes to bina so will you in the future be exalted above all creatures because you ascended to the name yud vav dalad hey yud vav alat vav hey yud whose numerical value is 63 which is bina and in it there are three yuds yud 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 the numerical value of them making lane equals 34 initially you were in the name yud vav dalad hey alat vav Aleph Bav Hey Aleph which has a numerical value of 45 which is Zer and it contains Yod Aleph 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 the numerical value of which is 13 which stands for the 13 attributes of mercy and has the same numerical value as the word one Heb Eshat Aleph Chet Dalet equals 13 and now you have ascended with L equals 31 which is Yod Yod Aleph Yod of the full spelling of 63 and both of these names are witnesses has not one L created us Malachi 210 for the Yud Yud Aleph Yud of Yud Hey Vav Hey fully spelled of the numerical value of 63 has the numerical value of the word L and the Aleph filling of the Yud Hey Vav Hey Yud Aleph 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 is the numerical value of the word one Heb Eshat hence it is written have we not all one father has not one L created us Malachi 210 647 and with these three yuds of the 63 numeric value letter name may the verse be established in you he shall be exalted and extolled and be very high Yeshayah 5213 very heavy Miyoti high refers to Yud Hey Vav Hey of the numerical value of 45 which is the numerical value of the word Miyoti Mem Aleph Dalet which is the same as Men Heb Adam Aleph Dalet Mem 45 and in fact the letters of the word very are the same as those of the word man written in a different order he shall be exalted is in the four faces of the lion which is Chisa that rises to Chakma which is the secret of Hashem bless you Bimid Bar 624 this being the secret of Yud Hey Vav Hey fully spelled to the numerical value of 72 thus Yud Vav Dalet Hey Yud Vav Yud Vav Hey Yud which is the numerical value of Chisa and this is Chakma of the right and extolled is through the four faces of ox which is Gura that rises to Bina namely Hashem lift up Bimid Bar 626 and this is Bina of the left and be very high is Hashem make his face shine Bimid Bar 625 which is Zer and Bina is in the middle and is Yud Hey Vav Hey fully spelled to the numerical value of 45 and this Yud Vav Dalet Hey Yud Vav Aleph Vav Hey Yud which is Yud Hey Vav Hey fully spelled to the numerical value of 63 is Hashem lift up his countenance to you and give you peace Bimid Bar 626 the fourth Yud Hey Vav Hey namely that filled with H E I S of the numerical value of 52 I S Malchut and this is and they shall put my name upon the children of Israel and I will bless them Bimid Bar 627 for Malchut is called name section 95 as a flame connected to a burning coal we hear of the waters of the Torah. Emerging from the smooth precious stones that were derived from the stone called Malchut, the further explanation is that the Torah is actually the secret of light because it consists of both Chesedim and Chakma. From the right hand side, Malchut is called a stone, but from the left, it is called a burning coal. And this appellation speaks to the vengeance that will be taken against the enemies of Israel. Rabbi Shimon talks about the events that will happen at the end of the exile when the two Messiahs will be connected with the faithful shepherd. At that time, the klipot that's around the Shechinah will be shattered into pieces, and one of the three stones will be revealed. We are told that the faithful shepherd issues from Upper Iama and spreads throughout the sixth fire to the righteous one, and from there it waters the garden that is the Shechinah 648. From the right hand side, Malchut is called a stone, and a number of smooth precious stones, namely stones that issue water, are to be. Derived from it from them issue the waters of the Torah about which we have learned Rabbi Akiva said to his disciples when you reach stones of pure marble do not say water water lest you endanger your souls the meaning of this is do not say that these waters of Malchut are real waters namely only Shesedim because he that tells lies shall not remain in my sight Tehillim 1017 for these waters that are in Malchut are Torah that is to say that they are drawn down from Zeir and Ben who is called Torah and is composed of Chakma and Shesedim together and is therefore the secret of light and not of water which indicates Shesedim without Chakma for it is said about it and Torah is light Mishlei 623 and since this light stems from a spring whose waters fail not Yeshayah 5811 for Zeir and Ben receives this light from upper Abba and Ima whose mating is forever uninterrupted and there with Abba and Ima it is Shesedim it is therefore called water which is Shesedim however when it Shesedim come to Zeir and they are composed of Chakma also and are called light and this is the secret of and Torah is light 649 and from the left hand side the stone which is Yud namely Malchut is called a burning coal namely by virtue of the power of the judgments of the left that burn in IT once the tents of are referred to as a flame joined to a burning coal and it has four hues namely the four letters of the simple Yud Hey Vav Hey and they are ten namely the ten letters of Yud Hey Vav Hey fully spelled with Aleph Yud Vav Dalet Hey Aleph Vav Aleph Vav Hey Aleph together this makes fourteen letters and it is a great hand equals fourteen from the point of view of the right which is Jesus the mighty hand from the point of view of the left which is Gura while from the point of view of the central column it is an upraised hand it is thus composed of forty two hues this being the sum of three times fourteen equals hand six hundred and fifty and since from the point of view of it Right it is a stone and from the point of view of the left it is a burning coal the Holy One blessed be he takes vengeance with it from Ishmael and Edom who are derived from the waste matters of right and left for there are strange fires of other side and the proud waters where Ishmael is proud waters and Edom is strange fires and their appointed officials are Samael and Serpent Samael who is the fire of Gehenom is appointed over the nation of Esau and Serpent is appointed over the nation of Ishmael and this is the angel Rahab who is in charge of the water 651 from the right of Abraham whose level is Jesus he takes vengeance on Ishmael and his official and from the left of Isaac whose level is fear namely Bura he takes vengeance on Esau and his appointed official by means of two messiahs one of whom messiah son of David is from the right while the other messiah son of Joseph is from the left and the level of Jacob which is Tiferet is the central column that corresponds to them in the secret of changing his hands bear she 4814 the lion to the left corresponding to esau and the ox to the right corresponding to ishmael and since judah was exiled in esau it follows that the right of holiness is with the left of esau and likewise in the exile of ishmael the left of holiness is to be found with the impure right of ishmael accordingly it follows that messiah son of david which is right will take vengeance on esau while messiah son of joseph which is left will take vengeance on ishmael until shiloh come bear she 4910 which verse is read as meaning until shiloh comes where the numerical value of shiloh is the same as that of moses who is a faithful shepherd whose level is tiferet israel which is the central column he will take vengeance from the mixed multitude for the mixed multitude is composed of the right and left of impurity and so the central column which is composed of the right and left of holiness will be avenged on them 
The final exile and they will thus have the power to win and destroy all the clipot that correspond to the three columns of holiness as above 653 he began by quoting he has not beheld iniquity in Jacob neither has he seen perverseness in Yisrael Hashem his Elohim is with him and the trumpet blasts of the king is among them. Humid bar 2321 and all this is to fulfill the scriptural verse but with great compassion will I gather you Yeshua 547 and at that time the clipot that surround it. Shechina will be shattered into pieces and immediately one of the three stones will be revealed and the three stones are Seagalta that is the secret of Malchud which is the apex of the Seagalta in the tonal notes and about these three points it is said now it came to pass in the 30th year Yashiskal 11 this is the secret of the three Yuds Yud 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 where each of the three points that make up the Seagalta is a Yud and the numerical sum of three Yuds is 30 in the fourth month of it refers to the fourth stone which is Netzash on the fifth day of the month refers to the fifth stone which is hot corresponding to them is and shows five smooth stones out of the brook Ishmuel 1740 these being the secret of Shesed Bura Tifer at Netzash and Hod that are taken from Yesed that incorporates all of them and is called brook and corresponding to them are the five words Hero Yisrael Hashem are Elohim Hashem Devarim 64 654 as I was among the exiles Yashiskal 11 this is the Shechina which is called I in which the Holy One blessed be he is one Hebeshad because Zeir and Pen is Allah Shed of Eshad Allah Shed Dalit and the Shechina is Dalit of Eshad the Bablet as is added to as I for it is written as I is the river which is the righteous one life of the world namely is it and he explained his words and a river went out of Eden to water the garden Bershi 210 what is meant by Eden this is Banabed Yadnan hey the river that went out of Banabed which is Eden is Bab the son had been Bed none of Yadnan namely Zeir and Pen which is the level of the faithful shepherd and the faithful shepherd which is Zeir and Pen issues from Upper Iamay which is the secret of Eden and spreads throughout the six Fira Chesed Bura Tifer at Netzach Hot and Yezid to the righteous one which is Yezid and from there from Yezid it waters the garden which is the Shechina and so the Bablet as I therefore alludes to Yezid that waters IT 655 IT is written by the river Kebar Yashiskal 11 what is Kebar CAF Bedresh he answers that CAF alludes to Keter Bet to Bina and Resh to the beginning of Hebrish it Chakma Keter is on the right side Chakma is on the left side Bina is in the center and they form a chariot Hebrish F Resh CAF Bet on high for the prime cause infinity all ten of the Sfirat are included in the river which is Zeir and Pen which spreads as far as the righteous one which is Yezid that is called all as it is all inclusive containing within IT all the Sfirat and about it was it said the tree grew and was strong and on it was food for all Daniel 48 to 9 everything depends on it when Ezekiel saw the Shechina among the Klippot he saw ten Sfirat with the end of RAI Mahin the section 96 fine flour for an offering we learned that the fine flour should be composed of both the right and left side 656 IT is written fine flour for a meal offering Bimidbar 285 that is that this fine flour which is Malchut should be brought before the Supreme King for a meal offering between the two arms that is to say that it should be composed of the two arms which are Chesed and Bura the right side and the left side Moses explains the flower by talking about Isaac the left hand of Zir Anpin and Abraham the right hand of Zir Anpin he says the fine flower is the lower Shechina as it has no connotation of darkness just as the chaff and straw have to be removed from the grain during threshing. Israel must remove any dark ones that become intermingled with them. Moses says that darkness is the evil inclination. Rai Mahin of the faithful shepherd 657. And in the first compilation of the part, the faithful shepherd said from this, from what the Zohar says about the fine flower for a meal offering being between the two arms, it must be understood that these are hidden matters that have to be explained to the companions. It is said about Abraham and Isaac who instituted the morning and afternoon prayers. My hand also has laid the foundation of the earth. Yeshua 4813, which refers to Isaac, who is the left hand of Zeir and Pen, and my right hand has spanned the heavens, refers to Abraham, who is the right hand of Zeir and Pen. Their levels are Chesed and fear, as it is said about them. Hashem has sworn by his right hand and by the arm of his strength. Yeshua 628, which are the two arms to the king, which is the Yadhe Bab, namely Zeir and Pen, the central column, and his fine. Flower is the lower Shechina, namely Malchut, which is his light that is of Zeir and Pen, and his clean fine flower from his sides, namely when cleaving to his right and left sides without blemish of darkness and without any implication of contaminated darkness, for such is the relationship of light to darkness as clean grain is to chaff and straw. Malchut is therefore termed fine flower when it is without any intimation of darkness. 658, but in the iniquities of Israel, dark ones become mixed up with the luminous ones, and just as a man threshes the grain and then makes a selection of the wheat from the chaff and straw, like one picking out food from amongst rubbish, so it is with Israel that when dark ones become intermingled with them, they have to make and correct their spirits, and the secret of the matter is contained in the verse: the sacrifices of Elohim are a broken spirit. Tehillim 5119 for darkness, which is the evil inclination that covers the spirit as the chaff that covers it. Grain or as a cloud that covers the sun not allowing it to give light, is broken 659 and in the time when darkness which is the evil inclination covers the good inclination the latter which is light is like one who is imprisoned in the prison of the evil inclination and so too when the good inclination is imprisoned in the domain of the evil inclination the hosts of the good inclination are also imprisoned in the domain of the hosts of the evil inclination and when a person breaks his spirit in all his limbs before Hashem what does scripture say that you may say to the prisoners go forth to them that are in darkness show yourselves Yeshua 499 660 but the Shechina is pure fine flower in which darkness and gloom cannot become mixed up and it is as a vine that rejects a graft of another sort that is not of its type and this fine flower dwells between the arms of the king namely Chisa and Bira mingled with beaten oil Bimidbar 285 and of Rai Mahina. Section 97 mingled with beaten oil. Rabbi Shimon asks for an explanation of the word beaten in the title verse, and he is told that it has to do with drawing an emanation down from above. The righteous one is the one who crushes the holy olives for the anointing oil with his perfect longing for Malchut 661 mingled with beaten oil. Bimidbar 285 oil refers to that oil that is poured out and issues from on high from Chakma of the right side. Rabbi Shimon said, What you have said is good, but how do you explain beaten? He answers, It is a divine secret since we are talking about oil. What is beaten? It is an allusion to the mating with the female, namely Malchut, to draw down to her beaten oil as is fitting for her from upper Chakma, which is none other than beaten in order to extract oil from the olives, which are the limbs of the body, namely the Sphira of Zeir and Pentern body, and to draw that emanation down from above from upper Chakma with each and every limb 662. And the righteous one, which is Yezid, is the one who crushes with pestles and extracts from all those upper limbs from the Sfirat of Zeir and Pen that are holy olives, anointing oil with a perfect longing for the female, which is Malchut. But if he does not crush them, that oil will issue forth only without the longing of the limbs, and the female will have no enjoyment from that emanation. And the oil, which is the light of Chakma, will not be fitting until it is a blend of all the limbs. Therefore, it is written mingled with beaten oil in order to enjoy it and be nourished from it. Moses furthers the explanation of the same topic, and he gives information about the three brains of memory, of thought, and of imagination. He says that imagination and memory ascend from the heart, and the thoughts descend to them to the heart where they are welcomed as a king. Moses also brings in the factor of the four faces of the holy beast, Rai Mahin, the faithful shepherd, 663, the faithful shepherd. Said to Rabbi Shimon, Holy Luminary, how sweet are your words? It is certainly said here, mingled with beaten oil, and it says there in the oral law that it is blended in Bible Mishnah and Talmud, and there is yet a second secret here in mingled with beaten oil. It is certainly not the Torah that is mingled in Bible Mishnah and Talmud, but only for the person who suffers a number of chastisements because of it, as the sages of the Mishnah taught the Torah is only upheld by one who kills himself for it. And they said further, when you trust from county to county to learn Torah, you will be privileged to see the
At Seer becomes a sea balta and this is upper Keter over Chakma and Bina 666 one tenth measure and two tenth measures allude to the three living creatures of the upper chariot that are called greatness which is Chesed, Bira and Tiferet three tenth measures allude to Netzach Hot and Yezid in which is the second lower chariot the fourth part of it is Holy Malchud which is Hay the fourth letter of the Yad Hay in which are the four faces of a man for in Chesed there are four faces of a lion in Bira there are four faces of an ox and in Tiferet there are four faces of an eagle while in Malchud are the four faces of a man and of Rai Mahim we are told that Malchud is a continual burnt offering that rises to God every single day ascending to the divine thought that has no end this is why a burnt offering is only required for sinful meditation of the heart which is thought 667 a fourth part of it in Bimidbar 2814 refers to the fourth leg of the divine Throne which is Bina that has four legs, namely Chesed, Bira, and Tiferet of Zeir, Enpen, and Malchut, and Malchut is a continual burnt offering, Hebalot of its six to him every single day, and it ascends Hebalot to the divine thought that has no end, and therefore burnt offering sacrifices do only for sinful meditation of the heart, which is thought. Section 98 Tarkamakov Shofar Holexi Galta Moses talks about the three beasts that are twelve tribes, Rai Mahina. The faithful shepherd 668, and in the compilation of the first part, the faithful shepherd said this crown that is called Zarka is Yud, which is the fourth sphere to Chesed, Bira, and Tiferet, namely Malchut, and is called Zarka because it is cast Heb Nizraki, as far as the divine thought that has no end, as above in the preceding paragraph, so also the living creature whose name is man, which is Malchut, and its four faces, which are the four letters of the Yud, Hebab, Hey, Armakov, Shofar Holex. See Galta and this is three living creatures which are twelve tribes and of Rai Mahina we are told that the continual burnt offering is on each of the six days of creation with a double offering on the Shabbat that adds light and perfection to it 669 the continual burnt offering is the fourth leg of the divine throne namely Malchut it is an offering continually on each one of the six days of creation namely Chesed, Bura, Tiferet, Netzach, Hot and Yezid of Zeir and while on the Shabbat. It is a double portion offering so that light and perfection should be added to it as is fitting and this we have already learned the faithful shepherd tells why crown they shall give you is recited in the additional service the muse of Rai Mahina the faithful shepherd 670 in the first part the faithful shepherd said in six Firat Malchut ascends continually to the Bab which is Zeir and that is held by them it is the son of Yod which is Zeir and having the Mokin of Yod. Which is hidden in Bina and in a certain sphere of the six Firat that are in Malchut, namely Tiferet of Malchut, that includes all six of its Firat. She ascends to Zeir and this is on the third day, namely with his third sphere that is called Tiferet, which is also composed of all six of his Firat, but the upper three Firat are missing because although at the time of the offering of the sacrifice he has the six intermediate Firat of Bina, namely Israel Saba and Tabuna, they are nevertheless not considered as the real Mokin of the upper three Firat, for Israel Saba and Tabuna are also the six intermediate Firat of Bina, but on the Shabbat they added to him is an extra Nefesh, which is Bina, namely the upper Hay of the Yud Hay that is it ascends to upper Abba and Ima, namely the upper three Firat of Bina, and then it also has Yud, which is the son of the Shabbat, namely upper Chakma, and also the king, which is Zeir and is adorned with the crown, namely Keter. Chakma and Bina Bina and for this reason a crown they shall give you as recited in the additional service muse of section 99 bring an atonement over me we hear about the two points of the seagull that are two kings and we learn that both the burnt offering and the sin offering are the secret of Malchut the essential thrust of this section has to do with the attributes of judgment and mercy 671 and in the beginning the heads of your moons Bimidbar 2811 he asks how many heads does the moon have that you say in the heads of your moons and he answers there are two points the seagull where the lower dot is the moon namely Malchut its two heads are the two dots over and above it and together they are called seagull initially it was a crown over two kings namely Netzach and Hot of Zeir and thus which is the form of the seagull ties a tonal cantillation sign and afterwards when it said that it is not possible for two kings to use one crown the holy one blessed be he said to it, Go and contract yourself. It descended to the feet of those two kings, namely below Netzach and Hod, thus becoming a seagull, and where it had been a seagull, it became a seagull 672. And the secret of the matter is that corresponding to the two points which are the two kings, namely Netzach and Hod of Zeir and is the allusion to two young bullocks, and corresponding to the one point which is the diadem on the head of the two points, the scripture said, and one ramibid like a crown, which is just one, and this is according to the shape of the seagull, where Malchut is a crown over Netzach and Hod, and after she said it is impossible for two kings to use one crown and contracted herself, it also contracted, and one kid of the goats for a sin offering, Ibid 15 for the ram of Isaac, which is the left column of Bina, which Malchut enclosed in the first state, contracted and became a he goat for it changed from mercy to judgment and contracted for the area. Above the chest of Zeir and is mercy, and that below the chest of Zeir and is judgment. He therefore contracted from a ram to being a he goat, which teaches about judgment 673. And this is why the scripture says, And one kid of the goats for a sin offering and not for a burnt offering, let ascent, which would have meant that it ascends to be a crown over Netzach and Hot. And how do we know that there is descent in a sin offering from the verse and came down from offering the sin offering? Vayikra 922. And why did he combine the sin offering with the burnt offering in the descent? This is to teach that initially there was a burnt offering, which is the attribute of mercy, namely from the chest and upwards of Zeir and which is the place of mercy, and later it became judgment in the descent to below the chest of Zeir and which is the place of judgment and is called a sin offering. And it is all one for both the burnt offering and the sin offering are the secret of Malchut 674. And this is why the Holy One blessed be he who is Zeir and said, Bring atonement over me for the moon was certainly a crown over me prior to the contraction, namely a crown above Netzach and Hot of Zeir and thus and subsequently it contracted and descended to his feet, namely beneath Netzach and Hot that are called legs thus and at the time of bring over me atonement, namely when the he goat of the new moon is sacrificed to atone for the contraction of the moon, it is said about it. it is the burnt offering lit ascent Vayikra 63 for it ascends from his feet and it is then said about it, and the earth is my footstool, Isha 661 where the earth is Malchut now it rises to be a throne for Bina together with Zeir and who is called heaven so that it can be said about it, the heaven is my throne, Ibid for the heavens which is Zeir and together with Malchut become a throne for Bina and this is the secret of the verse just ruling in the fear of Elohim 2 he turns judgment into mercy for by means of the ego of the new moon Chakma and Chesedim are drawn down to her so that she can return to the chest and upwards of Zeir Anpin which is the place of mercy this however is effective only at the time of the sacrifice and not subsequently for this correction is not completed until the end of the correction and the secret of the matter is contained in the verse the stone which the builders rejected has become the headstone of the corner. Tehillim 11822 and likewise there is a combination Hay Hay which teaches about the attribute of judgment and there is a combination Yad Hay that teaches about the attribute of mercy section 100 the moon has contracted itself the faithful shepherd says that the lambs of the sacrifice correspond to the Sphira and to the seven days of the moon 675 furthermore the one lamb and two lambs of the first year without blemish Ebed bar 289 correspond to. The upper three Sphirot seven lambs of the first year correspond to the seven lower Sphirot the seven lambs are seven days namely seven Sphirot of the moon which is Malchut for the R of the first year lit sons of the year namely the sons of the moon which is called the year this being one of those primordial years and of Rai Mahin Rabbi Shimon tells how the renewal of Jacob and Joseph every month to illuminate the moon must be done by the sacrifice of 676 and in the beginnings. Lit heads of your new moons Bimidbar 2811 he asks how many heads does the moon have since there exists no head to the moon but the sun which is Zeir and that is a head for it he answers there are two heads in every month namely Jacob and Joseph which are Zeir and and
The central column was there in order to cancel the face of Esau for the central column reduces the upper three spirot of the left which is the face of Esau chosen namely Yezid which is the ox of Zeir and that is to say which is drawn from the left column of Zeir and that is called ox was there for Rachel namely to emanate to Malchut that is called Rachel section 101 the Yadhav Hayes in the middle the faithful shepherd tells how the earth was founded by wisdom and the heavens were established by understanding our AI Mahina the faithful shepherd 678 the faithful shepherd said certainly the one year old lambs are named after the sun which is holy I am a namely Bina for it is said about it the face of Moses is as that of the sun that is he has the upper three spirot which is the secret of face of Bina that is called Sunday year contains 365 days that is together with the days from Rosh Hashanah to Yom Kippur this is the same number 365 as that of the negative precepts and this is a witness to the left and is upper I am a the moon which is Malchut is on the right side for the daughter is joined to Abba which is Chisit on the right side and it Malchut is composed of the 248 positive precepts it follows that the Bob which is Zeir and is with I am a on the left side in the secret of the 365 negative precepts and the daughter is with Abba on the right side which is Chisit and the secret of the matter is in the verse by wisdom founded. The earth Mishlei 319 by wisdom refers to Abba namely Chakna of the right which is Chisit earth is the daughter namely Malchut and thus the daughter is joined with Abba by understanding he established the heavens of it he established the heavens which is the sun namely Zeir and with I am a which is understanding and this results in the combination of Yudhei Bob which is the secret of the Yudhei Bob He's in the center section 102 a he go to Azazel Moses. Says that the goat for Azazel is a bribe to assuage Samael's anger and to prevent him from drawing near the temple and making accusations against Israel. He also tells us why the goat is sent by the hand of a crippled man and how the goat bears all of Israel's iniquity. 679 again, one kid of the goats, Emidbar 2911. There are two goats that it is said about them, and he shall take the two goats, one lot for Hashem and the other lot for Azazel. Vayikra 167 to 8, the goat that is for Hashem, Iasen. Atonement over the contraction of the moon and is, and one kid of the goats for a sin offering to Hashem, Emidbar 2815. It is therefore referred to as one because it is from the side of the oneness, but the goat for Azazel is not referred to as one, neither is it called a sacrifice, a fire offering, nor a burnt offering, but shall send him away by the hand of an appointed man into the wilderness. Vayikra 1621 and shall send away is the same term used by Jacob. It is a present sent to my. Lord Esau Gershi 3219 Likewise the goat for Azazel is a bribe in order to break Samael's anger that he should not draw near the temple to denounce IT 680 IT is like a hungry dog whoever does not want to be bitten by it gives it meat or bread to eat and water to drink and the secret of the matter is contained in the verse if your enemy be hungry give him bread to eat and if he be thirsty give him water to drink Mishlei 2521 he thereby becomes friendly towards the person and not only does not bite him with a number of tribulations but becomes an advocate for him and loves him 681 and there is a question here why is the goat sent to Azazel by the hand of an appointed man who is crippled he answers because all of the other sides are defective and are called Hepsirim goats as it is written and goats Hepsirim shall dance there Yeshua 1321 and about them it is said and they shall no more offer their sacrifices to the Hepsirim demons Vayikra 177 and also they Sacrifice to powerless spirits to Barum 3217 and with this goat to Azazel Samael is separated from everything and bears all the transgressions that are in Israel upon him as it is written and the goat shall bear upon it all their iniquities Vayikra 1622 and furthermore after that Azazel takes all the transgressions and bears them namely that the Holy One blessed be he shall bear and forgive the Holy One blessed be he is called forgiving bearing iniquity Shema 347 and about the goat for Azazel it is written and the goat shall bear upon it all their iniquities what is the difference between these two types of bearing he answers bears means carrying the burden while bearing means the removal of the burden namely that he atones for the iniquities and all of this is explained above end of our AI Mahina we hear that were it not for the monthly contraction of the moon no offering would ever be given to Samael 682 and three tenth measures Bimidbar 299 namely it is her Three first grades, namely Keter Shakma and Bina, each one of which is made up of ten as it is above with Zeir and Ben, and by tenth measures, I as meant one part in ten for Malchut is one of the tenth spirot of Zeir and Ben, and each individual sphere of hers corresponds to one of ten in Zeir and Ben, and they are therefore called tenth measures and one goat for a sin offering. He asks why it is called a sin offering and answers because it is a sin and is from the side of sin, that is to say, a portion of it is for the other side and it is therefore from the side of sin, said Rabbi Lazar, but it is written to Hashem Bimidbar 2815. How then can you say that it is from the side of sin and answers? It is certainly sacrificed to Hashem, for it is written to make atonement to be twenty one, namely to break the face of the other side, so everything will be sacrificed to the sanctuary, but one portion is also given to Samael and he eats it, and for this reason does not take hold of the other sacrifices. This. Sacrifice alone I ask for him to eat and no other sacrifice is joined with him for him to eat 683 he Samael enjoys the banquet of the king with this portion that he takes from the goat for a sin offering and he therefore rejoices and leaves Israel alone and does not accuse them and were it not for contraction of the moon namely Malchut nothing at all would be given to Samael from the king's banquet he asks and what does he do in the contraction of the moon and answers because he comes close and suckles from the vacated place in Malchut and takes power for his people from the side of the left of the moon which is Malchut and grows strong in it and in this goat a portion of which is given to him he abandons everything and gains his enjoyment from this and because the holy one blessed be he contracted the moon for he said to her go and contract yourself therefore this goat is sacrificed so that Samael will depart from her and not come close to the sanctuary which is Malchut and Thus we learn that the Holy One blessed be he said bring over me an atonement for I have contracted the moon over me namely for me for I contracted her and it is due to my own cause that I contracted her that you need this that you need to sacrifice a goat in order to separate him from the place of the contraction of Malchut section 103 and in the beginnings of your new moons the faithful shepherd says that just as on the new moon a portion must be given to the other side a woman must give her fingernails and a little of her hair to the other side this protects her from evil the sages of the Mishnah had said that in previous times when the people were sanctifying the new moon they would kindle flares on the tops of the mountain so that God could see the moon and sanctify it Malchut is sometimes a crown for God sometimes a throne for him to sit on and sometimes a footstool for his feet Moses explains why the moon is called white he says that the Moon is from the side of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, so it changes from dark to light and back again. R A I Mahin the faithful shepherd 684 and in the beginnings of the heads of your new moons. Bimid bar 2811. The word heads I as written in the plural, referring to Jacob and Joseph, namely Z E I R and Ben and Yezid, as it is written. These are the generations of Jacob, Joseph, Bereshit 372 that renew the moon which is Malchut. I have found in the book of Enoch that he said that just as on the first day of the month the moon which is Malchut is purified to come close to her husband Z E I R and Ben, so must one portion be given to the other side and from the same type as the other side, namely a goat. So also the woman when she is purified for her husband one portion must be given to the other side and from its own type 685. And what is that portion that the woman has to give to the other side? It is the fingernails with their dirt and a little of the ends of her hair for she has to. Comb her head and tie her hair together to give them to the other side and then that evil side will not go after her to harm her but will leave her alone from all sides and what does she do with those hairs and nail clippings after she has bound them together she has to place them where people do not pass by or in holes in the bottom of the yard and conceal them there 686 again and in the beginnings of your new moons the sages of the Mishnah said when the new moon used to be sanctified. According to the court flares used to be kindled on the tops of the mountains and they used to say thus as he seen it and sanctified it the moon would be shaped thus sometimes with the horns facing upwards and sometimes so facing downwards sometimes to the east thus and sometimes to the west thus
Other times a footstool for his feet of Zeir and Ben 688 he asks why is Malchut called Mulad White he answers it is named after the clarification whitening of the Halacha namely it is named after Chakma of the right side that clarifies the Halacha which is Malchut that is called Halacha for Chakma is from within Malchut and the secret of the verse the king's daughter is all glorious within Tehillim 4514 and it is whitened in the fire of Bina that descends upon it and it Secret of the matter is to be found in the verse, though your sins be like scarlet, they shall be as white as snow, Yeshea 118, and whereas it was called Adonai, the letters of which we arranged spelled in a judgment, which is read with viewer, namely with the left column, whereby as it becomes whitened by the side of Chesed, where Chakma is, and returns to the name of the Yudhei Vavhe, which is mercy 689, and what is the cause of Malchut's changing from judgment to mercy? This is the completely righteous for the moon, which is Malchut, is from the side of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, its clipa is darkness, that is, if it is a bright black spot, which is the evil inclination, which is a handmaid about whom it is said, and it be lower, but be somewhat dimmer, Vayakra 1321, and Malchut has nothing of its own, but only the thread that gives it light, this being the secret of the thread of Chakma of the left side without Chesedim, which is its main structure, but it's Light is as thin as a thread because it cannot illuminate without chesedim for it accompanies it during the nighttime which is the exile in the secret of the verse she rises also while it is yet night Mishle 3115 and leaves it during the day for the day is the time of the rule of the chesedim of Zeir and Ben and Chakma of the left side is unable to rule by day for daytime is the light of chesed of the next world which is by in which but to you who fear my name the son of righteousness shall arise with healing in its wings Malachi 32690 but that point that is within the moon which is Malchut that is from the side of the tree of life which is Zeir and Ben is the secret of Chakma of the right side which is chesed and is as a never ceasing spring because it is drawn down from upper Abba and I am a by way of Zeir and Ben whose mating never ceases and about which it is written like a spring of water whose waters fail not Yeshua 5811 and it is called the loving hind from it. Side of Chesed which is love this being as is written I have loved you with an everlasting love therefore I have remained true to you your Mayah 312 love being the secret of Chesed and it has two beings from the light thus and sometimes but one was higher than the other thus Daniel 83 and at other times they are equal and of R.A.I. Mayhem the section 104 the hind of Don Rabbi Abel brings up the difficulty that in the verse as the heart pants after the water brooks heart is masculine and yet the verb which should agree with the noun is feminine Rabbi Shimon then talks about the hind of the Don that refers to the merciful Malchut who brings nourishment for everyone else the hind suffers the pangs of exile in the morning and when the morning brings light she is no longer visible Rabbi Shimon speaks about the hind becoming heart and giving birth with great pain 691 and on the first month Bimidbar 2816 Rabbi Abel opened as the heart pants after the water Brooks so pants my soul after you Elohim Tehillim 422 we have already learned this verse and although it contains masculine and feminine forms it is all one for the word Hebi Olid heart is masculine while the verb Tyro she pants is feminine and although the subject and the verb should agree in gender Yairo he pants is not written in the masculine because it is all one in other words Malchut when in the first state when it is with Zeir and in the secret of the two great lights is called heart as being a masculine form but in the second state after it has contracted it is called hind 692 what is the morning starlet the hind of the Don Tehillim 221 and answers this is a certain merciful animal namely Malchut and among all the animals of the world there is none merciful like her for when time is pressing and she needs nourishment for herself and for all the animals which are all the hosts of the worlds of Bria Yetzirah and Asiyah she goes to it distant place far away and comes bringing food but does not herself want to eat until she returns to her place why is this so so that all the other animals will collect together by her and she distributes from that food to them and when she comes all the other animals do indeed collect around her and she stands in the middle and allocates to each one of them and the sign is in the verse she rises also while it is yet night and gives food to her household and a portion to her maidens Mishle. 3115 and from what she gives to them she is herself satiated as if she had eaten more food than all of them 693 and when the morning which is called dawn arrives the pangs of the exile come to her and this is why she is called the hind of the dawn after the blackness of the morning for she then has pangs as a woman giving birth as it is written like as a woman with child that draws near the time of her delivery is in pain and cries out in her pangs Yeshaya 2617 694 when does she distribute to them this is when the morning is just about to come but it is still night and the blackness departs for the illumination as it is written she rises also while it is yet night and gives food to her household but by the time it is morning they are all satiated with her food 695 and then a certain voice awakens in the midst of the firmament and calls out aloud saying let those who are near go to their places let those who are far leave let each one gather to his rightful place and by the time the sun shines each one is gathered to its place as it is written the sun rises they slink away tail 10422 and she departs during the day and is revealed at night and distributes food in the morning which is why she is called behind of the dawn 696 subsequently she grows stronger and leaves and is called the heart namely a masculine form where does she go he answers she goes 60 pharisangs from the place that she left and she enters into the mountain of Darkness as she goes into the mountain of darkness a certain labyrinth and serpent sniffs at her feet and follows her and she ascends from there to the mountain of light when she reaches there the holy one blessed be he arranges for her another serpent who goes forth and they fight each other and she is saved and from there she takes food and returns to her place by midnight and from midnight on she begins the distribution until the blackness of the morning arises and when the morning gives light she goes from there and is no longer visible as we have learned 697 and when the world is in need of rain all the other animals collect near her and she goes up to the top of a high mountain puts her head between her knees and cries out with one long cry after another and the holy one blessed be he hears her voice and is overcome by mercy and has pity on the world and she comes down from the top of the mountain and runs to hide herself and all the other animals run after her but do not find her this is as it is written as the heart pants after the water brooks what is the meaning of the water brooks this refers to those water brooks that have dried up and the world is thirsty for water then she pants 698 when she conceives she is closed up but when the time comes for her to give birth she shouts and cries out cry after cry up to 70 shouts as the number of words in the psalm Hashem will answer you in the day of trouble Tehillim 202 which is the song of this pregnant one and the holy one blessed be he hears her and arranges her salvation for her and then a certain large serpent emerges from the mountains of darkness and comes between the mountains its mouth licking the dust and it reaches his heart and comes and bites it twice in the same place 699 on the first occasion blood comes out of it and the serpent licks it on the second occasion water comes out and all those animals of the mountains drink and she herself is opened and gives birth and a sign for you is the verse and with his rod he smote the rock twice and water came forth abundantly and the congregation drank and their beasts also. Bimidbar 2011 700 the Holy One blessed be he has pity on her because of what the serpent did as it is written the voice of Hashem makes the hinds to calve and strips the forest fair and in his temple everyone speaks of his glory. Tehillim 299 the voice of Hashem makes the hinds to calve refers to the pangs and pains that give rise to those 70 shouts as above and then follows and strips the forest fair in order to awaken that serpent and reveal the animal to go amongst them and in his temple what does this mean it refers to the temple of the Holy One blessed be he which is Malchut in which all those multitudes that are in the worlds of Bria Yetzirah and Asiyah open and say glory what is meant by glory it refers to blessed be the glory of Hashem from his place Yashis 312 which is Malchut that is called it. Glory of Hashem we hear about the number of years before the hind will give birth to the redemption and we hear that two messiahs will be revealed to the world and the Torah sages who suffered pangs as though they were in labor will be respected and honored and the wicked will be judged above and below Rai Mahim the faithful shepherd 701 the beginning of the section is missing one might suggest that after 70 years she will feel the pains of the birth pangs and in two years she will give birth to the redemption 1200 years after the destruction
and in his temple everyone speaks of his glory the meaning of which is that the glory of the wise will be throughout his temple 702 and at that time those Torah sages will be respected those who suffered pangs and travails as a woman in labor and who were despised by the ignorant they will be honored and immediately Hashem sat enthroned at the flood Tehillim 2910 on account of the wicked flood here symbolizes judgments of the flood when were all the fountains of the great deep broken open and the windows of heaven were open bear sheet 711 at the time of the flood so too then judgments will rise over them over the wicked above and below with no end for their judgments and every contempt and disgrace shown by the idolatrous nations of the world towards Hashem and his people and the many insults that Yisrael suffered from them for the sake of Hashem's name for all of them the holy one blessed be he will exact vengeance and therefore as far as they are concerned Hashem revenges and is full of wrath Nashim 12 towards them section 105 the holiday of Pesach we are told that the redemption will take place on the 14th day of the month of Nisan 703 and on the first month Bimidbar 2816 he asks what is meant here by the first month and answers it is Nisan which is when that animal gave birth to the lights of the redemption in accord with the teaching of the sages of Misha in the month of Nisan they were redeemed and in it month of Nisan they will be redeemed and this is with his hand Hebiah equals 14 on his 14th according to the secret of the verse for he said because Hashem has sworn let put a hand by his throne Shemot 1716 when he swore to remove the seed of Esau the Amalek from the world at that time draw out and take lambs according to your families and kill the Passover Shemot 1221 where the meaning of draw out Heb Mishchu is as in the verse he stretched out Heb Mashach his hand with Scorners Hashia 75 704 at that time thus said Hashem to the rulers who transgressed against me neither shall they enter into the land of Israel Yashiskel 139 and this refers to the shepherds of the flock the supporters of the generation wherefore it is said about them therefore behold I will allure her and bring her into the wilderness Hashia 216 and there will remonstrate with you as I remonstrated with your fathers Yashiskel 2035 to 36 namely whom he killed in the plague of Darkness and of Rai Mahin Rabbi Shimon explains to Rabbi Lazar how the upper days of Sfirat of Zerenpin will be drawn to the lower days to the Sfirat of Malchud on the 14th day the animal Malchud will give birth to the lights of the redemption and the serpent will depart then Malchud will be sanctified on high and will be called glory 705 and on the first month Bimidbar 2816 he asks what is meant by the first month and answers this is the month in which that animal namely Malchud is revealed in and strengthened by and goes forth into the world namely emerges from its closure in the secret of the verse and strip the forest bear Tehillim 299 on the 14th day the 14 days refer to the remaining animals namely Chesed and Buretiferet and Malchud of Zeir and that illuminate within Malchud for they are ten in each direction since Chesed, Buretiferet and Malchud are the four directions at the four corners of the world north, south, east, and west. Each one of which is composed of ten Sfirat and in the early writing it is stated that it Malchut is yet ten and that one sphere of Chesed, Burit, Tiferet and Malchut is in each of the four directions of the world making fourteen and since these four Chesed, Burit, Tiferet and Malchut join in and are corrected with the ten that are in Malchut from the right hand side this makes the fourteenth day of the month for the correction of this animal which is Malchut with all its corrections with. Rejoicing 706 Rabbi Lazar said of course that is how it is but come and see it is written draw out and take lambs what is the meaning of draw out and replies it is to be understood as one who draws something from another place to this place namely draw out the upper days which are the Sfirat of Zeir and to the lower days to the Sfirat of Malchut the upper days of Zeir and number 366 as in the numerical value of draw out have Mishchut namely the number of days in a solar year. Which is Zeir and the lower days of Malchut are usually 355 days in a year. Hebshana equals 355, but when the moon, which is Malchut, shines at its fullest, the number of its days rises to be 365 days as the solar year, which is Zeir and namely as the numerical value of Mishchut less 1, 707. Draw the upper days of Zeir and to the lower days of Malchut so that they will be one all joined together, and who draws them that is these ten of Malchut when it is on the right side that is Chesed for. It is written on the tenth day of Bezer Shemot 123, namely Malchut when it is on the right side. He asks it is written as Bezer when scripture should have used the more common Bezer all at the tenth day. What is Bezer? He answers there are nine in each direction with one point that goes in the middle thus and this point completes the tenth Sfirot. This is why it is written Bezer just as it is written. Remember Hebzer Shema 208 and keep Hebshamer Devarim 512, namely the form of the infinitive absolute of the verb. The meaning of Bezer thus being to use the ten in such a way that these nine days will serve in its point of this month. Shema 123, which is Nisan, alludes to Chesed to show that these days that are drawn down will be on the right side, which is Chesed in order to combine Zotlit this feminine, which is Malchut with Zalit this masculine, which is Zeir and for it all to be one 708. And when these four days that follow the tenth of the month join. Up with the four directions south, north, east, and west, which are the secret of Chesed and Burit, Tiferet, and Malchut, and combine with them with the ten days, then that animal which is Malchut gives birth to the lights of the redemption, and the serpent departs, and at that time that animal is sanctified on high and is called glory, and then the festival is sanctified. This had not been the case previously, but now in the festival it is called glory as it is written, and in his temple everyone speaks of his glory. The faithful shepherd says that the explanation given is insufficiently clear and requires more illumination. He tells the rabbis that on the tenth day means the nine Sfirot are in all directions, and that they parallel the nine months of a pregnant woman's period of gestation. He talks about remember and keep and glory, and enumerates the numerology associated with this lesson. Rai Mahim, the faithful shepherd, 709, the faithful shepherd said these matters. That are stated above in the preceding paragraph are insufficiently clear and they have to be explained for the companions for whoever hides the secrets of the Torah from them saddens them for the lights of the secrets are darkness for the wicked and it is like silver that is hidden away if one digs until he discovers it but it is not as it becomes like darkness and gloom in his mind while for one to whom it belongs it illuminates for him this is the reason why a person should reveal the hidden secrets of the Torah to the companions 710 on the tenth day Shemot 123 this means that the nine Sfirot are in all directions paralleling the nine months of a pregnant woman's period of gestation which is the same as the numerical value of Alachet of one Hevashet Alachet Dalet who is a woman with child she is the Dalet of Eshet Alachet equals nine are the nine Sfirot in the four directions of the letter Dalet equals four and they are forty Alachet correspond to remember which is Zeir and while Dalit corresponds to keep which is Malchut and together with them they are 42 711 this leaves us with glory as it is said blessed be the name of the glory of his kingdom forever and ever and this is glory had Kavad equals 32 and heart had left equals 32 the sum of which is 64 and there are four directions to this letter Dalit 64 to the four sides which comes to 256 and it has been taught glory above and heart below and for this reason the recital of the unity is said twice daily so that we thereby say glory twice which amounts to 64 add to this the two Dalits of Eshad and we have 72 and so the Dalit of Eshad completes the 42 letter names and also completes the 72 letter names and this is why it is said in a psalm of David who is this king of glory Hashem strong and mighty Tehillim 248 and again who is this king of glory Hashem of hosts he is the king of glory of the ten end of Rai Mahin we are told how the temple is sanctified 712 it is written and in his temple everyone speak of his glory Tehillim 299 he asks what is meant by his temple and he answers this refers to the inner upper temple where everything namely by is sanctified there whoever is fitting for sanctification is sanctified how is the temple sanctified he answers that initially the gates are opened by Dad which is Zeir and who ascends to Bina when the left side is in control of Bina and becomes there the central column which is the secret of that. That unites the right and the left, namely Chakma and Bina with each other, and opens the gates of Bina, namely opens up Bina from the blockage of the left. Thereby Zeir and Bina also receives from it three columns, since three issue from one
Yud Hei Bab Hei is above, and the plate of the holy crown on his forehead is called the plate of the holy crown, namely the Yud of the Yud Hei Bab Hei, and he was embellished with the four garments of gold and with the four garments of white, which correspond to the eight letters in the names of the Yud Hei Bab Hei and Adonai, and on that plate forty two letters sparkle, namely the forty two letter name, and the whole of that palace shines with upper light seven thirteen, and that key which is the secret of that as above turned and opened another side of Bina to the north, and Levi, which is the secret of Bura, and the left column entered, and he is the tithe of Jacob, whom he set aside out of his sons for the holy one, blessed be he, and with him the tenth spring liar, which is the secret of the tenth spirot of the left column, and he is crowned with diadems, namely the Mokin of the upper three spirot, who are called diadems, and then the key turned yet again and opened the gate of that temple, that gate that Stands in the center, namely the column that is on eastern side, which is Typhara at the central column, but namely Typhara enters and is adorned in that gate with seventy diadems, which are the secret of the seventy two names, and it is adorned with four letters, which are twelve, namely with the twelve permutations of the four letters of the Yud Hei Bab and these are the secret of Chisa and Bura Typhara and Malchud in each of the three columns, and it was adorned with engravings of the two hundred and seventy thousand worlds, namely the place where the illumination of Chakma is revealed, which is from the chest and downward, where the illumination of Chakma is termed eight thousand, and there are two thirds of Typhara, which are seventy and Netzach and Hot, in each one of which there are ten Sphirot, making two hundred and seventy Sphirot, and it is crowned with diadems that shine from one end of the world to the other, namely in Malchud, that is called world, and in a number of valuable garments, and a Number of holy diadem 714, that key which is dead is above turned once again and opened all the concealed gates and all the hidden holy gates and Zeir and Ben is sanctified in them and stands there as king that is in the aspect of Malchud which is in the central column of Bina he is there blessed with a number of blessings and crowned with a number of diadems then all of them issue forth from Bina to their place in Zeir and Ben namely Chakma and Bina of Zeir and Ben from the two gates to the south and north of Bina and the right half of that from the central gate of Bina and left half of that and all of them issue forth joined together and are crowned with their diadems as is fitting once they have left Bina for the place of Zeir and Ben they awaken Zeir and Ben so that he will put on his adornments namely the form of kin is above 715 and this animal namely Malchud which is in the first state and still cleaves to the left awakens and contracts itself out of love of it. Song namely because of the longing for Chesedim, for since it is on the left without the right, it has Chakma without Chesedim, something that causes it great distress, and it longs deeply for Chesedim, which is why it contracted itself into the aspect of below the chest, so that it should be able to receive Chesedim from him. And how does it diminish itself out of love of the song? It contracts itself bit by bit until it becomes just a point under Yezid from the aspect of the lights, while from the aspect of the vessels it is a point under the chest. And since she has contracted herself, it is then written, and there went a man of the house of Levi, Shema 21, which is the secret of the Holy One, blessed be he, and took to wife a daughter of Levi, but which is Malchud, it is certainly called a daughter of Levi, because it is from the left side. How does he hold her? He puts his left hand under her head out of love, namely the left side of Zeir, and becomes the upper three of Malchud. And are referred to as head as being in the secret of the verse. His left hand is under my head. Sure, Hashirim 83, 7, 16. And you might well ask that since she is now a small point, how could Zeir and unite with a small point? And he answers that Visavis above the smaller thing is the more praiseworthy it is, and this is a virtue, and it is really supremely large for when it is small. The high priest immediately awakens for her. The reference being to Chisid of Zeir and Ben who holds and embraces her. Had she been large, Zer and Ben and Malchud would not have been able to unite at all. But since she contracted herself and is a small point, the Sphirot of Zeir and Ben can hold her and raise her up on high between the two arms of Zeir and Ben, namely Chisid and Bura. And after they have raised her up, she sits between these two sides, namely Chisid and Bura. And then the pillar that stands in the center, namely Typhorite, which is the central column, joins with her in a love of kisses, a love of Perfect union and then in Jacob that is Zeir and Ben kiss Rachel who is Malchut Bershi 2911 for with the love of kisses they cleave to each other without separation until she receives an afesh of delights as is fitting 717 when she receives an afesh of delights as is fitting and she wants to visit her hosts they all gather together and call her glory 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 from the temple of Abba and Ima and in the temple itself Abba and Ima namely Chakma and Bina open by saying sanctified. Sanctified in other words they emanate to Malchut from their lights which are called holiness then the month which is Malchut is sanctified properly and it is then written and on the first month Bimid bar 2816 for it is certainly the first and this is because previously when Malchut was attached to the left without the right she was not considered to be in existence because her lights were frozen and she was unable to emanate but now having contracted to a point and been rebuilt by Abba and I am a in the lights of holiness and being under the level of Zeir and she is considered to be in her first existence and it is therefore then written about her and on first month and therefore scripture says draw out and take you lambs Shema 1221 the meaning of which is draw down the upper days of Zeir and to Malchut and it is therefore written on the tenth day of this month Shema 123 the meaning of which is that the moon which is Malchut has become joined to the sun which is Zeir and namely that the ninth spirot of Zeir and will serve to illuminate in Malchut and whereas she was a single point after the contraction when she descended from the temple of Abba and I am a she now expands bit by bit and fills out and becomes the final hay of the Yud Hay Bab which is full of emanation from all four directions and is properly sanctified the faithful shepherd adds information about how the moon Malchut becomes full and is joined to the sun or I am a in the faithful. Shepherd 718 the beginning of the section is missing the temple turned and opened another gate on the south side namely in the right column with 72 diadems which is the secret of the name of 72 that illuminates in the right column later it opens a third gate on the eastern side which is the central column with 50 lights of the 50 gates of Bina next it opens another gate on the western side which is the secret of Malchud in the 72 diadems of the name of 72 and all the 248. Shasidim being the number of words in the sections of the recital of the SH Ma'an whereas this animal which is Malchud was initially small at that time having received 72 diadems and 248 Shasidim she grows which is as is written the whole earth is full of his glory Yeshayah 63 which is the upper glory and the lower glory all of which Malchud receives with the declaration of the unity in the recital of the SH Ma 719 when one reaches the 18 Hebshai equals living worlds in which are the eighteen blessings of the prayer, namely in the Amid of prayer, which one starts with Adonai, open my lips and my mouth shall rehearse your praise. Tehillim 5117, and the central column, which is Zeir and Ben, joins with her with affectionate kisses of the lips, which are Netzach and Hot and Tongue, which is the righteous one that is Yezid, is between them in the secret of the tongue of the learned at that time. And Jacob kissed Rachel, Bershi 2911, where Jacob is Zeir and Ben, and Rachel is Malchud. And then that animal Malchud is called Glory, Glory, and Abba and Ima say sanctified, sanctified, that is Abba and Ima emanate to her their lights that are called holiness, and then the month which is Malchud is correctly sanctified, and she is then called, and on first month, Bimidbar 2816, first without a doubt, 720, and then draw out the upper days of Zeir and Ben to Malchud, which is why it is written on the tenth day of this month, Shema 123, the meaning of which is that the nine days. Of Zeir and Ben shine towards Malchut, namely that the holy moon which is Malchut is joined to the sun which is Zeir and Ben about which it is said, for Hashem Elohim is a sun and a shield. Tehillim 8412, and whereas Malchut was a small point, she filled out as the full moon, and then the month is full, namely the moon which is Malchut is full, and she is the whole earth is full of his glory. Initially she was lacking, but now she is complete, full. And of Rai Mahim Rabbi Shia learns that the Paschal sacrifices a lamb because a lamb was the idol and deity of the Egyptians, and it was hard for the Egyptians to see their idol tied and held prisoner and
Abomination of Egypt because it is the Egyptian's idol and their deity it is similarly written the abominations of those nations devarim 189 the meaning of which is the idol of these nations 722 come and see the wisdom of Joseph as is written and he took some of his brothers five men bear she 472 and he taught them to say your servants are shepherds of it three and with a king who was ruler over the country and who was like a father to the king have done such a thing to his brothers too. Make the Egyptians hate them and not show them consideration, if you hold the view that the abomination of the Egyptians is every shepherd which means hated by the Egyptians but in reality the abomination of the Egyptians is what their idol and their deity was called therefore is it written for we shall sacrifice the abomination of Egypt Shemot 822 meaning their deity 723 Joseph said all the best of Egypt is the land of Ramses and this part of the country they set aside for their idol. Namely the flocks for them to be pastured and go there to their hearts to let and all the Egyptians considered those who tended their idols as themselves idols he said I shall arrange it so that my brothers inherit that country and the Egyptians shall bow down to them and will accord them proper treatment and this is what is written for every shepherd is an abomination to the Egyptians Bear she 4734 which is for this reason they should treat them as their deity 724 Rabbi Yossi said. Haven't we learned just as the Holy One blessed be he punishes idolaters so will he punish idolatry itself if this is so why did Joseph make his brothers into idols that the Egyptians should bow down to them as though they were deities he replied to him Joseph did not make his brothers into idols but into rulers over the idolatry of the Egyptians and thus subdued their idolatry under the hand of his brothers so that they would smite it with the rod Joseph said if my brothers control their idolatry then how much better that they will have rule over them themselves which is why he settled them in the best of the country and made the rulers over all the land 725 and so why is the paschal sacrifice a lamb the answer is because a lamb was the idol and deity of the Egyptians said the Holy One blessed be he from the tenth of the month take the fear of the Egyptians capture and bind it and let it be imprisoned and hold it in your keeping one day and two and three days and on it. Fourth they carry out its sentence and assemble over it 726 and when Egypt heard the voice of their idol which was being held by Israel and they were unable to rescue it they cried and it was as difficult for them as though they themselves had been tied up for the kill said the Holy One blessed be he let it be in your possession day after day for four days so that the Egyptians may see it when it is bound and imprisoned and on the fourth day bring it out to be killed and let the Egyptians see how you enact judgment on it and this namely these judgments that they performed on their idol was harder for them to bear than all the plagues that the Holy One blessed be he brought on them 727 subsequently they cast it into the fire as it is written and burned their carved idols with fire of their deities to 75 said the Holy One blessed be he eat not of it Rashamot 129 so that the Egyptians will not say they were so desirous of and had such a longing for our idol that they ate it insufficiently roasted but it was decreed that it should be eaten roasted and not boiled for had it been boiled it would have been covered under the water in the pan and they would not have seen it but its correction is that they should see it like this when it is being burnt in the fire since its odor then spreads far and wide 728 moreover its head bent to its legs so that they should not say that it was some animal or other thing but that they should recognize it as their idol moreover it was not to be eaten out of lust but on a full stomach by way of disgrace and contempt moreover neither shall you break a bone of it Shemot 1246 but they should see its bones cast into the marketplace and be unable to rescue it for this reason it is written upon their Elohim also Hashem executed judgments Bar 334 that is many judgments moreover and your staff in your hand Shemot 1211 but not a sword spear nor any other instrument of war in order to demonstrate that you are not afraid of them 729 Rabbi Yehuda said we have already learned that the Egyptians worshipped the constellation of Aries which is why they worshipped the Lamb Rabbi Yossi said if that is so they should have worshipped a ram a baby ram rather than a lamb he answered him they worshipped them all but the constellation of Aries ascends and descends sometimes appearing as a ram and at others like a large lamb for which reason they worshipped them all he said to him what I have heard is that every large animal was an idol for them which is why the Holy One blessed be he killed all the firstborn of the cattle and we have already learned that these were the grades on high namely upper spiritual forces of impurity which are so called firstborn of cattle and that was why they worshipped them 730 Rabbi Lazar said it is written you shall eat nothing leavened head Mahmetz at Shemot 1220 and it is written no leavened bread shall be eaten head Shemot 133 what is it? Difference between Mahmetzet and Shamets, the latter is masculine while the former is feminine. Rabbi Shimon said, Elazer, my son, in the former case it is written, You shall eat nothing, while in the latter case it is written, No shall be eaten. Why in the latter case does it not say, You shall eat no leavened bread? He answers that with the female who much more corrupts her ways, the statement is by way of warning, You shall eat nothing, but in the case of the male of the clipot who is more inclined to grasp the thread of purity than the female, the statement is by way of request, Na shall be eaten, which is not the language of warning or command. This is why it is written, In the one case, Na shall be eaten, and in the other case, You shall eat nothing. 731 He said to him, But father, it is also written, You shall eat no leavened bread with it. Devarim 163, namely the language of warning is also used for Shamets, which is the male of the clipot. He replied in honor of the sacrifice. Scripture uses many extra words and therefore says you shall eat no leavened bread with it but initially it was said about Shabbat no leavened bread shall be eaten which is the language of request but subsequently about Mahmet said a warning is used you shall eat nothing for the female of the clipot is the most hardened of the two of them of the male and female of the clipot what is the reason for Mahmet said being so called it is because there is a smell of death there Shabbat alludes to the male and has therefore no allusion to death but Mahmet said is female and it is written her feet go down to death Mishle 55 thus the first and last letters of the word Mahmet said are M-E-M and Toph that spell death had met M-E-M Toph thus she the female greets anyone who eats leavened bread on Passover with death and it should be known that he dies in this world and in the world to come as it is written even that soul shall be cut off Shemot 1219 732 why is it called Matzah it is as we have learned Shade, which is interpreted as meaning may he who she said to his world enough have died say to our troubles enough namely may he chase away from us the judgments and troubles Matzah is likewise for its abuse and subjugates namely it chases away the evil ones of all sides and makes a quarrel with them just as the name Shade of the Mazusa chases away the evil spirits and demons that are at the gate so too Matzah chases them away from all the dwellings of holiness and makes a quarrel and a fight with them as it is written Masa and Mevashemot 177 and therefore the name is written as Matzah he asks but Masa is spelled with the same and not with the Zadik he answers that the Aramaic translation of Masa is Matzah hence Matzah is spelled with Zadik the faithful shepherd talks about the ten plagues and about God's intention to punish all the rulers of Egypt because they misled mankind and made themselves divine he examines the reason why unleavened bread was to be eaten for seven days and he brings in the factors of the seven Sfirot and the seven planets and the seven blessings are A.I. Mahim to the faithful shepherd 733 the faithful shepherd said just as the tongue is a rod over all members of the household for he chastises them with his tongue which is the same for them as though he has chastised them with a rod and as the tongue is the secret of the letter Bob which is Z.E.I.R.N. and that is called the Y.U.D.H. Bob and is a rod in which are ten letters for the Y.U.D.H. Bob when spelled out fully with Aleph has ten letters Y.U.D. Bob Dalit Aleph Bob Aleph Bob Aleph and with it the Holy One blessed be he smote them with ten plagues through him and since all the plagues were from the side of the two Hays of the Y.U.D.H. Bob therefore Rabbi Akiva says how do we know that each plague that the Holy One blessed be he brought down on the Egyptians in Egypt consisted of five plagues we should deduce from this that in the letter a whose numerical value is 5 times the letter Yet whose numerical value is 10 gives 50 plagues and A times 50 is 250 which is why at the sea they were smitten with 250 plagues 734 Joseph said the best of the land of Egypt which is Ramses and this is the land that they set aside for their idol to pasture into its heart's content and all the Egyptians considered those who tend their idols as themselves idols and this is why
brought it out for judgments before the eyes of all Egypt to demonstrate that their deity is at Yisrael's disposal to enact judgment on it. 736 Therefore is it written, eat not of it raw nor boiled at all in water but roast with fire its head with its legs and with its entrails. Shemot 129 So that it should be judged in the roasting fire and he commanded that its bones be cast with contempt into the marketplace. Wherefore is it written, neither shall you break a bone of it of 46 and he commanded that on the fourth day after it had been bound for three days judgment be enacted upon it and this was harder for them than all the plagues with which the Holy One blessed be he smote them through the faithful shepherd furthermore he commanded that it not be eaten with appetite but with a full stomach and immediately on their seeing its bones in the marketplace and being unable to rescue it this was the most difficult thing for them furthermore it is said about them and your staff in your hand of it eleven to subdue all the idols of Egypt under their hands and since their Elohim are the firstborn of the chieftains it is written Hashem smote all the firstborn of it twenty nine seven hundred and thirty seven and after all this it is written no leavened bread had shamats shall be eaten Shemot one hundred and thirty three seven days you shall you eat unleavened bread had matzoed with it the bread of affliction devarim one hundred and sixty three and it is written you shall eat nothing leavened had mockmets at Shemot one thousand two hundred and twenty said the faithful shepherd why did he command not to eat leavened bread for seven days but to eat on them unleavened bread had matzah and why in one case is it written not shall be eaten while in the other case it is written you shall eat nothing and he answers there are seven planets namely Saturn Jupiter Mars Sun Venus Mercury and Moon and these are the secret of Chesed Burit Tiferet Netzach Hadjizet and Malchut that are in the vessels of the rear of Malchut and they are from the side of good and evil for the light that is within his matzah while the clipper that is on the outside is chamats and the chamats is masculine while machmets and is feminine and they are male and female of that same clipper that is on the outside and about the male of the clipper which is not that grave it is said not shall be eaten but about the female of the clipper which is a serious matter it is said you shall eat nothing 738 the matzah that is within the seven above mentioned planets is guarded from the clip on which are end. The seven maidens who were chosen to be given her out of the king's house Esther 29 namely the vessels of the rear of Malchut of Atzalut in which Chachma is coated at the time of greatness of Malchut and about them it is said and you shall observe guard the commandment of unleavened bread Shemot 1217 Matzah is guarded from the clipot for her husband who is Bob namely Zeir Anpin which is the secret of the Bob of the Yud Hey Bob Hey and Matzah Mem Zedek Hey with it the Bob becomes Mitzvah A precept Mem Zedek Bob Hey 739 and he who guards it for the Yud Hey that are hidden in the Mem Zedek of Matzah for in the Atbash alphabet where the final letter Toph is substituted for the first letter Aleph and the penultimate letter Shin for the second letter Bet Yud is Mem Hey Zedek as the Mem of Matzah is replaced by Yud and the Zedek of Matzah is replaced by Hey this therefore being the secret of the Yud Hey hidden in the Mem Zedek of Matzah and the Holy One blessed be He Commanded that Malchut be blessed with seven blessings on the eve of Passover, namely its seven maidens, namely the seven vessels, Chesed, Burit, Tifer, Abnet, Sash, Hadjizet, and Malchut of Atzala from the aspect of the rear as above, which are called Saturn, Jupiter, Mars, Sun, Venus, Mercury, and Moon, and he commanded that the clipot which are Shamit's lit leavened bread and Mahmet's lit anything leavened be removed from them, for they are dark clouds that cover the lights of the seven planets as it is said about them, and when they had eaten them up, it could not be known that they had eaten them, but they were still ill favored, namely darkness as at the beginning, Bear she 4121, for the darkness of their clouds is so strong that the lights that are in the seven planets are unable to illuminate to them, and for this reason it could not be known that they had eaten them, and of RAI Mahim, the section 106 rebuked the wild beast of the reed grass. Rabbi Shimon explains the meaning of the wild beast and the reed grass. He says that the reed is the head over all the kingdoms, and in the future God will break it like a reed. 740. Rabbi Shimon opened with rebuke the wild beast of the reed grass, the company of the bulls with the calves of the people's tail. 6831. Rebuke the wild beast refers to that beast onto which he saw held reed grasses, as we have learned. For on the day that Solomon took the daughter of Pharaoh, Gabriel came and stuck a reed in the sea, and the city of Rome was built on it. What is reed? It is the male of that wicked animal onto which he saw held, which has a small part in the unity of holiness, namely the reed that Gabriel stuck into the great sea, and for this reason it rules the world. And about this rule it is written, the reeds and rushes shall wither. Yeshua 196. Reed is the regime and head over all kingdoms, and furthermore, it is for this reason called reed, since in the future the Holy One blessed be he. Is going to break it as a reed 741. Come and see in Egypt that wild beast of the reed grass rules and a number of different types of regime issue from it, and they all are in the secret of Shamit's lit leavened bread. Since the Holy One blessed be he broke it, he removed the Shamit's lit leavened bread and introduced Matzah lit unleavened bread. What did he use to break it with the smallest and thinnest thread? He broke the letter Chet of Shamit's Chet Mem Zedek, thus it is called the wild beast of the reed grass because it is as easy to break as is this reed with what was it broken? It was with a thread small as a hair that he broke the Chet and removed it from its former state and it became Matzah. Therefore it is written, Rebuke the wild beast of the reed grass for the Holy One blessed be he rebuked it and the Chet of Shamit's was broken and became a 742. And in the future the Holy One blessed be he will break that reed as follows, he will break off the foot of the cough. Of Canaan read so high lit behold, hey he will remain as is written, behold, Adonai Elohim will come with might and his arm shall rule for him, behold, his reward is with him and his higher before him. Yeshua 4010 What is the meaning of and his higher? This is the operation on that letter cough and his higher before him, for he will remove the foot of the cough of Kanaka of Nun, hey making it into Hina Harbinger to Zion will I give behold Hephina behold them. Yeshua 4127 Rabbi. Shimon says that he saw his Rome that is attached to the reed that Gabriel stuck in the great sea. The reed is also called leavened bread when the redemption comes, God will break that reed and the temple will be revealed in the world. The faithful shepherd compares the two temples to the pupils of the eye that are clouded. He talks about the two messiahs and looks forward to the day when the rule of Rome will be broken. Rai Mahim the faithful shepherd 743 Rabbi Shimon opened with it. Verse rebuke the wild beast of the reed grass the company of the bulls with the calves of the peoples rebuke the wild beast of the reeds refers to a reed to which is attached Esau which is a large city Rome that Gabriel stuck as a reed in the great sea which is a secret for the reed is attached to Malchut that is called the great sea and on it a large city Rome was built which is a secret of the kingdom of Esau and this is a reed that is called Chamath's lit leavened bread when the redemption comes to Israel he will break that reed as it is written rebuke the wild beast of the reeds the company and the Chamath that is drawn down from the reed is immediately removed from the world with its mockmets and namely its female which is the city Rome and Matzah lit unleavened bread will be revealed in the world for this is the temple the first temple and the second temple which are Bun and Malchut 744 the faithful shepherd said they the first temple and the second Temple correspond to the people of the right eye and the people of the left eye, and they correspond to the large and small Rome paralleling the two clouds that cover the peoples of the right eye and of the left eye. They in turn correspond to leaven and leavened bread, and so long as these are not removed from the world, with not one of them being seen or found, the first temple and the second temple are unable to be revealed in the world. 745 And what healing will there be for the clouds that darken the peoples of the right and left eyes? What will be their remedy? This is the gall of a calf, as it is written, There shall the calf feed, and there shall he lie down. Yeshua 2710 There shall the calf feed refers to Messiah, son of Joseph, about whom it is said, His first ling of his hurt grandeur is his Devarim 3317, which is the secret of the face of ox from the left side, and there shall he lie down refers to Messiah, son of David, one namely Messiah, son of David, removes the large Rome. And the other, namely Messiah, son of Joseph, removes the small Rome, and corresponding to them are Michael and Gabriel, where the Michael corresponds to Messiah, son of David, and the Gabriel to Messi
that there will be four redemptions explanation is made of the associated gematria and of the role of the four beasts of the chariot 747 and the holy luminary said all the souls that came with Jacob were 66 verse 4626 60 is for the awakening of the first messiah and six is for the awakening of the second messiah and this leaves six years to go until the number 72 which is when the redemption will take place namely 1000 years which is the whole of the fifth millennium that is destruction throughout and 272 years into the sixth millennium to establish there in the verse six years you shall sow your field and six years you shall prune your vineyard and gather in its fruit vi cross 253 namely twice six after one millennium and 60 years is the time to gather in its fruit namely the gathering of the exiles for Israel is called fruit as it is said Israel is holy to Hashem the first fruits of his increase Yermaya 23 748 he asks if it is so that the redemption is to be in the 1272nd year what is the intent of the verse sing Hebron equals 256 with gladness for Jacob Yermaya 316 which would seem to imply that the redemption will be in the 1256th year he answers that there are to be four redemptions corresponding to the four cups of wine at Passover and they are the secret of Chakma and Bindi and Malchut since Israel is scattered into the four directions of the world which are the secret of Chakma and Bindi and Malchut and those who are among the nations that are far away will be redeemed early in the 1256th year the next group will be redeemed in the 1260th year the third group in the 1266th year and the fourth group in the year 1272nd year 749 and these redemptions will be with the four living creatures of the chariot lion ox eagle and man in the name of the yud that rides on them as it is written that you ride upon your horses your chariots of Salvation Shabbat 38 opposite them will awaken below four standards and twelve tribes in the secret of the three Yud Hebab Hayes Hashem reigns Hashem reigns Hashem will reign forever and ever there are here twelve letters corresponding to the twelve tribes and the twelve faces of the three patriarchs namely the three columns of Chesed Bura and Tiferet about whom it has been said the patriarchs are the chariot for the four living creatures are in the chariot the face of lion ox eagle and man and each has the three columns Chesed Bura and Tiferet making twelve faces and these ten tribes allude to a thousand years while the other two tribes allude to two hundred years and from the twelve letters of the three Yud Hebab Hayes are suspended the seventy two names for these twelve letters are to be found in each sphere of Chesed Bura Tiferet Net Sash and Yezid of Zeir and twelve multiplied by six are seventy two and these seventy two are the years after one thousand and two hundred years and from this is the illusion that the redemption will come after 1272 years as above and it should be understood that all the apocalyptic dates mentioned in the Zohar imply that that is a favorable time for Israel to repent and that their redemption is dependent on their repentance 750 and they the 72 names allot 24 to each of the three holy living creatures Chesed Bure Tiferet which is to say as follows if one divides the 72 names between the six Sfirat Chesed Bure Tiferet Net Sashad and yes, there will be 12 in each sphere as above but if one divides the 72 between the three Sfirat Chesed Bure and Tiferet only there will be 24 in each sphere for 3x24 equals 72 and the secret of 24 is and one called to the other and said Yeshua 63 they being three groups of angels each consisting of 24 forms where the first group says holy and the second group says holy and the third group says holy and all of this is an illumination of the 72 names for the three groups together come to 72 the left immediately awakens with 42 letters namely the 42 letter name that executes judgment on Amalek section 108 of birds nest the section talks about the sages of the Torah the sages of the mission the people of Israel priests and Kabbalists we hear that during the exile prayer was decreed instead of sacrifices 751 if a bird's nest chance to be before you in the way to Barum 226 in the way refers to the sages of the Bible in any tree to the sages of the mission who are as young birds nestling in the branches of the tree and there are those who say that in any tree refers to Israel about whom it is said for as the days of a tree shall the days of my people be Yeshua 6522 or that on the ground refers to the sages of the Torah about whom it is said sleep on the ground and live a life of suffering while you toil in the Torah young ones if it refers to young priests and exhibit are those whom the Holy One Blessed be he nourishes from buffalo's horns to louse's eggs that is to say including everything from the smallest to the largest and the mother sitting upon the young ibid is the time when sacrifices used to be offered what is written then you shall not take the mother bird together with the young ibid that is to say do not break up the union of the mother who is the Sheshanah with the young who are Israel 752 after the destruction of the temple and the annulment of the sacrifices. What is written but you shall surely let the mother go to Barum 227 where the mother is the Sheshanah and the young have been exiled namely and take the young to you ibid for the Kabbalists are called young for they are from the side of the letter Allah that is inserted in the spelling of the letter Bob filled out namely Bob Allah Bob of the Yud Hey Bob Hey which is a long world for this letter Allah that is inserted in the filled out Bob Allah Bob is drawn down from Bino which is the Secret of the world to come which is a world that is throughout long about which it is said that it may be well with you and that you may prolong your days in the world that is altogether long 753 and in the exile prayer was decreed instead of sacrifices and Israel raised their voices with the sound of the songs the recital of the SH Ma which ascends to the central column that is on high namely Zeir and for the mother and the daughter which are Bina and Malchut are in exile for. Inasmuch as Malchut is composed of Bina to that extent Bina is also in exile and immediately on Zeir and descent he is joined with the daughter which is Malchut that is called Dimhand in order to connect the Bob which is Zeir and with the Hay which is Malchut in six Sfirat for the recital of the SH Ma is the drawing down of the six intermediate Sfirat of greatness to Zeir and and Malchut immediately blessed be the name of the glory of his kingdom forever and ever is whispered to. Chakma for it is the secret of the unity of Malchut to which the emanation is then drawn down from Chakma section 109 the four passages in the Tefillin and the recital of SHMA after a description of the four sections of the Tefillin we hear that the prayer of the SHMA is the crown on the head of Zir Anpin because Sandalphone ties all the prayers together and makes them into a crown the assertion is made that the Sheshanah is God's tabernacle his table his candelabra his ark and his altar 754 the numerical value of one Hebesh had the final word of the first line of the SHMA Israel together with the numerical value of glory had Kabbat from blessed be the glory of the name of his kingdom forever and ever and up to MEM of Chakma Chet CAF MEM for Chakma is brought down to IMA and immediately on the descent of Chakma to IMA the people bind it with the knot of the head Tefillin for the knot of the head Tefillin is the secret of Leo which is the secret of dry land who is the one to receive from descending Chakma in the secret of the verse and you shall see my back Shema 3323 that alludes to the knot of the head Tefillin and for this reason the four sections of the Tefillin are sanctified to me Shema 131 to 10 which is Chakma and it shall be when Hashem shall bring you into the land Shema 1311 to 16 which is by the hero Yisrael Devarim 64 to 9 which is Tiferet consisting of six Tiferet in the six words of the SH Mahiro Yisrael Hashem our Elohim Hashem is one and it shall come to pass if you hearken to Devarim 1113 to 21 which is Malchut that is called faint hand the prayer is Keter the crown namely a crown on the head of Zeir and in the secret of the verse there is none holy as Hashem Ishmuel 22 where the letter CAF meaning is alludes to Keter because Sandalphone ties all the prayers together and makes them into a crown 755 at that time the table has to be prepared for the king's banquet and the tabernacle and candelabra and the ark and the altar and all sorts of utensils of the king's house have to be arranged and we do not refer to just any table that is not made by the holy one blessed be he for we are referring to none other than the table which is made by the holy one blessed be he which is his Sheshanah and the Sheshanah is Zeir and Pen's tabernacle his table his candelabra his ark his altar for she the Sheshanah consists of all the utensils of the upper king who is Zeir and Pen. Section 110 The Shubred which is the twelve faces we learned about the sacrifices that are made by fire and about the correspondence between the Shubred and the
They are called the shoe bread. Let the bread of the countenances there being twelve countenances that are alluded to in the three Yudhe Bab Hayes Hashem bless you Hashem make his face to shine Hashem lift up his countenance Bimit bar 624 to 26 and there are thus twelve that correspond to the twelve countenances of three holy living creatures 757 what is the bread of these twelve countenances it is the bread of man which is the secret of the Yudhe Bab Hay fully spelled with A-L-E-P-H's. Thus Yudhe Bab Dalat Hay Alat Bab Alat Bab Hay Alat which is the numerical equivalent of man Hay Adam equals 45 and they are twelve in the secret of the three Yudhe Hay Bab Hayes which mean the three columns in each of which is one Yudhe Hay Bab Hay making a total of twelve letters as above and he has bread in four faces which are the four letters of the Yudhe Bab Hay that include twelve faces as above this bread of the king's table is clean fine flour that contains no chaff or straw which are Judgment 758 is oven in which he bakes the bread is the shechinah for the bread cooks and is completed there and this is why one should not start cutting the bread other than at the point where its cooking was completed namely it is similar to the perfection of a fruit that has reached full ripeness and this is Adonai which is malchut which is completion and perfection of the Yudhe Bab Hay which is Zeir Anpin which is the shoe bread lit bread of the faces namely the twelve countenances mentioned above which are in Zeir Anpin Adonai is Zeir Anpin's oven and completes him and it is called the furnace had kitchen because it is subdued had kevisha under its husband and for her it is it said and Mount Sinai smoked in every part because Hashem descended upon it in fire and the smoke thereof ascended like the smoke of the furnace Shemot 1918 furnace here does not mean as an ordinary furnace but rather that in which he applies had his mercies to his people when they pray and present their supplications and so is it said may your mercy suppress have you issue your anger and it was said of it what do you have to do with the secrets of the merciful one for the secrets of the holy one blessed be here called gifts he lit secrets of the merciful one 759 and in the bread of the torah there is clean fine flour which the king gives to those about whom it is said all israel are the children of kings namely he gives it to those who are called children for it is the food of the righteous and there is also bread of the torah that is waste matter and which is given to the servants and handmaids of the king's house who attend to the horses and riders of the king's house and for this reason it is said about the queen she rises also while it is yet night and gives food to her household and a portion to her maidens michelay 3115 who are the sages of the mission and this is why it is said about the food of the king and the tent part of it F a flower bimit bar 285 fine flower certainly while the tenth part of an EFAH is the yet whose numerical value is ten of Adonai which is certainly tenth and it follows that this fine flower is the food of the king as above 760 the faithful shepherd said rise up holy luminary you and Rabbi Lazar your son together with Rabbi Abba Rabbi Yehuda Rabbi Yusi Rabbi Shia and Rabbi Yudah to prepare a gift for the king the holy one blessed be he to make a sacrifice of all the limbs which are Yisrael so that they should be sacrificial offerings to the holy one blessed be he and those who are called the Neshama of Yisrael are offered to the limbs of the holy Shechina namely to the Sfirat of Malchud which is called fire of the most high and this fire is attached to the pieces of wood that are called the wood habets of the burnt offering Bereshit 226 namely the tree habets of life which is Zeir and the tree habets of knowledge of good and evil which is Malchud trees. Of holiness are the name given to the sages of Torah for the Torah is attached to them as it is said is not my word like a fire says Hashem your Mayah 2329 section 111 my offering the provision of my sacrifices made by fire we are told that Israel offers the Torah to God and the Torah is his bread and his wine and his meat the Torah is holy flesh that descends from heaven this explains the meaning of my offering the provision of my sacrifices made by fire 761 it is said about Malchud a burnt offering to Hashem Bimidbar 2811 an offering to Hashem Vayikra 279 a sacrifice made by fire to Hashem Bimidbar 286 and it is said my offering the provision of my sacrifices made by fire but two and has it not already been written sacrifices must be offered to none other than Hashem what therefore is the meaning of my offering the provision of my sacrifices made by also to fire he answers one who offers a gift does so by custom for the king and it king distributes it to whomever he pleases Israel likewise offers the Torah which is Malchud to the Holy One blessed be he that is his bread and his wine and his meat and it is said about it about the Torah which is Malchud bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh Bereshit 223 and this is holy flesh about which the teachers of the academy taught we are talking about flesh that descends from heaven section 112 fine flour average flour and waste matter Moses says. That God gives his finest food to those he loves who are on the side of the tree of life he gives his average food to the angels or sages of Misha and he gives the waste food to the evil spirits and demons 762 what does the holy one blessed be he do with this gift namely with the illumination of the mating made by the sacrifice as above he is like a king who eats at his own table and every type is served at the table fine flour medium flour and waste matter and he distributes from his table to all those sitting at the banquet through his appointees to each one as befits him he commands that bread made out of fine flour that the king eats be given to those he loves who are near to him as it is written my offering the provision of my sacrifices made by fire for a sweet savor to me Bimidbar 282 namely the offerings of Hashem made by fire and his dues shall be eaten. 181 and this food is from the side of the tree of life and is therefore clean fine flour without any Waste matter at all but from the side of the tree of knowledge of good and evil in which there is waste matter which is the average flower he commanded to be given to the angels while the waste matter he gives to the evil spirits and demons who serve the horses and riders of the king 763 and here too the medium flower is given to the king's horsemen namely the sages of Mishnah who are as the angels and their servants are the Jewish spirits have shed, Shindalit marked by the sign of Shadeh. For they are written with the letters Shindalit of Shadeh Shindalit Yud and there are also evil spirits and demons from the side of impurity that are called idol worshipping spirit for the Elohim has made the one as well as the other Kahilat 714 764 and for this reason the sages of the Mishnah said there are three kinds of them of the spirits of the Jews one kind are like ministering angels the second kind are like human beings and the third kind are like animals and some of them are Scholars in the written law and the oral law and he who is called Joseph the spirit is so called because he was sired by a spirit and it was not for nothing that the sages of the mission said if the rabbi is similar to an angel of hosts let them seek Torah from his mouth for the sages of the mission are likened to the angels and as Methus the king of the spirits and all his family are it has been taught Jewish spirits for they have submitted to the Torah and the names of the Torah 765 and because the sons of Aaron arranged their sacrifices this is why they were punished for even though all the sacrifices are offered to the king the king distributes them to each one as befits him and takes for himself what befits him and of R.A.I. Mahim the section 113 Shavuot we learned that the Torah depends on the river issuing forth from Eden 766 also on the day of the first fruits when you bring a new meal offering to Hashem Bimidbar 2826 Rabbi Abba said it is written the day of the first fruits but what does day refer to he answers that this is a river issuing forth from Eden namely Zeir Anpin who is a day of those upper first fruits namely Yudhi Abba and Ima who are called first fruits and upon it the Torah depends namely Zeir Anpin and he brings forth all the secrets of the Torah and because he is the tree of life the fruit of the tree has to be brought Moses says that Israel is the first fruits for God of all the nations in the world he tells us that Bob is the river that comes out of Eden and that when the river comes out then all the secrets of the Torah also come out Moses talks about the six fire that are called the primordial years of the creation of the world because the six fire preceded the world and all the creatures they are called first fruits man is called the firstborn son after the name of the sign of the covenant that is yet lastly the faithful shepherd tells us that the Torah is called glory and anyone who Study story is called the King R.A.I. Mahim the Faithful Shepherd 767 also on the day of the first fruits when you bring a new meal offering to Hashem Rabbi Abba said the day of the first fruits refers to the upper first fruits of the Torah namely Abba and I.M.A. as it is written the choicest first fruits of your land you shall bring
It is also said about them all that devour him shall be held guilty evil shall come upon them. Yermeyah 23 768 and so too Bob which is Zeir and ben, that includes six Farah and which is the son of Yudhe which are Abba and Iyame that are called first fruits is called the first fruit and all the branches that come out from it and in which there are heads of levels which contain the upper three Farah that are termed head are called first fruits. Bob is a river of those upper first fruits. Which is Zeir and ben, and this is the river that comes out of Eden which is why Yudhe and it is on this that the Torah is dependent and when it comes out and is revealed then all secrets of the Torah come out because it is both the tree of life and the Torah as it is written she is a tree of life to those who lay hold on her. Mishle 318 and the precepts of Zeir and ben, who is the Torah are like the buds of the fruit of the tree that have to be brought to the house of Hashem 769 the faithful. Shepherd said you might ask why are the first fruits that are called a new meal offering Gibbet bar 2826 to be found on the tree from six months to six months that is during the six months of the winter and autumn they are on the tree as a fetus in its mother's womb and from when they start growing until they are fully ripe another six months pass what is the reason for this taking six months and again about man it is said for is the tree of the field of man Devarim 2019 what is the reason for it's having a nine or seven month gestation period and it is also said about cattle then it shall be seven days under its dam and from the eighth day and thenceforth it shall be accepted for an offering made by fire to Hashem Vayikra 2227 namely to be offered as a sacrifice before Hashem and what is the reason for the seven days being required furthermore why are the Svirot in which are the name of the Yudhe Vahe and all his appellations called by the names of the living creatures namely Lion, ox, eagle, and man 770 answers. However, a new meal offering is to be understood by way of mystery, and its meaning is the Sheshanah from six months to six months that the fruits are gestating on the tree refers to the six fire, Chisid, Bira, Tiferet, Netzach, and Yezid, which are called the primordial years of the creation of the world, which are the secret of the six thousand years that the world has been in existence, and they are called years from the aspect of upper Iyame, which is Binawa, from the aspect of lower Iyame, which is Malchut, they are called months, and because these six fire preceded the world and all the creatures, they are called first fruits, and this is the secret why the fruit of the tree are the first fruits of the six months from the time they start growing until they are fully ripe, namely corresponding to Chisid, Bira, Tiferet, Netzach, and Yezid, from the aspect of Malchut 771, and the Sheshanah, which is a new meal offering, is from the Aspect of the living creature about whom it is said, as for the likeness of their faces, they had the face of a man, Yashiskal 110, that is the nine months of gestation for the numerical value of man, Habadim is nine in the small calculation of Enoch, for in the secret of the small number which is Metatron, who is called Enoch, the value of the letters is considered only as a number of units such that the letter MEM will be only four, and so two Toph will be only four, and so on, so that the numerical value of Adam is nine, and this is the secret of man who is born after nine months of gestation, and man who is born is the tenth to the man is thereby included in all tenths, Firat, and man is called the firstborn son after the name of the sign of the covenant, which is Yazid, which is Yud, named after the first drop drawn out of him, seed shot as an arrow from which man is born, and every drop is called Yud, because it includes Yud, Firat, and Yazid is Bob, numerical value of six, and Yazid. Drop being Yud that rises over Bob which is Yezid just as the fruit rises over the branch of the tree and because there are three upper Svirot which is the secret of first fruits in the tenth Svirot man is therefore called the firstborn son 772 and although there are many branches on the tree on which are a number of figs those that ripen first at the beginning are called first fruits and these are the heads of all of them and on a parallel with them it is said lift up your heads O you. Gates to 247 the meaning of which is as lift up your eyes on high and behold who has created these Yeshayah 4026 and also take the sum lift the head of all the congregation of the children of Israel Gimid bar 12 773 lift up your heads O you gates gates here are the fifty gates of Bino which are the heavenly academy and be lifted up you everlasting doors refers to the doors of the earthly academy which is Malchut for everyone who engages in the Torah is at the end. Lift it as it is written if you have done foolishly in lifting yourself up Mishle 3032 and the sages of the Mishnah taught whoever abases himself acts foolishly for words of the Torah will in the end be exalted and this is the meaning of and the king of glory shall come in Tehillim 247 for there is no glory apart from the Torah 774 it follows that whoever learns Torah which is called glory is himself called a king for it is written and the king of glory shall come in Tehillim 247 and it should not be said that he is a king in the next world and no more than that for he is a king in both the worlds in the image of his master and this is why the verse comes twice who is this king of glory of Adate and who is this king of glory of Adate which teaches that the reference is to both the worlds this world and the world to come the verse lift up your heads O you gates appears twice what is the meaning of your heads the answer to this is that on the one occasion they refer to the living creatures of the heavenly chariot which is above the chest of Zeir and Ben and on the other occasion they refer to the living creatures of the lower chariot that are in Malchut and of R.A.I. Mahin Rabbi Shimon explains the meaning of lift up your heads O you gates we learn that God sanctifies all the festivals and makes sure that all the hosts of heaven become sanctified along with the children of Israel in one unity 775 Rabbi Shimon unraveled the verse saying lift up your heads O you gates this verse has been taught and we have learned it lift up your heads O you gates these are the upper gates the gates of upper understanding and they are 50 in number your heads what heads does this refer to the answer is that each one namely each gate has a head to be unclothed and enter into one another and to be incorporated within each other 776 I found in the book of Enoch lift up your heads O you gates these are the gates that are below the patriarchs. Namely below Chesed, Bura, and Tiferet, which are called patriarchs, and they are the three last Svirot, namely Netzach, and Yezid, your heads are the heads of the thousand of Israel, and they are the upper patriarchs, namely Chesed, Bura, and Tiferet, which at the time of greatness become Shachma, and Dad, and they are the heads of those gates, and for the sake of these Netzach, and Yezid, which are the Ophanim that encompass and bear them on their shoulders, it is said, lift up your heads, O gates, lift up whom your heads, for they Chesed, Bura, and Tiferet are heads over you, and have control over you, and be lifted up you everlasting doors, Tehillim 247, these are the matriarchs, and they are four who are below, namely Chesed, Bura, Tiferet, and Malchut, that are in Malchut, where Sarah is Chesed, Rivka is Bura, Leah is Tiferet, and Rachel is Malchut, 777, and the king of glory shall come, and this is the supreme king over all, namely Zeir, and which includes Chesed, Bura, and Tiferet and also Netzach and Yezid for he is king of that same glory because he gives light to the moon which is Malchut that is called glory and who is this it is Hashem Seviyah to Ben namely Zeir and Ben who is so called shall come of it seven he asks to what place he shall come and he answers to bring the Torah which is Zeir and Ben in the ark which is Malchut in one union as is fitting for after the former has entered his place namely after Zeir and Ben has made it with Malchut which is his place it is then considered that the Torah which is an aspect of Zeir and Ben has entered the ark which is an aspect of Malchut and they have become joined together in one union the upper Torah which is an aspect of Zeir and Ben with the oral Torah which is an aspect of Malchut for they join together in order to interpret hidden matters namely to reveal the secrets of the Torah to the righteous 778 he asks when I ask this unity made and he answers about this it is written also on the day of it. First fruits when you bring a new meal offering to Hashem in your feast of weeks Gimit bar 2826 and the meaning of IT is according to your reckoning for whenever Israel makes calculations regarding the new moons and festivals the Holy One blessed be he sets an ark within the heavens namely one that is like the lectern ark of the reader and passes a proclamation my sons on earth have sanctified the month or have sanctified the festival sanctify yourselves all of you in heaven and he sees to it that all the hosts of the heavens become sanctified as one with the holy people and they all keep one observance at the same time on the same day that Israel determined on earth therefore IT is written in your weeks namely according to your reckoning of these seven weeks
Count seven weeks drawing down seven Tvarot, namely Malchut also and having drawn down Malchut also we draw down Shisit Vira Tifarat Net Sachot and Yezit to include them in Malchut section 115 Yitrael know how to hunt good game Rabbi Hamdan Asaba continues the analogy and tells how Malchut as though a chick is coaxed out from under the mother bina with soft little prayers and Malchut stays with Yitrael and the other Tvarot like more small birds fly out to Yitrael. As well we learn that one cannot pursue the mother bina for she is inconceivable 780 Rabbi Hamdan Asaba said on that day Yitrael takes only five sons which are the five books of the Torah namely Shisit Vira Tifarat Net Sachot and Hot of Zeir Anpin which are the five parts of Zeir Anpin who is called Torah and should you object saying that the Tvarot are six in number for there is also Yezit he answers the truth really is that there are seven together with a certain bird which is Malchut and they are thus to be found between the wings of mother which is Bina and the reason why he thought initially that there were only five grades Jesus Vira Tifarat Net Sach and Hot is that there are mainly only five main grades with Yezit and Malchut being two components of those five grades and containing nothing new and Yisrael knows how to hunt well for good and valuable game what do they do they draw out that bird which is Malchut from under the wings of mother with soft little sounds from the mouth that they whisper to her one after the other namely with many prayers 781 and that bird sensing those whispers and the sounds that they voice to her under their breath and even though she is under the wings of mother she raises her head and looks out at the whispering voices and flies out to them emerging from under the wings of mother so Yisrael takes her and holds her whispering to her and tying her with a knot so that she will not fly off and leave Yisrael immediately catches. Her in this knot and the bird wants to fly off and leave them but is unable to do so 782 and while she is still bound in the hands of Yisrael they whisper their sounds and she chirps with them and flies up and down and all those sons who are under the wings of their mother namely she said Vira Tifarat Net Sachot and Yezid of Zeir and when they hear that chirping of their sister Malchut and the whisper of that sound from Yisrael they immediately emerge from under the wings of their mother and fly towards that bird which is Malchut and Yisrael takes them and unites with them and had it not been for that bird with which they were attached initially they she said Vira Tifarat Net Sachot and Yezid would never have flown to them and they would not have been able to unite with them 783 how does one catch this holy bird this is done by preparing before her valuable food with rejoicing and all sorts of delights and attending the synagogue and the schoolhouse and chirping at her in the voice of whispers as is fitting and she the bird who is hiding under the wings of mother raises her head and looks at the prepared tables with the chirping which is for her namely the prayers as is fitting and she emerges from under the wings of mother and flies to them as we have learned and all those sons namely she said Vira Tiferet Net Sachot and Yezid of Zeir and hold on to her 784 and they send the one who is sitting over them namely mother which is Bina which is sitting over she said Vira Tiferet Net Sachot Yezid and Malchut and she goes off because from the seventh heaven which is she said and above namely the upper three Sfirot do not expound what is hidden from you therefore send her away that is the mother which is Bina which is one of the upper three Sfirot for you will not be able to catch her about the scripture says you shall surely let the mother go and take the young to you to 227 the meaning of which is that you should not try to Pursue Bina for she is not conceivable but the young namely she said Vira Tiferet Net Sachot Yezid and Malchut which are conceivable you may take to you 785 you shall have a holy gathering lit calling Gibbet Bar 2826 this is the calling and chirping namely the prayers that we make for that holy bird which is Malchut at the beginning subsequently since the remaining days she said Vira Tiferet Net Sachot and Yezid hold on to her they are called holy callings in the plural for this. Bird is called holy as it is written for it she is holy to you Shema 3114 which is said about Malchut and because she is holy she calls to all of them she said Vira Tiferet Net Sachot and Yezid and they come to her which is why they are called holy calling 786 and she calls to she said Vira Tiferet Net Sachot and Yezid and Yisrael chirps along with her and they too call and they therefore come to them and unite with them this is why it is written these are the feasts of Hashem. Holy gatherings callings which you shall proclaim call Vayikra 234 and they are called holy callings after their chirping and after that holy bird which I is holy that calls them section 116 of bird's nest the faithful shepherd says that the bird is the Shechinah the nest is the temple and the chicks are Yisrael when Yisrael sinned and the temple was destroyed the Shechinah went away we are told about the six orders of the mission of the six words of the SHMA Yisrael the sages of the Bible and the Kabbalists and in all these Moses emphasizes the role and importance of prayer and intention RAI Mahim the faithful shepherd 787 the faithful shepherd said how obscure these matters are for one who does not know them and how transparent for one who does certainly that bird is the Shechinah and its nest is the temple where the Shechinah rested and Yisrael are the young ones upon whom the mother which is the Shechinah sits scripture says and the mother Bird sitting upon the young or upon the eggs. Devarim 226. This refers to the sages of the Mishnah who fly in her precepts, or upon the eggs refers to the sages of the Bible. 788. But when Yisrael sinned and the temple was destroyed, what is written? But you shall surely let the mother go. If it seven being the Sheshana, this is as it is written, and for your transgressions was your mother sent away. Shea 501. And about the sages of the six orders of the Mishnah, it is written, and take the young to you. Devarim 227. These are the six orders from the side of the six sons. Jesus, Bura, Tiferet, Netzach, Hot, and Yezid, which are under upper mother, which is Bina, and which are alluded to in the six words of the SH Ma Yisrael, or in the six orders of the Mishnah. It is all the same whether a man offers much or little, if only he directs his mind towards heaven, namely to unite Malchut with Zeir and who is called heaven, and binds it with the knot of the Tefilin on the head and on the arm. 789 with what do the sons take the above mentioned six extremities of greatness that is with many whistles of the sounds of the SH Mal Yisrael for the six extremities of greatness are drawn down in the unity of the recital of the SH Mal Yisrael as above and afterwards they secretly whisper the silent prayer namely the Amid prayer to the mother which is Bina in order to draw down the upper three grades of greatness and to the daughter which is Malchut and these are hey hey for mother is the first hey of the Yud hey bab hey and the daughter is the last hey and they descend to the bab which is Zeir and with his not which is the yet of the Yud hey bab hey namely Chakma and upper hey which is Bina rest upon the bab which is Zeir and this being the secret of the Tefilin over his head namely the Mokin of the upper three Sfirot and the small hey which is Malchut descends to the yet of the Yud hey bab hey which is the not of the upper hey that is on the head of the bab for this. Is the secret of father which is the Yud of the Yud Hey Bab Hey who established the daughter which is Malchut and this the Bab which is Zeir and is connected with her in the Hey of a faint hand namely the knot of the hand Tefilin and this is in such a way that the Yud of the Yud Hey Bab Hey which is the secret of the knot of the head Tefilin which is the secret of mother on the head of the Bab and is the knot of the hand Tefilin which is Malchut is with the faint hand of Zeir and 790. And for this reason the young ones are from the side of the letter Bab namely the light of Rash which includes the six orders of the Mishnah namely Shisit Vira Tiferet Net Sachot and Yezid or upon the eggs refers to the sages of the Bible which are in the aspect of the light of the Nefesh which is Malchut the final Hey of the Yud Hey Bab Hey and it is said about them that Hey equals five years old one is fit for the study of scripture and this is Malchut which is Hey sons refers to the side. Of the son of Yudhe, namely Zeir Anpin, which has the upper three Sfirot from Yudhe, and these are the Kabbalists about whom it is said, You shall not take the mother bird together with the young Devarim 226, section 117. Moses Bride, we learned that the sages of Kabbalah are also called the sages of the Talmud, and that study is divided into three parts one third study of the Torah, one third study of the Mishnah, and one third study of the Talmud, the faithful shepherd. Explains how it is permitted to interpret the secrets of the Torah by expanding and restricting the meanings of certain words in this way. The sages can piece together the inner meanings just as a tailor pieces together the cloth for a suit. Moses
Amplification and exclusion or diminution and there are also cases where a letter is added as when it is said do not read Malat what, M-E-M-He but Mialat 100, M-E-M Allah he and so it is when we say do not read Shenantum but Shalashtum and we deduce from this a third in the Torah a third in the Mishnah and a third in the Talmud 792 so too and it came to pass on the day that Moses had finished Hatkalo Ebed bar 71 which we interpret as though it were written it. Bride of Hatkalo Moses unless you think that we have this exegesis from them namely from the letters of the alphabet in the word where Kalo is the same as Kalo without themselves adding anything for it is not permitted to add or take away a letter from it nor to substitute one letter for another if this be so then in the Torah it is written with the full spelling Kalo C-A-F lame Vav Tov with the Vav who then gave permission to take away from it namely the Vav and to interpret ITS. Kalat caf lamet top there is here no case of substitution of alphabets e.g. where alaf equals top bet equals shin but rather the vav has been removed from the word and it has been expounded as caf lamet top written without the vav but certain words that are written in the abbreviated spelling are expounded as though written out in full and other words that are written out in full are expounded as though written out in the abbreviated form about these and about all sorts of explanations that can be made to embellish the bride which is the Torah in her ornaments the Holy One blessed be he commanded us to do as they say and to trust them as it is written according to the sentence of the Torah which they shall teach you to bar in 1711 793 the matter may be likened to a tailor who has cut cloth in order to make royal garments and has made many pieces from them those who know the places where those pieces are missing and are familiar with the pieces which remain will be able to make the garments. For the pieces that have been collected together are placed where they are missing and pieces that are too small are added to and this is the true meaning of the verse according to the sentence of the Torah which they shall teach you 794 and you might well ask that if this is so what about the case where one of them occasionally makes a mistake and says I recant he answers before issuing instructions concerning that matter about which there is a difference of opinion the one who poses. The difficulty can say I withdraw for not all those who make the parts of a bride's ornaments know where each piece goes until the ruling is made and prior to when resolutions to the arguments of the halachot legal rulings have been given 795 the candelabrum has seven lights which are the secret of the verse and the seven maidens who were chosen to be given her out of the king's house Esther 29 and they correspond to the three-headed shin and the four-headed shin of the Tef island. Namely to the seven heads of the two shins together and these correspond to the seven blessings of the SH namely in the morning two blessings are said before it and one after and in the evening two blessings are said before and two after and subsequently is written the precept that the high priest at the temple service has to serve with the wings of the precept namely bells and pomegranates which are as the knots and links of the fringes and the plate which is as the tef island from that point. On it is written and you shall make an altar for the burning of incense Shema 301 section 118 and you shall offer a sacrifice made by fire for a burnt offering the faithful shepherd says that all sacrifices for burnt offerings must correspond to the sins committed and he tells us what these are we learn that all sacrifices are not equal and that a distinction must be made between one holiness and another that is lower 796 the faithful shepherd began by Saying it is written and you shall offer a sacrifice made by fire for a burnt offering to Hashem Bimid bar 2819 and it has already been taught that a burnt offering is committed to the flames all of it being burnt by fire and this is why the two expressions an offering made by fire and a burnt offering are placed next to each other and it has also been taught a burnt offering is due only as an expiation for sinful meditation of the heart 797 without doubt the purpose of all the sacrifices is only for the making of atonement with each sacrifice making atonement for man's limbs according to the sin he committed with that limb for drops of marrow namely the sin of wasting seed he brings unleavened cakes for it was not leavened Shema 1239 namely if he discharged initial drops before they acidify in a place that does not belong to him namely without a forbidden woman in whom the drops acidify and regarding those that acidify which is discharged in a place where he should not have namely in a female forbidden to him where the drops become acid have chamats he has to bring leavened bread and thus were the thanksgiving offering some were leavened and others were unleavened 798 bullocks are from the side of judgment likewise sheep and rams and he goats and goats are all from the side of judgment because they are the face of ox as it is said the face of an ox on the left side yashiskal 110 which is that of judgment all of them were slaughtered on the north side and their blood was received in a vessel of ministry on the north side the slaughtering the receipt and tossing of the blood were all on the north side which is the left side in order to sweeten and mitigate the attribute of judgment which comes to the court from the side of bureau the great law court is from the side of bureau where Bina is while the small law court is from the side of malchut and all those who shed blood in fulfillment of the precept are from the side of bureau 799 and the teaching that the burnt offering of every Shabbat Bimidbar 2810 must be offered on that Shabbat and not on any other is because if the day has passed the offering lapses and it cannot be made up on another Shabbat the offering of the sacrifice takes precedence over Shabbat and fire may be kindled on the Shabbat because it is holy fire for the fire that is used for offering all the sacrifices is holy and this holy fire and the holy Shabbat take hold of each other 800 but profane fire may not be combined with the holy namely with the Shabbat which is why he commanded Israel you shall kindle no fire throughout your habitations on the Shabbat day Shema 353 for this would be tantamount to mixing good and bad for on the Shabbat the tree of life is in control and there is no mixture of good and bad in it and secular objects that pertain to purity may not be mixed with the fire of holiness and how much more so may the profane matters of impurity not be mixed with Holiness so too all the sacrifices are called holy flesh Yermea 1115 and all the sacrifices of every type contain secular things of purity and they contain holiness and the holy of holies 801 and the secret of the matter is that a distinction is to be made between one holiness and another as it is written and the veil shall be for you as a division between the holy place and the holy of holies Shema 2633 here too the fires of the offering are not equal for the fire that is higher is more holy than the holy fire below which are called the fire of the holy wood or the fire of the holy flesh and in the holy fire there is a distinction as against ordinary fire that is brought to the altar even though it has been taught that it is a positive precept to bring of the ordinary fire even when there is holy fire on the altar for each has to have its own place 802 Israel is likened to this for Israel as a rule is called kings as it has been taught all Israel are the Sons of kings, but when they entered the temple, each one went to his own place, the priests by themselves, the Levites by themselves, and Israel by themselves. Similarly, with regard to the sacrifices, although about each one it is written as sacrifice to Hashem, they are not equal, for he, the Holy One, blessed be he, distributes everything each as is fitting to him, and the secret of the matter can be learned from the fruits of the festival that Israel used to offer before Hashem, and he distributed them for the sustenance of the seventy nations. Section 119. Also, on the day of the first fruits, Rabbi Shimon tells Moses that it is through Moses' deeds that the Shechinah is renewed in the prayers of the patriarchs. He goes on to speak about the renewal that takes place during the prayers of the festival of weeks. His exposition includes a discussion of the numerical value of all Hekol, the sea of the Torah, and Malchut, that is the end of all the seas, the numbers. 7 and 50 are emphasized 803 said the holy luminary namely Rabbi Shimon arise O faithful shepherd from your sleep for you and the patriarchs are called those that sleep in the dust for until now you have engaged in the Torah with those who sleep at the mission about whom it is said and on the ground shall you sleep and it is said also on the day of the first fruits when you bring a new meal offering to Hashem Bimidbar 2826 you are the first fruits of the Shechinah and through your deeds the Shechinah is renewed in the prayers of the patriarchs each day for the sages of the mission taught the prayers were ordained corresponding to the patriarchs and to the recital of the SHMA for the faithful shepherd namely Moses said Hero Israel to 64 and it has been taught everyone who recites the SHMA every day it is as if he established but you shall meditate there in day and night Yahashua 18 804 certainly in your prayer and in your recital of the SHMA Shechinah is renewed before the Holy One, blessed be he, and this is why it is said, and you shall present a new meal offering to Hashem, Vayik
Kala, CAF Lamet Hey the letters of which can be read as Kol CAF Lamet Hey having the numerical value of 5 namely 5 Sphira composed of 50 each of them is enclosed within the 50 Chakma which is upper Yud is enclosed within the 50 for Hey times Yud equal 50 where Hey is Bina and Yud is Chakma and there are Yud Hey and Chakma which when multiplied by each other make 50 and there are Yud Hey and Bina and when Yud is multiplied by Hey the result is 50 and this is the numerical value of the word Al Heb Kol as above and the numerical value of the word Si Heb Yam for Bina is called Si whose numerical value amounts to 50 and the reference is to the Si of the Torah where from Bina which is called Si emerges the Torah which is Zeir and its origin is Kita which is infinite the remaining Sphira namely Chisit Burit Tiferet Net Sash Hadiyazit and Malchut are named after its 7 Cs and the numerical value of the word Si is 50 it follows that in each of them there is 50 and Malchut is called the Reed Hepsu C because it is the end Hepsu of all the C's 806 and because each one of the 7 weeks is 50 as above and their meal offering 3 tenth measures for 1 bullet 2 tenth measures for 1 ram humid bar 2828 making altogether 5 tenth measures which are 5 times 10 for each tenth measure is 10 and 5 tenth measures are 50 and on the verse and their meal offering of flour mingled with oil 3 tenth measures for 1 bullet 2 tenth measures for 1 ram a tenth measure for 1 lamb for the 7 lambs the 7 lambs correspond to 7 complete Chabato their BVI cross 2315 and these are 7 Malchutes for Malchut is called Chabot and each one has 6 days with it namely Chisit Burit Tiferet Net Sach Hot and Yizit and they with the day of Chabot come to 50 section 120 Yom Kippur the Zohar tells us that Yom Kippur is from the tree of life where no evil has any part on that day even those people who are under a sentence of judgment are forgiven we hear about the difference between vows and oaths and about the iniquities of Israel that are purified or widened through repentance we learn that on Yom Kippur a shofar raises up a voice for freedom there are three grades of worship on that day thought speech and deed 807 and you shall have on the tenth day of the seventh month which is the month of Tishrei a holy gathering the mid 297 which is the day of atonement which is the tenth which is yet and these are the ten days of repentance and five prayer services were ordained for it in order to join the yet with the hay namely Chakma with Bano what is the meaning of holy gathering it is to differentiate it from other days when secular work is permitted which is why scripture says you shall not do any work of it 808 and those days on which secular work may be done are from the side of the tree of Knowledge of good and evil that turned from a rod into a serpent and from a serpent back into a rod for each person according to his deeds and this Metatron is rod while Samael is serpent but on this day which is the day of atonement that is called holy the tree of life is in control and no devil nor evil spirit joins with it and from its side nor shall evil dwell with you Tehillim 55 but it is throughout good and this is why in it in the tree of life the slaves find rest and go out to freedom and emerge from their chains 809 those over whom there is a verdict a verdict not to be changed under vow or oath it was decreed for this reason that the following shall be recited all vows bonds they shall all of them be released and annulled they shall not be binding nor shall they have any power but the verdict shall be voided from them and this is why the vow is in the name of the Yadhe which is Tiferet while the oath is in the name of Adonai which is Malchut for they caused their own exile by their sins and now by means of Chakma and Bina they will be released and annulled they shall not be binding nor shall they have any power and all the congregation of the children of Israel shall be forgiven. Bimid bar 1526 Jesus is water, Bira is fire and Tiferet is air and since the vows are in Tiferet which is air the sages of the mission therefore taught release from vows hovers in the air for the release from Chakma and Bina hovers in the air which is Tiferet and from there annuls the vow 810 and since the oath is from Malchut which is below the vow which is Tiferet they taught that the vows are above the oath and they also taught everyone who swears an oath is as though he swears on the king himself and everyone who vows a vow is as though he does so on the life of the king himself the king himself refers to Adonai which is Malchut the life of the king refers to the Yad Hey which is Zeir and from whom the life flows to. The king which is Malchut and for this reason it is written if a man vow about Jehashim Bimid bar 303 which is Zeir and 811 and even thus there is another secret the life of the king refers to Chakma as it is written wisdom gives life to those who have it Kahilat 712 therefore everyone who vows on the Yud Hey which is Tiferet it is as if he vowed upon Chakma of Zeir and which is the Yud Hey Bav Hey in the filling of Aleph thus Yud Bav Dalat Hey Aleph Bav Aleph Bav Hey Aleph which is the life of the king which is the life of Zeir and everyone who swears an oath on Adonai is as though he swore on the king himself this is because he himself had the Tzmo's upper mother namely Bun and as though he had sworn on her namely on as it were the very habits of heaven for clearness Shema 2410 namely the Mokin of Malchut for from the aspect of Chisid Malchut is called Bone Habits of my Bones Bershi 223 but from the aspect of Bura Malchut is Called and flesh of my flesh of it and in Chakma which is the life of Tiferet namely its mokin it Tiferet rises up to be called man as it is written the beauty Tiferet of a man Yeshaya 4413 for Tiferet is called man when it has a mokin of Chakma which is the secret of why he is called by Yud Hevav fully spelled with Aleph that has the numerical value of 45812 and it is said about the day of atonement and you shall afflict your souls Bimid bar 297 and also in the seventh month on the tenth day of the month you shall afflict your souls Vayikra 1629 and five afflictions were decreed for it so that small hay which is Malchut should be purified in upper hay which is Bina whose left column the afflictions are drawn which are five prayers to establish in Yisrael although your sins be like scarlet they shall be as white as snow Yeshaya 118 and this is the secret of the crimson colored strip which they tied to the door of the sanctuary from inside which when the ego reached the wilderness turned white all the iniquities of the house of Israel reached to Malchut and repentance which is Bina purifies whitens them for it is written about it about Malchut I am Hashem that remains among them in the midst of their uncleanness Vayikra 1616 and the four garments of white and the four garments of gold for apparel are the secret of Yud Aleph Hey Dalit Bav Nun Hey Yud which is the combination of the letters of the Yud Hey Bav Hey and those of Adonai for the four garments of white are the secret of the four letters of the Yud Hey Bav Hey while the four garments of gold are the secret of the four letters of Adonai 813 and it was decreed that a shofar be sounded on the day of atonement to raise up a voice which is Bav of the Yud Hey Bav Hey namely Zeir and for freedom which is Bina for it is said about it in all their affliction he was afflicted lit there was affliction for Heblohim Yeshaya 639 Loias with Aleph and Bav. That is in how it is pronounced and written for it is spelled with Aleph no although pronounced with Bob for him for in all their affliction alludes to five afflictions and the judgments whose source is in Bina in its left column and in the secret of the shofar blowing Zeir and is also raised up there to Bina and this is why there are two versions of the text as written and as read with an Aleph and with a Bob where the Aleph alludes to Bina in the secret of Teach Hebalat Bina and it. Bob alludes to Zeir and that ascended to Bina and worship on the day of atonement is conducted at length and comprises three great thought speech and deed section 121 the holiday of Sukkot we are reminded of the origin of this festival dating from the time when Israel were led out of Egypt the size and construction of the tabernacle is described and the point is made that the shadow cast by the roof is not an ordinary shadow but is really the protection cast. Over the soul there are seven letters that incorporate the shape of a shelter or tabernacle Bet Kimal Dalit C.A.F.P. Rush and top the seven planets are said to correspond to these letters and many other analogies are drawn by means of the number seven we hear about the meaning composition and purpose of the Lulav and why the Lulav is taken in the right hand and the Atrag in the left next we hear that the patriarchs together with Moses Aaron David and Solomon all come to Rabbi Shimon and bless him. And praise his light Rabbi Shimon begins talking about the seventy bullocks that Israel used to sacrifice during the seven days of Sukkot. One less bullock every day he says that the clue
I made the children of Israel to dwell in booths when I brought them out of the land of Egypt. Vayikra 2343, namely with seven clouds of glory, which are the secret of seven Sfarats who call it booth or tabernacle when spelled with the letter Bob is in the secret of the two sons over whom Bina provides a shelter, namely Yad Hay and Adonai, namely Zeir and Pin and Malchut for the numerical value of Sukkah amounts to Yad Allah Hay Dalat Bob, Nun Hay Yad for Sukkah Same Bob, Caf Hay consists of the letters Caf Bob which have the same numerical value as the letters of the Yud Hay Bob Hay and the letters Same Hay which have the same numerical value as Adonai and they are the secret of the two cherubs who are overspreading the covering with their wings and their faces shall look one to another. Shema 2520 who are the secret of Zeir and Pin and Malchut 816 and the cherubs who are male and female are ten handbreadths from bottom to top, namely ten Sfarat of returning life from their feet to their heads and ten spirot of direct light from their heads to their feet and they rest on a handbreadth which is the secret of Yud they therefore contain ten from top to bottom and ten from bottom to top namely the ten spirot of direct light and the ten spirot of reflected light and this is Yud Bob Dalad whose numerical sum is twenty and this is why the rabbis ruled that the size of a sukkah should be not less than ten and not more than twenty a sukkah that is built in the shape of a furnace is from the side of mother which is judgment about which it is said and Mount Sinai smoked in every part because Hashem descended on it in fire and the smoke of it ascended like the smoke of a furnace Shemot 19:18 and it is all one eight hundred and seventeen and there shall be a tabernacle for a shadow in the daytime Shea 46 this is because a roof is required and this cast a shadow about which it is said shall abide under the shadow of Shea Tehillim 911 and the meaning is not to it. Shadow cast by an ordinary sukkah that protects the body from the sun, but to the shadow that casts a protection over the neshama. This is in the secret of the verse. I sat down under its shadow with great delight. Sure, Hashirim 23, and of whom we said, Under his shadow we shall live among the nations. Each of 420, the word solid shadow with the final letter MEM added to it forms the word solid image, where TZEL is the secret of the roofing material, and the final MEM is the secret of it. Four side walls of the sukkah, and it is said, Surely every man walks in a vain show. Hepsalam Tehillim 397, close MEM has four sides to it, which are the secret of the four side walls of the sukkah. 818, and with regard to the teaching, two according to the regulations, and a third of even a handbreadth, and of him who says three according to the regulations, and a fourth of even a handbreadth, that is because of the three measurements, two, three, four, which together make nine, where two are. Chakma and Bina three are Chisab, Bura and Tiferet and four are Netzach, Hadiazit and Malchut and the handbreadth that they mentioned with the two or with the three is the tenth namely Malchut that makes up every shortage and this is why the size of a sukkah is not less than ten referring to Malchut which is the tenth of all the Sfarat and not more than twenty which is CAF the numerical value of which is twenty that alludes to upper Keter which is further than the eye can see and is unfathomable this is that upper glory about which Moses said I pray you show me your glory Shema 3318 to which the Holy One blessed be he responded you cannot see my face of it twenty and there is no glory have Kabod without CAF 819 and for this reason the sages of the mission of Yud as corresponding to the Masukah made like an alleyway which is from the side of the letter Bet and in the shape of a right angle which is from the side of the letter Gimel and like a hut which is from it. Side of the letter Dalit and these seven letters Bet Gimel Dalit CAFP Resh and Toph which are doubled by the addition of a Dachay Dot in them allude to the seven Sfarat Chisit Bura Tiferet Netzach Hadiazit and Malchut namely due to the aspect of judgment that is in them and they are the initial letters that allude to the seven invalid sukkahs because of the judgment that is in them CAF alludes to a sukkah made like a furnace Heb Kipshin and Bet to a sukkah that is a wayside station Heb Bergenon and the other letters to the remaining invalid sukkahs all of which are referred to by the sages of the Mishnah such as the sukkah of fruit Heb Parrot Watchmen the sukkah of shepherds Heb Roi more the sukkah of Samaritans Heb Kudim and there is no need to prolong the discussion on them 820 and corresponding to them to the seven letters Bet Gimel Dalit CAFP Resh and Toph are the seven planets and they are male and female for when these seven letters are weak they are of the male and when they are strong with the ditch, they are of the female, and they are therefore called the seven doubles, and are like the seven candles of the candelabrum, which are the secret of the seven Sfarat, Shisit, Bura, and Tiferet, Netzach, Hadiazit, and Malchut, and it is said about it seven times a day, I praise you, Tehillim 119,164, and so it is said, and seven pipes to the seven lamps which were upon the top of it, Zechariah 42, which are the secret of the seven doubles, namely the seven letters in their weak form, and the seven letters in their strong form, and likewise the seven Sfarat are double, containing seven of judgment and seven of mercy, and so too are the seven days of creation below, namely the seven Sfarat of Malchut, which are punctuated with judgments, and the seven above, namely the seven Sfarat of Zeir, and which are weak for judgments, for about the seven Sfarat that are below, it is said, and there is nothing new under the sun, Kahilat 19, for all innovations come from the sun. Namely the seven Sfarat of Zeir and not from under the sun by which is meant the seven Sfarat of Malchut 821 Lalav is righteous one namely is it for the Lalav is like the spinal cord that contains 18 vertebrae corresponding to the 18 shaking movements with the Lalav and they correspond to the 18 blessings of the Amidah prayer and they correspond to the 18 mentions namely the names of Yud Hei Bab and ascribed to Hashem O you mighty Tehillim 291 and it 18 times that the divine name is mentioned in the recital of the SHMA and the Lalav is shaken in six directions south northeast up down and west which makes six and it is shaken three times in each direction making a total of 18 822 the Lalav is taken in the right hand and is comprised of six namely three myrtle branches corresponding to greatness Bura and Tiferet and they are like the three colors to be found in the eye which are white red and green and the two willow Twigs are netzach and hot and they are similar to the two lips of the lava yes and is like the spinal column that supports all the bones and about which David said all my bones shall say Hashem who is like you Tehillim 3510 and the Atrah is Malchut and is like the heart in which are thoughts 823 and the shakings of the Hillel are common to the shakings of the taking up of the lava and there are 18 shakings at save us Hashem we pray you Tehillim 11825 18 each at the first and last oh give thanks of it 1 and 29 and 18 at the taking up of the lava making a total of 72 shakings and this is why the numerical value of the lava which is 68 together with the four kinds of the lava comes to 72 and this is the same as the numerical value of Chisit which is the right arm and this is why it was decreed that the lava be taken in the right hand which is the side of Chisit and the Atrah to the side of Bura to the left corresponding to the heart and this is why it was Decreed that the Atrag which is like the heart be held in the left hand as it has been taught Lalab in the right hand and Atrag in the left corresponding to remember and keep and who is the one taking both Lalab and Atrag is the central column meaning Zeir and the Lalab is his right the Atrag is his left 824 the patriarchs came with the faithful shepherd and Aaron David and Solomon and blessed him Rabbi Shimon saying to him you holy luminary and your companions who are six in number correspond to these seven Sfarat and you the holy luminary are a western light in the middle of the six lights that illuminate from you and about each one it is said the soul of man is the candle of Hashem Mishlei 2027 and the faithful shepherd illuminates in you and you and your companions and all of you are one without any separation whatsoever and from there and onwards the branches namely the illumination spread out to all masters of wisdom complete what you are saying in the compilation. Of the first part to crown them 825 the holy luminary began by quoting many waters cannot quench love it would be utterly scorned sure hasherim 87 what is the meaning of it would be utterly scorned this refers to the second day the sixth day and the seventh day of the festival of sukkot on which libations of water and wine were poured out 826 during the seven days of sukkot israel used to sacrifice 70 bullocks to make atonement for the 70 ministers of the 70 nations so that the world would not remain destroyed because of them and this is what the
rests on Yisrael and this is repentance, namely Bada that is called repentance and is the secret of Sukkah and Etrog which is Malchut and Lalab that is the Holy One, blessed be he, namely Zer and Ben immediately and the waters decrease continually. Bereshit 85 for the sins of Yisrael become less so to the angels of destruction who are appointed over them over the iniquities become less for the iniquities are similar to the waters of the flood as has been taught he that commits one. Transgression gets for himself one accuser and at the time that the iniquities become less their bullocks are reduced in number the appointees over the seventy nations are reduced the seventy nations diminish and their goodness becomes less eight hundred and twenty eight and the holy one blessed be he commanded Noah to take into the ark two and two seven and seven male and female to be a sacrifice to protect Noah and all those who went into the ark with him so too those who observe festivals and seasons which are feast days are two and two seven and seven two and two refers to the two days of Rosh Hashanah and the two days of Shavuot and because there are two of Shabbat because of doubt therefore there are two days of Purim in their stead seven and seven refer to the seven days of Pesach and the seven days of Sukkot Noah corresponds to the Shabbat day and this is the meaning of what is written of every living Hajai equals eighteen thing six hundred and nineteen because two plus two plus seven plus seven equals eighteen which is Chai 829 The Sukkah protects Israel as it is written and there shall be a tabernacle for a shadow in the daytime from the heat. Yeshua 46 Just as the purpose of Noah's Ark was to give protection so is the Sukkah to give protection again of every living Hatchai equals 18 thing where Chai is the 18 blessings of the prayer which subdivide into two groups of nine each and with the blessing concerning the heretics the tenth Firat are completed for this makes ten together with the first nine and again together with the last nine and they correspond to the tenth Firat of direct light that is from above downwards and the tenth Firat of returning light that is from below upwards and this corresponds to Noah which is to say that the 18 blessings of the prayer correspond to the 18 of Noah namely 2 and 2 7 and 7 which add up to 18 830 again of every living thing this means that the Shechinah protects all those who keep the Yud which is the Sign of the Shabbat in its limits, namely 8,000 cubits, namely 2,000 in each direction, and the Yud of the sign of the Shabbat and the Chet equals 8 of the limits are Chet Yud Chai living again of every living thing. This means those who keep the sign of the covenant, which is Yud, which is at the eighth day about which it is said, and in the eighth day the flesh of his foreskin shall be circumcised. Vayikra 123 and the Yud of the sign of the covenant and the Chet of eight days. Form Chai again of every living thing refers to those who observe the sign of the Tefilin, which is Yud, and in which are eight passage sections, thus Chet Yud Chai 831. The Shechinah, which is the Sukkah, protects them and spreads her wings over them as does the mother bird over the young, and this is why the text of the prayer was worded who spreads the tabernacle of peace over us, and for this reason in the seventh month, which contains all these precepts, many waters cannot quench love. Sure Hashri made seven of Israel for their father who is in heaven and there is no meaning to many waters except all the nations and their ministers and if a man this being Samael give all that he possesses in this world in order to join in partnership with Israel in these precepts it would be utterly scorned. Section 122 Shemini Atzeret Rabbi Shimon explains about the small banquet on the eighth day that he says is from the aspect of Malchut he answers his son's query. As to why the banquet for Israel was from the lower Sheshanah but the banquet for all seventy nations was from the upper mother by 832 on the eighth day you shall have a solemn assembly one bullock one ram bar 2935 to 36 the sages of the Mishnah have already taught that the matter is to be likened to the case of a king who invites guests to his house and after he has sent them on their way says to the members of his household let us you and I make a small banquet and what is it? Meaning of solemn assembly, have read it is as is written, this one shall reign, have yet over my people, Ishmael 917, and there is no rain apart from Malchut, for from the aspect of upper Shechinah, which is Bani, he made the large banquet, but he made the small banquet from the aspect of Malchut, and Israel makes joy with her, and she is called Sinchat Torah, lit the rejoicing of the Torah holiday on which we dance with the Torah, and the scrolls of the Torah have their crowns placed on. Them alluding to the fact that the scroll of the Torah is Tiferet, while the Shechinah is its crown, namely the crown of Tiferet, 833, Rabbi Lazar asked, Father, why is it that from the side of upper mother, which is Bani, he invited all the appointees of all the nations, namely with the 70 bullocks referred to above, and from the side of the lower Shechinah, he invited only a solitary nation corresponding to the one bullock, should it not have been the other way around with Israel receiving. From upper mother and the ministers of the nations from Malchut 834 he replied my son that is a good question that you have asked and the answer is because Malchut alludes to a daughter who is modest in the house of her father and mother and she is engaged but not married therefore it is not customarily considered proper that she should eat with the guests but as for the mother who is married here it is the customary way of the world that when her husband invites guests she should eat with the guests at the table with her husband and if they are foreign guests then no one eats with them neither father nor mother and certainly not the daughter who is Malchut and this is the reason why at the banquet for the seventy ministers not one of the members of the king's household joins in to eat with them because they are foreigners he said surely the matter has now been settled in my thoughts correctly section 123 explanations about Malchut Rabbi Shimon tells us that the Shechinah ascends to the place she came from infinity as a result of the burnt offering she takes the Sfirat up with her to provide a sweet aroma for God and then descends bringing atonement for Israel sins with her Rabbi Shimon says that all the grades ascend and descend in her we learn why Malchut is called peace offerings and why everything is included in Malchut she is Chakma and Bina and Tiferet we also hear of the twelve commandments that are included in her 835. The daily burnt offering Hebala Tamed is the Shechinah which always had Tamed ascends Hebala on that grade about which it is said evening and morning every day twice each and every day saying Shema Yisrael and she ascends in the central column which is Zeir Anpin who is with her always without any separation at all 836 but once does she ascend to the place from which she was derived which is infinity and she is then higher than all the Sfirat which is why it was taught the whole of the burnt offering ascends to the Most High and as she ascends all the others Sfirah take hold of her and ascend with her what is the meaning of this ascent of hers to infinity it is to provide a sweet savor to give a good savor before Hashem and afterwards it is said about her and came down from offering the sin offering and the burnt offering Vayikra 922 namely she descends from infinity full of atonement over all of Israel since 837 and her ascent is with the central column which is Zeir Anpin and so also is her descent and that of all her hosts in it and for this reason she is called the latter for all the appellatives namely all the grades ascend and descend in her suspended from the name Yudhei Babhe which is Zeir Anpin and thus all the sacrifices and all the burnt offerings are to Yudhei Babhe and she is called a sacrifice because all the appellatives draw near through her to the Yudhei Babhe which is Zeir Anpin 838 and for this reason it was said about her and his offering was one silver dish, Gimid bar 713, namely Malchut, for there is no grade that can draw near to Yahweh Bahe without Malchut, and there is no prayer nor precept of any of the precepts that are in the Torah or any of the sacrifices and burnt offerings that are outside of Malchut, and in all the grades that are in the Sfirat, none is received before Yahweh Bahe without her, which is why it was said about her, thus live with this Hebzot feminine shall Aaron come into the holy place, Vayikra 163, where Malchut is called Zot, and for this reason the Prophet said, But let him that glory's glory in the Sadhya Mayo 923, 839, and she Malchut is called peace offerings Hebshalim, because she is the completion Hebshalim of the name Yahweh Bahe, and each and every grade she is Hay of the Yudhi Bahe, she is Adonai, she is the Yud of the Yudhi Bahe, she is the Hay of Elohim, she is the Hay of Hayah, she is the Yud of Shadesh and Dalad Yud, she is the end. Of every Yahweh Bahe and appellative, wherefore it is said about her the end of the matter when all is said and done, fear Elohim and keep his commandments. Kahilad 1213, she is the end Hebsaf of the tenth Sfirat and is called Yam Suflet the Reed Sea, she is the completion of the upper beings and of the lower
She is called mouth as it is written with him I speak mouth to mouth Bimit bar 128 841 and she is called the first commandment I am Habanakai Shema 202 namely the beginning of the divine revelation from the aspect of Keter that is in her which is I am not namely the letters Aleph Yud Nun from our Elohim Aleph Lame Hayyad Nun Ba for Keter is called not in the sense of absence of conception Anakai Aleph Nun Caf Yud contains the letter Caf that stands for Keter and Aleph Yud Nun Habayan and Keter is so called from the aspect of Abraham for whom the exodus from Egypt is mentioned 50 times in the Torah corresponding to the 50 gates of Bina and Keter of Malchut is in Bina and she is a daughter Habat Betaf from in the beginning Bereshit Betresh Aleph Shid which includes all of the 10 sayings by which the world was created and from the aspect of Shachma she is the daughter of Yud as it is said by wisdom founded the earth Mishlei 319 namely Malchut which is called Earth for Father which is Chakma founded the daughter which is Malchut and she is a path which no bird of prey knows Eov 287 which is comprised of 32 paths namely the 32 names of Elohim from the aspect of Upper Mother that is called Glory Hebkavad equals 32 and when they are included in the daughter which is Malchut Malchut is called Heart Hebleth equals 32 and this is why there is glory above and heart below 842 and the Ten Commandments were given on two tablets five on each and Malchut includes them for they are the five Sfirot from Keter to Bure and the five Sfirot from the central column which is Tiferet to the daughter which is Malchut and they are twice hey he asks if the Ten Commandments are from the Ten Sfirot is it then possible to speak with ten mouths with each sphere speaking with its own special mouth he answers he included all Ten Commandments in the only daughter which is Malchut and all of them became one with the Ten Commandments being incorporated within Malchut and so it is that Vav which is Tiferet that is called voice cannot be perceived until it joins with speech which is Malchut and this is why it is written you heard the voice of the words Devarim 412 where voice alludes to Zeir and words to Malchut 843 she Malchut is the second commandment from the side of Bureau which is the same numerical sum as for the word Yer Aleph Fear for they both have the numerical value of 216 and this is intimated in the word Beersheed lit in the beginning whose letters rearranged spell your Bashid lit fearful of shame and it has been taught whoever has no modesty certainly his forefathers were not present on Mount Sinai 844 she is the third commandment which is called love of Chesed as it is written I have loved you with an everlasting love therefore I have remained true to you with Chesed your Maya 312 love which is Malchut is composed of the patriarchs and in there Context is called the colit in all mikolit of all colit all which is malchut that is called colit all about Abraham it is said and Hashem had blessed Abraham in all things Bereshit 241 and about Isaac it is written and I have eaten of all of it 2733 and about Jacob because I have all of it 3311 and the secret of the matter is the verse I remember in your favor the devotion she said of your youth your love as a bride your Maya 22 which is said about malchut 845 and she is the fourth commandment which is the unity from the aspect of the central column namely the unity of S H M Yisrael that is 25 C A F A plus 25 letters with him with Z E I R N namely 25 letters of S H M Yisrael which is Z E I R N plus 25 letters of blessed be the name of the glory of his kingdom forever and ever which is Malchut that are in the six words of S H M Yisrael which are six Tfirot of Z E I R N and for her sake Abraham said we'll go yonder Hetko and prostrate ourselves. Bereshit 225 and it is also said thus Hetko C A F A shall you say to the house of Jacob Shema 193 846 and Z E I R N is Aleph Shet of Eshad Lit one Aleph Shet Dalit which is the central column while she Malchut is the Dalit of Eshad she is the completion of his unity perfecting in him the secret of one Aleph Shet equals nine of Eshad include nine Tfirot namely Aleph is infinity namely Keter the Shet equals eight Tfirot from Shachmet Yisad the Dalit of Eshad is Malchut with the tip of the Dalit alluding to Yisad with it in Malchut are completed the ten Tfirot which are the ten letters Yud Vav Dalit Hey Aleph Vav Aleph Vav Hey Aleph the Dalit equals four of Eshad is comprised of the four letters of the Yud Hey Vav Hey 847 the fifth commandment is but you shall meditate there in day and night Yahshu 18 she Malchut is the written Torah from the side of Yisad and the oral Torah from the side of Bureau where Shachmet and Bina are in them for at the time of greatness Yisad. Ascent and becomes Chakma while Bura ascent and becomes Bina. This is as the sages of the Mishnah taught he who wants to be wise will face south and he who wants to be rich will face north where the meaning of riches in knowledge and understanding and the central column which is Tiferet incorporates both of them the right and the left and for this reason is called Heavens Heb Shamayim for it includes fire Hebesh and water Hebmaim fire is Bura and water is Chisad 848 and 4. This reason Keter which is CAF is the secret of the verse weighing 10 shekels apiece Hebkaf after the shekel of the sanctuary Bimit bar 786 namely 10 Tiferet from above downwards and 10 Tiferet from below upwards which is Yud Hey three letters that become CAF namely Keter over Bob which is Zeir and is to correspond to Keter Torah lit the crown of the Torah for the Bob is the scroll of the Torah and the CAF which is why Yudhe is the diadem of its head and all of it together. Namely, why Yudhe with Vav is the Yudhe Vav whose numerical value is CAF Vav equals 26, where the CAF is the secret of Keter over the Vav 849. The sixth commandment of Malchut is the hand tefillin, which is to be placed on the left arm, which is Bure, and from the side of Bure it is the Hay of the dim hand, which is Malchut, and therefore the hand tefillin, which is Malchut, must be placed on the left arm, which is Bure of Zeir and from Keter to Bure there are five Sfirot and they are. The aspect of the head tefillin of the central column, which is Zeir and for from Keter to Bure is the aspect of the head tefillin for there Zeir and below Bure there are the hand tefillin for there are Malchut, and she Malchut is the knot of the three straps, namely net sash hot and Yezid, namely she is the knot of the two straps of the head, which are net sash and hot, and the knot of the one strap of the hand tefillin, which is Yezid, and it follows that she is the knot of the three straps. 850 and she is the seventh commandment which is the precept of fringes comprised of blue and white which are judgment and mercy in the flame of the candle the white fire does not devour what is under it for it is attached only to the blue fire that is under it but the blue fire of the candle is attached to the wick and the oil and it devours and destroys what is under it for the white fire is chesed and the blue fire is judgment and about the blue fire which is judgment it is set and consumed the burnt offering I may lash in 1838 for the white is from the right and the blue from the left while the central column which is the unity of the two of them of the right side and the left side is green for this reason the sages taught from what time in the morning may the sh be recited as soon as one can distinguish between blue and white namely as soon as one can distinguish between chesed and judgment for one has to unite them in the central column this being the secret of the recitation of the SH Yisrael, and this is why it was decreed that the section about the fringes be included in the unity of the recital of the SH Yisrael, because its precept is to be fulfilled with white and blue, which have to be brought together in the recital of the SH Yisrael 851. And she is the eighth commandment, which is Mezuzah. The Shechinah is called Mezuzah from the aspect of the central column, namely Zeir Anpin, which is the letters Yud Hey and from the aspect of the righteous one, which is Yezid, which is the secret of the covenant that is called Shade Shade, is the seal of the king who is the Yud Hey Bahe. Therefore, there is a Yud Hey Bahe inside the Mezuzah corresponding to the central column, and the word Shade on the outside of the Mezuzah corresponding to Yezid 852. The ninth commandment is the Shechinah, which is called the sign of the covenant from the aspect of the righteous one, the foundation of the world, which is Yezid, as it is written. This Hebzot is the token of the covenant. Bereshit 917 Zot refers to the Shechinah and she is the token of the covenant and it is written it is a sign between me and the children of Israel forever for in six days Hashem made the heaven and the earth and on the seventh day he rested and was refreshed. Shema 3117 between me the central column which is Zeir Anpin and the
masculine form although it is pointed with the vowel I showing how it is to be read in the feminine form 853 and circumcision was decreed for the eighth namely the eighth virat from Chakma to to receive in them the small yud which is malchut and to elevate her to keep her for her to be a diadem over the head of eighth virat and it was decreed that the force can be placed in a vessel with dust in order to fulfill the verse and dust shall be serpent's food Yeshayah 6525 854 the tenth commandment of Malchut is wherefore the children of Israel shall keep the Shabbat Shema 3116. The Shechinah is called Shabbat from the aspect of the three upper grades, namely Shin, which alludes to the three Sfirah, Kedar Shachma, and Bina, and Malchut is daughter, and is fourth to these six days. Shema 3115 refers to the six Sfirah from Chesed to Yezid, namely Chesed, Bura, Tifer, Net, Sachat, and Yezid, on which work may be done because the building of the world commences with Chesed, as it is written, the world is built by lovely Chesed, Tehillim 893, but from Bina and upwards, namely in the upper three Sfirah, is rest and pleasure and cessation from all work. 855, the eleventh commandment that is in Malchut is called the morning, afternoon, and evening prayers from the aspect of the three patriarchs, namely Chesed, Bura, and Tifer, it is the prayer of every head, Kol, Mouth, Head, namely Malchut, cleaving to Yezid for prayers, Malchut, and every mouth is Yezid for. The word kolit all or every only means the righteous one which is Yezid as it is written for all that is in heaven and on earth. I have Rahim in 2911 which Yonatan Benuzil translated into Aramaic as that takes hold of heaven and earth namely Yezid that is attached to heaven and earth that are Zeir and Ben and Malchut mouth head pay equals 85 has the same numerical value as Milalit circumcision and just as male and female below unite by the covenant so too the bride and bridegroom above. Come together in Yezid the being Zeir and Ben and Malchut Yezid is the living Hachai equals 18 of the worlds because it includes the 18 blessings of the Amid of prayer as it is written blessings are upon the head of the just Mishlei 106 856 and for this reason when one bows one should bow at blessed which is the secret of Yezid and when returning to the upright position one should do so at the mention of the divine name this is the Shechinah in the name of the Yud Hey with which the Shechinah has to be stood upright the same about whom it is said the virgin of Israel is fallen she shall no more rise Amos 52 by herself but she shall by another grade namely Yudhi Havah namely Zeir and for this reason on that day I will raise up the tabernacle of David that is fallen Ibid 911 and the reference is to him about whom it is said Hashem raises those who are bowed down Tehillim 1468 and therefore when returning to the upright position one should do so. At the divine name 857 the twelfth commandment that is with Malchut is called the festival of unleavened bread Pesach and the festival of weeks Shavuot and the festival of Sukkot from the aspect of the three patriarchs which are Shisat, Bura and Tiferet and the new year is the aspect of Malchut herself which is the secret of the law of the government Malchut is the law there is also the opinion that the holiday of Pesach is the right arm namely Shisat, Shavuot, which is the time. When the Torah was given in the wilderness where the appointee over the wilderness is ox from the side of Bura Shavuot, thus is Bura Sukkot is Tiferet as it is said, and Jacob journeyed to Sukkot, Bereshit 3317 Jacob being Tiferet, and in all other places the author says that Pesach is Chesed Sukkot is Bura and Shavuot is Tiferet. The thirteenth commandment that is with Malchut is the recital of the SH Ma section 124 explanations of the holy names and appellations. Rabbi Shimon tells us the names that are applied to the endless light and says that these names are a result of the creation of those creatures who can apply those names to him. His name changes depending on the actions of those in the world. For the righteous he has the attribute of mercy and for the wicked he has the attribute of judgment. Thus his name can be Yahweh Bahay or Adonai. He is therefore called after the quality of each generation and each person, but he himself has no specific quality or name Rabbi Shimon says that the soul is not found in any one part of the body but is in the whole body in just this way God is found everywhere in the world every single one of his names testifies that he is master of all the worlds we hear that every person in Israel inherits a world according to his level on high as each and every righteous person has a world for himself lastly Rabbi Shimon concludes that the soul is like God only insofar as it rules over all parts of it body but not in any other respect 858 and it should be known that the endless light is called wise one in all sorts of wisdom and understanding one in all sorts of understanding and pious one in all sorts of piety and mighty one in all sorts of might and counselor in all sorts of counsel and righteous one in all sorts of righteousness and king in all sorts of kingship to infinity and immeasurably and in all these grades in one he is called merciful one and in another he is Call judge and so on in a number of grades until infinity he asks if so it implies that there is a difference between merciful one and judge and he answers yet before he created the world he was called by all these grades after the names of the creatures of the world that were destined to be created and if not after the creatures of the world why should he have been called merciful one judge for there would have been none for him to show mercy to thus he was indeed so called only after the creatures that were in the future to be created but there is not heaven forbid any change in him himself 859 and for this reason all the names are appellatives of him after his deeds in such a way he created the soul in his likeness which is so named following its actions in each of the parts of the body which is itself called a small world just as the master of the universe behaves with each creature in each generation according to its deeds so also is the soul according to the Deeds of each part that same part of the body with which he observes a precept is called soul because of compassion loving kindness grace and mercy that are activated in his body and that part of his body with which he commits a transgression is called soul for judgment and wrath and anger that are active in his body but away from body for whom can there be compassion or cruelty because of the deeds of the body 860 so too for whom could the master of the universe have been called merciful one gracious one or judge prior to his creating the world and his creating his creatures thus all his names are but appellations and he is so called only after the creatures of the world thus when the members of the generation are good namely he is for them called the yud hey in the attribute of mercy but when the members of the generation are wicked he is for them called adonai in the attribute of judgment for he is called after the quality of each generation and of each person but he himself has no specific quality and no specific name 861 consider the Sfirah where each sphere has a specific name quality border and limit the master of the universe spreads throughout these names and rules by them and is called after them and is clothed in them and lives amongst them as a soul within the parts of the body and just as the master of the world has no specific name and no specific place but his rule is in all directions in the world so also the soul has neither name nor place anywhere in the body but its rule is in every direction and there is no part of the body that is vacated of her 862 and for this reason no one place in the body should be noted as that of the soul for otherwise if one place is so noted it would follow that her rule is lacking in the remaining parts of the body nor is she to be called by one two or even three names saying that she is chakma and from Bina that she has dead and no more for if one does this it would Follow that she lacks the other grades 863 and this is even truer with respect to the master of the universe to whom no place should be ascribed nor specific name attributed nor should he be doubled or tripled in them namely the grade of the chariot in which it is said they thrice ascribe holiness to you since all the grades of all his chariots are tripled as in the patriarchs they are the heavenly chariot namely the likeness of lion ox eagle for they are a chariot for man and it is said of them as for the likeness of their faces they had the face of a man yashiskal 110 and from the point of the female the lion ox eagle rule over man which is the name of the female and the female is a chariot for lion ox eagle and this is why it is said about her they thrice ascribe holiness to you 864 similarly the letters why you de that allude to the faces of the living creatures lion ox and eagle are tripled thus yud hey bab and bab hey is a fourth four the man is the secret of they thrice ascribe holiness to you as above she is the peace offerings had shalim of all of them for in all of them she completes had mishlam at the name of yod hey but neither names nor letters must be tripled for the master of all for he is called by all the names and has no one specific name and every single name testifies about him that he is master of all the worlds and the name adonai testifies about him 865 and there is a person who inherits 
The beings testify about him that he was his and will be 867. Dina judgment is composed of the letters of Adonai rearranged and for this reason our teachers of blessed memory said the law of the government is the law of Dina. The name El testifies about the master of all that no name yet have of a great and certainly none of the other creatures has any ability apart from him and this is as is written and all the inhabitants of the earth are reputed as nothing and he does according. To his will in the host of heaven Daniel 432 Elohim testifies to his divinity that he is the Elohim and the Elohim of Elohim and he is Aloha over all and there is no Aloha above him. Sebed host testifies about him as it is written he does according to his will in the host of heaven Shadashin Dalatya testifies about him that Hebshin when he said to the world enough have died the world stopped within its limits and did not expand any more likewise to the water wind and fire he said enough have died 868 likewise every yet have and every name testify about him for when he was alone before he created the world why did he need to be called by these names or by the other appellative such as merciful one gracious one long suffering judge mighty strong there are many such names that are so coined after all the worlds and the creatures in them in order to show that his rule is over them 869 and it is likewise with the soul which in the aspect of its rule over all the parts of the body is likened to him just as he is ruler over all the words so is the soul ruler over all parts of the body but it is not meant to say that the soul is like him in its essence for it was he who created it while he has no Elohim above him who created him furthermore there are a number of changes and incidents and causes that happen to the soul which is not the case for the master of all for this reason the soul is like him only respecting its rule over all parts of the body but not in any other respect section 125 the recital of the SH Yisrael and the Tefillin Rabbi Shimon rearranges the letters in SH Mashem and Ashad to teach us about God as witness and about the reason for the four compartments of the Tefillin 870 furthermore SH Mashem Memi and Lidir Yisrael consists of the letters of Shem Lid name Shin Mem and Great I and similarly Dalit of Ashad Lid 1 Alat Chet Dalit is written large and these two Large letters spelled Edlid witness, I and Dalit thus between the Shin Mem of Sh Ma which is Malchut that is called name and the Aleph Chet of Eshad which is Zeir and Pen are to be found the large letters I and Dalit which are the secret of the verse Hashem is witness Hebed against you I Shmuel 125 and so he is indeed a witness over each and everyone who proclaims his unity in the world and therefore David said I will rejoice Hebes Mash, Aleph Sin Mem Chet in Hashem Tehillim 10434 and the Shin Mem of Sh Ma which is Malchut together with the Aleph Chet of Eshad which is Zeir and Pen spell S Mash and this is the secret of the unity of Zeir and Pen and Malchut from the aspect of greatness for Malchut from the aspect of greatness is called name Hebshem, Shin Mem 871 furthermore the large letter Dalit whose numerical value is 4 of Eshad alludes to the four compartments of the Tefillin that Aleph Chet of Eshad which is Zeir and Pen puts on and with which he is adorned and they are an ornament on his head and they are the secret of the combination Yud Hey Hey Bab Yud which is Chakma is a diadem on Hey which is the daughter namely Malchut thus Hashem by wisdom founded the earth Mishle 319 for father which is the secret of Chakma founded the daughter which is Malchut that is called earth the second Hey of the combination Yud Hey Hey Bab is upper mother which is a diadem on the Bab which is the son namely Zeir and Pen as we read by understanding he established the heaven of it for Zeir and Pen who is called heavens receives the Mokin from understanding namely upper mother for mother established the sun thus in the world to come which is Bina there is no eating and no drinking but the righteous sit with their diadems on their heads the righteous here are Zeir and Pen who has a diadem on his head from Bina that is called the world to come section 126 two arrangements of the four passages of the Tefillin Tefillin are said to be the Mokin and Rabbi Shimon describes all the parts of the phylacteries and their meaning in terms of the Sfirah and the holy names of God and the letters of the alphabet. Lastly Rabbi Shimon tells us what Rabbi Akiva had to say about the flowing light that is never interrupted and that comes from infinity 872 and the daughter which is Malchut is the Tefillin of the Dimhand is not upper hey namely mother is the head Tefillin on the head of Tiferet is Tefillin. Namely his Mokin are according to the order Yudhei Bavhei which is sanctified to me Shemot 131 to 10 Yud and it shall be when Hashem shall bring you into the land Shemot 1311 to 16 Is Hey Hero Yisrael Devarim 64 to 9 Is Bav and it shall come to pass if you will hearken diligently Devarim 1113 to 21 Is the final Hey this order is for the Tefillin of the head of Zeir and Pen but in the world to come which is by the Tefillin namely the Mokin that she receives the order of Yudhei Bavhei's which are Hey Hey are in the center that is Yud first which is sanctified to me and the Bav here in the end and it shall be when Hashem shall bring you into the land and it shall come to pass if you will hearken diligently that Is Hey Hey are in the middle and on this the Prophet said but let him that glories glory in this that he understands and knows me that I am Hashem Yirmeyah 923 where the initial letters spell Yud Hey Hey Bav and this is why the sages of the Mishnah taught. There is room on the head to lay two pairs of tefillin and such a one is privileged to observe two precepts about which they taught not everyone has the privilege to enjoy two tables 873 in the four sections of the head tefillin the yud which is the section sanctified to me is chakma the hay which is the section and it shall be when Hashem shall bring you into the land is binabab which is the section here o Yisrael is the central pillar and the hay which is the section and it will come to pass if you will hearken diligently is holy malchut the head that is crowned with these four letters is keter which is the circumference of the head that comprises the tefillin that are the mokin and covers them the recital of the sh ma Yisrael is love chisit and is equivalent to the torah that was given on the right the tefillin called strength are on the left side which is gvur the central column which is tifer includes everything for it comprises chisit and gvur the wings of the precept which are the fringes in which are blue and white are netzach and hot the mezuzah on which I has recorded the name Shadeh is righteous one namely Yizid and the Shechanah is the gate onto which the mezuzah is affixed about which it is written this is the gate of Hashem Tehillim 11,824 furthermore the three-headed letter Shin is the three straps the two of the head Tefillin and the one of the hand Tefillin Dalit is the knot of the head Tefillin at the back of the head while Yud is the knot of the hand Tefillin together they spell Shadeh this is why Shadeh is written on the outside of the Tefillin while the Yud Hei is inside the Tefillin for it is the four sections there in the four-headed letter Shin alludes to the four compartments of the Tefillin Shadeh is his Zeir and sign and amounts to the same numerical value as Metatron 875 again Yud Chakma is the section sanctified to me Hebina is the section and it shall be when Hashem bring you into the land. Bob is the SH in which there are six words here O Yisrael Hashem our Elohim Hashem is one Devarim 64 alluding to the sixth Firon which are six branches of the tree which Tiferet includes the last Hay is the section and it will come to pass if you will hearken diligently which is Malchut these are the Mokin of the head for the head which is Keter is the secret of the letter CAF in the secret of the verse there is none holy as Heb CAF Hashem I Shmuel 22 where the letter CAF lit is in the expression is Hashem is Keter of Zeir and Pen 876 Shadeh alludes to the straps compartments and knots of the Tefillin from the outside for the Shin of Shadeh alludes to the three straps two of the head and one of the hand the Dalit of Shadeh alludes to the four compartments of the head Tefillin and also to the knot of Dalit that is behind the head the Yud of Shadeh alludes to the knot of the hand Tefillin the same holds for the Mezuzah there being Yudhei Bavhei on the inside and it Name Shadeh on the outside the four-headed letter Shin with the Dalit of Shadeh alludes to the four compartments and to the knot of the head Tefillin behind the head which has the shape of a double Dalit likewise there is a double Shin one on the right side of the compartment and one on the left side of the compartment the Yud of Shadeh is the knot of the Tefillin of the dim hand which is the fifth compartment that is to say that with the four compartments of the head Tefillin the fifth compartment is that of the hand Tefillin the Dalit of Shadeh is the brain about which it has been taught to place on the head where a baby's brain is se
His non holy is Hep Caf Hashem I Shmuel 22. All these four verses have marked in them the letter Caf and the secret of the letter Caf, whose numerical value is 20 is Yud Yud, the numerical value of each being 10, namely the Yud at the beginning and the Yud at the end of the combination Yud Aleph Hadalat Bab Nun Hayyud, and this is the inner meaning of the verse weighing 10 shekels a piece of 10, 10 after the shekel of the sanctuary Bimid Bar 786, namely the Caf of Keter that is composed of 10 Svirat is above, and they comprise 10 Svirat of direct light from above downwards, and 10 Svirat of returning light which are upwards from below 878, and these 20 Svirat of direct light and of reflected light are the secret of the verse waters that are above the heavens, Tehillim 1484, which are the male upper waters, namely the 10 Svirat of direct light, while the waters which were under the firmament, Beersheet 17, are the female lower waters, namely the 10 Svirat of reflected light, and Rabbi Kiva said to his pupils about them, when you reach the stones of pure marble, do not say water, water, lest you endanger your souls, for it is not water as is usually understood, namely Shesedim, but flowing light, namely it is also composed of Chakma that is called light, and from the aspect of Shesedim, but is flowing, this is why it was likened to flowing water, and this light is never interrupted, nor is it cut off, nor separated, and because it is from Keter, it is called. Infinite water for Keter is called the endless light end of RAI Mayhem. The section 127 Shavuot Rabbi Shimon says that burnt offerings are not required during Shavuot because Israel have already observed the days of purity and the other side now has no hold over them. The festival of weeks belongs to the tree of life and not to the tree of knowledge of good and evil. 879 And you shall offer the burnt offering for a sweet savor to Hashem. Bimidbar 2827 Command. See about the Sachet is written. You shall offer a sacrifice made by fire for a burnt offering to Hashem. Bimid 19 Yet here it is not written a sacrifice made by fire but and you shall offer the burnt offering. What is the reason for this? And he answers the reason is that this day of Shavuot is a day on which the bride enters the wedding canopy. Namely Malchut enters the wedding canopy with Zeir and Israel comes from the counting of the days and weeks of purity and is taken in and enters. Into these days of purity, namely the secret of the seven days, Chesed Vira Tiferet Net Sach and Malchut, and each one of which are Chesed Vira Tiferet Net Sach and Malchut, making a total of 49 days, and she Malchut has emerged from the aspect of everything bad, namely they no longer have any hold over her and has observed the days of purity as fitting, namely the 49 days of the counting, and this is the secret of the king who tasted the taste of a virgin, in other words, the secret of the verse of virgin, neither had any man known her. Beersheet 2416, if the matter be disclosed, is that no one of the other side had any hold over her, and this is why it is not written about it as sacrifice made by fire, for no other came close to the sanctuary which is Malchut, and the other party has already been removed from there, thus there are not, nor is there any need for offerings made by fire in this case, for Israel has removed themselves from the evil side, said Rabbi Abba, we still have. To open this matter up, 880 Rabbi Shimon said, I lifted up my hands in prayer to him who created the world and found the secret in the works of the early masters. Offerings made by fire are in between the good and the bad, and they come on this side and on that side, for they are attached to the tree of knowledge of good and evil, and are therefore attached to both the good and to the bad. For this reason, on the other days it is written, a sacrifice made by fire for a burnt offering, for they contain judgments and have a hold on the tree of knowledge of good and evil. But on these days when the tree of life and no other is to be found, namely on Shabbat, we do not need an offering made by fire, and it does not have to be there for this day of Shabbat belongs to the tree of life and not the tree of knowledge of good and evil. This is why scripture says, And you shall offer the burnt offering for a sweet savor to Hashem, Bimidbar 2827, and not a sacrifice made by fire to Hashem for a burnt. Offering and the meaning of burnt offering Hebelah is derived from a for it ascends Hebelah to the Most High One as we have learned and we have already clarified these matters in the commentary about one-year-old bullocks and the whole of that offering section 128 Rosh Hashanah Rabbi Shimon uses the story of Isaac and Jacob and Esau to illustrate the meaning of the two days of judgment and the need for the burnt offering 881 and in the seventh month on the first day of the month Bimidbar 291 this is as we have learned that the day of the new year is the day of judgment for the whole world stringent judgment on the first day and lenient judgment on the second day he asks it is written and you shall make a burnt offering of it too whereas it should have been written and you shall offer a burnt offering as on all the other days what is the meaning of and you shall make and he answers on this day of the new year it is written and make me Savory food, Beersheet 274, which is what Isaac said to Esau, who is the accuser, and during these days Israel makes many savory foods and dishes, namely precepts and prayers, while the accuser goes to search for the sins of the world to make them into savory foods for the prosecution. It is therefore not written, and you shall offer a burnt offering, but and you shall make a burnt offering, namely make and correct savory foods, and it is not written a sacrifice made by fire to Hashem for a burnt offering, as it is similar for all the other festival days in which days there is no part for the other side, nor is a sacrifice made by fire written as in Shavuot and Yom Kippur, and certainly not for this day on which we make savory foods and dishes without the knowledge of the other side, for he had been sent by Isaac to hunt game, that is the iniquities of men, and to bring them to him. 882, and while he is yet on the way, Israel takes advice from Ripka, do all these rituals and all the Prayers and prepare a shofar and sound it in order to awaken mercy as has been explained in the preceding paragraph and we have already learned and he brought him wine and he drank. Bear she 2725 for he came from afar from Bina from that place where the wine is old which is the secret of the illumination of Chakma of the six intermediate Svirat of the left side after the annulment of the upper three Svirat of the left side this being termed old wine and he drank found it delicious and rejoiced and after that Isaac who is the left column blessed him with a number of blessings and removed his iniquities for the illumination of Chakma makes atonement for iniquities as it is written and Jacob was yet scarce gone out from the presence of Isaac his father and he saw his brother came in from his hunting. Bear she 2730 namely he was carrying with him a number of burdens of iniquities as has been stated and we have already learned these matters 883 and this is why it is a day. Of the Tiruah sound of the shofar and the sacrifice is a burnt offering. One ram is as we have learned because of the ram of Isaac, the one kid of the goats for a sin offering is a bribe to Samael for from just this offering he receives some nourishment from the aspect of the six intermediate Svirat of Chakma to make atonement before him for having wept on that day when he realized that his will had not been done and he had gone hunting for nothing for the upper three Svirat of his left side had been annulled and there is total strength as above and the contraction of the upper three Svirat is called weeping as we have learned this is similar on Yom Kippur as written in the portion of Emer section 129 Sukkot Rabbi Abba and Rabbi Lazar talk about the third day of Sukkot employing the analogy of the ark landing on Mount Ararat and the waters receding 884 and on the fifteenth day of the seventh month Bimidbar 2912 Rabbi Abba began by quoting and the ark rested in the seventh month, Bereshit 84, come and see throughout these days from Yom Kippur to the holiday of Sukkot, the mother which is the Sheshana hovers over the sons who are Israel in order that the other side should not have control over Israel and in order to save them after the children have been saved and are sitting in their boots at Sukkot, they are guarded with the protection of mother which is the Sheshana on the first and second days of the holiday of Sukkot. She commanded Israel to make a feast for the ministering angels of the other nations, namely the seventy bullocks for the seventy ministers, and she does not dwell there with them on the third day which is the seventeenth day of the month, the Sheshana begins to rest on them, and this is the meaning of the verse, and the ark rested in the seventh month on the seventeenth day of the month upon the mountains of Ararat, where the ark is the secret of the Sheshana and the mountains of Ararat are the Mountains in the midst of which rest all the curses and all the punishments which are the appointees of the nations. 885 Rabbi Lazar said on the first day of the holiday, Malchut does not rest on them on the ministers of the seventy nations, nor on the second day, but only on the third day, which decreases by the addition. Does she r
Seventy heathen nations for whom they are offered. Lastly, we are reminded how Yisrael break through all the clipot to find joy on the eighth day of assembly. Shmini Atzeret in this, the other side has no part. Eight hundred and eighty-six. Rabbi Shimon said, "Laser, come and see." From the second day, the waters began to appear. Namely, that the libation of water on the altar began for its purpose was also to draw down livelihood and subsistence for the other side. And if he be thirsty, give him water to drink. Mishlei two thousand five hundred and twenty-one. This water is the water that is mentioned here for libation on the days of the holiday. And after the water had begun, and the other side and the seventy nations had received the emanation, they then grew in strength, as noted in the preceding paragraph. And from the third day, Malchut rested on them, for they drew her down, separated from Zeir and Benizabah, and the Babylonians did not know why these waters are mentioned here in connection with the festival. That is to say, that they did not know that there. Purpose was to provide subsistence to the nations of the world for the goodness of Israel is not in the place of contraction, namely in the bullocks of the festival that are reduced in number, but in the place of expansion. And since these waters that are mentioned here are contracting together with the bullocks of the festival, Scripture comes to inform us that it is written, and the waters decrease continually. Bear sheet 85 that is the waters that are known from the days of the festival are the ones that are mentioned among the sacrifices. For on the second day it is said that among the sacrifices is and their drink offerings have been Iskai Hamimid bar 2918, the last letter of which is MEM, and on the sixth day it is said and its drink offerings have Unseshi Hagabid 31 with YUD, and on the seventh day after the ordinance have Kemish Hagabid 33, the last letter of which is MEM, and these three letters together spell MEM lit waters, MEM YUD, MEM, from which it follows that there is a Allusion to the water libation in the Torah for they the sacrifices are mountains of curses that continually decrease and their goodness and the emanation that is drawn down on them decrease continually. Bereshit 85 And because these waters belong to them to the nations and to the other side the letters MEMYUD MEM were not joined together and the word did not appear explicitly written in the Torah but the letters are scattered with MEM being in and their drink offerings have Beniskai M. The YUD in and its drink offerings have Bunseshiha and the final MEM in after the ordinance have Kemish Padam is above and the purpose of this is so that their goodness should not be joined but be little by little 887 but regarding Israel who are from the Holy One blessed be he who is the central column what is written but they who seek Hashem shall not want any good thing. Tehillim 3411 The first half of this verse is the young lions lack and suffer hunger but the young lions are the Appointees of the other nations that seek Hashem are Yisrael who will not lack all good things because they continually ascend higher and higher for a person may be promoted to a higher degree of sanctity but not demoted for this reason their good that of the nations and of the other side which are waters decrease continually until the tenth month Bereshit 85 which is the month of Tavis for then are the days of badness for the months of Tavis and Shabbat are the period of judgment and are called the days of badness and this badness awakens and grows stronger and the holy bride which is Malchut does not illuminate from the midst of the sun namely is separated from the sun which is Zeir and Ben and then the tops of these mountains became visible that is the judgments of the left side that are drawn down with the bullocks of the festival namely those mountains of darkness and mountains of curses that appear and grow stronger and do evil things in the world 888 about these Days of the holiday of Sukkot it is written a sacrifice made by fire Ibid bar 2913 regarding their burnt offering namely the words and you shall offer a burnt offering for a sacrifice made by fire Ibid for then these offerings made by fire which are the judgments devour their portions namely those 70 bullocks corresponding to the 70 appointees who rule over the 70 nations and their number is greatest on the first day and decreases with each passing day and they are called Goring bullocks on their days 14 rams the text here is missing but should read as follows 2 rams and 14 lambs of the first year Ibid bar 2913 the 2 rams on each day are 14 yut abab is 7 times 2 is 14 and this refers to the hand that controls them continually every day and the total number of the lambs of the first year is 98 for 7 times 14 equals 98 889 and you might wish to ask if so if we offer 14 rams so that the hand have yet equals 14 of Yud Hei Bav Hei will rule and if we offer 98 lambs which is a bad omen for it corresponds to the 98 curses in the admonition and also it is said that Tilladart have chets equals 98 strike through his liver then are we not being evil eyed towards them for he says to him eat and drink says he to him but his heart is not with him he answers yes for it is written if your enemy be hungry give him bread to eat and if he be thirsty give him water to drink for you shall heap coals of fire. Upon his head Mishlei 2521 to 22 but we give only out of rejoicing for throughout the whole year there is no rejoicing like that on these days of Sukkot and since we give out of the goodness of our hearts in rejoicing and willingly our gifts to them turn into coals of fire on their head burning coals for our rejoicing affects them badly namely the 14 rams 70 bullocks and 98 lambs which is their sum total of sacrifices where the 14 rams indicates the hand of Yud Hei Bav Hei that controls them and the 70 bullocks in their decreasing progression teach that their goodness will continually decrease while the 98 lambs teach about the 98 curses that rest on the morgan in other words a dart strike through their liver 890 and all this is very well but you might ask who asked us to sacrifice for them for the appointees of the 70 nations perhaps they are not interested in our doing so but all of these appointees have no such rejoicing as at that time which they have with all these bullocks and rams and lambs that Israel offers to them at these banquets nevertheless nothing is offered except to the holy one blessed be he alone while they the appointees come close and the holy one blessed be he distributes to them and about this it is written if your enemy be hungry give him bread to eat where bread refers to the festival offerings and in and if he be thirsty give him water to drink water refers to that water that is marked to be poured out in a Libation on the days of the festival on the second, sixth, and seventh days, and this is derived from it would be utterly scorned head boss, bet bob zayin, sure hasherim 87, where the numerical values of the letters bet bob and zayin are 2, 6, and 7, respectively 891. Many waters cannot quench love, sure hasherim 87. This refers to the waters that Yisrael pours out in libation out of rejoicing and love for the Holy One, blessed be he as it is written, therefore with joy shall you draw water. Yeshua 123, nor can the floods drown it, sure hasherim 87. These are the floods of the pure balsam, namely the 18 rivers of plenty that are drawn down from Yisrael of Bina for all of them cleave to and form a bond with this love. If a man would give all the substance of his house, it would be utterly scorned. Divid, this refers to Samael, and he gives for love a bit of Yisrael, namely so that he should have a portion with them in these waters about which it is written in the section of a. Man would give all the substance of his house for love, it would be utterly scorned. Hebbaz, which is a mnemonic for these waters that are poured out on the second bed, six of and seventh day in days, it would certainly be scorned for all the substance of Samael is considered for us as a broken pot's herd that can never be repaired. 892, he explains his words, the water of Samael, the other side, and the nations is distributed on the days of Baz, Bet, Bavze, and this leaves the other days, namely the fifth, fourth, and third days of the festival on which there is no water libation. The mnemonic for this he plowed Hebcharish, Chedrush in the furrows of the land where the letters of Charish stand for Chemish, he lived fifth, Rebi, I live fourth, and Shlish, he third, on which days there is no libation of water, and they have no correction through us, nor indeed forever, for just as they have no correction on the fifth, fourth, and third days, so they never will have any correction, and should you. Wish to point that it is written it would be utterly scorned whereas according to the above it should have been written it would not be utterly scorned namely that they do not want the scorn second sixth and seventh which is the substance of Samael I should then respond elsewhere it is written for he has not despised scorn nor abhorred the affliction of the afflicted Tehillim 2225 893 he asks what about the first day of the festival thinking that the second sixth and seventh head boss days are considered those of the water libation and the fifth fourth and third head charge days are free of the libation of water but he does not mention the first day of the festival at all he answers the first day is not called either first nor one but I is called simply the fifteenth day Bimid bar 2912 no special mention is made of
and a number of scorpions which were there in wait for them in those mountains of darkness until they managed to find a place of settlement and a holy city which is the holy Malchut surrounded by walls on all sides that then entered it on the eighth day of assembly had Shemini Atzara to give it satisfaction there and rejoice in it and we already explained the matter 895 and this is a solemn assembly the meaning of which I as a gathering namely Malchut for she is a place where everything gathers for she is a receptacle for all the higher luminaries you shall have namely you and nobody else shall have for the other side have no part of it but it is you who rejoice with your master and he with you and on this it is written be glad in Hashem and rejoice O you righteous and shout for joy all you who are upright in heart Talim 3211